Lexi. I have never stayed still for very long, always moving from place to place, job to job, aimlessly wandering. I've felt like I've spent my life searching for something, but what this is I don't know. I'm an orphan, my parents died before I can even remember, and I have no family. I've never had a home, the system, foster care, group homes. I've never belonged. I could be surrounded by a crowd of people and still feel like I'm the only person there, no one has ever truly seen me, understood me, yet I have never really felt alone. There's always been something within me that has helped calm me, protect me when I've needed it the most. Call it the inner voice inside my head, or something similar. It's a sense of understanding but with a little more of its own control. I haven't heard from her in a while, which is actually a good thing, especially because she only really shows more when I'm in trouble. Or should I say, when I get myself into trouble. The last time I heard her, I had really gotten myself into trouble, I was hitchhiking. It's how I've always had to get around if I couldn't walk anymore, I can't afford to own a car. It was my own fault for almost falling asleep, the exhaustion just came over me and so did he hand, or at least he tried to. That ride ended in me jumping out of the lorry while he was still driving just to get away. I don't know how long I have been walking, or how far, when I start to see some lights, it looked like a small diner. Maggie's. I fidget in my pocket to see if I have any spare change from the last 20 I had before I left on this grand adventure, maybe enough for a hot drink. I hope so, my legs are aching and I know I'm going to have to sleep eventually. The diner looks fairly empty, there is an older woman behind the counter, she has curly ash blonde hair with streaks of grey, is only small like me, maybe 5 feet 2 inches at best. I take a seat. I'm the only person here. Hi sweetheart, what can I get you? She asks. How much for a cup of coffee? I scrambled in my pocket, looking for my spare change. She looks at me, tenderly, for once it's not surrounded in sympathy, it's a look I'm not used to seeing, it's a little unnerving while calming at the same time. Her eyes are a deep blue but look aged, eyes that look like they've seen a lot more than you would know. Is that all you're wanting? Yes, ma'am. Well honey, we're almost closing, so I have some spare apple pie going if you'd like, on the house. She walked off before I had a chance to say anything. I sit nervously, twisting my hands. I can't afford anything more than a coffee and people have never exactly been nice to me for nothing. The woman comes back to me with a big piece of apple pie, a coffee, and a jug of water. That's the best apple pie around, I should know why I made it. She says with a wink, and she walks back to the counter. The smell makes my stomach growl and I dig in before she changes her mind. She was right, it was the best pie around. I finished all too soon, go to wash up in the restroom, then head back to pick up my bag and say thank you. She walks over to me as I'm collecting my things. I hope you don't take this the wrong way honey, but is there somewhere specific you're heading at this hour? I feel like a deer in headlights, scrambling frantically in my head to think of a response. Erm. Is all I manage. Well, not to overstep, but at this hour you're not going to get very far on foot and nowhere close enough for a motel. I have a spare room going if you'd like. I can feel my face going red, it's lovely of her to offer, but I have no money to stay anywhere and I was just planning to find a quiet spot under the stars and away from prying eyes. Don't worry honey, I'm not looking for any money, my son is away just now so his cottage is empty and my husband and I are used to having lots of people around us, our life has always been about helping out our kind when no one else would. She explains softly. What did she mean by? Our kind? It seemed an odd thing to say. But I didn't dwell on it, I didn't have anywhere else to stay and I shouldn't even be considering her offer, but something about her felt familiar. Something about her felt safe. Something about her felt motherly. I had clearly been quiet for too long. Right, that's it. She said. Decision made, grab your bag, I just need to lock up and we can head off, it's only about 20 minutes away, you can stay as long as you like. With that she started to walk off to the back before she spun around and said. I'm Maggie by the way, as in Maggie's diner, that's me. And left with a huge grin as she spun back round and walked to the back. She was back in about five minutes. You ready? She asks. I picked up my back and followed her silently outside. I must be crazy to be going with this stranger, but I'm so tired, would one night really be so bad? As we were getting into her pickup, 
I muttered. I'm Lexi. Nice to meet you, Lexi. We sit quietly in the car, the atmosphere was calming, for the first time in forever, I didn't feel on edge or the need to be on my guard. I almost fall asleep when I could feel the car start slowing. We stop as some large metal gates slowly open and we start driving up a long driveway. Is this place a palace? It was huge, there was a large house at the top of the hill, lots of houses and outbuildings dotted around it, vast fields and forests covering the surrounding area. Maggie took a smaller path I hadn't noticed to the left halfway up the drive, this is it she said, smiling. We both get out. It was beautiful, the cabin was nestled in the trees, a large decking looked to surround the house, a cozy swing swaying gently in the breeze. I followed Maggie inside. It felt like home. A small fireplace in the corner, soft furnishings in dark red and orange, the smell of the trees and the wood of the cabin mixed together. It's too much, I can just go and find a motel. I stuttered. Nonsense, my son is away on a trip just now, I know he wouldn't mind stay as long as you like. I follow her upstairs to a large bedroom. It has the best bathroom in the house, the bath is big enough to wash away anyone's aches. I should know I helped design it. She smirks at me. Make yourself comfortable, get a good night's sleep, if you need anything, we're at the main house, you're welcome anytime, someone is always around, and if you're up for it, tomorrow I can give you a tour and introduce you to the rest of the family. She smiled at me softly, and started to head out. Thank you. I said suddenly, almost shouting. I just, I've never. Maggie gave me a quick embrace, put her hand on the side of my face lovingly, the way a mother would a child, and left. I stood there in silence, not sure what to do, what was happening, was this real? Was it possible people could be kind and not want anything in return or was I setting myself up for something much worse? I decided for one night I was just going to enjoy it. Maggie mentioned a bath that I was definitely going to enjoy. I started to run the bath. Maggie was right. This was like no bathroom I had ever seen, bright and large, a shower that looked like it belonged in some fancy hotel and a tub that looked bigger than me. I sank into the water, the heat instantly helping my aching limbs, my cuts and scraps. I stayed in the bath until the water was almost cold. I grabbed a towel and wrapped myself up. I was suddenly so tired I felt like I couldn't move. I grabbed one of my shirts, too tired to rummage for anything more, and fell into bed. I'd never felt anything so soft. I don't even remember falling asleep. I don't know how long I'd been asleep for. I started to stir, confused, I felt like someone was here, it was pitch black, it must have been a dream. I turned over in the bed and felt someone next to me. I screamed. Fuck. I heard in a deep gruff voice. I spun to get off the bed and fell out, hitting my ass on the floor, hard. I try to look for something to grab to protect myself with. I feel the lamp on the nightstand and hold it up. I can't see anything, it's so dark and I don't know where the light switch is. Suddenly the other lamp comes on, standing in front of me was a man, tall, must be 6.4 inch or more, shaggy dark black hair, longer than it looks like it should be, every inch of him chiseled like a Greek god, biceps bulging, in nothing more than tight boxers, staring at me with piercing blue eyes. A blue like I've never seen. Our eyes locked from across the room. Mine. He said, a flash of something flickered across his eyes as he spoke. It was too fast for me to catch. Mine. I growled. I dropped the lamp, throw my hands over my mouth. I have no idea where that came from, it wasn't my voice, but it was my mouth that said it. I, 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 I'm sorry. I stutter, I don't even know why I'm apologizing. Maggie, said it was okay, I didn't know. I should go. I go to grab my bag, sprint for the door. Wait. He says. Just hold on. I stop, I don't know why, I've woken in the middle of the night to a strange man lying in bed next to me, practically naked. I should be running out the door, so why can't I leave? Why don't I really want to leave? He stands straight. I hadn't even noticed he'd been crouching this whole time, like he was prepared to attack. He looks even bigger when he's standing. I also can't help but notice how strong he looks, how tight his boxers are. I can't help but drink him in. 
I blush as I notice him watching me. He must have seen me staring. I need to break the silence and I start rambling. I met Maggie, she offered me a place to crash, said it was empty just now, her son, I'm sorry, I can leave, I didn't mean to. I came home early. He says. I didn't tell anyone I was heading back. First time I've been kicked out of my own bed. He smirks. You're Maggie's son? Oh well, at least he's not a complete stranger, he just owns the house and the bed I just so happen to be sleeping in uninvited. Nate. Lexi. We stand in silence, the air humming with electricity, something inside me was raging. I couldn't explain it, staring at him, it felt like there was something inside me trying desperately to crawl out. Mine. 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 It's all I can hear, over and over, I don't know where it's coming from or what it means. I'm suddenly very aware I'm wearing nothing but a t-shirt, I must look mad having fallen asleep with wet hair, dazed and confused, exhausted from days of lack of sleep. A lifetime really of no sleep. What must he think of this crazed woman standing in his room, in his home, sleeping in his bed? I start to leave. Wait. He says, he seems calmer now, composed. Sleep here, there's plenty of room, I'll crash next door. With that, he walked out the room. What the hell just happened? Do I leave? Go back to bed? Go after him? It's his room after all, his house. I got back into bed. I doubt I'll sleep, but I don't know what else to do and I feel like I need time or space from the god before I make a decision. I'm trapped, I'm behind bars, in a cage, I'm screaming, begging, someone hear me, someone help me, it's me, but it's not me, I'm thrashing, I need release, please, I beg. Suddenly it all goes black, I feel a wash of calm come over me, I'm safe, he's here, we'll protect you. Eight. It had been a long journey home after a long trip away. I'd been driving for hours, I was exhausted and couldn't think of anything better than collapsing in bed and sleeping for days. I don't know what time I finally made it home. I hadn't told mom or dad I was heading back early, they would only have waited up and I knew I'd be back late and part of me just wanted the peace for a few hours to sleep without anyone needing anything from me. I open the door to my cabin, kick off my boots, I don't bother turning the lights on, it's not like I really need them to see where I'm going anyway, I just drag myself upstairs, too tired to move my legs. I take off my jeans and throw my top over in the corner and crawl into bed. I fall asleep before my head even hits the pillow. I'm woken by a scream and movement at the side of me. I spring out of bed, ready to attack and protect. What was that? Alex snaps. Like I know. I was asleep too. Annoyed my wolf was asking such a stupid question. That's when I see her, cowering on the other side of the bed, she clearly can't see me. I watch her as she grabs the bedside lamp for a weapon, the sight would have almost been comical if she hadn't scared the crap out of me. I switch the bedside lamp on, Alex roars at me. Mate. Before I have chance to think. Mine. I growl. She growls back at me. Mine. Then looks afraid of herself and covers her mouth. Why does she look so afraid? Is it because she doesn't want a mate? The thought of being rejected by mates so suddenly makes my heart ache. Alex is just as confused as I am. Why is mate claiming us but not claiming us? I don't know, something must be up. I realize I am standing ready to shift. Maybe I startled her. I stand up straight to show her we mean no harm. I see her eyes wandering over me, Alex puffs out his chest, proud that mate clearly likes us, she looks away quickly, her cheeks growing red. I have to hold back a grin but I can't deny I'm trying not to be turned on by her reaction. Even though she looks startled by herself right now, I can't help but want to rush over and take her. She's beautiful, she's mine. She has long dark brown hair, stunning green eyes I can't stop looking at, she's only small, about 5 feet 4 inches, curves to die for and a chest I can't wait to get my hands and mouth on. Then what are we waiting for? Alex impatiently growls. She's mate, we need her, now, it's been so long. Down boy. We could at least find out her name first. She starts stuttering, tripping over her words as she's talking, her innocence and shyness is only making my cock ache more to see if she's like that when my hands are on her. I see her eyeing me suspiciously as we stand there in silence. I need to regroup, get my head together. 
I'm too tired and seeing her standing by my bed in nothing but that shirt and sleepy look is driving me wild. I can't think. She starts to leave and I panic. Wait. Wait. Alex and I both shout in unison. She can't leave us Nate. Keep her near, we can't lose her now she's finally here. Sleep here, there's plenty of room. I'll crash next door. And with that I left as quickly as my legs could carry me without looking at her. Coward. Alex mutters. Shut up, you're not helping. I go downstairs, I need to put some space between us to clear my head, I can feel the pull, the need to be near her through the closed door. I go to the fridge to grab a beer and down it in one. You don't need beer, what you need is to climb back into the bed next to mate and mark her. Considering how she reacted when she called out mate and how she was tripping over her words I think we need to be a little more tactile going about this, we don't want to scare her away. I could sense Alex was PD about this idea but he also didn't say anything back, he knew I was right. I can hear Lexi moaning upstairs, she sounds upset. She needs us, go to her. I walk upstairs and peek inside the room, I don't want to scare her or her think I'm creeping on her, I just need to make sure she's okay. She's asleep, she must be having a nightmare, her face is contorted in pain. She's whimpering. No, please, help, anyone. She cries in her sleep. Mate needs us, help her. I walk over to her. I didn't want to wake her, but how do I help? Soothe her, touch her, let her know we're here, we'll protect her. I hold her hand, gently, so as not to wake her, stroke the hair off her face, she visibly relaxes, her body calms, she drifts off into a deep sleep. See, she needs uses. Alex announced almost smugly. I just rolled my eyes. I don't know how long we sat there. I just want to make sure she no longer seems scared before I leave her to sleep and go back downstairs. There's no way I'm going to be able to sleep now. I throw myself on the sofa, my mind racing. Who is this girl? When did she get here? She mentioned my mom. I'll have to speak to her at some point, find out as much as I can. Lexi, I wake with the sunlight shining into the room. I don't remember falling asleep. I don't know what time of day it is. I feel like I've slept for days while not having slept at all. I remember last night, Nate. I scramble for some jeans, throw them on and open the door, quietly, not to wake him. I creep downstairs, I smell bacon, he's in the kitchen, cooking, he looks up as I walk in. He's shirtless, pants slung low on his hips, his hair tussled from sleep, he smiles at me crookedly, I'm staring again, he knows it, my mouth goes dry. Morning. He says, his voice low, gravely, like he's not long awake, like he knows full well the effect he's currently having on my mental state. I blink back to life. Hi. I whisper and walked into the room. Hungry? Erm, sure. As if on cue my stomach grumbles loudly, traitor. He smiles, passes me the coffee pot and some bacon. I'm absently playing with the coffee mug when I feel like I'm being watched. I look up and see that flicker in his eyes again, and just as soon as I see it, it's gone. So, you make a habit of sleeping half-naked in a strange man's bed waiting for them to join you? He asks with a hint of teasing. I choke on my coffee. Maggie. Last night. I didn't have anywhere else to go. She offered me a place to stay, said you were away, it was the best room with the best bathroom, I'm sorry for intruding. He looked at me, a hint of sorrow in his eyes. A look I've seen many times before. Poor me, lonely girl with nowhere to go, relying on strangers to put her up, no money, no home. I almost curl into a ball with the embarrassment of how pathetic I must come across to this beautiful man, in his beautiful home, with his beautiful eyes. Suddenly, he's at the side of me, placing his hand under my chin to lift my face to look at his. Don't be sorry, never be sorry, not to me. The words feel heavier in the meaning than they should, like there is more here, more than two strangers who met only hours ago. The feeling of being caged, trapped, rises again, the need to be set free. My nightmare from last night comes back to me, crying for help. He strokes the side of my face with his thumb and I feel calmer. Why does this feel so familiar, so soothing, so natural? We both jump from the knock at the door and he drops his hand, a hint of annoyance radiates off him, in walks Maggie, 
cheerful as ever with a plate of food, oblivious to whatever she has walked in on. Morning. She chimes before she looks up and sees us both in the kitchen. Nate. I didn't know you were coming home. When did you get back? How was it? Why didn't you call? She rushes over to him and hugs him tight, her small frame barely reaching around him, on her tiptoes trying to reach him. A smile spreads across his face as he bear hugs her back. Hey mom, I got back late last night. It was a last minute plan. I would have called, especially if I'd known you'd been renting out my room, he says jokingly. Maggie spins with horror. Alexi, I'm so sorry, I didn't know, I hope he didn't give you a fright, walking in without warning. Fright? He says in mock disdain. It's my house, remember? I'm all for homecoming gifts, but leaving a half-naked girl in my bed is a bit much, don't you think, Mom? He says laughing as he goes to grab another cup of coffee. My face burns bright, looking at Maggie, who bats his arm as he walks away. Don't worry honey we have plenty of room, you can come over to the main house. She's barely finished speaking before Nate interrupts. There's enough room here. He snaps. They're both silent, like some unspoken conversation is happening that only they can hear. Maggie seems to jump a little and then suddenly remember I'm there too. Well, whatever you're more comfortable with dear, I've got a busy day. Don't forget to stop by the house sometime and say hi, Nate. You'll need to speak to your dad sooner rather than later. Maggie rushes off out the house like someone has told her she'd left the stove on. I sit there confused. Looking at Nate for clues as to what just happened. What the hell was that? He looks at me with those piercing blue eyes. So, where are you from? The question catches me off guard. Oh. Nowhere, everywhere, you know. Family? Don't have one. Your parents. Dead. I say, before he has a chance to finish. I'm sorry, I didn't mean. It's fine, I cut him off. Better to get that aired sooner so we can move on. I don't remember them, it was a long time ago, it's fine. He looks at me intently, as if trying to figure something out. I should probably leave. Wait, what, no. I still, confused by his reaction. You don't need to leave on my account. Besides, you said you had nowhere to go. I feel a pang of sadness as I realize he must think of me as some poor homeless stray just wandering the streets looking for scraps. The reaction on my face must give my thoughts away as he starts scrambling, nervously, tripping over his words. I mean, I could use the company, been away, alone for a while, big house, single guy, you know? I'm not looking for some hookup. Pay my way through other means. I snap, angered that he's just like every other guy I've ever met. Think they can get what they want from me because I don't have money and they look like a Greek god. What? No! That's not what I meant at all. I just meant. I live alone. I am alone. I'm not with anyone. It's nice to have some company around here. He talks quickly, he seems panicked, like he doesn't want me to think of him that way, like he wants me to know he's single. I blush at his response. I didn't mean to get so defensive, but at the same time, I'm pleased to learn he's single too. Not that I'd ever have a chance with someone like him, but at the same time, the thought of anyone else being with him enrages me like I've never felt. Mine. I hear a growl in my head again. Why does that keep happening? I'm losing my mind. I realize we've been standing here silently while I've had this internal conversation and I feel my face redden again in embarrassment. Sorry, it's just, you know, normally that's the kind of situation I end up dealing with but I shouldn't have presumed. I see a flash of anger come over his face and that hint in his eyes again. What is that? I'm not close enough to see properly. You're here now, those days are over. I need to shower, go see my folks properly. Do you have any plans today? Erm, um, well, I hadn't really thought I'd still be here to be honest. Will you stay? Please? If you've not got somewhere to be, I mean, if you do, I could drop you off first. I have nowhere I'm going. I was just going, but I can stay I guess. I don't really want to leave and I don't want to leave him. I can't explain it, but the idea of not being near Nate seems almost unimaginable. Not that I'm going to show him that side of my crazy anytime soon. 
he seems to visibly relax at this. Good, I shouldn't be too long, make yourself at home and I'll come back and get you in a couple of hours. With that, he grabs a shirt out of his bag on the sofa and leaves. Nate. God I'm tired, it had been a long few weeks, negotiating with other pack alphas, agreeing new alliances, the journey home. I was exhausted, with my mind still running, Alex pacing back and forth. I must have blacked out eventually because I woke up slumped on the sofa, the sunlight waking me. I felt like I'd only been asleep for seconds. I didn't know how long I'd been out. The events of last night came flooding back. Lexi. I could hear some movement upstairs. I decided I'd make a start on some coffee, breakfast, ease her in, see if I could find out more about her. I grab some joggers from my bag and throw them on. I'll pretend I'm not interested in seeing her reaction again when she sees me. At least this way I can hide my arousal a little better. I was cooking some bacon when I saw her coming down the stairs gingerly. Was she trying to avoid me or not wake me? Go pin her against a wall and see if she resists. Alex chimed in. Shut up, you're not helping. At least I'm trying to come up with ideas, unlike you, chicken. I catch her watching me as she's coming down the stairs. Good, take her, she wants uses. He smirks. Down boy, not now, behave. I break the silence, seeing her shyness is killing me. I need to think about something other than pinning her against the wall and making her mine, stick to the plan, find out about her. There's something about the way she talks, acts. I can sense her wolf, but she's not very strong. Is she trying to hide her from me? She knows I'm a wolf. Why would she feel like she needed to hide? Doesn't she want a mate? The thought makes my heart sink and my stomach drop. Did my mom sense something in her? Is that why she brought her here? She's always been the first to help out a down-on-their-luck wolf, but did she feel more with Lexi? Is that why she brought her to my cabin and not the pack house? I made a mental note to ask her later. The sorrow on Lexi's face as she tells me about meeting my mom last night breaks my heart. Alex whines in my ear, she needs us, we need to make her feel better, go to her. I'm next to her before I realize, holding her face to stop her looking down in shame. The electricity from touching her is immense, but right now she needs comfort. I can't help but stroke the side of her face, for comfort while needing to touch her more. I can feel the air thicken as the door knocks and in walks mom. Best timing as always. I quickly drop my hand and try to not look PD off. I love my mom, but by God I wish she wasn't here right now. The bear hug my mom gives me is enough to wash away the annoyance from the interruption. How I've missed her. I'm not really paying attention to her conversation with Lexi until Alex shouts, she can't take her away, make her stay here, with us. The thought of her leaving panics me. There's enough room here. I blurt. I see mom's reaction. What's up? She mind links me. She can't leave mom, she's my mate, but I don't know if she knows it. How can she not know? Is everything okay? I thought I sensed something last night but I didn't want her to panic and not come home with me. I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. I'll come by later and speak to you and Pops alone. My mom gets the hint and makes her excuses to leave. I don't know how much Lexi picked up on but she seems just as confused as before. I need to change the subject quickly. I ask her about any family. Surely someone should have been there for her to explain. Or is that the reason she's so shy, someone did something? No one will hurt her. Alex rages. I force him back as Lexi mentions her parents. Shit, I've put my foot in it here. I'm scrambling for something to say, she tries to leave again and I panic, I'm desperately trying to keep her here without scaring her away for good. I do such a good job I end up insulting her, what is wrong with me? Keep going Romeo, at this rate she'll be gone within the hour, and we'll die alone. Alex chirps in annoyed. You're not helping. If you're so good at this you suggest something. Be honest, ask her to stay. She's almost out the door as it is, what can we lose? Will you stay? Please? If you've not got somewhere to be, I mean, if you do I could drop you off first. I have nowhere I'm going, I was just going, but I can stay I guess. Finally. Success. Right, get out here before you put your foot in it again. We need some space, I need to think, I need to speak to mom. Good, I shouldn't be too long, 
make yourself at home and I'll come back and get you in a couple of hours. With that I race out, I need to speak to someone before I lose her for good and figure out how the hell I stop that from happening. Eight. As soon as the door closes behind me, I take a breath. This girl could drive me crazy and she has no idea. I start to walk over to the pack house looking for my mom and dad. Hopefully they'll be able to help. I find them both sitting in the kitchen, they both look up to me with smiles on their faces as I walk in. My mom comes over to give me a hug, my dad follows behind. I'm glad you're back. How did everything with the other pack alphas go? My dad asks. He's an unassuming man on the surface, he's tall, almost as tall as me, but slighter than me, his hair is thick, but where it was black it is now gray. My sharp blue eyes are thanks to him. He may be getting on a little more than he once was, but he's still as quick as a whippet and fierce, especially when his alpha comes out. It takes a lot to set him off, but if he does, you had best stand back. It was fine, nothing too much to report, I can fill you in later, I need to talk about something else, has mom filled you in? She's told me what you said this morning, but not much more. I don't really know much more. My mom starts. She came into the diner last night as I was about to close up. There was something about her, lost, alone, when I went over to her, I could tell she was struggling and I sensed her wolf. I was surprised when she didn't really acknowledge mine, but I thought maybe she was a rogue and being cautious. It was almost like she had no idea at all though. I couldn't leave her out alone that late, so I offered her a place to stay. Besides that and her name, I don't know anything more about her. Only that I knew I had to help her, I knew somehow coming here was where she was meant to be. Now I know why. She says as she winks at me. I roll my eyes at her but can't help laugh. I need to find out more but I don't want to scare her or push her into anything she's not comfortable with. What am I supposed to do? It's my dad that speaks up. All you can do is be there for her. Let her know you're there for support, no matter what, be patient, be honest, hopefully she'll come to see she can trust you, trust us, and we can go from there. My mom looks at my dad with so much love in her eyes, they'd been together since before their first shift, childhood sweethearts, before they knew they were mates. I can only hope one day Lexi and I are that lucky. I had better head back. I don't want to be gone too long. I'll see how she's feeling when I'm back. We'll come over in a few hours. Maybe if she gets a better understanding of our pack she'll feel more comfortable staying longer. As I turn to leave, my mom calls out. Don't worry sweetheart, we'll get there. She doesn't know it yet but she's a lucky girl to have you in her corner. Wish me luck. I call back. God, I hope I don't screw this up. Let me do it, I won't. I shove Alex back, now is not the time for act now think later. Lexi, I'm not really sure what to do with myself. I feel too anxious to just sit. I decide I'll take his advice, make myself at home. I clean up in the kitchen, try to find where everything belongs and take a tour around the house. It's deceptively bigger inside than it looks. It has four large bedrooms, another two bathrooms upstairs plus one downstairs. A TV room off the kitchen and what looks to be an office. I find another set of stairs down to another floor, here there is a home gym with equipment I've never seen before, let alone know how to use. A room that looks like a home cinema with a huge sofa big enough for four people to sleep on and what looks to be a games room. I head upstairs and see a large glass sliding door off the kitchen leading to the huge garden that's backed by the forest. As I step outside I'm hit with the smell of damp morning grass, trees and wild flowers. It's unbelievable and I instantly feel calm. I've always loved being outside, the freedom, the calm, the space. There's another swing out here too and I climb into it and lay back listening to the sounds of the trees moving, feel the air blowing on my skin, the heat of the sun on my face, the sound of nature going about its day uninterrupted. Lexi. I don't know how long I sat there for, something inside me starts to stir, a pull I can't describe and I open my eyes. Nate is leaning by the door just looking at me, this tall, gorgeous, god of man. His biceps huge as his arms are crossed over his chest and yet he has a calm in his eyes, a small smile on his mouth. His eyes look slightly darker, lustful, it makes my core tighten, my heart rate pick up. I tighten my thighs to try and stop the throbbing ache, his eyes catch the movement and it makes his eyes darken more. Like he knows the effect he's having on my body by just being there. His body seems to tense and I see it in his eyes this time. 
there's a flicker of something darker, are his eyes not fully blue? I haven't been close enough to see them. Does he have black in them too? Is that what I keep seeing? As suddenly as it was there, it's gone, he relaxes ever so slightly like he has let go of something he was holding back. He's the first to break the silence. I like the space, he says. He finally breaks eye contact with me by looking out into the garden. Me too. I can't take my eyes off him as I watch him looking out towards the forest. I've never really known why, I just like feeling free. I guess that's why I've never stayed anywhere very long, nowhere has ever felt like home. I say more absent-mindedly than in conversation. How do you feel here? Nate asks. Calm. I answer honestly. I don't know why, I don't know why I'm telling him either, but something about him makes me want to open up, not pretend anymore, just be me. He looks at me and smiles. Good, I wanted somewhere that felt lost, hidden but at the same time somewhere I felt I could run for miles. He shrugs. I like the smell of nature with the wood, the damp of the trees and grass after it's been raining. I blush a little at how homely his home feels to me. He smiles at me as we stay in silence enjoying the sounds of nature around us, the peace. He sighs heavily, shuffles on his feet as he looks at me a little guiltily. My mom wants me to bring you to the house to meet everyone. A flicker of annoyance crosses his face, like he isn't ready for this quiet to end. I feel it too. As much as I'd like to see Maggie, to thank her for everything she's done for me, I don't want to move from this spot. I don't want there to be more than just Nate and I, peaceful, homely, safe. I get up to walk into the house, and as I go to pass him he grabs my wrist gently, to hold me there a minute longer as I look into his eyes, I can feel electric waves spread up my arm, radiating from his touch and it catches me off guard. I look at him to see if he can feel it too and see the dark in his eyes. This time I'm close enough to see, it's like they've changed color, the electric blue is darker, mixed, there's a power radiating off him. I feel like there's a wildfire in my chest, a burning of desperation to release what's trapped inside, butterflies make my stomach feel like it's rolling over, the ache between my thighs gets harder to ignore, I feel like I can't breathe. I desperately need to feel more, his hands on me more, his fingers all over my skin, on me, in me, more, I need more of him. The overwhelming feeling of needing to possess this man I've not even known for 24 hours startles me. I've never been a strong or violent person, but I would be to protect him, to have him, to make him, mine. I hear it again like someone is screaming in my ear. I step back from the shock and I break the connection. The fog lifts ever so slightly. What is wrong with me? I've never felt something so powerful. I mean I'm no virgin, but the images running through my head of the things I would love to do to this man are enough to make anyone blush. I move quickly in the house to try and put some distance between us, I'm sure a man like that is used to women being attracted to him but his mom is helping me out, that crosses some sort of boundary doesn't it? Besides a man like that could get any women he wanted, the last person he ain't going to be interested in is some poor down on her luck homeless orphan. I start looking for some shoes, hoping to god he doesn't think I'm some psychopath who's lost her mind. Wondering what the hell his mom was playing at letting her loose in his house. I must look like such an embarrassment to him loosing all my senses when he is near. That's it. From now on I will pull myself together when he's near. Stop acting like a love-struck teenager, of worse a horny one and try to make some small resemblance to a normalish human. This man has no idea the reaction he has on me. I feel like he could ask me to give him the world and I would do everything in my power to give it to him. I feel Nate behind me before I see him, I turn to apologize to him for my reaction outside when suddenly his lips are on mine. His hands wrapping around my waist, pulling me closer to him. I pull back a little to look at him, breaking the kiss a little startled but not moving out of his arms. His eyes are the darkest blue of pure lust, his breathing heavy, his grip strong but not tight. Before I think or doubt myself I kiss him back. Who is this girl? I'm the one who runs and shies away, never the one to make a move, especially one so bold to a man I barely know. I kiss him deeper, his tongue searching for mine, looking for permission for more, I feel the release inside me, the pent-up energy, firing while easing the ache ever so slightly as I taste him. 
I thrust my hands in his hair and grip it tight to hold him against me, my chest to his closing any space between us as he backs me against the wall and lifts my legs so I can wrap them around his waist. He starts kissing my neck while his hand runs up my chest, his fingers grazing over my heart and news poking out of my shirt, making me moan into his mouth. I run my hands down his back to the hem of his shirt to lift it over his head. I need his skin, I need his warmth on mine, he rips my shirt and bra off me so our bodies can touch, my hips grinding against him with the friction, needing to feel more. I slide down him so I can get to his jeans and unbutton them while his fingers make short work of mine, before he lifts me back up and carries me over the large rug by the fireplace. His rough hands slide down my torso, the friction of my soft skin against his hands is electric as he slides his hand between my thighs. I groan into his mouth loudly as he slips his fingers inside me, teasing me, feeling the warmth, how it his touch has made me. I feel his cock harden more against my thigh as he circles his fingers inside me while his tongue flicks over my heart aching news, my hands digging into his back and hair as I writhe and moan beneath him. More I cry, I need more, I need you, in me, please, now. I beg, I don't even recognize the sound of my voice it's so full of arousal. Without hesitation, he lifts my hands above my head and pins them with his as his mouth finds mine and he slowly starts to slide his throbbing cock, soaked in his pre-cum inside me. I can feel him stretching me out as he inches in slowly, deeper and deeper, filling me until he's completely inside me. Fuck, you're so wet and tight. He groans as he's kissing, biting my neck. He growls into my mouth, which makes my core ache for more, I raise my hips up to take him deeper. Suddenly, out of nowhere, I feel something inside me explode. Mine! I growl. I feel my body change, a power, a strength coming over me, taking control, the voice in my head connecting to mine, louder than she's ever been. I wrap my leg over his hip to spin Nate over and get on top. He sits up, face to face, his eyes black, as I rock my hips back and forth, riding him harder, deeper. His hands on one breast, pulling my any as his mouth and tongue are teasing my other. I have lost all control over my senses, it's too much, all I can feel is Nate, every inch of me surrounded by him, needing only him, connected to only him. I bring his mouth back to mine as I can feel myself building, riding him harder, faster, I feel his cock harden inside me, stretching me to my limit. Slow down, you're going to make me come. Good. I grin at him. Fill me. Make me yours. I demand. It's enough, my words and my hips push him over the edge. It feels like a fire has been lit in the room around us as we're surrounded in heat and a light almost too bright for the eyes. As he's emptying his seed into me, thrusting with each part of his release, it's all I needed to hit my peak, I see X around him, the tightening of my walls milking him more as my whole body shakes around him. I am whole, I am complete, he is mine. He falls back onto the rug, pulling me with him and we both just lay there trying to catch our breath, Nate still inside me. I roll to his side so I can see him, he pulls me in tight, my leg draped over his thigh. I don't know where that came from, I've never been like that before. I say suddenly. I feel like I need to apologize for some reason. I don't know what came over me. Good. A huge grin on his face. I wouldn't want anyone else to know that side of you either, it's mine. He says as he leans in and kisses me. Deep but slower, gentle, almost lovingly. Like we've been together for years, not minutes. I frown a little as I think about what just happened. Where did that side of me come from? It's like I lost control, or I wasn't in control of my own body at times. I feel different, I still feel the strength, the power buzzing under my skin even while I lay here. Nate sees the look on my face. What's wrong, didn't you want that? He asks concerned. What? Oh my god, yes, of course, it's not that, I just, I don't know where it came from, I've never been like that, felt that power, that shift. I try to explain. What do you mean you've never felt it? It was just your wolf joining in, wasn't she? Why did she not enjoy it? Because I know we sure did. Wolf? What do you mean, wolf? Lexi, it's not uncommon when you let go like that for you and your wolf to both enjoy it at the same time, a shared experience. Like when you're talking to them through the day, it's not one or the other. 
It can be both. Just because we tend to have our human side more dominant doesn't mean they aren't dominant either, or that you can't both be forward together. My head feels like it's swimming. I understand the words that he's saying but I don't understand the meaning behind them. What wolf? What voice? Sharing what? He's talking about me Lexi. I jump up off Nate looking for the voice. Who said that? Who's here? Scrambling for a cover, a blanket, clothes, anything to cover my naked ass. Nate looks at me anxiously. Lexi, are you all right? Didn't you hear that? Who else is here? No one is here, dummy. It's in your head. I froze. Oh God, I really am crazy. You're not crazy, Lexi. I'm just finally free. Free? Free from what? Where? Why am I talking to myself? Nate's going to think I've escaped a mental hospital and is never going to speak to me again. No. He can't leave us. Lexi, you need to calm down. You need to talk to Nate. He will help you understand. But you need to tell him what's happening now. He can't hear me yet but he will. Trust me, tell him. If I tell him any of this he'll leave me right here and I'll never see him again. Just the thought of that is enough to bring tears to my eyes. Nate grabs my arms gently so I had to look at him directly. Lexi, please, talk to me, what's going on, you can trust me, I promise, please, I'm here. I take a deep breath, I need to talk to someone and it's not like I have anyone else to talk to. May as well be the man who's just FD my brains out. He had better know what he's getting into so he can run away. I keep hearing something, someone, talking to me, like they're here, but they're not here. I've no idea what's happening, other than clearly I've gone crazy, maybe I always have been. Maybe that's why I've always been on my own and it's just finally happened that I've lost it. Why did it have to happen now though? Why couldn't it have been before I had the fuck of my life or at least after I'd had some more of it? Because you're never going to look at me again. Not now you know how insane I am, I just sit there, staring at my hands, fidgeting nervously, waiting for Nate to say anything or run away. I don't dare look at him. I feel Nate pick me up and put me on his lap. I look up suddenly, confused as to why he's not run a mile. I see him smiling at me gently, he runs his hand down the side of my face, pushing my hair off my face and stroking me gently. He kisses me tenderly, holding our heads together before he moves back to look at me. You're not crazy, Lexi. I don't really know how to explain it. I've never had to explain something to someone I thought they already knew about or should have years ago. The voice is you, it's your wolf, you're a werewolf Lexi, as am I. So was my mother, so were your parents most likely, or at least one of them. You can hear a voice because when you're in your human form you can still talk to your wolf and vice versa, and you can also talk to other wolves too, once you mind link them, the wolves in your pack, or your mate. Like me. Mate? Nate looks nervous before he carries on. I guess humans refer to them as soulmates. For us, it's a little more. Binding, when you find your mate, it's instant, you can feel them, sense them, you need to claim them as yours, it's like everything you've ever been looking for, wanted, needed, is right there. You do anything to keep them safe, make them happy, their lives are your life, there is no one else for you, there never will be. Once a wolf has marked with their mate, it's binding, forever. Should one ever die, it could kill you with heartbreak. I sit there silently, unsure how to say what I want to say, where to start. You've come this far with him and he's still here. Just ask. Encourages my wolf. She's a little pushy, this. Wolf. So, am I. Your. Mate. Yes, Lexi. You're mine. Nate's eyes intensifying as he says those words, my stomach clenches in response, the wolf growling in my head. So that's why I feel like I do. How do you feel? Nate looks more nervous about my answer than I am to give it. I can feel myself blushing as I think about it. The wolf might be pushy, but she's right, he's still here. I might as well keep being honest. Like I've been wandering from town to town, house to house, job to job all my life. Always looking for something but not knowing what that was. It was you. Everything I've felt my life was missing, it was you. As soon as I saw you, something inside me felt whole, home. 
When you talked about being single, the thought of you being with anyone else made me feel a rage and sighed that I've never felt. A need to make you mine, forever, no one else to touch, look, have you but me, I'd do anything for you, I'd die to protect you, I'd. I don't have time to finish before Nate's lips come to mine. He crashes his lips hard into mine, desperately trying to close the small gap that was between us, growing instantly hard under my ass as we kiss. He lifts my hips up as if I weigh nothing and slams me back down onto his throbbing cock before I've even had time to breathe. I moan loudly, tilting my head back exposing my neck, he runs kisses over me frantically while pumping me harder and harder. I move my hips to keep up with his rhythm, one hand wrapped around my neck trying to control the pace and the other on my ass keeping me in place. I clench my core to make me tighter, I feel him hiss as he feels the effects on his C asterisk asterisk K as he pumps me harder and deeper. I need more. More Nate, I need more. I beg. I don't know how much more he can give, he's already in me as deep as he can. But I need more, I need all of him. Mark. He says between ragged breaths. What? Let me mark you, make you mine, no one else can have you once you are, you'll be mine, forever, mine. Yes. I gasped, not sure who wants it more at this point, me or my wolf. He doesn't hesitate, he wraps my hair in one hand as his other hand slides up my back holding me as close to his body as he can, as he slams into my already overstimulated pussy he bites down on my nape, hard. A burning sensation runs through my whole body, like I've been lit on fire. I can hear my wolf howling in my head. I swear I can hear another voice too. I'm so close to the edge I can barely breathe. I see X all around his huge cock, my whole body shaking with the orgasm ripping through me, tightening around him as he follows me pumping me with more of his seed as I feel it running down my legs. He kisses me, it feels like everywhere. I kiss his face, his neck. I've no idea what's just happened, but I feel like I'm on fire and I know I'm nowhere near done. I climb off him as I kiss down his chest, tease his nipples with my tongue, my teeth as I keep kissing down his stomach. I kiss his hip as he follows my lead and lays back. My mouth moves to his other hip. I stop and look up at him, his eyes dark from arousal. I wonder how you taste covered in me. I don't give him time to answer before I put him in my mouth and groan as I suck him in. He tastes so good, the more he moans, the more I'm aroused and the more I feel my heat running down my leg. I watch him as I take him to the back of my throat, hollow my cheeks to make it tighter as I slowly move back to his tip, flick my tongue over his edge and taste his preci asterisk M as he tilts his head back and moans. I do it again, slower, I feel him tensing as I speed up, hollowing my cheeks more to make it tighter. I know he's on the edge, I use my tongue to wrap around him, pushing him to the edge while he's at the back of my throat. I feel him filling me, drinking him in, taking every last drop he has to give me. You okay, down there? I giggle as he breathes deeply. He looks at me with a wicked grin. Damn, if I knew you could do that I would have started there. He sits up quickly, spins me over him and pins me to the floor, my turn he growls. Before I have a chance to react, his mouth is on me. I'm already so swollen from arousal, just the feel of his warm breath on me is almost enough to push me over the edge. He sucks at me gently, teasing me, as I run my hands through his hair, he slides his fingers inside me, rubbing me in just the right spot as his tongue continues its torturous assault. Look at me Lexi. I do as I'm told. God, how is this man so perfect? He continues his torture with his tongue and his fingers as I watch him, I can feel my whole body tensing. If he continues any longer I'm going to explode. Nate. God, please. He starts to suck harder, his fingers never relenting, he reaches his other hand up to my breast, squeezing and teasing my news. It's enough to push me to the edge. I come around Nate's head, shaking as he slows but doesn't stop, dragging out my OM until I can't even move let alone think. Holy shit. Nate comes up beside me, pulls me into his chest as I wrap my arms around him. How can this be real? Is he real? Lexi. Weren't we supposed to go meet your parents? I remember suddenly. Nate laughs. It's okay, they'll understand. You're not going to tell them why we didn't show are you? They'll know once they see you. What? How? I don't understand. The bite Lexi, you're marked, 
other wolves will be able to see that you're marked by your mate. They won't exactly know the details. But it's not hard to guess. Could you look any more smug? He laughs as he pulls me in closer and kisses me. With you, I'm never not going to be smug that you're mine. I don't know how long we lay there in silence just enjoying the calm, a calm I've never experienced in my life. You said others can hear the wolf? When you're in a pack you're linked, so you can talk to each other even when they're not there. Links are stronger with your mate as your connection to them is stronger. Nate explains. So I can talk to your wolf? I ask confused. You can meet him if you like. Although you already have once or twice. I have? I'm confused by this. Nate doesn't seem to have been any different even in the short time I've known him. The first night we met, it was him who called you my mate. It took a while for me to rein him back in. This morning when you spoke about being used by men, we didn't like hearing that, and in the garden. When I had your arm, I couldn't hold him back any longer. I couldn't hold back from you any longer. I had to take my chance. It turned out pretty good for me, don't you think? The joy radiating off Nate is infectious and I can't help but smile. So how do I know if it's you or him? It's normally always me, unless I shift, I'm still there, but the wolf has control when the wolf is out, he makes his appearances. If I'm suddenly a jackass, not me, most of the time, I have a tough job when he's annoyed keeping him at bay. Do I do that too? I asked, confused. I haven't seen you do it, I could feel your wolf, but it was like she was hidden, I could sense something but I couldn't connect, not until tonight. Wolves normally shift before their 16th birthday. I'm guessing that's something that's never happened to you? Shift? As in turn into a wolf? No, I've never. Turned. Is that normal? I'm starting to panic now. Is something wrong with me? I've never heard of it, but we can look into it. We have a DR on site and my parents have a collection of Old Testaments of our history. We'll figure it out, I promise. Nate tries to console, he is absently running his hand up and down my back, it's calming and I feel it wash over me. Do you do that too? Calm me? I can, just being in you calms me, your scent, touch, you're the other half to my whole, what isn't calming about being complete? I could almost cry with joy. I've never felt so at home, so loved, especially when I've only known someone for 24 hours. It's borderline insanity. How do I meet my wolf? Is she a person or just me? My wolf is called Alex, he's a pain in my ass, but he's also the other half of me, he's always just been there, so I'm not 100% sure how it's going to work for you as you've only found out today. I feel panicked as Nate tries to explain. Don't worry, I'm here, we'll figure this out together, but I think the two of you getting to know each other is priority one right now, we'll figure out the rest as we go. I lean in to kiss Nate. I can't believe how different my life feels in such a short space of time, how different I feel. It unnerves me it will all go as quickly as it came, but I can't help but want to keep a hold as tight as I can. Nate kisses me back, when a thought comes to me. Can I meet Alex? Now. You sure? It's been a lot of information in a short time? I'm sure, he's a part of you, I want to know all of you. I reply. Nate closes his eyes briefly, and when they open they're the deepest shade of chocolate brown, it's striking. Alex? He smiles at me, a smile that would make my knees go weak if I were standing. Before I know what's happening, his lips are on mine, parting my mouth to give his tongue access. I go with it. Hi to you too. I giggle in between breaths. I feel his erection growing. It makes me ache knowing how turned on he is. Nate slash Alex pins my arms above my head as he rolls on top of me, using his knees to spread my legs, his tongue relentlessly licking at my N asterisk S, hardening them to the brink of painful. I can't help but lay there motionless and moaning. My hips are thrusting up, looking for release, I feel Alex smile against my chest, then he's in me, stretching me, filling me. I almost come from the motion alone. I cry out for more, he's relentless, his tongue, my breasts, he's pinned both my hands above my head with one of his. So while his mouth is sucking and teasing my any, his hand is working and teasing my other, he's slamming into me again and again, before I know it Nate slash Alex, who knows at this point, flips me over. I'm on my hands and knees, 
I arch my back to push my ass up higher and Alex slams into me again. We've lost no rhythm with the change of position, he knows what he's doing, how he wants me, my fingers gripping onto the rug for support, harder and harder. More. I beg, he slaps my ass. Again. Both his hands snake under my arms and pull my torso up, my back is to his chest, his mouth is on my neck, kissing, biting, while his arms have me pinned to him and his hands are pulling my news, harder, massaging my breasts. His cock never lets up slamming into me. It's so tight held up against him like this, trying to take him all in, each thrust goes deeper, pushes me closer. Please, Alex, please, Nate, oh God. I beg him, harder, I feel him tense inside me. Come for me baby. He whispers in my ear and he slams into me once more and pulls on my news at the same time. It's enough to break me. I come all over his cock, screaming his name as the orgasm rips through me. I groan against my neck as I feel him filling me with his seed, still pumping every drop into me and teasing my NS, making my fall over the edge last longer and longer, until finally he releases me, kissing my back as we both lay down exhausted. I turn to face him, kiss him, he closes his eyes, when he opens them again the piercing blue of my nade is back. Xie. I wake up as the sun begins to shine through the windows, I can hear the birds outside. Nate's gentle, heavy breathing next to me, his arms wrapped around me tightly. So it wasn't all some wonderful dream? It feels too good to be real. The thought of losing this, losing Nate, starts to make me panic a little. We're marked now, they won't leave us. My wolf startles me, but her words are comforting. I'm not really sure how this new side of me works, but I guess I've got a large learning curve ahead of me. First things first, I need to wriggle out of Nate's arms and pee so badly. I try to move slowly so as not to wake him, he pulls me closer. I'm awake. He mumbles. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to wake you. He kisses me gently. You didn't, my stomach did. He opens his eyes and smiles at me, I can't help but giggle. There's no better sound to wake up to. Well maybe one other. Nate intensifies his kiss, rubbing his thumb over my news hardening them, making me moan. There it is. He smiles as his nips along my neck. That's cheating. I get up suddenly. Where are you going? Get back here. I grab his shirt off the floor and pull it on as I head off to the bathroom. Don't move. I'll be back. I head back to Nate to find him in the kitchen making coffee but naked. Now there is a sight I could happily see every morning. I stand shamelessly drinking him in. Good, because I'm more than happy to make that a reality. Nate swoops in, wrapping his arms around me. Is this real? I'm scared I'm going to wake up and it's going to break my heart, I confess. Nate pulls my hand to the nape of my neck, his mark. It's real, we're real, forever. My mark, a safety I've never felt before. You said last night, mates wolves can communicate? How does that work? We're connected in a more intimate way than the others in the pack. The connection is stronger, it's more personal, so the connection can be quicker, more emotional, we're tied to each other, I can feel your emotions, sense how you need me, and you can with me. Nate explains. Here, close your eyes, what do you feel? He steps away from me. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be looking for. Just relax. What do you feel? What do you hear? I try to concentrate. Mate. My wolf. I can hear her. She's quiet. Stick with that. Can you hear anyone else? I try to quiet everything around me. There is a hint of someone else. Deeper. Louder. I'm here, Lexi. Did you miss me? Nate, is that you? Guess again, gorgeouses. I hear the teasing tone. Alex. Ding, ding, we have a winner, want to see your prize? I open my eyes and see Nate smirking. He shrugs at me. What can I say? He's cocky. He laughs. I could hear him, I could hear Alex. The more you do, the more you tune into me, us, the easier it will get, like everything it just takes practice, then you'll go back to wishing you couldn't hear his ass. Nate kisses me as he laughs. Can you hear my wolf? I don't even know what she's called. How do I bring her out? She must be there. I guess a little like with Alex. Practice? We can speak to my mom and dad, 
see if they have any ideas. Hold on, let me see if I can hear her. Nate closes his eyes, his brow furrowed as he concentrates. I want to reach up and kiss his face. How is he so perfect? Concentrate. He's trying to find me, you're distracting him. Scolds my wolf. You're feeling extra bossy today, I see. I argue back. Nate opens his eyes. She's feisty, isn't she? You heard her. I heard you both. He laughs. She's strong but has been held back somehow, we like her. He shrugs. They heard me. My wolf exclaims. I guess so, what's the big deal? We asked them to? No one has ever heard me, you barely hear me. It's not supposed to be like this, something has been wrong but maybe they can help. I'm confused by her reaction. What's wrong? Nate asks. My wolf, she's confused, how can you hear her, no one else has before? I can barely hear her, she says it's not right. You can barely hear her? What all the time or recently? I guess I've never really heard her, it was more a now and again, or if I was in trouble to be fair. I just thought it was my subconscious, I never thought it was anything, anyone other than just me, like my inner voice, does that make sense? I try to explain. That's unusual for sure, as wolves, we don't usually shift until puberty, 15, 16 onwards. We're all different, but the wolves are always present. They just get louder as we get older and once we shift after the first time, the connection is solidified, it's constant. The fact you can hardly hear her, I've never heard anything like it. Nate seems as confused as I must look. Finally. Someone understands me. My wolf roars with glee. I've been here all along. I've tried, I've screamed, I've cried, I've lost my voice trying to get you to hear me, I'm trapped. I've always been, we never shifted, it never came, something went wrong. She's right. Nate begins. That's not the normal. Wait, he can hear me. Yes, we've connected, I can hear you more and more, you sound louder too, almost like you've been stood in the background and now you're stood up front. Last night, when we were together, I felt something, like a snap, like a rubber band breaking. Suddenly I felt strong, I felt powerful, I felt complete, now my wolf, that still sounds so real to say out loud. It's like I can feel her more, it's not just a voice, but a part of me. I look down a little embarrassed by my admission when I feel Nate's fingers under my chin lifting my face to look at him. Don't ever be embarrassed around me, there is nothing you can say, do, or feel that I don't want to know about, I'm here for you, for everything, no matter what. I'm on my tiptoes kissing him hard before I even register what I'm doing. His tongue pushes back with mine, mixing the two. I have never felt the urgency for more. The more I have of him, the more he touches me, the more I need. I need his hands on me, his skin to mine, I need to break any space, no matter how small, and be closer. Nate's hands slip down my back and grab my ass, lifting me up, I wrap my legs around his waist as he sits me on the counter. He slams into me and I groan into his mouth. My hands fist into his hair to pull him tighter to me, my tongue doesn't let up. He pumps me harder and deeper with each stroke of his cock I can feel myself building and getting tighter. My back arches as I lean my head back, his mouth goes to my exposed neck, trailing kisses and nips with his teeth. Nate. I say breathlessly. Don't stop, I'm so close. My pussy tightens around him with each thrust. Fuck. He growls. Let go baby. Let go baby. He pounds me faster now, harder, my hands dig into his back for support. I can feel myself building, his hand relentless on my any as his mouth moves down to my mark, he kisses it. It feels so intense to feel his mouth on my mark, claiming me, he nips at me and it's all I needed to come, I shake around him. He keeps pounding me deeper, dragging out my OM, then he follows me, filling me, I feel us mixing together, running down my leg. He stands with his head resting against my neck as I trail my hand up and down his back, kissing his head, his neck. He kisses me, gently. I open my eyes, to drink in this man, my man. I love you Lexi. I feel like I could cry with happiness. I've never felt this way about anyone in my life. I love you Nate.
His smile makes me feel weak at how beautiful this man is inside and out and how much every part of me belongs to him. I'm finally home. Nate. I watch Lexi as she pulls on some jeans after our shower, the jeans fitting to the curb of her ass perfectly, I feel my cock twitch. Down boy. As much as I'd love nothing more than to bend her over right now and rip those jeans off I really want her to meet my parents properly and show the rest of the pack their new Luna. I can still taste her on my lips from our shower. How am I ever going to get enough of her? We're not, we're not supposed to, a lifetime isn't going to be long enough with mate. Alex pipes up, for once, I agree with him. I don't know if Lexi has any idea what having her in my life means, I would do anything for her, I would die to protect her. I walk behind her and wrap my arms around her, she tilts her head back so I can reach her mouth and kiss her, the kiss is heavy, I feel myself stretching in my jeans again, she giggles at the feeling of me in her back. God I could listen to you laugh all day. She gives me the biggest grin as she turns in my arms so we're face to face, her hand caresses the side of my face. I've always heard of the love of a wolf and his mate. Seen it in my parents and countless others, but to finally be experiencing it myself is my own dream come true. I tap her ass as I sigh. As much as I'd love nothing more than to rip those jeans off again, I really want to show you off to my parents and the rest of the pack. What if they don't like me? She asks. Are you serious? How can they not? You're one of a kind. Besides, you're their Luna now. They'll love you just as much as I do. I proclaim proud of her. What's wrong? Erm nothing. I'm fine. Should we get going? She turns to start to walk out the room, I grab her hand and pull her back into my arms. Hold up, what's up? I'm not letting her off that easy. What makes you think anything is wrong? You nibble your bottom lip when you're nervous, you were doing it yesterday when you were telling me about your wolf. Her cheeks start to redden a little. Oh, I didn't realize. Well, it's just, I don't know what to do, a pack is like your family right? Yeah, we're all mine linked. We're basically one big extended odd family unit. I explain. It's just, I've never had one before. What a pack! I ask. No, a family. I stand there silent, probably longer than I should. Lexi looks at her feet and starts shuffling her hands nervously. I'm sorry. She says quietly. You've nothing to be sorry for. I'm just trying to compose myself. It breaks my heart to know that, to hear you say that. I want the best life for you, I want to give you everything you've never had, a family, a home, I will give you the world Lexi. Come on. I say taking her hand in mine and interlocking our fingers. Let's go and meet the rest of your family. We head over to my parents, I feel Lexi tense a little as we get closer, I bring our entwined hands together and kiss her hand. I feel her relax as I do, Alex puffs his chest out proud. We do that for mate, we calm her. Times, 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 Lexi, times, times, times. I'm nervous as we walk towards Nate's parents' house. He kisses my hand and I instantly feel calmer. I love that he can do that for me, make me feel safe, protected. As we walk into the house, we head into the kitchen and I see Maggie. She smiles at me and I see her subtly glance down and see my mark and she smiles wider, walks over to me and gives me a hug. I'm caught a little off guard, but I hug her back one armed. I don't let go of Nate's hand, my lifeline. I'm so happy to see you honey, come in, can I get you a drink, some food? Mom don't fuss. Nate says with a grin. She pours me a sweet tea, it's delicious. This is my dad Michael. Nate introduces. He comes in and gives me a bear hug too. We're all family now. He grins. It's lovely to meet you. You too, you have a lovely home. Why thank you, we've always had an open door policy. I know not all alphas are so open but our pack is a family. Family is always welcome. Nate looks exactly like his dad, just a younger version, they're both over six feet, strongly built, they both have the same striking blue eyes. Pack house? I ask a little confused, I've had a lot of new words around me the last couple of days. I'm struggling to keep up. A pack house is like our headquarters, it's where we hold our meetings, have our parties, family meals, hold our history, ledgers, it's just home. Nate says. It's your home now too. He leans in and kisses me. 
I feel the kiss deepen, I almost forget his parents are there when I pull away embarrassed. Ledgers? What are those? They hold our history, our prophecies, our rules, not just for the pack but for our kind, each pack has variations or slight differences, but the main core is shared by all wolves. Do you think there would be anything in them that would help me? Explain me? I ask, hopeful but cautious at the same time. It's something your mother and I have already started to look into. Michael starts. Not a lot, but we've been trying to see if there is any mention of wolves being trapped or inaccessible. From the little that Nate has told us, it would help if you didn't mind telling us a little more about yourself, your past. Maggie jumps in. Don't feel like you have to say anything you're not comfortable with, honey. We can look without it, or wait until you're ready, and if you never are, we don't have to look at all, you're home now, that's the important part. She gives me a loving motherly smile. I'd like to know more, I think. I don't really know anything about myself, or at least what seems to be a huge part of myself, and I'd like to know why, if I can. I've learnt more these last few days with Nate than I have almost my entire life. I look over to Nate as he squeezes my hand, he leans in and kisses my forehead. I didn't realize I was holding myself so tightly until I relax at his touch. I smile up at him as I carry on. I don't really have much to tell. I don't really have much to tell. I've never known who my parents are. I was told they died when I was young, I've been in care as long as I can remember, bounced from foster home to group homes. When I was 16, I started staying in shelters or on the streets if I couldn't get a bed. Shelters weren't always the safest place to be for women. I worked where I could, tried to save some money so I could start paying for a place of my own. I've never really had a home, or stayed in the same place for long. I've wandered from town to town. I've always felt like I was looking for something. I was hitchhiking the night I came into the diner. I was planning on camping out until you saved me Maggie. I look over to her trying to hold back the tears I suddenly feel. If you hadn't helped me, offered me a place to stay, I would have never found Nate. I didn't know all this time. All my searching that he was who I was looking for, Nate was my home. Nate's arms wrap around me instantly, holding me tight as he gently kisses me. He brushes the tear running down my cheek that I hadn't felt fall. I turn back to Maggie and Michael, see them look at each other like they're having some unspoken conversation. They must be mind-linking. Michael asks. Your wolf, what about her? Maggie sensed her the night you met, but it wasn't very strong. Strong? I ask confused. All wolves are able to recognize other wolves, honey, even if they are not a member of their pack, I guess more so when they are not a member of their pack. We're predators by nature. We have hunting instincts with our wolves, heightened senses, when wolves are in a pack with another or rogues. We're naturally on the defensive to ensure our own protection until we know the situation we're in. The night you came into the diner, initially I didn't sense your wolf, it wasn't until I came to your table I got a hint of her, which is a first for me, I almost had to dig deeper into my own senses and let my wolf surface to confirm you really were one of us and not human. I didn't know I had a wolf, it wasn't until yesterday Nate told me about her, I just thought it was my subconscious, she only really appeared if I was in danger or about to be, like a gut feel rather than a person. It's only since I've been with Nate I've understood we're a part of the same person but separate. Michael looks at me while he rubs his hands over his jaw deep in thought. Was there a specific moment you felt her more, or has she just been gradually getting stronger? He asks, I try and think back, I feel my cheeks heat up as I realize the moment I felt my connection with her complete was when Nate and I first had sex. I can't tell his parents that. Go on. My wolf goads. My wolf goads. They can see the mark. You didn't turn up last night. What do you think they think we've been doing, knitting? I feel Nate laugh at the side of me as I spin my head to look at him, pleading with him not to say anything out loud. I'm guessing from his reaction he heard my wolf too. He winks at me as he answers for me. During the mark, it's hard to explain, almost like I could feel restraints being lifted off her. She felt stronger, in control, whole I guess. He shrugs. 
That's an interesting concept. Almost like your wolf was freed when you connected with your mate. Have you ever shifted? Michael asks. Erm, um, no. Nate and I talked about that last night. Um, interesting to have your wolf but still not have shifted. It's never been heard of, at least not that I know of. It's as much a part of puberty for wolves as everything else. We have no control on the when, how, where, we just know it will. Don't worry, we will keep looking, put some feelers out, see what we can find. There's a warmth in the way Michael talks. I see where Nate gets it from. Well, I don't know about everyone else, but all this detective work has made me hungry. Anyone for some food? Maggie asks, and, as if on cue, Nate's stomach growls loud enough to fill the room. I laugh as suddenly, so does mine. I will take that a yes, then. Maggie laughs as she heads over to the fridge and starts prepping some lunch. Nate, after lunch, I take Lexi on a walk around the grounds. I want her to see our grounds, to feel like this is her home, show her the life I want to give her, help her forget her past. Hearing her talk about never having a home, feeling unsafe, not belonging or knowing who she is broke my heart. Alex whimpered the whole time. Mate needs us is. I know but we have to take it steady, she needs to feel like this is her home, we can't force it on her, it's all new, she's had a lot to take in the last few days, it would be enough to make anyone want to run for the hills. She can't leave us. Alex shouts. She's our mate, she's our home now. I know, we'll get there. We have the rest of our lives to show her she's safe with us. We spend the rest of the afternoon walking through the woods, following the river down back towards home. I was thinking we'd leave meeting the rest of the pack for today, if that's okay with you? I feel like this afternoon was a lot as it is with just my mom and dad, unless you want to meet them? I ask. I don't want to push her away, but I don't want to rush her either. If you don't think they'd mind? I feel kind of drained, my head is buzzing with unanswered questions I've never even really thought of before today. Of course I don't mind. I have an idea, I need to nip back to the main house and sort out some pack meetings. Why don't we head home? You could take a nice long bath and then I'll get us some food and we can have a quiet night in? Lexi stops as she turns to me, reaching up on her tiptoes to put her arms around my neck. That sounds perfect. She says as she kisses me. My arms wrap her in tight as they slide down her back to her perfect ass. Fuck, I forgot about how perfect your ass fills these jeans. She laughs as she pulls back to look at me. You know I've tried your bath. I think it's big enough for more than just me. I kiss her, my tongue desperate for hers before she's finished talking. I know we're not far from the house so I pick her up as she wraps her legs around my waist, we crash through the doors of the back of the house as I start ripping her shirt over her head, her fingers pulling at mine, pulling at my belt to free my aching cock straining against the denim of my jeans. I slide my fingers down her jeans, I can feel how warm and wet she is already, she moans against my mouth as my fingers start circling her swollen cunt, I slip a finger inside and feel her tighten as I do, her hand grabs my cock and starts pumping up and down with no mercy, her fingers teasing the tip. Lexi jumps off the counter and is on her knees before I even register she's moved. Her mouth takes me in fast and I have to grab the table for support. Fuck. I cry out. She slowly takes me all in, her tongue whipping around me as she goes, she works her way up and down, achingly slow, her tongue licking at the pre-cum milking me for more as she takes me deeper to the back of her throat and holds me there as she hollows her cheeks and sucks harder. Fuck baby, just like that. I watch her as she uses her hand to pump me while her mouth continues its torture of sucking me slowly and harder. She looks up at me with a grin as she pulls me out of her mouth, her tongue licks up the length of my cock and then back down, she lets her hand work me too as her mouth moves down and she sucks each of my balls one at a time. Fuck my mouth Nate. I don't need to be asked twice. I see the look of arousal in her eyes, I grab her hair around my hand as I start to fuck her mouth. Her nails dig into me as she watches, she mind links me. Harder baby. She's going to throw me over the edge. I start to go harder, making her gag as I hit the back of her throat. More. She cries, as she slides her hands down to her cunt and starts to move her hand with the rhythm of my cock fag her mouth. It's so hot I almost come then just watching her, her moans against my cock as she builds to her moan make me harder. I'm close, fill me baby, please, let me taste you. She sucks harder as she moans on my cock and I can't hold back any longer. I fill her mouth with my seed, as she swallows me down and shakes around me, cog with me. 
I don't give her a chance to catch her breath before I pick her up and throw her back onto the table. My mouth goes straight to her swollen cunt as I start sucking, licking her, my finger slides inside her. Feel how wet she is for me, she arches her back as she moans, her legs tightening at the side of my head. Fuck Nate, yes, right there, don't stop. I slide another two fingers inside her, relentlessly pumping her while my tongue circles her cunt, I can feel her tighten against my fingers as I find her sweet spot, her hands in my hair gripping me in place. Tell me what you want Lexi! I growl against her pussy. You, Nate, please. She begs. My other hand reaches up to her hard ninny, twisting and pulling as my fingers fuck her in unison with my tongue. Come for my Lexi. Now, let go baby. I pull her nipple harder as I nip her cunt and pound my fingers into her G-spot all at the same time as I feel her let go and fall over the edge crying out my name as she does. I pick her up and carry her upstairs as she nestles her head into my neck. I kiss the top of her head as I sit her on our bed and go and run her bath. I help her out of the rest of her clothes and once the bath is done carry her to it. Believe me, after that, I really wish I was joining you. I promise I won't be long, but I really need to run back to the pack house for an hour. I kiss her, already missing her touch as I go to head out. I love you Nate. I turn around to see her. I love you more Lexi. This is going to be the longest hour of our life. Alex quips. No shit, when we come home, it's time I show her just what I can do again. Get in line buddy, I'm not even close to my fill of her. I smirk to myself as I grab my shirt on my way out and throwing it on smell Lexi on it, my Lexi. Lexi. I enjoy the warm water of the bath on my aching muscles so much I almost fall asleep. I've done more cardio with Nate these last 48 hours than I've done in my life. It's only when I start to feel cold I grab for the towel and get out. I walk over to the bed and decide to grab one of Nate's shirts to wear. I climb into bed as I think about the conversation we had today with his parents. Something about my wolf being freed stuck with me but I can't put my finger on it. Like a memory just out of reach or a feeling of deja vu. I'm trapped, I'm behind bars, in a cage, I'm screaming, begging, someone hear me, someone help me, it's me, but it's not me, I'm thrashing, I need release, please, I beg. Lexi! Lexi! Wake up, it's okay, I'm here, you're safe, Lexi! I jump up, straight into Nate's arms, I'm sweating, gasping for breath, my heart feels like it's going to beat out of my chest, he wipes my hair off my face, kissing my forehead. You're okay, I'm here, I've got you, you're safe. He says as he wraps his arms around me. I feel calmer, I can breathe. I must have fallen asleep. I feel dazed, confused, only the feel of Nate's arms around me and his steady breathing make me feel grounded. That must have been some nightmare, are you okay? He asks while pulling me back to inspect me and see for his own eyes if I'm okay. It didn't feel like a dream, it felt real, like I was desperately crying for help but no one could hear me, no one knew where I was. There was no help coming, there was never going to be any help coming. I feel the sob rip through me, I can't stop the tears, the loneliness, the sheer terror of feeling completely abandoned. It wasn't you Lexi, it's me, I'm sorry I put you through that, I didn't mean to, I guess it just somehow spilled over into you. It's my wolf. She feels like a child crouched hidden in the deepest corner of myself, too afraid to look up. I look at Nate to see if he heard her too. He slowly nods his head to acknowledge he did. What spilt over? Are you okay? I feel broken, for the first time since finding out I had a wolf, I wish someone could hold her too. Suddenly, everything feels fuzzy, like looking through a dirty window. I don't understand what's happening and yet I don't feel afraid, it's only when Nate speaks I feel I can focus my attention. Hi. He smiles. Are you okay? His thumb strokes along the side of my face, I know the sensation of his touch and yet I can't feel it, it's more like the memory of his touch. It's alright, is this the first time you've been out? What is he talking about? Out where? We haven't moved. Yes. Wait. That's my voice, but that isn't my voice. That's not me. It clicks into place like a final puzzle piece slotting in to finish the picture. My wolf, she's out, like when Alex came out. I'm here, but I'm not here, we're there, but we're not. This has never happened before. 
times 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 violet times times times. I'm confused. My touch feels intense. The smells, the sights, everything is so defined. I'm not sure what's happening. Nate's here. He's talking. I should answer. Ness, is that my voice? It sounds like my voice, but doesn't. I don't understand. It's all right. I can imagine it's all a little confusing for you both right now. Is Lexi okay? Confused, but she's okay. I answer and sure how I'm so certain about that, but nothing else that's happening right now. What's your name? I sob. I don't mean to. It escaped before I realize I'm crying. I put my hands over my mouth to try and stop them. I'm sorry. It's just... No one has asked me that before. I've been alone for such a long time, I don't know how any of this is even possible. Bye, Violet. Nice to meet you, Violet. Nate's grin is infectious. I smile back at him. Was it your nightmare? The feeling of being trapped. Screaming comes flooding back. My breathing hitches. Nate reaches for me and starts to run his hand down my back trying to soothe me. It's all right. We've got you. We're not going to let anything happen to you. Either of you. I promise. Nate kisses me lightly. I instantly feel calma. I don't know how long we sit in silence, just holding each other, Nate running his hand over my back calming me. I've never been heard. I've been with Lexi for as long as I can remember, every foster home, every birthday, every milestone, always in the background, watching, waiting, but never heard or seen. She's never been able to feel me. Sometimes, if something really bad was happening or I could sense we were in real trouble, she would be able to hear me a little. Everything else has always been. Silence. I've been alone. Trapped. I don't know why. I've always known something was wrong. We were missing something. Broken? I didn't know if it was something that we could fix, if Lexi was ever going to know I was there. The tears roll down my face while at the same time I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders, finally being able to speak aloud the years and years of silence. We'll figure this out, Violet. Everything you've both been through, it won't be like that anymore. We can hear you. We know you're there, feel you more and more with every hour. We won't let you feel alone anymore. I kiss Nate. I'm so overwhelmed with his kindness, his love, our mate, he was the missing piece to putting us together. As I open my eyes, I realize I am back. Lexi is back to herself, but this time I don't feel afraid or alone. The nightmare ends now. Our mate will protect us. We're safe with him. I am no longer alone. Times, 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 Lexi, times, times, times. As I open my eyes, I'm back. I can see Nate, feel him. I kiss him. Harder. He pulls me back enough to look at my face. Lexi. He smiles, kissing me back gently, a loving hello. Are you all right? I'm fine, I was a little confused, I don't remember falling asleep, I have no idea how we did that, but I feel, calm. I'm glad I got to meet Violet. Don't worry, the first time is always a little strange, you'll get used to it, it will become as easy as changing direction with a little practice. Do you think I would be able to help your parents search for answers? I ask Nate, hoping it's not stepping on anyone's toes. Of course. He says. What's ours is yours and four heads are better than one. After tonight, I'm more determined than ever to find out what happened to me. To us. We'll find answers, Lexi, one way or another, we'll find something. Would it be okay if you taught me a little more about my wolf, how to speak to her more, change like that? Anything. We'll get you both united, I promise. We lay on the bed, too exhausted mentally for anything more than to be wrapped up safe in each other's arms, trying not to think of what we might uncover and whether I'm going to like whatever it might be. I know there is a chance we'll find nothing, we may never know, but something in me feels like this is only the start of my firsts. The beginning of things to come. The idea both excites me and unnerves me, but I know with Nate by my side it's time to find out who I really am. Lexi. The smell of coffee and bacon wake me up. I'm not sure what time it is, I must have dozed off after Nate and I's pre-dawn session. I didn't feel him get out of bed. 
It had been a restless night of bad dreams, unanswered questions, and s asterisk x, although that part was enough to always make any disturbed sleep into a good night. I grab a shower and throw on some jeans and a black tank as I head downstairs and see Nate in the kitchen plating up breakfast. I walk over to him as he hands me a coffee. Good morning. I say as I kiss him. Good morning to you too. He smiles as he slaps my ass as I walk to grab a seat. There's a knock at the door. Come in, Jackson. I look at Nate. He grins. Mine link. He shrugs as if it's as simple as that and not some weird supernatural texting. Jackson is tall, maybe six feet two inches, slightly smaller than Nate. He's well built, blonde hair, and brown eyes. He walks over to Nate, slaps his back. About time you came back to work. He jokes. I knew if I stayed away any longer I'd have more of your mess to clean up than normal. Nate laughs back, he comes round and puts his arm around my waist. Jackson this is my mate Lexi. Lexi, this is my beta Jackson. Lovely to meet you. Pleasure is all mine Luna. Jackson says with a nod of his head and a huge smile. I look at Nate when I ask. I know this is supposed to be known but what is a beta? Alphas run packs, it's bloodline, you're born an alpha. It's not really a choice, although some can reject it and some can challenge a reigning alpha for status and, if they win, would take over. Betas are their second in command, same authority, born into the role but still under the command of an alpha, who is under the command of no one, other than the general wolf law and the moon goddess. Jackson here is my second in command, but my number one pain in the ass. I trust him with my life, next to you and my parents, he's my most trusted friend and he's family. Oh man, here I am away to give you stick for being soft and falling in love and you go say something like that. I'm a sucker for well-worded, you're the best. Jackson laughs as he winks at me. I laugh at him as Nate rolls his eyes. I think that means she likes me and that shows me how smart she is, she's out of your league. He jokes. Oh I knew that the night I met her, why do you think I had to keep her hidden until I could trick her into falling for me? Nate says as he bends in for a kiss. Are you two always like this? I ask laughing. It's like watching brothers trying to one-up each other, it's love, respect and infectious fun. Nate may be older and alpha, but he's always been trying to keep up with my charm and secretly jealous of my good looks. Jackson says as he dodges a flying fist to the arm from Nate. What's a moon goddess? It's Jackson who answers. She's our deity, our reason for existence. Legend has it that she was the first wolf. She is the beginning for us all, our mother. She is the bestower of our bloodline, our gifts, our traditions and beliefs. When the time comes, the moon goddess grants you your wolf. Some have spoken to her or been put on paths to find their destinies, the paths that she has carved for us all. So the moon goddess gives us our wolves? Why didn't she give me mine? Can we ask her? I don't know, baby. I don't know why Violet was kept from you, how it's even possible, but we'll find out. We can't ask her. She comes to us, or select few, but maybe we'll get lucky with some of our transcripts of our history, see if there is any mention of wolves being held back from their humans. Nate explains. Do you think your parents would mind if I started looking today? I'm eager to get a start on this. I don't know what I'm looking for or if I will find anything, but not doing anything isn't going to get me anywhere either. Nate, Jackson, and I all walk over to the pack house. We go to the archive room, which is essentially a huge library in the basement of the house. He kisses me as he and Jackson leave to sort out some pack meetings he's fallen behind on since I came along. I spend all day looking through books with so many tales and history my head feels like it could explode. There is so much information here, it's all relevant to the person I am, to my wolf, to Nate, I know none of it, I have no idea about anything. I see a lot of mentions of the moon goddess, a family tree of sorts that details the pack leaders for all packs and their regions, names of wolves called rogues, they look to be solo wolves with no pack. The connection of people, wolves, my kind is vast. One of the names of the packs catches my eye, the silver moon pack. I don't know what it is about the names that draw my attention. King Regant Nicoli William Alexander Stone married Princess Sophia Aurelia Elizabeth Stone. 
They had four children, son, Prince Regent Edward William Henry Stone, daughter, Princess Charlotte Marie Catherine Stone, daughter Princess Amelia Evelyn Grace, son, Prince Louis and Robert James Stone. Eldest son, Edward Lucian Henry Stone married Cassandra Helen Steeple. One son, no name, deceased and one daughter, no name, deceased. I look through dozens of books until my eyes are burning. I've no idea how long I've been down here when Nate comes in. He comes behind me rubbing my shoulders, I tilt my head back as he kisses me. I've come to rescue you. You are my hero. I laugh. Let's head upstairs and grab some food. Then I'm calling an early night where clothes are prohibited and cardio is compulsory. Nate's eyes darken as he looks at me, my core tightens as I feel my arousal just from the way he looks at me. You know. Nate says as he lowers his mouth to mine and backs me into the door. I can smell you when you're aroused. I feel my cheeks start to redden at the realization of what he's said, he starts nipping at my nape, running kisses along my jawline, nipping my bottom lip. It turns me on smelling how I turn you on so easily. I kiss him, deep, forcing my tongue in his mouth, ignoring the introvert in me screaming at my brave actions. I love this man, I know he loves me and hearing him speak about how turned on he is, knowing it's because of me lights something inside of me. I pull back from the kiss, both of us breathing heavy, his eyes dark from arousal, his C asterisk asterisk K clearly stretching his jeans. I smirk seeing my reaction on him. Let's go get that food before I take the jeans off because once they're off, I don't plan on letting you put anything back on. I walk out the door and look back behind me as Nate looks shocked and laughs as he walks to catch up to me. Now that is a promise. He swoops in and kisses me as he takes my hand and we head upstairs. Michael and Maggie are both in the kitchen as we walk in. Perfect timing food is ready. My stomach growls in appreciation at the smell of one of Maggie's home-cooked meals. How did you get on today, honey? Find anything you recognize. Maggie asks as she plates up some food. I have seen more words, terms and stories today about things I never even thought possible, who knew fairy tales were real. I laugh. I did see some family trees of other packs that looked interesting. I never realized how many families there would be. I feel like next I'm going to read about dragons and giants and witches. You're going to tell me about duels and spells and curses. I say laughing. Everyone is quiet. I look around the room. Did I say something wrong? You don't think that could be real, do you? Nate is looking at his dad. I don't know, I mean there have been rumors in the past, but that's all they ever were, rumors. It's not like there has ever been any crossover of species or alliances to make it more than tales to scare than of truth. I'm not following, I've definitely missed something here, what are we talking about? I ask the room. Curses. Nate says solemnly, there are stories of curses, generations of families punished for ancestors' past behavior. So that's what could have happened to me? Punished for my family's past, a family I don't even know about? Maybe, it's just speculation. Who would do something like that? Who could even do something like that? Witches? Maggie says. Witches are a wolf's mortal enemy. There is very little about witches in our history because we stay away from those creatures at all costs. Only pain, heartache and death comes from anything to do when witches and wolves mix. The room suddenly feels very somber, like we're about to go down a path not many have traveled and it will not end well. Times, 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 Nate, times, times, times. I've been trying desperately for months to pull all the contacts I have to see if anyone has ever heard of any links between witches and wolves being trapped in their human form. I found nothing, no one has ever heard anything like it and the more I can't find anything on it, the more my gut tells me this is exactly what has happened to Lexi. I think we need to change tactics. Have we received any more information about Lexi's parents or found any of her files from when she was in foster care? The system, no, it's all generic and not really much of a surprise, but no one cared. She didn't make much fuss, was pushed from home to home until she was old enough to no longer be a concern of the state. Jackson and I have been working on this tirelessly alongside all our PAC duties. Between the two of us we have a wide net of contacts in all areas and there is no one else I trust with potential sensitive information about my mate. 
I miss her smell, let's go find her, we need some stress relief anyway, she'll be more than happy to help. Alex pipes up, helpful as always. Not now, believe me, there is nothing I'd like more than to spend a few hours wrapped up in Lexi, but we both know we need to figure this out. Alex goes back to sulking and the silent treatment. He's only happy these days if Lexi is within touching distance. It's our duty to protect her, how do you think we can do that if she isn't near us to protect her? This is protecting her too, trying to figure out what we need to protect her from at least. Ever since the night witches were mentioned as a possibility for the cause of Lexi's restrictions with her wolf, something has made Alex and I on high alert. Whether it's instinct or our mate bond, not being near her or knowing she is protected by us only brings anxiety and distraction. Thankfully, she's really taken to being a wolf now that she seems more connected to Violet, so we can sense her a lot easier and mind linking to her is easy. Lexi has come such a long way since the first day she came here. Not in just her confidence with her wolf, learning something so huge about yourself and taking it all in was in itself humbling to watch, but as a person, she has grown in confidence, believes in herself the way I always have, can see in herself just how amazing she truly is, and every day I fall more and more in love with her. Nate, you might want to see this. What is it? Jackson hesitates, it's not like him to want to hold back from me, he tells me everything, even if sometimes I don't want to know. I just got an email from my contact about the death certificates for Lexi's parents. I got their names from the intake paperwork when Lexi was first taken by the social after her parents died. The stamp from the coroner's office was fake. It was a good fake if it wasn't for the fact that my contact was actively involved in the signing off of the new reports, I doubt we would have even noticed. Anyway, I asked them to do some digging. Turns out there were two sets of autopsy reports. The public information was faked. It states Lily and Andrew Jones' cause of death was due to a car accident. Hit some ice and the car turned over. All injuries were in line with a fatal car crash. No red flags. However, the forged coroner's office seal raised some questions, so I asked him to find the name of the coroner and see if their personal records matched up to publicly released ones. Everyone keeps copies, even if they're not supposed to. They found another set of records, hidden away in an encrypted file on their personal computer. Do I even want to know how you found this out and if it's even legal? I ask. No, the less you know, the better. Anyway, the report on his computer has one other set of records for the same date, male and female, but the cause of death was not a car crash and their names were not Lily and Andrew Jones. My head is spinning at this point. So what was the cause of death? Their throats were slit. We're both silent for a moment. How am I supposed to tell Lexi this, any of it? So, we can rule out accidental and suicidal. I say as a pit forms in my stomach. Looks that way. I don't know what happened, but whatever Lexi's parents were involved in or whoever they were involved with, it was enough to not only get them killed, but for someone to go to a lot of trouble to cover it up and change the narrative to make it look accidental. I get up and pace the room trying to take it all in and think about how I'm supposed to tell Lexi all of this. I need to go and find Lexi. The sooner she knows, the sooner she can start to process it all. Thanks for all your help, Jackson. I wish it was better news, but it's a start, at least, I guess. He shrugs at me. I'll keep working here, see if we can uncover anything else that may have been hidden or changed in the report now we have a lead and name to follow. I'll keep working here, see if we can uncover anything else that may have been hidden or changed in the report now we have a lead and name to follow. Thanks, appreciate it. I nod as I grab my phone to leave. Good luck Nate, just know we're all here for her too. I head to the door. What were their names, by the way? You said they'd be altered. Edward and Cassandra Stone. Times, 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 Lexi, times, times, times. Hey, handsome. I say to Nate as he walks in. I hope you're hungry. Food is heating in the oven. I'd love to take credit and say your mate is one hell of a cook, but I borrowed it from your mom. I say laughing. With the promise she is going to have to teach me how to cook if I'm ever going to keep up with your appetite and the packs as their Luna. Nate walks over to me and pulls me close to him, holding me tight. Nate? I pull back enough to put my hands on his face as I look at him. What's wrong? Are you okay? Are your mom and dad okay? 
Is it something to do with Jackson? Or the pack? He kisses me gently, lingers, like he doesn't want to stop, but knows he has to. You're scaring me, what's wrong? Talk to me, is Alex Oklahoma? I'm sorry. He says quietly. Jackson and I, we got some information today. I know once I say it, it's going to open something up. I don't know if we're ready for it, but I don't want you to be in the dark any longer than you already have been. He takes my hand and leads me to the sofa. I'm practically sat on his lap. It's like he needs to feel me close to him. As much he knows whatever he has to say I will need him close to me too. He tells me everything that he and Jackson found out today. About my parents, the autopsy reports, their real cause of death, that someone has had this covered up and changed their names. Are you okay? He asks me. I'm curled up on his lap at this point as he strokes my hair. Honestly, I don't know. I mean, I never knew them. I didn't know anything about them. Even their names don't sound familiar to me. To know though, that it wasn't some tragic accident, that someone did this to them, even worse, tried to hide it. Makes it feel more sinister I guess, more tragic than just the orphaned girl. I'm sorry baby, I can't even imagine how you feel right now, I feel useless, I don't know what to say, do, to help, if I can even help, even though I know nothing really will. He pulls me up so I'm sat across his lap. You've done more than anyone ever has for me. You've given me a home, a family, you've completed me, you've given me a life I could never have even imagined. Finding out about my parents isn't comforting, but at least something has been found out. For over 20 years I had no idea, no one would have known even this much if it wasn't for you and Jackson. We go to bed. My stomach is too in knots for the meal I had cooking and I feel too emotionally exhausted to even start to think about the implications of what all of this might mean. I just need Nate, I need to be wrapped up in him, his touch, his smell, his safety and sleep. We're laid in bed, my head on his chest as his hands are running up and down my back. What do we do next? I ask. I don't really know, I guess see if we can get some more information on the coroner. That's the only person we know as of yet who has any connection to this. We'll figure this out. Together. He says as he kisses the top of my head. I fall asleep with thoughts of what trouble my parents had got themselves into that got them killed and it covered up and why did I survive? Times 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 Lexi times times times. I sometimes can't believe how much my life has changed in such a short space of time. I've never had a home, a family, safety, security. Now, I have more than I could have ever imagined. I have a home, a family, a pack, safety, love and, above all else, Nate. A love I never even knew was possible. He is my soul, the other half of me, my whole world, my light, my moon, my mate. I also never knew how easily I could fit into a pack. I never knew I was a wolf, let alone being a mate to an alpha makes me Luna. The responsibilities aren't anywhere near what Nate has to deal with, but I love them. Taking care of my family, my home, my life. I'm driving home from picking up groceries. I'm no cook, yet, but Maggie is teaching me. I love it, I love learning and I love the time with Maggie. She is the mother I never had, the mother I never knew I really needed or desperately wanted. To know my parents were taken from me was hard to process when Nate told me what he and Jackson had found. It had always been sad that my parents had died before I even knew them. It was almost easier to have never known them when I thought it was due to a car crash. It's been harder to know I have never had the chance to know them because someone took that from me, murdered them, slit their throats, covered it up and made it look accidental. All of this is running through my head when I notice the car behind me is rather close. If you're going to overtake just overtake already. I mutter to myself. I slow down to see if that will encourage them. They slow down too. I speed up, they speed up too. My heart starts racing. I'm probably just being paranoid. I decide to turn off, take a slighter longer route home. I turn left, and so did the car. Okay. Now I am starting to panic. What am I supposed to do? Just go home, go to mate, he will protect us. Violet says. You're right. Just drive home to Nate. Pretend we've not noticed, 
Keep calm. I wonder how close we have to be to Mindlink. Would it even work this far away? We're only about 20 minutes from home. Try it. Violet says. Violet says. If it doesn't work it doesn't, but we have to try. I try to keep my driving the same, not too fast, not too slow. Nate! Nate! Can you hear me? I'm driving home. I think someone is following me. I could be being paranoid. Nate! Is this even working? My heart feels like it's going to burst out of my chest. Don't worry, we're almost home. Violet tries to reassure me, but it doesn't help much. It's starting to get dark. I'm thrown forward as the car behind me slams into the back of my car. Fuck. It hits me again. It hits me again. I try to slam on the brakes to slow down, keep control. Before I can even think the car is at the side of mine, slamming into the side of my car now. I try desperately to avoid the car, but there is nowhere for me to go. I try speeding up to get away from them. The car slams into me again, this time it sends me flying over the edge of the road. I start rolling off the road, screaming, I'm being thrown around the car as it rolls. Everything goes black. Times 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 Nate times times times. I've been increasing the training sessions with the pack since we found out about Lexi's parents. The type of people who have the ability to cover up murder are the type I need to make sure we are prepared to protect against. I don't want anyone in my pack to get hurt because they weren't prepared and I need to make sure Lexi is protected at all costs. Jackson and I have been working harder than most to make sure we train every wolf in one-on-one -on -one combat. I've also reached out to some of the other packs that we have treaties with and closer relationships for support should we need it. A pack is only as strong as the members behind them. I've just finished a morning combat session with my top fighting team when my dad walks over, he may technically be retired from Alpha, but he's still as quick and strong as even the best of us when needed. Have you thought any more to what your mother said yesterday? He asks, handing me some water. I have. I think she's right. I just wanted to make sure it was special. Everything Lexi deserves, the timing just never seems right. I think now is the perfect time. When there is turmoil, the bringing together of packs, mates, family, is what unites us all toward the future we want. You're right. Would it take a lot to get it organized? I think your mother has had it planned since the morning you told her Lexi was your mate. I laugh, sounds just like mom. I'll speak to Lexi tonight, see if she feels ready. The pack needs its Luna. The Luna ceremony should be a celebration of Lexi, there is always time for that. The full moon is coming in two weeks. It will be the perfect time if Lexi is up for it. Lexi has slid right into place within the pack. If you didn't know any different you'd think that she'd grown up with us, been here as long as the rest of us. She and mom have been working hard to split the Luna duties. I am Alpha, but as I haven't had a mate or Luna before now, my mom kept up the duty as the reigning Luna until she could pass it over. At the full moon we will celebrate all that as Lexi. Initiate her into the pack officially, mark her as Luna. We're already marked, so that is something we don't need to worry about. Tradition was the marking would happen the night of the Luna ceremony. The idea of marking your mate in front of your pack seems so impersonal. Marking Lexi was one of the most personal, emotional, and sexual experiences of my life. Doing that with an audience. I'm glad that aspect of tradition has changed with the times. The rest of the ceremony is more promises made in front of the pack and a celebratory meal, with lots of drinking. One thing wolves are good at our parties. I head to the pack house. I have a few calls to make to other alphas to extend the invitation. Alphas don't usually attend non-pack ceremonies, but it's courtesy to send an invite. Sometimes younger wolves come from other packs to see the ceremony if an alpha is already mated, so they can see our tradition. Hey mom. I say as she walks in while I'm rummaging in the fridge for some food. Second shelf on the left, there is a plate of food for you. She says without even looking. I grab it and walk over to her, kiss her on the head. What would I do without you? You have your Luna to thank for that one, she likes to make sure you're well looked after. She smiles warmly at the thought. I know my mom loves Lexi like a daughter, 
that in itself makes me swell with love and pride for her. My dad and Jackson walk in just as I'm about to head out when I suddenly feel like I can't move as a wash of panic comes over me. I get a pit of anxiety in my stomach, Alex howls and is pacing to be let out. Nate. Jackson says, eyeing me from across the room. Something is wrong. What do you mean? He stands still, sniffing the air along with mom and dad. I don't smell anyone new. My dad says. Mom says. I grab the chair near me for support. It's Lexi, something's wrong. It's Lexi, something's wrong. I feel like I could faint from the fear of my mate being in trouble. I'm using all the strength. I have to keep Alex back until I can figure out what is going on. What's happened? What's happened? What do you know? Jackson is by my side in a second, ready as always to have my back. I don't know, I can't explain it, I just know she's in danger. Alex. Can you sense her? What's happening? I say desperately. Listen. Can you hear her? It's so faint, but I hear her voice, she's there. He's right, it's so quiet it's almost impossible to hear. Nate. I can hear the panic in her voice, my knuckles go white gripping the chair, not so much in support of myself now, but to stop me from ripping into Alex and mindlessly running off to find her. Followed, Nate, coming home. I can hear her, I can't really make it out. I try to explain to everyone who are all stood silently waiting for my order of what to do next. Hear her, how, where is she? My dad asks. I've no idea, it's so faint, she's calling me, she said followed. Home? She went to the grocery store for supplies for supper. My mom says. Do you think she's being followed? She'd be on her way home by now, I'm sure of it. Jackson, grab the car, let's head that way. See if we can spot her. Dad, check the grounds, see if she's in the immediate area. Mom, will you try calling her, see if she picks up, hold up here, in case she comes back? I bark out orders. I'm out the door heading to my truck before anyone agrees. My heart is racing at the thought of Lexi being in trouble and we're not there to protect her. Alex is pacing up and down ready to attack at a second's notice. I know there will be no holding him back if she's in trouble and I don't plan on making him, that's the only reason he's letting me stay in control. Jackson is in the car as I speed off up the road. The grocery store isn't far. If mom thinks she was on her way home, we would have to travel the same route. Roll your windows down, see if we can pick up her scent in case she's gone off the main road. Jackson just nods as he follows command. We're barely ten minutes up the road when I feel like I've been punched in the stomach. Alex howls inside me. I see smoke down the embankment, I don't even need to see the car to know it's Lexi. I almost rip the car door off scrambling to get out. Jackson is right at my side, we race down to her car, it's on its roof. Lexi! Lexi! Baby, are you alright? Talk to me! I see her surrounded by the crushed car, she's unconscious. Jackson and I work together to pull the door open to get her out. There is blood everywhere. She's not moving. We manage to get her out of the car. I pick her up as carefully as I can, I don't know what injury she might have. Dad! Get the DR! Now! Lexi's car has been run off the road, she's hurt, bad. We'll be there in five minutes. I mind link the pack, so they all know what's happening. I need them to start patrolling the perimeter in case whoever did this tries to come back. We race back to the car as Jackson drives us back to the pack house hospital while I cradle Lexi. She's alive, but barely. Lexi. Baby. Please. Open your eyes. Talk to me. Can you hear me? Please baby, hold on. I've got you. You're safe now. I'm so sorry. I love you. The DR and his team are waiting as we get to the pack hospital. They take her from me and rush her away. Nate, wait. My dad holds me back. My dad holds me back. Let them work. You being there will only distract them. We want all their attention on Lexi, okay? I know he's right, but I can't speak. I just stand there. Praying. Please, Lexi, I can't lose you. You're my world. Please, baby, hear me. Stay strong. 
I'm here, we're waiting for you. I mind link her, I've no idea if she can hear me. Whoever did this to her, I'm going to rip their throat out. I roar. First, baby, please survive, for me. Times 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 Lexi times times times. Lexi. Baby. Please. Wake up. Squeeze my hand. Anything. Nate pleads. I can hear Nate, I can feel him, I want to let him know I can hear him, but I can't open my eyes, I can't move. My body feels so heavy. I try to stay awake, but I'm so tired, everything goes black. You need to wake up soon Lexi, mom has made so much food if you don't wake up soon she'll start forcing you. He says. I wish more than anything I could let him know I hear him. I'm here, everything is going black again. I don't know how many times I slip in and out of consciousness, every time I hear Nate, feel him, sense him. No matter how desperately I wish to wake I can't stay awake long enough to tell him I'm awake. I hear Nate sobbing at the side of me. Please baby, just stay with me okay, I'm here, I love you. I force my eyes open, I feel like I can't breathe. Lexi, baby, I'm here, can I get some help in here, she's waking up. Don't worry baby. The doctor will be here in a minute. Just listen to me. I'm here. A DR walks in with a nurse. It's okay, Lexi. I'm Dr. Young. I'm just going to take the breathing tube out. Just breathe slowly. This is not going to be comfortable. I gag as she takes the tube out of my throat. Nate. I try to say, my voice is a whisper. My throat feels like it is on fire. Don't speak just yet, baby. It's okay. I'm here. I can't stop the tears from falling, I never thought I'd see him, I just want him to hold me and not let go. He wipes the tears away and strokes my hair, he kisses my forehead. I thought I'd lost you Lexi. I can hear the tears in his voice. I tilt my head up to find his mouth, he kisses me, I just need to feel him, feel this is real. My Nate, my home, I feel calmer already. The doctor runs some tests, gives me some water, gives me some time to come round. What happened? I ask. What do you remember? Nate asks. Erm, not much. I'd been to the store. I was coming home. There was someone behind me. They hit me. Then they were at the side of me. The car was flying, rolling. Everything went black. You were very lucky, Luna. You have a severe concussion, three broken ribs, a sprained wrist and multiple bruises. You had some swelling to your liver and spleen. We thought we might have to remove it but the swelling has come down enough we're comfortable to say that it isn't looking necessary. You're going to be sore for a while but you will make a full recovery. Thank you. I whisper. I'll leave you to it. I'll be back to check on you soon, Luna, Alpha. She nods as she leaves. I look at Nate, it's only now I really see him. He looks exhausted, his eyes have dark circles, he has stubble of his face, his hair is wild. He looks like he's been sleeping in the same clothes for days. The sight of him like that because of me makes me cry again. He wipes the tears as they run down my cheeks. Nate, I'm so sorry. I start. SSSSHHH baby, you've nothing to be sorry for. My God I thought I'd lost you. I love you so much Lexi. I'm so sorry I wasn't there to protect you. He puts his head to mine. I just breathe him in, I need him close, I tilt my head up to kiss him. I love you. I love you too Lexi, this last week has been the worst week of my life. I just want to go home. Soon baby, let the doctor make sure you're okay and I'll take you home. I sigh with relief, going home with Nate is what will make me better. Nate, lay next to me. I don't want to hurt you Lexi. Please. I almost sob. I just need you. He hesitates for a second, looking at me, the wires I'm surrounded by, I can see the internal fight within him. He looks at me, sighs, giving in. I sigh in relief when he starts to climb in. He moves the wires and I try to move to let him in, he helps me as a wince, he wraps his arms around me, I put my head into his chest, breathe him in. I fall asleep instantly, soundly. The doctor keeps me under observations for another four days before she finally bows down to pressure and agrees to let me go home, under strict orders to stay on bed rest for another week with light duties for two weeks after. At this point I'll agree to anything to sleep in my own bed. Of course Nate doesn't let me walk home, even though we can see the house from here. 
As soon as we're home and it's the just the two of us I sigh in relief. I didn't realize I was holding so much in but I couldn't be happier to finally be home. I look at Nate who's just looking at me. What's wrong? Nothing. It's just. To hear you call here home. With me. It means everything to me Lexi. You are my home Nate. You will always be my home. I kiss him. As he kisses me back I try to deepen the kiss. I feel the need for Nate to be touching me building in my stomach. He's been so gentle with me like I might break. I just need to feel him. He pulls back and looks at me, his eyes dark with arousal. There is nothing more on this earth that I would love to do than to take you to bed and forget about these past few weeks by getting lost in you. I sense a butt coming. I say as I start sulking. He laughs before he says. But, I have literally stepped through the door of brining you home from hospital. Exactly. They let me go. I'm all better. Off to bed we go. Nate can't help but laugh at my eagerness. At least let me check with the DR before anything. Fine. But don't come crying to me if my hands wander while you're sleeping, they have a mind of their own. He gives me a quick kiss before he puts me on the sofa with a blanket. Almost as if he doesn't put me down quick enough I will attack him. Which is exactly how I plan to fill my days until I finally get my fill of Nate, I chuckle to myself at my own plan. I must have fallen asleep on the sofa. I wake feeling Nate lifting me and carrying me upstairs. I kiss the side of his neck as I run my hands through his hair. When we get to the bedroom he places me down on the bed, I get up and head to the bathroom to wash up. When I come out I grab one of Nate's shirts to sleep in. He walks back into the room as I climb into bed, he climbs in with me. I lay with my head on his chest, my arm over him, his arms wrapped around me, I try to trace my fingers down his stomach. Every time I get close to his hips he laughs and pulls my hand up to his mouth to kiss. Sleep like C. He scolds. I'd sleep better with some exercise. He turns me so I'm facing away from him, he's at my back his arms wrapped around me pinning me, I wiggle my ass into his crotch, he laughs as he kisses my neck. I love you. I hear his breathing getting heavier and know he must be exhausted, I'll give him tonight, it doesn't take long before I fall asleep soon after. This routine with Nate goes on for a few more weeks. Trying to tease him to give in and his stubbornness holding himself back from me. One night, I suddenly wake up, I'm shaking uncontrollably, crying hysterically, Nate comes running into the room. I'm here baby, I just went for some water, I'm here, it's okay. Was it the accident? He asks concerned. I kiss him, hard, my hands in his hair. He pulls back carefully. Lexi. Nate. Please. I sob. I need you, I feel so far from you, please, I need you back. I cry into his chest. Nate lifts my head, he kisses each cheek where my tears have fallen. He kisses me gently, his arms wrapped around my waist, pulling me closer to him, I kiss him back, but follow his lead. His kiss, his touch it feels different, like he's scared to touch me. Nate, I won't break. I promise, if it's too much, I'll tell you, we'll stop. He stops, putting his head to mine. It's not that Lexi, I thought I'd lost you. Seeing you in that car, covered in blood, the DR's working on you, laid in that bed with all those machines. It killed me seeing you like that, the thought of losing you, you're my world Lexi, my moon and stars. It's my turn to kiss away his tears this time. I'm so sorry Nate. I love you so much. I kiss him, climb onto his lap. I feel him hard underneath me, I'm wet instantly, I need to feel him so much. He takes off my shirt, lays me down, his kisses are everywhere, I kiss every inch of his body I can reach. Every inch of him I have missed. My Nate. Every touch, every kiss makes me moan for more, God I've missed him. Are you sure? He asks. Yes, please Nate, I don't want to be apart from you anymore. I say as I stroke the side of his face. I miss you, I miss us, I just want you back. He kisses me, his tongue searching for mine, I take it deeper, his hands slide over to my nipples, already so hard from arousal. Nate's tongue comes to them, sucking them, biting them gently, he could make me come just like this if he carries on. He slides inside me, achingly slow, stretching me inch by inch. God, you feel so good, I've missed you. 
I moan. My hips move to match his rhythm, it's gentler than before, but it feels more intimate than we ever have. A need in both of us to reconnect, feel we are one once again. My nails dig into his shoulders as my legs tighten around his hips, my tongue desperate to taste more of his mouth. Moaning against him with every thrust. I can feel myself tightening already, Nate moans as he feels me too. Fuck Lexi, you're going to make me come. Good, I'm close Nate, don't stop, fill me please baby. We speed up a little but still go gently, the overwhelming need to have all our senses consumed with each other, forgetting everything but each other, here, now. Nate kisses down my neck as I kiss down his. Nate's mouth on my mark, he nips it as he sends me over the edge, spiraling down with the O asterisk M as he follows me, filling me. God I've missed him. We lay there catching our breathe, kissing, touching, I feel whole again. Now I'm home. Nate laughs as he wraps his arms around me and I nestle into him. He feels lighter, I can feel some of the tension has left him as much as it has left me. Times 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 Nate times times times. Seeing Lexi in that car wreck I think my heart stopped. Move now. Alex roared. Save mate. He was seconds away from shifting but I ran into action and held him back. Holding her in my arms while she was unconscious and bleeding broke me. I have never felt more helpless standing back and watching the DRs working on her. Sitting at her bedside, I have never begged, pleaded, prayed and hoped more in my life that she would wake up. I could feel myself breaking, just the idea of losing her was enough to rip my soul in two. Alex had been non-stop howling in agony the whole time Lexi has been unconscious, that in itself has been migraine-inducing. I hadn't left her side, I hadn't slept, maybe an hour or so in the chair when I could no longer keep my eyes open, I hadn't showered, shaved, checked on any on my alpha duties. All I could do was watch Lexi's chest rise and fall, at least she was still breathing. When she first opened her eyes everything I felt I'd been desperately trying to hold on to just spilt out, she was alive, she was awake, a thundering rage ripped through me, I will kill whoever did this to her and I will enjoy every second of it. Nate. She sounded so weak. I'm here baby, I'm here, I'm so sorry Lexi, I love you so much. Her concussion had been bad, the doctor had said there was swelling on the brain, if it didn't go down with the medicine they would need to operate. Thankfully she seemed to be stronger than we expected, that is Lexi all over, always surprising people with how tough she truly is. How long have I been here? A week, longest week of my life. I try to joke, but I see how she looks at me she knows it was bad. Have you been here the whole time? Of course I couldn't leave you. I'm a little surprised she would even need to ask. Don't take this the wrong way. She hesitates. But you stink. She smirks at me and I see the light of my Lexi in her eyes as she does. She must be feeling a little better. You really need a shower. She runs her hands along my chin. And a shave, although. She hesitates her hand near my mouth as she runs her fingers along the stubble on my face. I quite like the feel of my skin. I see her eyes darken as I catch on to her thoughts, my cock instantly twitches to feel her, feel all of, have her against my skin and feel for myself she's safe. You have got to be joking. I growl at her playfully as I nip her fingers. There's not a chance in high water I'm touching you until the doctor says so. Then maybe a couple weeks after that just to be sure. She pouts at my response like a child being told no to candy. She's adorable. I mean I'm sure the doctor would allow some physical movement, must be good for recovery, you can do the heavy lifting. Her eyes glint at me with mischief, I know she knows what she's doing to me, she doesn't care, I love this carefree side of her, even after everything she's been through. Lexi! If you don't stop I'll have to take you over my knee. Her eyes shoot up to mine full of arousal, I can smell it on her. Now you're talking. Now you're talking. Fuck, my dick is hard just talking to her, how am I supposed to keep my hands off her? I feel annoyance settling in at the idea of having to keep away from her, I've been able to touch her almost every day since the day we met. This was going to be a new torture. When she begs me to climb into bed with here everything in me is screaming I shouldn't, it isn't the biggest bed and I'm not exactly small but the need to be near her, feel her in my arms gets the better of me. Thank God she falls asleep quickly, feeling her next to me is making my dick so hard it's painful but I know if she sees she'll be relentless in doing something about her and she honestly looks like she might break. I couldn't be more grateful to take her home. I might finally get some sleep.
I have to admit I have been sleeping better with her tucked up in my arms when she's made me get in that tiny hospital bed with her, knowing she is safe, but I'm still so worried I'll move and hurt her. Trying to resist Lexi when she's set her mind on something is taking more willpower than even I knew I had. Boy is she stubborn when she wants something, especially when that something is me and she is doing everything in her power to break me. Every move, every look, the slightest touch is brimming with SL tension and it's killing me. I don't think my dick has not been hard since the second I carried her home. Cold showers were working for a while, beating the crap out of the punching bag in the gym until my muscles ache so bad I could barely lift my arms but getting into bed with her, turning her away from me every night as her ass wiggles up into my crotch I'm going to burst. I spent most of the nights patrolling the house, whoever did this to Lexi is still out there and I still have no idea who was behind it. I'm PD at Jackson for not being able to find out who it might be but more at myself for not knowing where to even start to look. Not that I could sleep even if I did know, she wears less and less to bed and her ass is always looking for my dick even when she's sleeping. I love when she wears my shirts to bed with nothing underneath, I ache at the thought of her up in bed alone. I hear her crying, screaming, I race into the house my heart in my throat, taking two steps at a time. I burst into the room and grab her into my arms and she starts sobbing. I'm here baby, I'm here, it's okay, I've got you. She kisses me and I forget myself, the taste of her lips, I've missed her so much, her smell, her taste, even with the salt of her tears mixed in. Please. Please. Nate. She begs. I snap, I can't hold back anymore, this is more than just not wanting to hurt her, I need to feel her with me again, as much as she needs it. I ease into her slowly, giving her time to adjust, holding my weight off her. Fuck baby, I've missed you. I kiss her mouth, her neck, my mark, I need to taste every inch of her. Make her mine again. Wash away everything of the last few weeks with just the taste of us. I'm so close so fast, like a damn teenager again. Nate. I love how she moans my name, moans into my mouth I feel it in my core, the need for filling her will never be enough. A lifetime with her will never be enough. She tightens around me, I'm not going to hold out much longer, I ease in and out of her hard but slow, keeping the rhythm strong but gentle, keeping the weight off her. She's still so bruised, I don't want to hurt her, she clenches around me again. Let go baby, I'm right with you. As she falls over the edge, tightening around me as she clitoris, I let go, fill her up, the feel of my seed filling her, dripping out of her milking her clitoris for more. I didn't hurt you did I? She kisses me, runs her hands over my face, through my hair, a smile on her lips as a tear falls down her cheek. Fuck I hurt you. I roll off her quickly, trying to see where she's in pain. Nate. Stop. What? Where are you hurt? Come back here now. She demands. Shit she's PD, I go back to her, take her in my arms gingerly as she comes back to my face. I'm confused. My brows furrowed, totally lost in what happened and why she's so mad. I'm not hurt you big fool. She looks at me, kisses me again, she laughs at the confusion on my face. I'm in love. She kisses me again, deeper, I relax into her, I pull back to see her eyes, the brightest, lightest green, sparkling. I love you Lexi, more than I've ever loved anyone in my life, my Lexi, my mate, my Luna. Her eyes darken with arousal. Her hand slides down my stomach and grabs my cock making me instantly hard, it's been weeks, I can't blame him. Show me. She challenges, as her hand slowly strokes me up and down. I won't break Nate, I'm stronger than you think. I know she's right, she has always been stronger than I give her credit for. Promise me you'll tell me to stop if it's too much? Alex is biting at my heels to take her, to release into her the weeks of fear and anger I've been trying to hold back since the accident. I promise you. Stop holding back Nate, I need you, I need to get lost in you, you need me too. My mouth is on her furiously, she's right, I need her, I'm wound up so tight if I don't loose myself in her soon I'm going to snap. I slam into her, pinning her arms above her head as she arches her back for me to give me her BS so I can take them in my mouth. I suck them hard, my tongue whipping over her news, tugging them with my teeth as I pound into her harder and harder, her legs wrapped my hips, her eyes are so dark with arousal I could come just looking at her. She's not close enough, I need to be in her deeper, I flip her over, slam into her as I slap her ass, she moans as I do, I pull her arms back, until her back is to my chest. Put my hand around her throat while my mouth nips at her jaw, her nape. I am so deep in her, she can't move, she's pinned against me, 
All she can do is take everything I give her. Mate, I'm going to come. She cries, I don't slow, I don't let up, I go harder. Let go Lexi, I want to feel you dripping down me. Her orgasm rips through her, I feel her legs shaking around my cock but I don't stop. I pull her arms up so they're around my neck, in my hair, one hand on her perfectly pert tits, rubbing her nose between my fingers, my other hand I slide down her stomach until I'm rubbing her swollen sensitive cunt. Fuck mate. Mine. You're mine Lexi. Yes. She cries. Every inch of you is mine, your mind, your body, your soul, is mine. My hands don't relent on her as I pound her aching pussy, I feel her tightening again. You have my mark, my scent, feel me on your body even when we're not touching, feel me filling inside you, stretching you, you were made for me. Let go Lexi, now. I pet as I let go, fill her with every ounce of me I've held back, she screams as she comes around me, shaking violently, I hold her close to me as we both empty into each other. We both fall onto the bed, but I stay inside her, neither of us are wiling to break the smallest physical connection. Well holy fuck mate, how pent up have you actually been? She laughs at me. I just kiss her, I haven't got my senses back to talk yet. You are the only release I have baby, you're the only one that can make me feel calm. She looks at me like she's staring into my soul. There is nothing that I can't share with her. There is nothing I could hide from her, not that I would ever want to, she can see parts of me I don't think even I know. I jump off the bed, she looks at me like I've lost my mind. Where are you going? I look for my jeans I tossed on the floor before, grab the box out of the pocket and climb back on the bed. Lexi sits there, watching me, her hair all messed up from sex, her mouth a little swollen from mine, her eyes sparkling. My mark sat there on her nape. Lexi, the night you snuck into my bed and tried to scare the life out of me I would have never imagined the timid, sexy as hell, feisty women would have been everything I had spent my entire life looking for. When I thought I'd lost you I felt my soul rip in two. That day was not supposed to have ended that way, but it doesn't matter now, all that matters is that I have you. You're here and I never want that to change. Lexi, I love you more than I have words to say, you bear my mark, you're my mate, my wolf, my moon, my soul. I open the box as she gasps looking down and back to me as tears swell in her eyes. Lexi, will you marry me? Times 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 Lexi times times times. I laid there and watched Nate jump off the bed laughing. What are you doing? He's rummaging around the floor in his clothes looking for something. He looks ridiculous and erotic all at the same time with his naked ass in the air. God this man is a specimen. It wouldn't matter how many times in my life I could have him it would never be enough, I'd always want more, more of him. He jumps back on the bed with a nervous smile on his face holding something in his hand. I get totally lost in this beautiful man, his beautiful eyes bearing his soul to me I don't even notice him open the box. I gasp as I see the ring, oh my god, is that an engagement ring? Lexi, will you marry me? Nate asks his eyes never leaving mine. I'm lost for words, this my man is my other half, my light, my protector, my savior. Words don't seem to do justice for everything this means to me. Lexi? He shuffles nervously. I don't realize I've been silent this whole time, I've just been swimming with so many emotions about this wonderful man who loves me for me, and wants to spend the rest of his life with me. I dive into his arms, kissing him as I sob and laugh and scream at the same time. Does that mean yes? He laughs. Yes. Of course yes. A thousand times yes. Always yes, for you Nate. His grin is so huge as he slips the ring onto my finger. It fits perfectly. Of course it does. I wake up with the sun shining on my face, Nate's arm wrapped over my torso, his leg over mine, breathing gently as he sleeps. He is more beautiful when he's asleep, how is that even possible? I go to stroke his face and stop when I see my ring, I can't help the grin from spreading across my face. Between making out and sex we didn't sleep at all last night, we were too wrapped up in each other to sleep, I'm both exhausted and full of energy. I try to slip from beneath Nate, I want to make him some breakfast before he wakes. I'm just finishing the bacon and making his coffee when he comes down the stairs in his low-slung gray shorts. I can feel my mouth watering and my sex aching as I drink him in. I look up to see him smirking at me dangerously. I can smell your arousal. He growls at me. 
Is it possible to see X at just a look and a voice alone because if anyone is capable of that this man is. I love when you drink me in like that. He says as he slaps my ass and kisses me. I have no control when it comes to you. Good. I never want you to have control around me. I'm yours, always, whenever you want. Good morning, fiancé. My face lights up hearing him say that for the first time. If I knew that's all I needed to do to get you to cook breakfast for me I would have done it months ago. He jokes. I better get my ass in gear for learning more cooking from your mom. I tease. When do you want to get married? He asks. I stutter almost choking on my coffee. I've no idea, it's not something I ever thought I'd do so it's not like I'd ever imagined. I look up to see Nate staring at me. What? I asked confused. You never thought you'd get married? Well, no. I've never had anyone, been with anyone that made me feel like they loved me, or that I couldn't imagine my life without out, until you. He's over to me, kissing me, picking me up as I wrap my legs around him. So if you think about it now, what do you see? He asks as he puts my bare ass on the counter, trailing kisses up and down my neck, over my mark. It's hard to think straight when you're doing that. I scold, he laughs against my neck but doesn't stop. What do I picture if I picture a wedding? Nate obviously. You, in an open white shirt, relaxed, smiling, happy, outside, dusk, fairy lights and quiet, your parents, Jackson, the pack, maybe? Could we do it here, something small, intimate, the garden? I look at him to gauge if he's disappointed in my answer, what if he wants a big wedding? His smile is so breathtaking. It sounds perfect, marrying you anywhere would be perfect, but I like the idea of something small, outside, informal. I release the breath out I didn't realize I'd held in waiting for his answer. The full moon, the lunar initiation. Nate almost jumps at his own words. What? The night of the crash, I was going to ask you if you were ready for the Luna initiation, to become the PAX official Luna, my Luna, and hoping you said yes, it would be done on the full moon and then at the ceremony as you took vows to be our Luna, I was going to ask you to marry me. I got a little ahead of myself last night. Nate. I can feel the tears coming. I'd love to be Luna. Do you think I'm ready though? I wouldn't want to let anyone down or disappoint anyone. He looks at me almost scoldingly and the look in his eyes makes me squeeze my thighs together. I see his eyes flick down as he notices, this man misses nothing when it comes to my body, which only turns me on more. I know he can feel it too, his eyes darken. Never doubt yourself, Lexi. You are the perfect Luna. You said so yourself, you're stronger than you think. He is so fiercely loyal and strong, I wonder if he realizes how much he exudes Alpha without meaning to. So are you saying we should get married at the Luna ceremony? He flashes me a wicked grin, I raise my eyes at him, what was that for? That's exactly what I was saying, it would be perfect, we would cement your position in the pack as Luna and I get to take you as my wife. As a man in Alpha I couldn't think of a more perfect day if I tried, the luckiest man alive. It does sound perfect, so when would the ceremony be? I'm intrigued now, the excitement bubbling in my stomach. We always complete a Luna ceremony on the full moon to honor to Moon Goddess. Okay, makes sense, so when is that? Two weeks. Nate smirks. Wait. What two weeks? Panic sets in, how do I plan a wedding in two weeks? Do you not want to get married? Is that too soon? Nate looks hurt. Oh God, no, yes. I mean, of course I want to get married, the sooner the better, it was the planning wedding part, I've no idea how to plan a wedding, or where to start, I want it to be perfect for you, I don't want to screw it up. Nate gives me that look again, I swear if he keeps doing that I'm going to come undone right here without him having to touch me. He smirks, he knows the power he has over me and he loves it. Lexi, why do you think it needs to be perfect for me? I'd marry you right here, right now. Dress like this, or undress like this, all I need is you, to me that is perfect. Oh. Well. I guess we're getting married in two weeks then. Will your mom help me? I panic. You're kidding right, try and stop her. 
The second she finds out I hope you're ready. He kisses me as he laughs. He slides me toward him so there is no space between us. He stares at me intensely, like he's reading my mind and plotting how to undo me. Now. He growls. Let's do something about the ache you've been teasing me with all morning. He must be able to feel heat coming from between my legs. He slides his fingers along my jaw, slips a finger into my mouth, I suck his finger, hard, use my tongue to swirl around his finger. I feel him growing hard against me. He whips his shirt off me so I'm sat in the kitchen naked. Now, that is a sight I will spend the rest of my life admiring. He says as he slides the finger he just had in my mouth inside me. I gasp at the shock of it and the sheer dirtiness of him. He torments me, circling his finger inside me. Look at me, Lexi. I snap my eyes to him as he takes his finger out and sucks on it. I could taste you all day, you're so sweet. Every part of me is coiling to look away and be the shy wallflower I've been my whole life, but at the same time I can't look away from him. This man who devours me, worships me and encourages me to be completely comfortable with all parts of me. Us. I decide to stop being scared all my life and join him. Am I? I see the flicker in his eyes at my challenge. I slide my fingers down my naked torso, watching him as his eyes follow my every move. His lips part as his breathing gets heavier as I take my fingers and slide them between my legs and then take them into my mouth. You were right, I do taste good. He snaps, his eyes turn to black as he growls and Alex appears with a snarl. Miss me, darling. My heart is pounding so hard I think it's going to burst out my chest, the pool between my legs soaking me, I gulp. The look in Alex's eyes is enough to make me crumble right in front of him, but to know my teasing has caused Nate to totally lose control. I know I'm in trouble. Alex smirks at me. He knows it too. His eyes take me in, sitting here naked, on the counter, my legs spread and him stood between them. He licks his lips and my breathing gets heavy. He snakes into my neck, close enough I can feel his breath, but he doesn't touch me. He runs his nose down my neck, hovering on my mark, I feel like there is electricity surging through me. Mine. He bites down on my mark, I scream out in pain and pleasure as he slams inside me. Holy shit. I cry out. He is relentless as he pounds into me, he lifts my legs higher and throws them over his shoulders, one arm wrapped around my thighs holding them to his stomach as his other hand snakes around my neck. Both my hands grip his arm, he is pounding into me harder and harder. I can't do anything other than lay there and take him, my senses are so overwhelmed with the feel of him on me, in me, every inch of me, ounce of me needing to be consumed, released. The build in me happens so quickly. Alex. I scream as I crumble around him, he doesn't stop or slow down while my whole body shakes around him, he keeps pumping me harder. Again. He roars I feel the change this time, Violet desperately trying to push forward and I let her. Times 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 violet times times times. I could feel the electricity radiating off Lexi being with Alex and the overwhelming need to be with him before I felt an acceptance. Then I was free. Lexi had brought me forward. I saw Alex register the change. What if he didn't want me? What if he only wanted Lexi? He dropped my legs and pulled me up to lean against his chest as his lips crashed into mine while he continues pounding into me, building me higher and higher. I bit his lower lip while my nails dug into his back and I clenched my thighs to keep him tighter in me. Mate? I growled into his mouth the need between us was raw. It was animalistic. My mouth was on every inch of him, kissing, sucking, biting him. I need to taste him. My hands in his hair, exposing his neck. I bite down hard. Everything happened at once. It's like a firework has been lit, a heat pulses through my body, I feel like I'm on fire but there is no pain. There is a release inside me. It's like a door has been broken down and there is space, freedom, everywhere. I can see Nate and Lexi, stood together, both with a look of confusion. I feel a tie to Alex, like an invisible bridge connecting him to me. I crash over the edge of my time sem while he empties into me. We both stay there, still inside me, holding on to each other, trying to catch our breath. I pull back to look at him. What the fuck was that? I have no idea. That was by far the best sex we've ever had though. I can't help but laugh, he's not wrong but that wasn't quite what I had meant. 
I can feel Lexi waiting to come back. Now is a good time to let them figure this out. Lexi. I'm sat on the counter wrapped around Nate we're both back from our wolves. Well that was new. I laugh. I stroke Nate's neck, my mark is now sitting there. Seeing such an obvious claim to my mate is powerful. I've never been a possessive person, never really felt the need to be. I never had anything anyone else wanted, certainly never had anyone someone else wanted. That was all before Nate. He is mine, the thought of anyone coming near him makes me feel a murderous rage. Lexi. Nate's voice rouses me from my thoughts. H-H-H-M-M? Are you okay? I couldn't be better. I grin. Wait, why? Are you not okay? Was that not okay? It's not that, Lexi. It was everything. I mean if we ignore the fact you teased me to Brink I lost all control. He laughs. Our wolves mated, that's like werewolf marriage. Good job their humans are engaged then isn't it? I joke. Nate, what are you not saying? I can sense it in him, something he's not saying, is he afraid of my reaction? An alpha has never been marked before. He blurts. I'm silent as I take what he just said. What? Ever. I don't understand. I thought if we were mates we both have marks. For all other wolves, not alphas. Alphas are the strongest wolf in a pack, although we mate, mark, have our lunas, they are equal in everything but the strength of the wolves. More a team, two have's coming together to make the ultimate power. So what does that mean with you, S? Honestly, I don't really know. How do you feel? Truthfully? More powerful than I've ever felt in my life. The electricity I feel when we touch, I feel like it's radiating off us both more than ever. Like being with you, I feel we can take on anything, together nothing will stop us because together we can figure out anything thrown our way. That's exactly how I feel. It's taking everything in me to not shift, I don't fully trust if I do shift I can shift back. I look at Nate's eyes, I can see the mix of colors, the blue and brown of Nate and Alex. I'm sorry. Have I done something wrong? No. Never. I just don't know what it means. If anything, I've never made it before, especially as an alpha. Right now all I know for sure is that you are more powerful than I think either of us realized, which might be why you were kept from your wolf. I do know that everything you do, we do, cements in me that you are my soul and I'm the luckiest wolf alive. Nate stills and tenses. What's wrong? My dad, he's asking for us to come over. Is everything okay? I don't know. He looks me and up and grins. I think we might need to put some clothes on first. I laugh. What? You don't think me walking to the pack naked is the right impression as Luna? Nate growls at me, I can feel the power radiating off him. No Lexi. No one but me will be seeing you undressed. I love the reaction I have on him, his possessive nature over such small remarks is thrilling. I slide down off the counter, walk slowly to the large glass doors, backwards not breaking eye contact. Lexi, don't test me. I can see his knuckles clenched white trying to hold it together. I keep walking slowly, trying not to laugh. The power he has over me could make me crumble and I love feeling that power I have over him. I know I shouldn't but I love teasing him. My hand reaches the door handle, I start to try and slide the door open Nate launches himself at me. He grabs me and throws me over his shoulder, stomps upstairs as he slaps my ass. I can't hold back my laughter any longer. He throws me on the bed when we get upstairs. He heads to the bathroom and turns on the shower. I stalk him around the room enjoying my little game, watching every muscle in his body, the way they move, tense, even with the smallest action. How have I never noticed the ease in which he moves before? The gracefulness for such a huge man? I can smell him stronger, mix of rain, wood and musk, it's intoxicating. How are we ever supposed to leave this house clothed when all I want to do is have him wrapped up in me? He looks over at me, his eyes dark, I'm pretty sure my eyes are just as dark looking back at him. I feel more at one with Violet, can feel her humming over the surface, no, if I wanted we could switch. So much more connected that we were before. Does she have any idea how sexy she is when she teases like that? How fuck good she smells when she's turned on? 
she does realize she's seconds away from us having to have her again. Alex says to Nate. Nate smirks. I guess as good as you smell to me. I reply. Nate raises his eyebrow. You heard that? Yes. I cock my head at his question. You've never heard Alex and I talk before? I just shrug. No, but I can hear you now. So what were you saying about having me again? I'm waiting. Three strides and Alex is over to me, he carries me into the shower, the warm water washing over us, the taste of the water mixing with us as our tongues devour each other. I kiss his face, nipping along his jaw, down his neck, his mark, my mark on Nate, seeing it alone makes me wet. I bite it, Nate moans as I do, I love that sound. He spins me, pinning me to wall, pulling my hair over one shoulder so he can run his tongue down my neck, I press back into him, feel his cock at my ass, he teases himself along my pussy. Slowly running along but not entering me. I moan as I desperately try to get the fullness I need, aching to feel him inside me. My arm reaches behind my head so I can run my hands through his hair, exposing my neck more to his onslaught of kisses and bites. He bites my mark as he slams inside me. I cry out as my hands go to the wall for support as Nate slams in me again and again. I turn my head so I can taste his mouth as his other hand slides down my stomach and starts to tease my cunt. I push back into him so he can go deeper, the complete feeling of fullness. Everything about me is screaming Nate. I can feel the build in my core, my mouth devouring Nate, every thrust making me moan for more. His relentless circling of his fingers on my cunt and then stopping right before the edge, teasing me but not ready to let me fall. He spins me round and wraps one leg over his hip as he slows, easing in and out of me achingly slowly, I can feel every inch of him and he fills me again and again. My hands digging into his shoulders, scratching down his back, into his perfect ass trying to encourage him to stay in deeper. His eyes are almost black with lust. I lick the water dripping down his neck as he circles his hips slowly increasing his speed. What do you want, Lexi? You. Always you. Forever. I can't look away from him, his eyes are so full of passion, heat and need mixed with love and desire. He quickens, slamming into me harder, my back pinned to the wall, he lifts my other leg and holds me against him, never breaking eye contact. Bite me, Nate. He kisses me, I can feel his understanding in his kiss, the mark being the ultimate physical connection. Making of two bodies into one. He bites my mark as I bite his. We both cry out as my whole body shakes from my O asterisk M and he empties inside me, giving me everything. I brush his hair out of his eyes as I see the striking blue starting to return. I can't help but smile, I love all sides of this man. I grab the soap and wash his hair, his body, my hands running over every muscle, every ounce of power and strength. We finish our shower and get dressed. Hope your dad hasn't just been waiting this whole time. I blush a little at the thought. Nate gives me his most devilish smirk, as his eyes flash, with Alex. I see his mark from the collar of his tight black shirt, it almost sparkles white in contrast to his skin. I walk over and run my hand over it feeling it tingling under my fingers. I'm not going to pretend that I am not completely satisfied that for whatever reason I was able to mark you now means that every woman that even tries to look in your direction can see your mine. Nate laughs as he slaps my ass and grabs my hand. As we walk to the pack house there is a sense of calm in us both. I can feel Nate and Alex next to me, I can smell him, sense every movement as he walks. Is this what it is like to be a wolf? We walk into the pack house and see Maggie, Michael, and Jackson. They stop talking when we walk in and look at us both as they bow their heads. I look over at Nate. That was odd, right? I mind link, the ease of it like just talking. That's new too. Yes, it is, so is the ease of this, not that I'm complaining, I like how connected I feel with you. He strokes his thumb over my hand as we talk silently. What was that for? He asks everyone. You don't feel it? Jackson asks. Feel what? The alpha power you're giving off. Well, no, but I am an alpha. It's not new? It's not just you, Nate. Michael looks at us both. It's coming off both of you. It feels like strength of two alphas, but as one person. I have no idea what you're talking about. 
Nothing has happened. Nate looks as perplexed as I feel. It's Maggie who sees it first. Nate, you're marked. He instantly reached to touch it and smiled. Oh yeah, that. He laughs. Nate, I've never seen you like this. Maggie says, she seems concerned. I look at her to see if something is wrong. Is he okay? I mind link her without a second thought. She audibly gasps and then tries to compose herself. Lexi, I heard you. I didn't know you were able to mind link. I'm so happy. Are you okay? I'm not sure to be honest. I see her look at Nate, who's been watching her as we speak. I know he was listening. I have a feeling there are a lot of things that were once difficult may not be anymore. An alpha has never been marked before. Michael says. An alpha has never had a Luna like I do before. Nate says almost defensively, I feel the annoyance vibrating off him. I wrap myself around his arm and see him calm. Lexi. Maggie cries. Everyone looks at her concerned. Your ring. She squeals. I can't help the huge grin from spreading over my face and see Nate is the same. She comes running over to us and embraces us both. Tears in her eyes. What have I missed? Michael and Jackson both look over at us confused. Nate beams as he lifts my hand to show them my engagement ring. Congratulations. They both say in unison. Jackson slaps Nate on the back and Michael comes in for a hug. I'm so happy for you both. Michael says. We're going to need your help. I say to the room. Romeo here has decided it's happening in two weeks. I laugh. For the full moon? Maggie says. We'd like to do the Luna ceremony together with our wedding. Nate looks at me as he speaks. He leans in and kisses me. I know it's soon, but let's be honest, especially now, there is no doubting how much I love this man. I smirk. Oh, I'm so happy for you both. Maggie almost cries. Good, because I need your help. I have no idea where to start. I hope you don't mind. I ask her. It would be my honor. She pulls me in for another hug. So stop me if I'm wrong anywhere here. You marked Lexi. Lexi marked you. You're getting married, have walked in here like the power couple of the wolf world, are both exuding the power of king and queen alpha, have I missed anything? Jackson jokes. Um. I hesitate. I look at Nate to see if it's something we need to share. He shrugs his shoulders nonchalantly as I see Alex flash over his eyes mischievously. Our wolves mated. He says, I look at him. Alex. I scold, he winks at me, kisses me, and just like that Nate's blue eyes are back. F.R. Nate says, and all I can do is laugh. Well, you two really go all out when you go all out, don't you? Jackson says. Do you think this is the reason why Lexi's wolf was withheld from her? Because someone knew that one day if she found her mate she'd be as powerful as she is? Nate asks Michael. It seems more likely as I see the two of you together. Powerful? What does he mean? Correct me if I make a mistake here, Lexi. Since you and Nate have been together, when he first marked you, you found a connection with your wolf you hadn't had before. If at all, you've gained in strength both physically and mentally in yourself and with your wolf in the months since you've been together. And now that you have marked Nate and your wolves have made it you feel peace, a strength, a connection with Nate, your wolf, his wolf, our pack. Yes. Switching between Violet and I is no longer difficult. I can communicate with her. She feels at ease. The general wolf traits seem natural. I was able to mind link Maggie without a thought. Nate. I can feel everything. I feel Nate shift at the side of me, protectively, I'm not sure why, like he needs to be closer. I know Nate's movements, I can feel them before he does, his moods, I can feel him. All around me, sense him in everything. I can hear Nate and Alex talk. When Violet and Alex were together, Nate and I were also together. It's clear to see. You both, me and you, Nguyen, counteract each other's mood, come each other. It's like looking at two halves of a whole. Michael says it's Jackson that says. And that connection, that power, is huge, and I'm just guessing here, 
that this is what your parents were probably aware of which is what got them killed and probably why someone tried to make sure you weren't able to access it. So you think someone was trying to protect me? If I knew my child had that potential power, knowing that there are packs out that you have alphas whose only desire is to be more powerful than any other, I'd look into hiding you, whether that was hiding your wolf, hiding you, I'd look into trying to protect you. Maggie says. I agree. Says Michael. If the wrong alpha found out, he could have taken you, held you, tried to mate with you. Nate growls, he throws his arm around my waist pulling me behind him protectively as he crouches ready to strike. The rage is coming off him in waves, his breathing rapid. I move quickly to try and get in front of him, it's not Nate, it's Alex. Alex. No. He roars. You will not be harmed. I put my hands at the side of his face. Alex. Look at me, listen to me, no one will have me, I am safe. I am here. I am protected. I am yours. Listen to my voice. Feel me, Alex. He looks at me, I can see the fight between him and Nate. I kiss him and feel him relax as his hands rest on my hips. His head against mine. I see Nate's blue eyes looking back at me as I smile and stroke the side of his face. Hi. I say as I kiss him gently. Sorry. I had no control. Listening to the talk of you being taken. Marked by someone else. We couldn't take it. He kisses my forehead as he looks over to his dad. It's like turning for the first time. I have this power and I feel like I'm a teenager trying to learn to control my wolf and my alpha all over again. I think there is a lot of power both you and Lexi will need to learn to control both as wolves and together. You've done it before Nate. I know the kind of man you are, the wolf and alpha you are. You can do it again. I have faith in you. You both just need time and patience. Michael's words help Nate to relax. The grip of his fingers on my hips loosens slightly. He takes a deep breath as he stands tall, pulling me into his side as he does. I think we need to call it a night before I rip someone's head off for speaking to Lexi. He says with a sad smile. I can't help but lean up to kiss his cheek. I hate seeing him look so pensive, so stuck. We say our goodbyes and head home. We're going to have to spread the word to the pack quietly to be careful around Nate and Lexi. Michael says. Until he and Alex feel in control of this new shift, any unintentional conversation or look towards Lexi could leave someone cornered with a seriously strong and peedy off alpha. He will do anything to protect her and he isn't in control of that yet. Whoever it is that sent someone after her has no idea what they are now up against. Nate. It's been a few days since Lexi marked me. I know my dad doesn't think we know, but we both heard him warn the pack of the power change in Lexi and I. I am grateful he did. Although Alex was a little PD he felt he was overstepping as we are alpha, but he understood that he was doing what he thought was best. Alex and I have both been on edge since Lexi marked us and I don't want to become an alpha that their pack is afraid of. Lexi had pretty much been forced into coming with me everywhere. I can't function if I can't sense her near. I thought she filled my head before I was marked, but now it's become obsessive. I feel a little better in that it's not only me that feels this way, Lexi's need to be near me is just as strong. It's like my senses are heightened even more than they were when I shifted into Alex for the first time. I have managed to get Alex under a little better control. He doesn't jump forward as quickly if he is irritated. I don't think this change is solely down to my mark though and it's something I've discussed with my parents and Jackson. I think we can sense something is coming. It was Lexi who first brought up the idea when we were at the pack house. I've been thinking about it. Nate has been alpha long enough to know control. He can sense unease in his pack. I think our link has heightened that because whatever caused my wolf to be trapped, whoever ran me off the road, the threat is still there and now Nate and I are connected in every way physically, mentally, and emotionally that we can be as wolves he has zoned in on the threat surrounding me. That's an interesting concept. It was my dad who spoke, he has been the quietest about this situation, I think he's worried his former Alpha Alex might see it as a challenge if he's too forceful so he's been careful what he says and how. It would make sense, as Alpha protection of your pack is your top priority, 
As a mate, protection of your mate is your top priority. You may just be aware of your needs as a wolf, which is why Alex is so desperate to be prominent. I feel Lexi shift her energy at the sight of me, but it's my mom who speaks. Tomorrow Lexi and I are going to go into town to get some supplies for the wedding and Luna ceremony. Alone? She says sternly. No. It's taking everything in me to hold Alex back, but I don't disagree with his answer either. Yes. Lexi says, she starts stroking her hand up and down my arm, I can feel the effects, calming me. Mate, I need to go shopping alone or how else I am supposed to buy my dress. It's bad luck to see the bride's dress before the day. Her grin is so wide at why she wants to go shopping, her joy is infectious and I instantly feel calmer. She's right Alex, we don't want to ruin this for her, besides, can you imagine sitting there for hours while she tries on dress after dress? I try to placate him, I know Lexi can hear us, she squeezes my arm gently. Think of her in the wedding lingerie naked in the dressing room, why wouldn't we want to be there for that? Alex quips. My dick twitches and my knuckles are going white trying not to think of it or I'm going to take her right now regardless of my parents being an audience. I look over to Lexi whose eyes have darkened, I can smell her arousal she mind links us. Hurry up and say yes, so we can go home. Now. She demands. I stand up, taking Lexi's hand with me so she is forced to stand too. Okay mom, we're leaving before I have time to think about this and change my mind. With that we walk out the door with Lexi giggling at the side of me, I can't help but laugh with her, something else about us that's like teenagers since the mark, I can't get enough. We're in for a long night, you know that's the only way you're getting away with this. Lexi spins round, pulls herself up on her tiptoes to reach me as she crashes her mouth to mine. Damn right, but you know it will be worth it when you get to take the dress off me as your wife. Her eyes are alight, they could be on fire with her arousal, I'm instantly hard. She kisses me again hard, her hands in my hair taking the kiss deeper before she pulls away suddenly. Race you home, first one home gets to be in control. She laughs as she leaves me stood there, mouth hanging open as she sprints back to the house. I have no idea if I want to win or lose that. Alex moans. Either way I know I need to get home. Now. Times 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 Lexi times times times. I wake up early, Nate is wrapped up in me, breathing lightly, he always looks so young when he's sleeping, like the world isn't on his shoulders. I feel bad that I am the cause of so much anxiety for him. I didn't sleep much. As much as I'd like to blame Nate for all of it, I mean he was definitely the cause for most of it, I am both nervous and excited for today. Leaving Nate will be difficult, I already feel unsettled just thinking about not being near him, what if I can't find a dress Nate will like? What if he doesn't like what I choose? I'm picking out a wedding dress today. I never thought this day would come and I certainly never thought that I would have a man like Nate who was totally and irrevocably mine. Nate's arm pulls me in closer to him, he nuzzles his head into me and he breathes deep. Good morning, baby. I lift my head to kiss him. Sorry, I didn't mean to wake you. It's okay, I know you're obsessed with me, I'm used to it. He teases I laugh. You are cocky this morning. Oh, I'll show you cocky. He threats as he rolls on top of me, kissing my neck. Down boy, I'm meeting your mom first thing, this is going to be an all-day event, you'll just have to ache for me. He growls both in arousal and frustration. I'm still not happy about you going. I pull his face back to mine. I know baby, but I never imagined I'd be able to try on wedding dresses, get married, let alone have someone to marry who is my absolute life and soul. Your mom is the closest thing I've ever had to a mom of my own and to know today is about finalizing our details for our wedding, so I can become your wife to spend the rest of my life by your side, as your mate, wife, Luna, I will bear the ache of leaving you alone for a few hours for the greater good. I love you Lexi, I will miss you, keep in contact please, keep Alex happy, you're right, I will behave for the greater good. I laugh as I push Nate off me, roll on top of him and straddle his waist. Especially when that greater good is you. Always, especially when the end goal of this selfless act means more of me and you baby. He slaps my ass and I dive off him before I really do end up being late for his mom and run to have a cold shower. Maggie and I drive into town, the excitement builds more in the pit of my stomach as Maggie parks in front of the bridal store. I still can't believe this is real. 
Maggie grins at me as we get out the car and head inside, the excitement is buzzing off her and I can't help but join her. We're greeted at the door and handed a glass of champagne. Cheers, to my soon-to-be daughter, let the fun begin. Trying on wedding dresses was a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be, especially with my own personal cheerleader Maggie by my side. I hope Nate likes it. I can't wait to see his face. We head over to a cafe for lunch and then the florist to sort out some flowers. We're about to head back to the car exhausted when something in the air catches my attention. I look around trying to find where the scent is coming from. Maggie looks at me, she must smell it too, we're both searching through the sea of people on the streets when I start walking. I see her. In the window of a small cafe, she sat alone, looking around her like she's scared of being seen. She looks terrified. I look over to Maggie, who follows my sightline, I see the sympathy on her face as she spots her. I'm crossing the street and walking into the cafe before I know what I'm doing. I sit down opposite her, Maggie stays by the door, I don't think she wants her to feel ambushed. The young girl looks startled to see me, I can see panic in her eyes. Don't be afraid. I mean you no harm. I promise. I just needed to see if you are okay. The young girl looks confused. She can't be much younger than me, early twenties just. I'm Lexi. I know you're one of us, I don't want to frighten you, I just want you to know if you need help you're not alone. She has tears in her eyes, but she is still looking around her as if she's waiting for someone else to come. Are you waiting for someone? No. Her voice is so quiet, timid, my heart breaks a little for her. I was alone not too long ago as well. One night I walked into this diner and met this wonderful woman who took me home, gave me a safe place to sleep, eat. Would you believe that same woman has just helped me pick out my wedding dress? I smile. Sometimes all you need is the right person offering their hand to help. I don't want to push you but if you need anything, want to talk, just meet a friend or a place to sleep for the night, please let me help. My friend and I. I nod to Maggie, seated over at the other table. We're going to have a coffee, if you'd like to come back to safe place with us, even just for the night, warm bed, shelter, no strings, then just come over. I get up slowly, I don't want to startle her, I give her my warmest smile, I want her to know, feel from me, I mean her no harm. Maggie and I grab a coffee, drink it slowly to give the girl time, she doesn't move, doesn't look over. We get up and leave and head back to the car. I'm about to climb in when I feel her near me. I turn to see her on the side of the road, she looks terrified. Hi, it's okay, I promise, this is Maggie, my savior. I laugh. Would you like to come grab some food with us? We could stay near here, if you'd feel more comfortable. She nods, success. We head to a small restaurant, she looks from Maggie and I the whole time, we eat peacefully, keeping talk light. I feel my phone vibrate and know it's Nate, he'll be wondering where we are. We've been gone longer than I thought and I miss him. I answer my phone before he drives down here to find me and scares this poor girl away. Hi, honey. Hey, is everything okay? I thought you might have been home by now. We're fine, we just decided to stop and grab some food, milk this girl's day for all we could, seen as you big strong boys have got it all covered at home. I see a slight smile tug at the corners of her mouth. Nate laughs. Feisty as always I see, I'll have to sort that out when the cute little ass gets home. God this man can turn me on but now is definitely not the time or place for my thoughts to be ripping Nate's clothes off and my mouth devouring him. I heard that. He says. Why exactly is now not the time? I can't say anything out loud so I mind link him while trying to keep my voice casual on the phone. I'll explain when we get home, we're safe, just helping, I love you, don't panic, we'll be home soon. I love you too, I'll be home soon. I hang up before I say something I shouldn't or worse she overhears Nate or Alex lose their minds. Nate's trying to mind link me after I ended the call so quickly, I try to let him since I'm calm and safe I'll have to deal with him when I'm home. Nate's my fiancé, still so odd to say, he's also Maggie's son. So as you can imagine I really have a lot to be thankful to her for. She changed my life. I look over to Maggie who grabs my hand and squeezes it, tears in her eyes. You would really help me? Her voice is so quiet if I wasn't a wolf I doubt I'd hear her. It's Maggie who answers. 
anything you need, no strings, but I can promise you, if you were to come back with us, even just for tonight, you'd see, we'd keep you safe, we're family and everyone is welcome. Unless it's a mate you need because Maggie only has one son and he's mine. I wink at her and she actually laughs. Success. I hope. Okay, I'll come, just for tonight. Perfect, I'll get the bill. Maggie leaves to sort out the payment. Let's get you home. We head back to the car, as we're getting in she stops. I'm Rachel by the way. Nice to meet you. We both say, it's like looking back in time and seeing myself. How much my life has changed and all thanks to Maggie. I will never be able to repay her for what she has given me. Times 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 Nate times times times. Today has been the longest day of my life, I have tried not to be possessive, I know Lexi needed this day but my whole soul aches from missing her. I'm exhausted from trying to keep Alex from shifting and going to get her and brining her home to us. My mom and Lexi have both been texting me through the day to help try and keep Alex at bay. I've spent most of the day beating the crap out of my guards and letting them beat me until my muscles ache so much from the battle practice they're on fire. When I called Lexi, I knew instantly something was off, I could sense the tone in her voice, I was seconds away from driving to her when I could feel the air calm, as if she was trying to tell me she's okay but can't talk. I've been pacing the front of the pack house waiting for her to come home since, I know she is stronger but memories of the day she was run off the road and finding her are racing through my head and Alex is clawing to come out. I won't be able to hold him back much longer. I see my mom's car coming and my senses are on high alert, I can feel Lexi, she feels calm, maybe a little anxious but no fear, no pain. Alex relaxes a little, at least enough I don't think I'm about to shift as soon as she's out the car. I run over to her as soon as she steps out, a small woman gets out, I can sense her wolf but no immediate threat plus she looks terrified as I approach but I don't care. My hands in Lexi's hair, pulling her head to mine, breathing her in, her scent, my lips to hers. Each breath I take, each one that is filled with her scent, calms us. I kiss her again as I look at her and drop my arms around her waist to pull her body closer. Hi. She giggles as she nips my jaw. Hi. I sigh. Feel better? I know my eyes flash as mix of Alex and myself a little in annoyance. We do, you've got some explaining to do darling before Alex will forgive you. I'm sure I can think of something to cheer him up. Her voice is laced with promise and arousal my dick throbs and I try to remain calm. I can feel Alex pushing to come forward and take her against the car. She laughs as she turns from me, not breaking contact but so her back is to my stomach my arms still laced around her waist as her hand comes to mine and stroke up and down my arm. This is Rachel. She says. I turn my head and only now do I register the small women at the side of the car. She doesn't look as terrified as she did when I initially walked over. If anything she looks happy but sad. Is that even possible? Nice to meet you. I nod to her, I don't offer my hand, I don't want to move it from Lexi and I feel like I could break her if I did, or she might cower. I'm Alpha Nate of the Blood Moon Pack, welcome to our home. Lexi squeezes my arm gently and thanks, the scared wolf just nods her head in respect but doesn't move or say anything my mom comes over. Should we go inside, Nate will you grab the bags? I'm about to protest that will mean letting go of Lexi and I'm not ready for that yet not when she's been away all day. No. Lexi shouts. I'll do it. She runs quickly to the car as I cock my head to her reaction she turns grinning to me I don't want you to see anything about my dress. I don't want you to see anything about my dress. Inside now. I can't help but laugh, I duck in for a kiss and go inside. I know how to pick my battles and chivalry on this one was going to be lost. My dad walks out to help them and they all pile into the kitchen and take a seat as my mom grabs drinks, the timid wolf follows behind trying to make as little noise as possible. Lexi comes straight into my arms and I kiss her, savoring the taste of her lips on mine, I feel like I've been separated from her for days not hours and Alex is whimpering to get out she pulls back laughing. You can come and play later Alex behave, I'm not going anywhere. Alex? I hear the smallest voice say, I look over to the little wolf and she looks shocked she spoke and terrified. What is she so afraid of? Lexi looks at her she laughs. Alex is Nate Wolf. I don't know who needs attention more the man or the wolf. She rolls her eyes as she jokes and I slap her ass. Would you like anything to eat, 
or would you just like to see your room? I hope you don't mind staying in the pack house. We are fixing one of the other pack houses just now. Maggie asks Rachel. I'm a little tired. She says almost in a whisper, with that my mom takes her off up to a room and I look over at Lexi who seems sad. What's wrong? That was me. Not that long ago I was that scared broken wolf and your mom helped me. If she hadn't. I growl at her, I don't want her to finish that sentence. You're here, you were always meant to be here, there is nothing else to say. I stop this conversation, I don't like thinking of a life without Lexi and I'm struggling to keep composed as it is. When my mom comes back I ask them both. What's her deal? What happened? Lexi and my mom explain their day and how they came across Rachel. Sounds like Lexi wasn't too wrong, their stories are very similar. I see why Lexi would want to help her, do the same that my mom did for her. Knowing that makes my heart swell with how much kindness she has for strangers, she is the perfect Luna. I can speak to her tomorrow if you like. I think maybe you should leave this to your Luna. It's my dad who speaks. She looked terrified when she got out the car and saw you. She seems more relaxed around Lexi and your mother. I'm sure our Luna will make sure our new wolf is well looked after. My dad smiles at Lexi, I see the way he looks at her encouragingly, I've seen the same look from him at me when I've doubted myself as Alpha, I know he is trying to support Lexi to trust herself as Luna and at that moment I am beyond grateful that I was blessed to have such wonderful parents. Thank you pops. I mind link him. You don't need to thank me Nate, she's family, my daughter-in-law is a caring Luna, she just needs to trust herself like we do. Lexi walks over to my dad and hugs him tight. She kisses the side of his cheek and he reddens slightly. Forgot you can hear everything. He scoffs running his hand through his hair a little embarrassed. I hope you don't mind me asking, I know it's not tradition, especially as you're Nate's dad, but you're as much a father to me as I've ever had, I know I can come to you with anything and I feel your support with everything I do. If you don't want to, say no, I won't mind, but would you maybe think about giving me away? Lexi plays with her hands nervously as she waits. Lexi. My dad stutters. I can hear the tears in his voice. It would be my honor. You know I think of you as mine. I did as soon as you arrived. Not just as Nate's mate but as wolf of our pack. Your family. Lexi takes him into the biggest bear hug and he just laughs as he taps her back and she sobs into his shoulder. My mom is sobbing quietly in the corner. I go to her and hug her. Right it's time I take this Luna home before she makes anyone else cry. I take her hand as we walk out and head home. As we walk inside Lexi stops and looks at me. I am the luckiest wolf in the world do you know that? I had no home, no family, no place, I have everything, your mom and dad, the pack, my wolf, the best of it all is I have my soul, the moon of my night. She says as tears swim in her eyes again. You're my world Lexi. You have no idea how much you lighten up everyone's life just by being there, just by being you. I can't wait to make you mine in every way possible. I kiss her gently, I can taste the tears on her lips, as she kisses me back she reaches up on her toes to deepen the kiss. I pick her up carry her upstairs. I have missed everything about her today but I plan on spending the entire night getting my fill of her and making up for it. I can't help but smirk as I hear the low growl in her chest as she hears my thoughts. This woman really is perfect. Times 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 Lexi times times times. I roll my aching body while I pour myself a coffee. Since I found my wolf my energy has been on another level. I have found myself in Nate's gym once or twice which is more than I thought I would ever. If it wasn't for Nate and his insatiable appetite I'd probably have to be in there more to satisfy Violet. Thank God we could use Nate. We spent all night wrapped up in each other after spending all day apart. I sense him before I feel him, I know his every move, can feel him in a room before he enters, it's like my whole body is wired to pull or move in whatever direction he is. His arms slip around my waist as I tilt my head to the side so he can kiss my neck. Good morning darling. How is it possible you've spent nearly all night inside me and yet I still want more? His hand glides down to my aching center, he can feel the heat through my jeans, as I push myself back into him and feel him hard against my back. I moan as his hands start to rub my outside my jeans, the friction teasing but needing more pressure. Nate. I moan. Yes, baby? Stop teasing. 
I wouldn't do such a thing to you, my Luna. His voice is deep, low, I can feel the SL tension dripping off every word. His hand circles me slowly, I spread my legs wider to give him more access. What do you want, Lexi? You. How do you want me? He's teasing me. Loving how easily I can come undone because of him too can play this game I push my ass back into him, start circling my hips against his cock, feeling it straining against his jeans. I hear him growl at my teasing, I refuse to give in to him, I try to calm my breathing as his fingers keep rubbing me against my jeans. Keep my hands on the counter to stop them running through his hair and dragging his mouth to mine. Lexi. He growls. Yes, baby. I use his words against him. I use his words against him. You are going to make me come and these are clean jeans. I can't help but laugh as I lift my hands into my hair, move it to expose my mark, standing straight to use my whole body to grind against him. Mate? I say, I know how much it drives Alex wild when he hears me claim him. He growls as he nips my ear. Tell me what you want, Lexi. Tell me what you want, Lexi. You. Always you. He tugs my jeans and underwear down in one, freeing himself as he slams inside me and slaps my ass I scream out from the shock, pleasure and pain all at once. He pins my arms behind my back with one arm while he slams into my tender pussy again and again and spanks my ass. I push myself back to allow him to take me as deep as he can, I need every inch him in. He pulls my arms up so my back is forced up to his torso he's so deep in me. While I'm pinned against him I can barely breathe everything in my body is screaming Nate. He spins me round so his mouth is on mine, tasting him is still not enough, the need of our tongues for more, or mouths to devour. I tighten around Nate as he pins my arms behind my back. I throw my head back my senses are so overwhelmed, my whole body feels like electricity. Look at my Lexi. Look at my Lexi. My head snaps to look at him, his eyes are so dark, I could come just from the way he looks at me. I am so close and I can feel Nate tighten as he gets closer. I kiss him, pull his bottom lip, kiss along his jawline, bite down his neck, his moans push me closer, Nate follows my lead, kissing down my neck, his thrusts never slowing, I kiss his mark as he is kissing mine. I bite his mark, the power and arousal push Nate over the edge. Feeling him empty inside of me as he bites my mark pushes me over the edge as I join him. I still need to go the pack house. I giggle Nate laughs in my neck. I was just doing as you asked my Luna. You wanted me to send you on your day dripping with me. Good boy. Good boy. I kiss him as I jump down his laugh as infectious as I do up my jeans and head to the door. Are you coming? He walks over to me, kisses me and holds my hand as we walk to the pack house. As we near Jackson comes over to greet us. Morning you too. He smiles. He smiles. Hate to start the day so quick, but Nate, I need your help with some of the technical crap for the Luna ceremony and the guest list. He rolls his eyes as he says, Jackson was a great beta, a strong warrior and fighter but absolutely useless when it came to paperwork of any kind. I kiss Nate as he heads off with Jackson and I head to look for Rachel. I catch her scent before I see her, it's coming from within the woods so I follow it and find her sat by the edge of the lake. Morning. I try not to startle her but her head still spins round in shock and fear. Poor girl what has caused so much distrust in her. Hi. She says quietly. I take a seat at the side of her and enjoy the peace. I love the woods, the smell, the sounds, the freedom and I love watching the water, something about the stillness is calming. Did you sleep okay? Yes thank you. I can't thank you enough for your help yesterday. You don't need to. I'm just glad I happened to be there when you were. I smile at her. I'll leave soon. I just couldn't help enjoying the quiet. I'll leave soon. I just couldn't help enjoying the quiet. She looks so sad as she speaks. You don't have to leave. You're more than welcome to stay. I can't do that. I'm sure you'll need the room back. We're an open door pack. It wasn't too long ago that I was exactly where you are now. I had no family, no home, no purpose, didn't even know I was a werewolf. Rachel's head snaps up to look at me. You didn't know you were a wolf? You didn't know you were a wolf? I know. Odd story. Honestly, 
I still don't really know the full story. All I know is one night after walking for days with no real destination I walked into Maggie's diner. She saw something in me, a need for some kindness, she offered me a room for free, for once I accepted kindness from a stranger and there was no ulterior motive. Turns out the room she offered me was Nate's as he was away, unbeknown to her he was heading home early. That was an eventful night when we both woke each other up in the dark with the realization we were not alone. In the bed we thought we were sleeping alone in. I laugh to myself as I think back to my first night with Nate. Turns out Maggie must have sensed more than my wolf as Nate is my mate. Although I didn't know what that was as I had no idea he was a wolf, I was or what that meant. Finding him broke whatever it was in me and allowed my wolf to break free. In a little over a week I will marry the man of my dreams at the Luna ceremony and become his wife, his mate and his Luna. I wipe a tear from my eye as I think about how overwhelmingly lucky I am. So I guess the point I'm trying to make here is, sometimes that helping hand from a stranger is just that. Help. No expectations. No cost. Just kindness. So as long as you want to be here Rachel that room is yours and yours alone. We sit in silence for a while but it's not uncomfortable it's calming. I can feel Rachel's internal battle and I'm happy to be here as support so she doesn't feel alone. I'd like to stay, if you're sure that's allowed, with the Alpha and Pack and all. Wonderful. Of course it's fine with Nate, like I said it's an open door policy, we like to help wolves who might not feel like they have anywhere else, whether that's long term or not. He really won't mind? I get the sense that Alphas and generosity are not something that Rachel has experienced before. I know Nate might come across as a little intimidating, it's partly my fault. I marked him and he's dealing with a power struggle with his wolf, the mate bond and feeling like he needs to protect me. I can promise you with everything I am, if you stay, if you want to be a member of this pack, if you ever need someone in your corner, that will be Nate. No questions asked. He is not like most alphas. I saw a hint of that last night when he was with you and his parents. I don't mean to pry but are you from a pack, you seem to cautious when it comes to pack alphas? I was in a pack, my alpha was nothing like you've said and I have never met one that was. I'm sorry, I hope in time, you will see I meant every word. You marked an alpha? She flushes red with the question. Yes. Yes. Don't ask. Honestly, I don't even know how I was able to, from what I was told it's not common. Like I said, I'm new to this wolf life. Thinking about it there is a lot I don't know but I manage. I laugh. I'd like to do something, anything, to help, contribute, while I'm here. I'd like to do something, anything, to help, contribute, while I'm here. You don't have to do. She cuts me off before I finish. Please, anything to help. Please, anything to help. All right. I can talk to Maggie. We can find something you're comfortable with. We have a Luna ceremony and a wedding to plan. There is plenty to do. Come on, let's head back to the pack house, we can find Maggie and get you properly settled. I stand and pass my hand to help her up. She looks so frail as she takes my hand. I hope in time she will come to trust me and feel safe enough to feel at home. I'd like to find out more about her previous alpha. I wonder if Nate would recognize his name. I am going to have to tread lightly. I don't think this will be an easy conversation for Rachel, but I want her to know I'm here for her if and when she's ready. Everyone needs a friend. Times 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 Lexi times times times. You will be fine. It's only one night. Nate is wrapped around me, his head nuzzled in my neck. He growls. One night too many. He was supposed to be heading over to the pack house for the night but we've somehow ended up in bed and tangled up in each other. I trail my hand up and down his back. I don't know how I'm going to fall asleep without you suffocating me all night with all your limbs either. I joke as I feel him smile against my neck. It's only for tonight, it's bad luck to see the bride before the wedding. Nate looks at me with those beautiful blue eyes swimming with so much emotion. Tomorrow I will be his wife, he will be my husband. I will complete the Luna ceremony under the full moon and be an official Luna to my Alpha's pack. 
Nate sighs. I know, but even one night away from you is too much. He runs his nose along my chin, are you nervous? Are you nervous? About the ceremony? Maybe a little, I don't want to let anyone down and it's the biggest step I've taken as a wolf since I found out I was one. I haven't even shifted yet. You are an amazing wolf, you have already shown what a compassionate but strong Luna you are, it will be perfect. Nate's silent, I can see him waiting to say something. What is it? Well, I meant more, were you nervous about marrying me? I know it's more of a human ceremony, but it's also something you said you'd never thought you'd do. Oh Nate, that's the thing that I couldn't be more sure about. I smile as I see him relax. I know I said I had never thought I'd get married, but that was only because I had never imagined I would find anyone that would want to be married to me. I never could have imagined that I would have been lucky enough to find someone to love with my entire being, but who was the other half of me and made me whole? I kiss Nate and pour my soul into it, so this man knows that I am his everything, everything I have, can give, can be, is because of him, belongs to him, that without him I am not fully me. There is nothing in this world that makes me feel as 100% me when I am not wrapped up in this man. I love him. Once more and I promise I'll go. I burst out laughing as I know we both know that's not going to be the case. It's almost dawn when Nate kisses me gently from my sleep. See you at the altar. He whispers. I can't help but smile at him as he sneaks out the room like a teenager to head back to pack house. Then it suddenly hits me. I'm getting married today. The ceremony was to be at dusk, so I had a full day of nerves to look forward to. I'd been awake since Nate had left, so far I'd had a workout in the gym, a swim, a bath, made breakfast, cleaned the kitchen and it was still morning. This was going to be a long day. Just as I was contemplating tracking Nate down to see if we could sneak off there was a knock at the door and Maggie and Rachel walked in. Hi. I beamed. Good morning, happy wedding day. Maggie came over and gave me a hug. Going crazy yet? That's obvious, huh? It's okay, we have a lot to do this afternoon so time will fly. I spent the rest of the day preening every inch of my body. Face masks, hair wash, exfoliate, moisturize, manicures, pedicures, makeup, hair. There wasn't a part of my body that hadn't been touched or pampered. Rachel had offered to do my hair and it was perfect, Maggie knew one of the other girls in the pack, Lauren, loved makeup so she had come to help too. I slipped my dress on, Maggie helped to button it up and then I stood frozen too afraid to turn and see it all. What if it didn't suit? What if Nate didn't like it? It was a simple dress, a line style with a deep V chest. It had lace sleeves and a lace back with buttons down the shoulders leading to an open back. It was simple but stunning. Kind of how I felt whenever I was with Nate. Maggie is already in tears. No tears, if you cry I will cry and Lauren has spent too long trying to make me look good to ruin it. Right, it's time for you two to go and get ready and I stand here and don't move until it's time so I don't mess anything. I laugh. Rachel kind of shuffles uncomfortably. I was just going to head back to my room, but thank you. You're more than welcome. You don't need to be in your room, all the pack is invited, you're just as much part of the pack now as everyone else. Erm, I don't have anything to wear. Oh, we'll find something. That's no reason to not join in with a party. I wink as I head to grab a couple of outfits of mine that she can choose from. Right, now off and get your makeup done too. No arguments. I don't think she has left her room since she got here. I know she only speaks to myself or Maggie and eats when everyone else is in bed. Maybe after tonight she might feel a little more comfortable to venture out. She seemed to get on with Lauren and I hope maybe a friendship there might help too. I head downstairs and Maggie, Lauren and Rachel are all dressed and have a glass of champagne. We toast and I'm hit with a ton of nerves, not just for marrying Nate but I am to officially become Pac Luna, I feel like my heart is going to beat out of my chest. There's a knock on the door and in walks Michael all dressed up. I can't help but smile with love at the older version of Nate standing in front of me. Maggie goes to him and the love they have for each other is the love I want to be that strong for Nate and I in 30 years. He looks over to me. You look beautiful. Are you ready? Always. 
I'm nervous, I'm sweating, but I will always be ready to be together forever with Nate. Everyone heads out and leaves just myself and Michael. Maggie will give me the heads up when it's time to go. How's Nate? Has he been okay? I know it's been a long day. He's held up surprisingly well. They both have. Must have been that work he had at dawn. I blush. He knows that Nate was here I can't help but feel like a teenager around Nate's dad. There's a slight crease in his face as he focuses back to me. Is everything okay? Yes, just need another five, which is perfect because I wanted to say something. Lexi, there is no denying that you may not have found yourself in the best situation before you came here. But I hope you know that this is your home. This will always be your home. You are our family, my family. Seeing the way Nate has grown with you, the confidence you've instilled in him, not only as a man but an alpha. It warms my heart to know that this pack, my son, is so well loved as are you. I know you didn't know your parents but Maggie and I are so proud that you chose us to be your family. We love you kiddo. I hug him so tight. I love my family and if I don't move soon I'm going to ruin all my makeup from crying. We walk over to the pack house garden and I swear I stop breathing it's breathtaking. The trees are lined with thousands upon thousands of fairy lights, wicker chairs on either side for the guests and the aisle is lined with wild flowers and candles with wild flowers sprinkled across the floor. It's magic. Right there at the end of the aisle is Nate. He is wearing a cream trouser suit with blazer and an open white shirt. His dark hair ruffled from running his fingers through it. He looks incredible and I could devour him right now. He hasn't seen me yet and I love seeing the smile on his face. He's shuffling a little and talking to Jackson who's standing as his best man in a matching suit. He looks a little nervous but adorable. He turns as the music starts and I feel the tears as soon as we lock eyes. There are tears in Nate's eyes as Michael and I walk down the aisle to him. You're breathtaking. Ladies and gentlemen, please take a seat. Alpha Daniel from the River Moon Pack says. He asked if he could officiate as some of his wolves have come to see the ceremony and he also happens to be best friends with Michael. They grew up together so it gave the wedding and ceremony a nice family feel. Thank you all for joining us on this special evening. We are here tonight to complete the Luna Ceremony for the Blood Moon Pack and to celebrate the marriage of Alphanate and his Luna Lexi. The Luna Ceremony is a thanks and a promise to the Moon Goddess for bestowing upon us our fated mates and welcoming them into our packs to take their rightful place as the right hand of our Alphas. As Alpha and Luna together they will protect and serve their packs, be strength and wisdom, be support and courage, guide and learn our kin into the future. Do you Lexi Anderson accept the responsibilities that come with being Luna? Will you promise to protect and guide your pack, to support and rule alongside your Alpha and together dedicate your life to leading the Blood Moon Pack? I accept the responsibilities to become Luna of the Blood Moon Pack and to rule alongside my Alpha. He lifts a gold chalice that is adorned with rubies and in it he pours five vials. Each vial is a representation of the five cores of wolves. He pours four vials into the chalice, strength, loyalty, honor and family. The fifth core of a wolf is love. With this we ask for a sacrifice from the mated pair. He takes a blade and slices it across Nate's palm, drops some of his blood into the chalice, and then does the same with my palm. He places our cut hands together and ties a ribbon around us. The mixing of blood unites you in a blood bond. You have been marked. You are mated and now you are united in blood. As you each drink, you will complete your promise to the pack and each other to be two halves of one whole. Nate takes a sip and passes the drink to me, I drink and feel a warmth spreading through me as I do. Alpha Daniel holds our hands aloft as he announces. I give to you your Alpha and Luna of Blood Moon. Everyone cheers as Nate leans in and kisses me. Now if you would all please be seated as Nate and Lexi have written their own vows. Nate, if you would like to give Lexi her ring and say your vows. Lexi, from the moment I found you asleep in my bed and you threatened me with a lamp I knew that there would never be anyone but you.
Everyone chuckles as he speaks, I can't help but roll my eyes and join them. You have shown more strength, resilience and compassion since I have known you than some people in their entire lives. Everything you do inspires me to be a better version of myself and I know that having you by my side makes me the best version of myself I can be because for you I want to give you the world. I love you more than I ever thought possible and I can't wait to spend the rest of our lives together showing you every day how amazing you truly are. Lexi, if you would like to give Nate his ring and say your vows. Nate, before you I had nothing. I never imagined I would get married because I could never imagine being lucky enough to find someone, let alone someone who I would want to spend the rest of my life with. You have shown me more love than I knew was possible. I have spent my entire life searching for something, searching for me. You are the other half of me, you are the air I breathe, the beat of my heart, you are my soul. I still can't believe that for the rest of my life I get to spend it with my world. With the giving of these rings and vows, under the full moon and the eyes of our goddess, it is with great pleasure I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your Luna. Nate swoops in for a kiss as he dips me low and the pack cheer on. My heart is so full as I stand and look at this man, under the stars surrounded by our pack, our family, my alpha, my husband. I'm grinning so wide my cheeks hurt. Here's to Mr. and Mrs. Walker. Someone shouts as confetti flies everywhere and Nate lifts me up, kissing me with so much love I could stay in this moment forever. Times 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 Lexi times times times. The evening had been more than I could have ever imagined. We all ate, drank and celebrated life and love. I hadn't left Nate's side all evening, I couldn't stop looking up at him, my mate, my alpha, my husband, it just didn't seem real. Congratulations my alpha, my Luna. Jackson swayed over to us. I am so happy for you guys, I know this one can be a pain in the ass so good luck. Why thanks. Thank you Jackson, I know you're right but I think I'll manage. Hey. Are you two finished? You're lucky, you found your mate, happily ever after, some people just have all the luck. Jackson, are you okay? Me? Yeah, always, I need another beer, enjoy. With that Jackson stumbles off to the bar. What was that all about? I look to Nate confused. I'll tell you about it later. It's our wedding day. He bends to kiss me, his tongue seeking mine, his arm wrapped around my waist. My arms reach up to wrap around his neck and pull the kiss deeper, I vaguely hear the music as I remember where we are. I pull back a little, look at Nate's eyes, darker and swimming with lust and want. You can make me feel like we are the only two people even when we are surrounded by people. I think people would more than understand if we make it so we are the only two people. Will they not miss their alpha? Oh if they know what's good for their alpha they would be pushing him to leave. I can't help but giggle, he can be so cheesy but I love his boyish charm. If that's what my alpha wishes. Now that is a sentence I could get used to hearing. He jokes, I lean my head up to kiss him, nip at his lower lip, I can feel the growl in his chest and I'm instantly wet. You smell so good my Luna. We need to go home. I couldn't agree with you more. How exactly do we leave our own wedding? Are we supposed to announce it or do we just sneak off like a couple of lovesick puppies? Sneaking, defiantly the sneaking. Everyone around us is so caught up in the celebrations they don't even notice us starting to leave. Or at least if they do they have the good graces to let us leave without a word. As we get back to the house Nate swoops down and picks me up. I have to carry my bride over the threshold. I cling to his neck as I start trailing kisses down it my hands in his hair to turn his head so I have access to his mouth. My tongue looking for his, he carries me upstairs and stops by the door of our room. I look at him confused and then follow his gaze. Our bed is covered with rose petals and the whole room it lit by candlelight, vases of wildflower are everywhere, the smell and colors are like nothing I've ever seen. Nate. It's beautiful. When did you have time to do this? I had a little help. He shrugs as he puts me down, I walk in, my hands running through the flowers. I turn to look at him as he stands in the doorway watching me. I am the luckiest wolf alive Lexi and I love you with all my heart. I love you Nate, with all I am. He walks to me and brushes my hair behind my ear. You are stunning. He kisses my forehead. I'm going to need some help getting out this dress, 
I seem to recall Alex was particularly intrigued about wedding lingerie when I mentioned bridal shopping. I see Alex flick across Nate's eyes, I turn and lift my hair so Nate can undo the buttons at the neck of my dress. I take off Nate's jacket and begin to undo the buttons on his shirt, slowly, his eyes never leaving mine. I remove his shirt and then undo his belt. He raises his arm to slip my dress off my shoulder. No touching. He looks at me confused. I smirk at him as my fingers remove his belt and undo the button of his trousers. I force them down and have him step out. I stand and look at every inch of him. I know he loves when he catches me drinking him in and I plan on savoring every inch of him tonight. When I look back to his eyes, they are almost black. Can you and Alex be forward at the same time? I don't know where the idea came from or if it's possible. We can. Takes a little more control, both balancing control, but if we do it together. Would you like us to? Yes, please. I see Nate's blue eyes swirling with a hint of brown as he smiles wickedly at me I pull his boxers down as his cock springs free. Sit on the bed. I demand he looks at me for a minute and then obeys. Good boy. I stand in front of him as I slowly start to pull my wedding dress off and let it fall off me slowly, exposing my breasts. Nate slash Alex's eyes never leave mine. With my dress pulled around my feet and in nothing more than my thong, garter, and heels he looks over every inch of my body and I can feel the heat radiating off him, I instantly feel myself pooling between my thighs. I place my leg with my garter on the bed by the side of Nate slash Alex. You should use your teeth. His hand on my thigh he grabs my garter in this teeth and slowly moves it down my leg, his hand gently following in its path, his touch so light I can feel it vibrate right into my core. I get on my knees as his breathing gets heavy, his eyes never leaving mine and his dick hard, and I haven't touched him yet I run my hands up his legs as I trail kisses along his inner thigh, blowing slightly on his boobs as he tenses. I run my tongue up the length of him and taste his beads of precum taking all of him in my mouth. His thighs tense underneath my hands as his hand wraps in my hair. I tease him taking him to the back of my throat and running my tongue along him as I hollow my cheeks and suck hard. I can feel him tensing with each flick of my tongue, hearing his moans when he's in my mouth make me wet and ache for him, I moan against his cock which make him tense more. Let me taste you both, let go baby. I suck harder as my hands play with his balls as he releases and I drink all he has to give me. Sit at the back of the bed. I crawl up the bed after him, kissing up his torso, nip at his chest, bite his mark as I then kiss up his neck before my mouth finds his. How do you taste? Unreal when it comes from your lips. I climb on top of him and tease him with my opening. I hope you've got more for me. I hope you're not planning on sleeping. I ease him into me, feel myself stretch with every inch, feel myself slowly and savor the final act of Nate and I becoming one. I love you. I love you too my Luna. I start to move faster, needing my release Nate matches my hips, thrusting each time I come down, hitting me in that sweet spot again and again, his mouth on my news, I tense around Nate every time he slams into me, moaning against his mouth, I speed up looking for my release as Nate edges closer. He pinches my any with one hand as he bites down on my mark and I cry out as I fall over the edges clenching around him, as my whole body shakes around him and he lets go filling me. Nate wraps his arms around me as we catch our breath, still inside me not ready to break that connection yet. We spend the night either wrapped up in each other or catching our breaths to go again. I don't know the time but we must have fallen asleep when I wake with a sharp pain in my stomach. I head downstairs to get a glass water, I'm stood enjoying the calm of the night when another jolt of pain in my stomach has me crippling over onto the floor. Another radiates up my arms, down my legs, my back arches as it feels like it's being snapped. I scream out in agony. Nate. He comes running down the stairs. Lexi. Nate. I'm screaming with the pain. Lexi. What's happening? What's wrong? It feels like my bones are being broken. I don't know what's happening. Lexi, I think you're turning. I know it hurts, baby. Listen to my voice. Take a breath, Lexi. I know this sounds impossible, but try and let go. Give over to Violet, it will make it so much easier, the first time is always the worse. He carries me out into the garden. Breathe Lexi, listen to Violet, go with it. Lexi, I've got this, trust me, let me out. Violet urges. 
It takes everything in me to try and stop screaming, to try and take a breathe, all I can focus on is the pain. I breathe in, deep, hold it, release. I can feel every inch of my body break and change, my hands expand and become heavy as they thud down onto the ground. I look down and see paws, as I look up I can see, everything. I thought my sight was good before, but now I can see every details, I can see the pollen particles in the air. I hear the smallest sound over my shoulder and spin round. I see Nate standing there looking at me with, ah. Lexi. You're incredible. Violet. You're gorgeous. Trust me Lexi, I've got you. Violet says. I try to step back and trust Violet. Times 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 violet times times times. The freedom is immeasurable. I have never felt free. Even these past few months I have had a degree of freedom once Lexi could hear me and being connected to Nate but nothing could compare to finally being able to be me. I walk over to Nate, nuzzle my nose into his side as he runs his hand through my fur. I can't help but purr under his touch. Would you like to meet Alex? I can't hide my excitement. Nate laughs. I'll take that as a yes. Nate takes off his boxers. I lick my lips at the sight of him, stood in the garden under the full moon naked. Even as a wolf I want this man in every way. He shifts into Alex he is beautiful. He is massive, not just in height but also in wit. His fur is jet black but his eyes are the most intense shade of chocolate brown. I walk around Alex, taking him all in. Like what you see. You do not disappoint you, you? We aim to please mate. I nuzzle my head into his neck as he purrs. Want to go for a run? The excitement must be shining from my eyes. I'll give you a head start. I run into the woods, the ease of being able to see everything in the pitch black, the power in my legs as I jump over logs, dodge rocks on the ground. I feel Alex at the side of me. See the glint of challenge and enjoyment in his eyes. He runs in front of me. I run faster, he's toying with me, slowing and then speeding up, he thinks he can outrun me, I know the power I feel in my limbs. He's in for a shock. I push forward with all that I have, I overtake him, part of it from shock, when he realizes I mean business he pushes forward hard, I slow and let him think he's about to catch me when I kick off with my last bit of energy and don't stop until he's a shadow behind me. I run to the lake and wait for Alex. I love the water even more so with the reflection of the full moon shining on it. I walk over to the water's edge and look at my reflection, to truly see myself for the first time. My fur is a light brown with flashes of red running through it with certain moves. I see Alex walk up beside me. I am smaller than him, but not by much. We stand together looking at ourselves shining back to us from the water. Glad you could finally join me. You're quick my little rabbit. Alex nidges his nose underneath my neck. I run my head along his, nip at his jaw. He goes to grab me and I leap out of the way, challenging him to catch me. He follows my lead in trying to corner me. We tease each other as he leaps for me and I dodge him but I know, on this, he is letting me win. I go to nip his leg and he spins catching me off guard and has me pinned. He nuzzles the top of my neck as he licks me and I'm instantly turned on. Lexi? Alex is much ours as Nate is Violet, together we are one. It's all I needed to confirm what I already felt and held in my heart. I tease Alex back, licking at him until under the light of the full moon, on the night of our Luna ceremony and wedding Alex and I come to mate cementing every connection that is spiritually and physically possible between man and wolf. When we get back to the house I push back to encourage Lexi to come forward. I can feel her hesitation. Trust me Lexi. It will hurt, not as much as the first time, the more we connect the easier it will become. We are finally one. Times 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 Lexi times times times. Violet was right, although it was painful shifting back it wasn't as painful as our first shift. I stand in our garden naked as Nate shifts. As soon as he is back he comes to me and takes me in his arms. Your wolf is just as amazing as you were baby. Thank you for helping us. Always. I feel like I need to thank you, Lexi. Thank me. For what? For tonight. This night has been so overwhelming with everything that I have been gifted, and it's all because of you. Today, I was given my Luna, my wife, and my wolf. 
There truly cannot be a luckier man than I am right now standing here with you. Times 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 Nate times times times. I had woken up alone in bed to her screaming my name. Racing downstairs and seeing her bent over in pain I knew instantly what she was going to have to endure. Memories of my first shift came flooding back to me. Carrying her into the garden to give her and Violet the space to shift I stood back and could only watch in amazement at how incredible she is. Violet is stunning, beautiful brown fur with lights of red running through. She's a lot taller than most female wolves yet somehow that didn't surprise me. Mate. Mate. Alex roars. She's beautiful. She's ourses. We need to be with her. Would you like to meet Alex? I ask Violet, the light up in her eyes and the wag of her tail show her excitement. I'll take that as a yes. I laugh at her. Alex, come forward. I let Alex take control and we shift so we can spend the night running through the woods with Violet. She's fast, we stay behind her so we can watch her and enjoy the ease of her muscles as she leaps effortless and runs through the woods in complete freedom. I think we have her beat when we decided to put all we have in and show her what we can do. Little did we realize she was holding back as she sprints forward and out of view. We find her stood at the lake. The view of our mate standing there with the reflection of the water under the moonlight, I didn't think we could love her any more than we already did. I wake up to Lexi sleeping heavily wrapped up in my arms. The first shift is always exhausting, our bodies changing in such a drastic transformation uses a lot of energy. Normally we try to prepare for the first shift a little, increase the carbs, talk about what to expect, trying to feel a little prepared for an event that you can't really prepare for. Lexi didn't have any of that. I slide from underneath her and head downstairs, I want to make her some breakfast for when she wakes. Nate, you up? Jackson mind links me. I am. Everything okay? Mind if I come over? He sounds low. He sounds low. The hangover I'm sure he has won't help. Sure, just come on in. There's a light knock on the door as Jackson walks in. He looks tired, his hair looks like he's not stopped running his hands through it for hours and it's all stuck up. Morning. Breakfast? Lexi is still in bed. I don't know if I can stomach food, might have drank a little too much last night. A little? I raise my eye at him, food will make you feel better, here, eat I push a plate of food towards him. I know he needs to talk about last night, but I don't want to push him. Lexi shifted last night. What did she? That was her first, right? Yeah, it was her first. I was woken to her screaming on the floor. I don't know why she had never shifted before or what it was that caused it to happen last night. Maybe it was the ceremony. Accepting Luna is her accepting her wolf. It's the ultimate wolf acceptance. Maybe the ceremony was what she needed to finally break her wolf free. You're probably right. We know her wolf was trapped. Maybe there was nothing left to keep her wolf trapped when she embraced everything there is about it. Eventful night? Not just for us either. Jackson sighs. I know, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Lexi walks down the stairs. Lexi walks down the stairs. No to do about what? She walks over to us in the kitchen. Sorry did we wake you? I bend down to kiss her as she steals some food off my plate. No my stomach did, morning. She kisses me back and walks to grab herself a coffee and some food. She sits next to Jackson and looks at him, concern filling her face. Are you okay? Jackson looks at me and back at Lexi like he's not sure what he wants. Jackson? Jackson? I don't want to ruin the mood Lex, you only just got married yesterday. And as I remember you were stood next to my husband as his best man, you're his best friend, so if something is bothering you don't feel like you can't talk about it, I'm always here for you. He gives her a small smile and sighs. I found my mate last night. Did you? That's amazing. Isn't it? She asks as she senses the doubt in the room. I mean I guess it's supposed to be, unless your mate runs away from you and spends the night hiding and refusing to speak to you. Oh. Maybe it just took her by surprise and she didn't know what to do. Or maybe she took one look at me and the idea of being my mate was too much for her to be with someone that she doesn't like let alone want. Oh come on Jackson you know that can't be it. Oh come on Jackson you know that can't be it. 
You're the nicest, sweetest, most loyal man, I'm sure there is an explanation. If you've said you've not had chance to talk to her then maybe you just need that opportunity before you start putting yourself down. Maybe. Maybe. Who is it anyway? Do I know her? Was she one of the guests from the other packs? Jackson sits in silence, she looks at me, Jackson nods to let me know I can say. It's Rachel, we were already heading to the altar. Obviously she's was here with you so as she, Lauren and mom were heading over, they met up with us at the same time. Jackson proclaimed mate straight away, Rachel kind of freaked out, panicked and ran off to her room. Wasn't really much time to do anything as we were literally getting married. Is that why Michael said we needed to wait five more minutes? Yeah probably, my mom told us to take five so Jackson could have a minute. Yeah probably, my mom told us to take five so Jackson could have a minute. I'm sorry Lexi, I didn't mean to ruin your ceremony or wedding. Jackson's head is in his hands. Jackson Marshall don't talk such rubbish. She puts her hands on his face so he has to look at her, I don't think I've ever seen her scold anyone but me, a part of me is a little jealous seeing her touch another man, even if he is my beta and best friend. I also love that she loves him like I do, he's my family and he's hurting right now. You didn't ruin anything. Nothing was stopped, or didn't happen, it was an amazing night and I was completely oblivious to all this, for that I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're hurting and in pain especially while you were stood there supporting and celebrating Nate and I. I can't speak for Rachel, I know her a little but not much yet. What I can say from the little I know is that it seems she has not had it easy. She may just be scared and not know what this means for her. Can I talk to her about this before you panic too much? I don't want to scare her off or feel like I'm pressuring her into anything. I don't want to scare her off or feel like I'm pressuring her into anything. She can still reject me. My heart breaks for him. I can't imagine the pain of being rejected by your fated mate. It's not something that is overly common, but it isn't unheard of. Just because you are fated doesn't always mean it's right, although in my experience alone I've never come across it. Nate told me you shifted, how did it feel? Like I'm a badass. Jackson laughs, he looks a little better now he's got some food in him and spoken to us, I wish there was more I could do for him. Jackson is as close to being my brother as actually having one and I don't like feeling helpless. I'm going to head off, thanks for breakfast. I should go and talk to Rachel. I can't imagine how she must be feeling too. I should go and talk to Rachel, I can't imagine how she must be feeling too. First things first, how are you feeling? I walk round to her, step in between her legs as she wraps her arms around my waist. I walk round to her, step in between her legs as she wraps her arms around my waist. I feel amazing. I feel strong, powerful, loved, I honestly don't know how anything could get any better. My wolf and I are complete and I have the world's most sexy and amazing man as my husband and mate. What more could I ask for? I know yesterday was a lot, the first change is never easy, but the more you shift the easier it becomes, it will become just like walking eventually. I'm glad to hear because at one point I thought I was dying. I wonder why last night of all nights was my first shift? Jackson had a theory about that when I told him this morning. He thought it might be because the Luna ceremony is all about accepting everything about your wolf. Becoming Luna is not only acceptance of your mate but your duties as a wolf so maybe it broke the final piece of whatever it was that was holding you back. Once that was gone there was nothing stopping your wolf being free and as our Luna ceremonies are held on a full moon and the first shift is always on a full moon also, there was nothing to hold you back. It makes sense, is there really any way to know for sure though? Not really, all we need to know is that you're both free. Speaking of being free, I should go and see how Rachel is. You don't mind do you? I could do with running some patrols on the perimeter, my wolf senses are tingling, I'm sure Jackson would be glad of the distraction. Come home soon though, I want to spend the rest of the day just the two of us. I kiss her as I move to let her stand. I don't think Rachel speaks to anyone other than Lexi or my mom. I know she cowers whenever I'm near and I'm not sure why. I know Lexi mentioned something about bad experiences with past alphas but she didn't know much else. I haven't said anything to Lexi yet, I'm not sure in myself what it is but there is something about her that I haven't managed to figure out. 
Maybe I could sense there was going to be something with her and my pack, especially now Jackson is her mate. It's part of why I want to run patrols, I need to check the perimeters for myself, I can sense something, I haven't worked out what's making me feel on edge but both Alex and I feel restless. I know I will only be able to feel any kind of ease if I can be sure I've checked over every inch of our territory and it is secured myself. Until I have a little better understanding of where this feeling has come from I don't want to worry her over something that could be nothing more than paranoia. Lexi. I knock on Rachel's door and wait. Lexi. Hi, is everything okay? Yeah, can I come in? I walk into Rachel's room and have a seat by the window. How are you? Shouldn't I be asking that of you? Was the wedding everything you hoped? I'd never really been one to dream about weddings and happily ever after. I'd never really been one to dream about weddings and happily ever after. Not something I ever thought was on the cards for me. But then I also never imagined Nate and I had no idea about wolves and mates. I laugh. You didn't know about mates? Nope, I was asleep in Nate's bed, his mom had said I could crash for the night, I didn't have anywhere to go and he was away, didn't know he was heading home early, felt someone at the side of me, screamed, fell out of bed and there was Nate looking just as confused as me. I smile at the memory of what I now know very well is his bed head. I heard a voice say mate, it sounded like my voice but wasn't my voice, don't know what scared me more. I about bolted out of the door in nothing more than a shirt. So you didn't take Nate as your mate straight away? So you didn't take Nate as your mate straight away? No. I didn't know anything about it. I wasn't really sure what was happening. All I knew is that I had a strange pull towards him. Like an electricity if we brushed past each other. But there was a lot more that I had to learn that I didn't know about. Nate knew there was something else, having to tell a wolf who didn't know she was a wolf that she was a wolf wasn't easy. But you said you'd never imagined having someone like Nate? Getting married? I was an orphan. I'd spent my whole life alone, bounced from foster home to foster home, shelters, sometimes the street, job to job. I used to hitchhike for days to the next town, never really having a destination just going because I had nothing to stay for. I'd spent my whole life with no one caring who I was, where I was. It was just me. I could never imagine my life being fortunate enough that anyone would want to be in it, let alone in it with me, or care what happened. I'd been hitchhiking when I came across Maggie's diner. I was exhausted, hungry, I had enough money to get a coffee. Thought I could sit for a minute. I never in my wildest dreams imagined I'd go home with her find a family, friends, people who genuinely cared for me. Not for nothing, I had grown up believing someone only ever helps if they want something back, but here, help is just given, because they can, because it's the right thing to do. Nate. Nate was my biggest fear. Not only did I start to like this guy, he seemed genuine, but I fell in love, and fast, I'd never been in love before. I know a lot of it was the mate bond but that had to come from somewhere too. Then there was a whole new fear. What if he didn't want me? How would I live without him? Would I survive a broken heart? But I was missing the bigger picture. I wasn't alone. I know relationships are never guaranteed but with the mate bond, they kind of are. I had someone I could talk these fears with, who listened to me comfort me, supports me, holds me up, lets me cry, I am safe, and that's because of him. Because I know I'll never be alone again, that he will always protect me. This pack will always protect me. That's what family does. You know about Jackson? He came by this morning. Filled me in. He doesn't want you to feel pressured into anything, he's just worried that you didn't have anyone to talk to. He thinks it's because you don't want him, you're disappointed that he's been chosen as your mate. I see her face pale at my words, I don't say anything more. Judging from the hurt that just crossed her face that's the last thing she intended so that's a good start I hope. I don't mean to hurt him. It's not about him. It's me. I don't deserve anyone. I can't be someone's someone.
We sit in silence, I don't want to push her into anything she's not comfortable with. I'm sure her emotions are in turmoil right now as it is. I just want her to know she doesn't need to sit here alone and feel all this. My last pack, it was nothing like here. My alpha was not a kind man. You did as you were told or else. There was a pecking order in place for a reason and you stuck to it. No questions asked. Especially if you didn't want to be punished for it. I'm starting to see this is not just an act, a play to make people think you're safe, you're good. I've seen the way Nate looks at you, the way Maggie and Michael are around each other, around the pack. I know this is a good home, a family, I just don't think I deserve it. Why do you think that? I'm not worthy of anything more. I'm not worthy of anything more. Rachel, all I can say is that, the moon goddess bestows on us our wolves, our paths, our mates. She knows where our hearts lie. Our true intentions. If she didn't believe we were worthy she wouldn't bestow these gifts upon us. A mate bond is a gift, it's the person in your life that makes everything else before seem like it meant something. It's the end goal. Before you make any decisions about anything, just take some time, maybe get to know Jackson. He is a lovely guy, he wouldn't be Nate's beta for anything less than perfect. I know he'd just like to talk. If you ever want to talk, someone to listen to, please come find me, or Maggie. We're here for you, whatever you decide just as much as anyone else in our pack. I give her a small smile and leave. I think more than enough has been said, she needs some time to herself and I need to find Nate. I walk down to Nate's office to see if he's back from his patrol. Empty. Nate? Nate? Where are you? I mind link him. I mind link him. Everything okay? Everything okay? Yes, I'm fine, just wondering where you were. Northeast border by the river, want me to come home? I can finish up, be home in about 40 minutes. How long do you need to be at that border for? Another 20 minutes maybe, I just got here but I can ask Jackson to come over and finish. No that's fine, you finish up. I'll come to you. Might take you a while to walk here baby, it's not the easiest terrain. Who said anything about walking? Who said anything about walking? Are you sure? You haven't shifted alone before and I can be there to help if you like? Let me see how I get on. I may need to take you up on that offer. If you're sure. I can wait here for you. Erm. How exactly do I do it? Maybe this wasn't my smartest idea yet, maybe I needed to wait for Nate. Just feel Violet, sense her, let her come forward, relax, breathe and let her take over. Now that she free her ability to shift should be second nature. Okay. We got this. I head outside to the back of the house and start to walk into the woods. Don't shift in front of anyone. Alex growls at me. I'm already in the woods, Alex. I'm already in the woods, Alex. Alone. Good. No one sees you naked but us. I roll my eyes but can't help but laugh at his reaction. Okay, Violet. Are you ready? I think so. Are you? I'm a little apprehensive about the pain. It won't be as bad as last night, I promise. Try to remember the feel as we were running, the freedom, the strength in our legs as we kicked off, the speed. I follow Nate's advice, breathe deep, think of last night and let Violet come forward. I can feel the shift happening, it's faster this time, I go with it, concentrate on the movements of my body rather than the pain. As I open my eyes I see my paws and realize we did it. It wasn't as painful this time that's for sure, I'm not sure I'm ever going to get used to it though. We sniff the air looking for Nate's scent. Found him. Violet calls. We head off, up the forest looking for Alex and Nate. Running up to find him, the thrill is just as exhilarating as last night, only now I can sense and see even more. I trust my limbs more, I can feel the ease, but power in Violet. This is what she does, this is what she was made for. I find Alex in a clearing stalking an invisible target. I stand and watch him, I see his ear twitch towards me and he looks over at me. Should have known I wouldn't be able to sneak up on him. He walks over to me, nuzzles his nose into my neck, licks at my face. Mate. I didn't mean to distract you. I was done. 
How did Lexi's talk with Rachel go? Okay, I think her last alpha wasn't a very nice man from what I can gather. You knew your place and stuck to it and you did as you were told or you were punished. I think she believes she doesn't deserve a mate. I don't know why. I did try to encourage her to at least speak to Jackson, start from there and see what she thinks. Alex nods, I know he's worried about Jackson. What were you doing? Checking the property line for signs of breach, smelling to see if there were any scents I didn't recognize. Is there something you're worried about? Is there something you're worried about? Technically no. Just a feeling. Nate and I are just being cautious. Always protecting, huh? You, forever. I nip at his jaw, see the arousal swimming in Nate's eyes, lick his face. Race you back. Race you back. And I turn leaving him stood there as I race back home laughing to myself. And I turn leaving him stood there as I race back home laughing to myself. Tease. He growls as I feel him catching up behind me both weaving in and out of each other as we head back home. Lexi. Nate and I are sitting on the sofa when I feel him tense underneath me. What's up? What's up? Jackson has asked if he can come over. Okay, sure. With Rachel. I sit up intrigued. I sit up intrigued. That's a good sign, right? Judging from the look on your face, you don't think so? I don't know, let's not jump to conclusions. There's a knock on the door and in walks Jackson with Rachel almost cowering behind him. Hi guys. I smile to both of them, Rachel doesn't look at me and Jackson gives me a small side smile. Everything okay? Firm, um, there's something we need to talk about. Sure, grab a chair. Sure, grab a chair. Jackson sits closely to Rachel, almost protectively, I wonder if they've spoken. Has she accepted him as her mate? She hasn't looked up from her feet since she walked in. Before we start, I need you to promise me you'll let everything be said before you react. Jackson is looking over at Nate, almost pleadingly, why do I feel like what's about to be said is going to be really bad? Nate just nods, I can see Alex at the surface too, I know he's already trying to keep control. I know you've struggled with control and Alex, please, just remember it's me, trust me, trust I love you both and I would never, never, allow any harm to come to anyone, especially not my Luna. I go and sit next to Nate, I already know I'm going to have to help control him by the desperate look Jackson is giving me. I go and sit next to Nate, I already know I'm going to have to help control him by the desperate look Jackson is giving me. It's alright Jackson, we trust you, I trust you. It's alright Jackson, we trust you, I trust you. He sighs heavily, leans back slightly as he runs his hand through his hair. Rachel? She starts sobbing, she looks at me, her eyes are filled with so much pain, sorrow and fear, my heart breaks for her. I want to go over and hug her but I know Nate needs me. I can feel the tension radiating off him, I know something is coming and I need to make sure he doesn't blow this because he's not fully in control yet. I'm so sorry Lexi. You've done so much for me. Saved me. I never meant for it to be like this. I promise I never meant to hurt anyone. I had no choice. It's all right, Rachel. I say. I say. No, it isn't. It really isn't. I had no idea how much I'd come to care for your friendship, how much I wanted it, how much I wanted to be a part of this pack. Her eyes glance quickly at Nate and cower back to her feet. Nate squeezes my hand. I know he wants to speak, but I know he's afraid if he does he will scare her more from talking. He knows she's already scared of him and hasn't had a good past with alphas. Why don't you start from the beginning? I say for him she takes a deep breath. I was sent here, to find you, to watch you and report back. What? Report to who? Watch what? My alpha, I don't know why, he wanted me to watch you, find out about you, who was here, who might protect you, what your defenses were like, if you ever left the grounds alone. Nate stands up defensively, he lets out the loudest growl, both Rachel and Jackson cower, Rachel in fear, Jackson with respect to his alpha's authority. I can feel the panic wash over me at the thought someone is after me and I've no idea why or who. You can report back to whoever sent you that no one will ever come near my wife and I will kill anyone whoever dares. Nate roars, it snaps me back, he's close to shifting I can feel his body on the edge of the change, he's losing control over Alex. 
I stand up so I'm in front of him, part to protect Rachel and Jackson, part to get him to focus on me. It's Alex that's forward, his eyes are black with rage, I've never seen him like this. Alex. Look at me. Alex. Breathe. I'm right here, feel me touching you, I'm safe Alex. He can't hear me, or if he can it's not working, he's just staring at Rachel, she's cowering behind Jackson who's protecting her. That isn't going to help. Seeing his beta protecting the threat to his mate. I need to think fast. I grab his face in my hands and pull his lips to mine, I kiss him, hold my mouth to his, try to get him to kiss me back. He's startled initially, the longer I hold him the more he can't help himself, he starts to kiss me back, I can feel the tension relax ever so slightly. I take the kiss deeper, feel him give in to me, relax more. He wraps his arms around my waist tight as he rests his forehead to mine and breathes deep. When I look at him Nate is back. Thank you. I spin round in his arms and see Jackson relax, he looks at me and nods his thanks. I spin round in his arms and see Jackson relax, he looks at me and nods his thanks. Nate doesn't let go of his hold on me, anything he needs to help him keep calm. Explain. Nate says. I don't know a lot, I was dropped in the town, I'd been there for two weeks living on the streets. I was shown your picture, told to make myself known to you force my way into the pack and once I was here report anything back, get close to you. I couldn't do it, I would just walk around and sit in that cafe, I was waiting for them to come and get me. I knew I had failed them. I knew they were watching me and I hadn't even tried to find you. Then you were there. Sat there opposite me. I was terrified they'd see you with me. Is that why you kept looking around? Yes. I didn't want them to see you, or me with you. Nobody came. When you left, no one came to me. I wondered if they maybe hadn't seen you. Weren't watching me. I thought if I could get away from them, ask for help. That's why I came to your car. Is that why you were afraid of Nate? Erm. Um, no. I'm afraid of him because he's an alpha. I know what alphas do, the pack order, my only dealings with alphas have been to complete tasks or take into their bedrooms. It's Jackson that growls this time, I can see in his eyes he's fighting with his wolf ash for control. We sit in silence as Jackson tries to regain control. He looks at Rachel who looks like she might cry, he holds her and she carries on. Once I was here I didn't know what to do. If no one saw me leave, they might think I've just run, I haven't spoken to anyone, so if they find out I'm here, if they find me at all, they'll kill me, that I'm not afraid of, I'm afraid of them coming here and getting to any of you, especially if they've followed me here, it's all my fault. You haven't spoken to anyone since you've been here? You haven't spoken to anyone since you've been here? Nate asks. No. That's why I've barely left my room. I don't want anyone to see me if they are watching. And Jackson? She looks at me. When Lexi came to speak to me I knew she was right. I needed to speak to him. I don't deserve a mate, especially one who's a part of this pack. Whose family is who I was sent to spy on, I don't want anyone to get hurt because of me. I don't deserve a pack, a family, a mate. That's why I panicked at the wedding, it's like some cruel trick, to make me hurt someone else I care about, because I will never be good enough to deserve someone as pure as Jackson. Her words break my heart. I leave Nate's arms and walk to her. I kneel in front of her and take her hands. Rachel. No matter what you may think. No one deserves to be treated as you have. You deserve a pack that protects you. An alpha who doesn't abuse his power or you. I can't even begin to imagine what you have been through, or for how long. What I do know is that you are here now. You are in my pack, and I will protect you. I will not let you live your life in fear anymore. It's Jackson who swoops me up into his arms and hugs me. It takes me a second to realize as he squeezes me tight. Thank you Lexi, for being you, for being our Luna. I laugh as he puts me back down, look over to Nate who has stepped a little closer, I'm guessing when Jackson moved in. He still looks PD but more determined than at our present company, he rolls his eyes at Jackson. Rachel. Rachel. Are you absolutely sure that you have not spoken to anyone outside this pack about Lexi or anything else? 
I swear to the moon goddess herself, I have not spoken nor seen a soul from my other pack since two days before I even saw Lexi. He visibly relaxes a little, I know Nate, he would not hold this against Rachel, not knowing the abuse she's suffered but I think it will take a little while for him to fully let his guard down around her. Do you think that's why you and Alex have been on edge? Probably. I was a little weary when Rachel arrived. No offense. Maybe it was other pack members I could smell, sense, on you, but the boarders have had a hint of movement. Something I don't recognize, I've been on high alert since the marking a little of me put it down to that. Glad I stuck with my gut on that one. No one has crossed into our border, but I'm certain now that someone has been scouting the area, now I know why. Do you know why you were sent here? Why, Lexi? What they want? Nate asked Rachel. No, I've no idea. Obviously no one was going to tell me any real any information, but they didn't even tell me if there was something specific they wanted, I've never heard anything either, whispers or talk around the pack. It was just like they woke up one day and suddenly you were there. I'm sorry I know that's not helpful. Do you think they're the same people who tried to kill her? Do you think they're the same people who tried to kill her? Jackson asks Nate. What? Someone tried to kill you? Yes. Jackson answers. Someone ran her off the road, almost killed her. Why do you know something? Well, no. Technically. It's just, well, one morning a few months back one of the pack cars was damaged. I don't know any details just that one day it was fine, the next it wasn't. It could be a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences. Nate says. Me either. So what do we do now? Why me? We increase patrols, we tighten security. Lexi, you don't leave sight. I know how it sounds, but until we know more, we can't chance it. We don't know that they want or why. If you need to leave, either my dad, Jackson, or myself need to be with you. Well, that sounds fun. I roll my eyes. Nate looks a little stressed. I know, it's okay. I know you're just trying to protect me, I just wish we knew why. I know, it's okay, I know you're just trying to protect me, I just wish we knew why. What's the name of your pack? Your Alpha? Silver Moon Pack. Under Alpha Lucian Stone. I feel like I know that name, I don't know why, it feels like deja vu, I just don't know why. Times 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 Nate times times times. Thanks for your help Andrew, if you hear anything let me know will you? I put the phone down and run my hands over my face, exhausted. I had called every alpha I knew asking them about the Silver Moon Pack and Lucian Stone and got nowhere. I couldn't understand how a whole pack could be in the area and no one know about it. I was on edge, I'd been on edge for days since Rachel had come over. I'm still PD at her, only in that I didn't trust my gut and push harder on her, but I know that would have gotten me nowhere, she's too fragile. She was abused by her old pack treated like a possession rather than a person. Anger rises up in me to think of alphas abusing their pack. We are supposed to protect our people, keep them from harm, not cause them harm. Alex and I have been almost 50-50 in control since that night, I've given up trying to take over anymore. I know he's on edge and worried we didn't spot the threat to Lexi and I don't disagree with him. I know she's a little frustrated at not being allowed to go anywhere. She knows everyone is watching her even when she's alone, I just can't chance it. We have no idea why they are interested in her and technically we haven't confirmed that Stone is actually behind all this. Fuck. This is infuriating. We need a release. Let's find mate. Alex says. You may actually be onto something there. I mind Link Lexi. Hey darling, where are you? I was just heading up to the pack house. Everything okay? Want to run away? Yes. Meet me out back. I mind Link Jackson to let him know I'm heading out for a bit and to keep an eye on things. He's been a little better since Rachel told us everything. He'd gone to see her after Lexi has spoken to her, just to say he wasn't looking to push being mates on her if it really wasn't what she wanted and she broke down. Told him everything. He convinced her to come and tell us. That we wouldn't react the way she thought, she could trust us. I'm glad she did. I wasn't happy about it but I understood she had no option and now she's as much at risk as Lexi is. 
It seems to have calmed her enough that her and Jackson are talking more and seeing him happy makes me happy, Rachel seems to be better for it too. She's come out around the grounds more, talked to more pack members, had a meal with them too I think. By the time I walk outside Lexi is already waiting for me. I take her hand and lead her into the woods. I start to undress her, her eyes instantly darkening with arousal, I can't help but be aroused how easily she wants me, it's exactly how I feel for her. As much as I normally am all for stripping you and making the most of it. I wink at her. I thought maybe Alex and Violet could take over some of the responsibilities for a while and let us enjoy just being. She reaches on her tiptoes and kisses me as her hand slides down my shirt and starts unbuttoning them. Smart and sexy, I am one lucky wolf. She bites my lower lip as she steps back and strips off the rest of her clothes. Alex is bouncing around like a puppy about to go for a walk. I know he's needed this the last couple of days, to feel like he's done his part in protecting Lexi too. We both shift and run off into the woods. It feels freeing. The power in my legs as we push ourselves through the woods, over the fallen trees, running together, side by side, I know Violet isn't going as fast as she can, not that I've said it out loud, but we both know she's quicker than I am. I jump in front of her to throw her off guard and laugh to myself as she nips at my leg. She speeds up to overtake me and darts right in front of me so I almost trip over my own paws. The playfulness is uplifting, it's what we both needed. To just be. We run until we ache, stop by a brook for some water, enjoy the sun shining down on us as we sit in a field of wildflowers. Violet sniffs the flowers. Thank you, I didn't realize how much I needed this. Violet says. Me either. I tug her to pull her down so she's laid beside me. We lay there, enjoying the quiet, enjoying being near each other, warm under the sun. Is there no way of finding out all packs, like is there not like a wolf library somewhere that holds all the names of packs and alphas? Violet asks. Ha, huh, if it was only that easy. I mean we have our histories, we have access to a large portion of bloodlines and alphas, family trees and descendants, but one that details every pack, every alpha, every country. No. There's nothing like that. Plus we move a lot, a wolf might find a mate that belongs to another pack, they might move there or vice versa. Some packs merge together to form alliances for strength, others may do it if numbers are small for safety, usually all prearranged, alphas challenges alphas for control is a huge move and not one that's done lightly. Why's that? Because you can't have two alphas. Alphas are mostly born, the strength, the control, the need to lead is as much a part of you as blood, DNA. If you're challenged the instinct kicks in, if you are challenged the loosing alpha is normally always killed, it's very rare they survive if they loose. Wolf takes over, it's nature, it's out of our hands. Violet sits up like she's just been electrocuted. What the hell? What's up? The books. The names? What? What books? In the library. The books Lexi looked through when we were first looking into curses. There was a book with the history of wolves on. Names. Pax Alphas. I swear the name Stone was on there. Can you remember what it said? No. I'm not even sure that it was the same name. I remember seeing it and something about it caught my eye. Kind of the same the first time Rachel said the name. Worth another look though, right? Come on. We can head back now if you like. We both know you're only going to sit there with Lexi wondering about this until we actually go and look at the book. She licks my face, nudges me with her nose. You know us too well. I just roll my eyes at her as we start to walk back to the pack house. We walk back to our clothes and shift, dressing as we head back to the house. We walk down to the library. Do you remember which book it was? Not really. I'd looked through so many. They were all starting to merge together. There was a huge family tree in the middle of the book though. Maybe just flick through and see if any of these have that. I don't think they've moved since I was last down here. I was trying to have a system so I knew what I'd looked at and what I hadn't. All the books must have had something in them about wolves, entrapment or curses because Maggie had lifted them out and gone through them and that's what we were trying to find information about. We both start flipping through books, trying to find anything that looks like pack family ties without having to sit and read each one. This looks pretty extensive. I take the book over to Lexi. 
that's it. She starts looking down the pages. Here? The Silver Moon Pack. King Regent Nicoli William Alexander Stone married Princess Sophia Aurelia Elizabeth Stone. They had four children. Son, Prince Regent Edward William Henry Stone. Daughter, Princess Charlotte Marie Catherine Stone. Daughter, Princess Amelia Evelyn Grace. Son, Prince Lucian Robert James Stone. Eldest son Edward William Henry Stone married Cassandra Helen Steeple. One son, no name, deceased and one daughter, no name, deceased. That's him and it. Didn't Rachel say Lucian Stone? Under the Silver Moon Pack. If the eldest son is dead then that would mean he was next in line as Alpha doesn't it? Yes. I wonder if she's heard of any of these other names. We should go ask her. We both leave, taking the books with us, as we come into the kitchen Rachel and Jackson are sat at the table. Perfect. Just who we needed. Nate says, he walks over to Rachel and shows her the book. Do any of these names look familiar? She looks at Jackson and then the book. Yes. Alpha Nicoli was our Alpha before he died, Lucian took over as his brother had died not long before. There were always rumors. Rumors? About what? Alpha Nicoli. His eldest son was always next in line for Alpha, he'd been brought up and taught as Alpha in waiting but everyone knew that Lucian wanted it. Edward died and his family died, not long after Alpha Nicoli died too. Obviously nothing was ever proven, it was put down as gossip but with the Alpha gone and his eldest son and his son also gone the title naturally went to Lucian. How did they die? Lexi asks. They said Alpha Nicoli died of a broken heart. He and Edward were very close, they went into his room one morning and he was just dead. They say his heart just stopped. Soon after he died both the sisters were sent away. Never heard of again. How did the brother die? Edward? Car crash. He, his wife, their son and daughter were all in the car, said the car lost control, they all died instantly. Things were never the same in the pack after that. Especially once Lucian took over. His father's beta left suddenly, I think even before Nicoli died, or very soon after, Lucian wasted no time in making it known he was the new Alpha either. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Jackson says to Nate. What did you say the names of Lexi's parents were? Lexi gasps at the sight of me as she sits down, she's pale as a ghost, her hands shaking as she looks at me with tears in her eyes. I'm sorry, baby. I don't get it. What happened? Rachel asks. We did some research on Lexi's parents. They died in a car crash, but their official death certificates were forged. Their names changed. Their names were Edward and Cassie. Jackson explains to Rachel. So, Edward is my father. Nicole. My grandfather. They're all dead which means Alpha Lucian is my uncle. But the book says that Edward's children died and there are no names? Rachel asks. Lexi's wolf was hidden from her. My mom thinks someone trying to protect their child would do such a thing. What if your parents knew you were in danger, tried to hide you, hide your wolf? That's why they were killed. To protect me. We don't know that, Lex. Jackson tries to console. We do know your parents' names were changed. Lucian is Alpha, sent Rachel here to watch you. Let me make some call, see if I can find out more, before we jump to any conclusions. Lexi just nods. We all know what we've stumbled on here. It's just too much to say it out loud yet, if we're right then it would mean Lexi's uncle killed her parents, her brother, covered it up, maybe her grandfather, and is trying to kill her too. Lexi. My head is spinning, I'm trying to focus on just breathing. In. Out. In. Out. How is this even possible? I have a family? They're alive? They're trying to kill me? They killed my parents? Surely this isn't real. We've made a huge mistake. This is all some horrible misunderstanding. A road we've gone down that isn't really the right one. I look up at Nate. I don't have the words I need to say to tell him how I'm feeling. The overwhelming sense of losing all control. We're going home. He stands up swiftly as he walks over to me, practically pulls me up by my waist, 
I can't do anything but hold on to him as he walks me home. As we get closer to the house he picks me up bridal style and I just bury my head into his neck as my arms wrap around him, and I start crying. I can't stop, I vaguely register him sitting us down, pulling me into his lap. The tears just flow, the heartbreak, the loss, the grief, the fear, everything finally hits me and I can't hold it back anymore. Nate just holds me close to him, wrapped up in him. I don't know how long I cling on to him, how long I cry, I feel empty, I have no more tears left, just the pain of the harsh reality of it all. At some point I must have fallen asleep from exhaustion. I open my eyes and realize I'm in bed, Nate is snoring gently at the side of me. I get up to use the bathroom, wash some water on my face, it feels hard from the dried tears. I walk back to the bedroom and Nate wraps his arm around me as soon as I'm back in the bed. Sorry, I didn't mean to wake you. Are you okay? No. I don't think I have any more tears left in me tonight, but I'm not okay. I'm so sorry baby. I just don't understand why. I wish I had the answers to give you. I mean I haven't gotten this wrong have I? Looked at this and come to the wrong conclusion? It really does look like my uncle killed my parents and tried to kill us, maybe killed my grandfather, and now he realizes I'm alive he's trying to kill me again? I'm not going to let that happen. I will not let anything happen to you Lexi. Nate pulls me in tighter. I always thought being an orphan was done to bad luck. Wrong place, wrong time, everything that we've found out, the theory of my wolf being hidden for protection. That would mean my parents thought we were in danger right? Thought that there was a possibility they could be killed? It just makes the grief so much stronger. I know they were my parents but I have no memory of them. They're like strangers, yet these strangers tried to protect my life, knowing they were targets themselves. They would have done it all out of love. You can't be sorry for being loved. As awful as this information has been, it put you on a certain path that day, that path leads you to me, that I can never be sorry for. I can't imagine my life without you. As I lay on Nate's chest, the movement of his breathing my only focus I feel myself starting to fall asleep, I'm emotionally and mentally exhausted from today. OMG, Nate. What? I think he was almost asleep. There was no report for children in the accident report about my parents. What do you mean? The details on the crash that killed my parents, it didn't mention the deaths of any children. Well no, but it wouldn't have, you survived, the state took over trying to find somewhere for you to live, your records would have become their responsibility. Nate. According to that family tree my parents had a son and a daughter. So if the book said I'd died and well, I didn't. Do you think that could mean my brother didn't either? And what about my dad's sisters, I guess my aunts? We've not heard any mention of them. Do you think he killed them too? I honestly don't know baby, we should definitely look into it though. Now we have a name, a pack, it might make it easier, I can call my contacts again. Last time we were asking them if they just knew of a pack new in the area. I will speak to Jackson, it was his guy who found out about your parents' records being tampered with. Sleep now darling. I wake in the morning and Nate isn't there. I walk downstairs to find him and Jackson in the kitchen. Morning Lex, you okay? I give Jackson a small smile and go to grab a coffee, Nate pulls me in and kisses my forehead. We've already called a few pack alphas about Lucy and Stone to see if anyone's heard of him or the pack itself and Jackson's put some feelers out over your brother with some of his contacts. I just nod at them to let them know I heard. I see them both glance at each other. I know this probably isn't what you want to hear Lex but your grand had had two daughters as well, so there is the potential that you have more family than you even knew about, we just need to find them. Jackson says. What so they can try and kill me too? We don't know that baby. Nate says. I know they're just trying to help but it doesn't. How can anything help when knowing your family were killed by their own and are now coming after you for simply existing make anything better? I need to go for a run. I walk out the back, pull Nate's shirt off to shift. I feel the anger in him at the shock of me stripping when Jackson is in the house and know it's more Alex but I don't care. I need Violet to take over, to feel her strength, 
her instincts running through my body right now so I can shut off my head. I just run, as fast and as hard as I can, no destination in mind, I run until my legs are aching, but I push on. I feel Nate check in every now and then, he doesn't say anything, just taps into mind link to make sure I'm okay, and leaves us to it. I have no plan, no limit, I just need the space. Violet alternates between running and resting, when the thoughts start coming back, when there is too much thinking, too much emotion she picks up and runs, until all we can focus on is the burning of our lungs. Twilight is coming in and we decide to head back home. We walk most of the way. Enjoying the transition from day to dusk. The slight cooling of the air, the sound of the nocturnal animals beginning to stir. Nate is sat on the swing waiting for us. When he sees us he opens a blanket between his arms. I shift and walk to him naked, as I climb into his arms he wraps the blanket around me and pulls me into his chest. We sit and watch the night fall and swinging on the chair. I'm sorry. You don't need to be sorry baby, I understand, I just wanted to make sure you were okay. I'm here when you're ready. It's just too much. Too much pain, too much hurt. I think I preferred it when I didn't know anything and I was just an orphan. To find out this side of me, my family. I have my family, I found you, I don't need more, I don't want anything else. Do you think that's what this could be about? Thinking I want something with the pack or the family? Well your dad was the next in line for Alpha. Which means both you and your brother would have been eligible for Alpha too. It's not always who was born first, some are just chosen, sometimes it's both, if the goddess has plans for them to be alphas for another pack. I'm only guessing here, but with you being out of the picture that would then fall to your uncle and maybe that's what this was all about. Is that why I could mark you? Perhaps. Alpha blood runs in you. But you can't have two alphas in a pack can you? You can have two alphas in control but sometimes the alpha blood is in you and you choose not to act upon it and take acceptance of another alpha or find another role, maybe the beta. But is that really worth killing for? The alpha strength is very compelling, it can be intoxicating, we're faster, stronger, bigger than any of the other wolves in our pack. It's power, and power can go to people's head. But I don't want any of that, I don't want anything. I know but he doesn't, it might not be a case of want, he might believe that if it was meant to be yours it will be as long as you're around, whether you want it not. When power becomes obsession even the once most rational people cannot be rationalized with. Nate kisses the top of my head. Mom brought some food over, I can heat it up and we can spend the rest of the evening under the starts if you'd like. I lean my head back to give Nate my mouth, he leans forward and kisses me. I'd like that. Lucian. What do you mean you can't find her? It has been weeks. She hasn't just vanished. You better find her soon or the next person who is going to go missing is going to be you. Yes, Alpha? The Omegas say as they run out of the room. Idiots. We will find her. Both of them. We won't stop until we do. Ace says. It's not good enough. If that pathetic excuse for a wolf has told them anything then they will know that we are after her and getting to her will be almost impossible. Lucien roars. I don't think she is with them. There is no way that she could stay there knowing what she was tasked to do. If they found out they wouldn't trust her and would throw her out if they don't kill her. We watched her movements for two weeks. They never came into the town and she did nothing. Just cowered on the streets. You better be right. You better be right. Lucien growls as he storms around the room. This should have never fag happened. I thought all of this was over. If anyone find out this will be shit show. Alf, I don't think you need to worry. From what we know she has no idea about anything other than that she lost her parents as a child and has been alone since. She has never tried to look for any family or even looked into her parents' deaths. What about the autopsy report? Has anyone been asking about that? I don't believe so. Find out for sure. Lucian snaps. She was never supposed to find her mate. It will unravel everything, everything I have worked for, everything I have done. Her wolf could be free right now for all we know. Even if it is, her wolf would know even less. Not if her wolf is an alpha. Which would only raise questions of lineage. True, but that's if, her wolf is an alpha, she was not the firstborn. There has been no scent from their borders of a presence of another alpha, just the pack alpha. Surely if she has her wolf, 
she would have shifted by now also, and we would have been able to sense another Alpha, especially an Alpha tied to this pack as current pack members. They would not be able to have two reigning Alphas in the pack, especially ones that made it to each other. It is unheard of. Right, right, no that's good, that's good, can't have two Alphas, she can't be an Alpha. Lucian spins round to face Ace. It doesn't fag change anything though. I still need her dead. Dead is unquestionable. Can't be any challenging if she is dead. And once she's dead it will kill the Alpha too or he'll at least never recover or be as strong again so we don't need to worry about retaliation from the pack, not that they'll ever know where it came from. You should have just finished the job when her car was run off the road. Yes Alpha. They were concerned there was another car coming. They didn't want to be caught and lead anyone back here. They were confident her injuries were significant. Clearly not significant enough. Or we would know her Alpha was suffering and wouldn't still be doing patrols of the borders. Lexi, I've been on edge and restless for days. Sleeping but not sleeping. Exhausted but wired. I feel a total disconnect and like I can't find my ground. I feel like I'm spinning in all directions and I can't grab hold of anything to stop me. I'm stood in the shower. I'm not even washing, I'm just letting the water flow over me as I stand there, my mind a million miles away but at the same time nowhere. I feel Nate's arms wrap around my waist. He rests his chin on my shoulder. Gently trailing kissing up my collarbone and up my neck. I tilt my head to the side to expose my neck to him. He kisses my mark and I sigh as I relax into his body. The feel of his chest on my back, his muscles wrapping around me, his arms flex to hold me tight. Being in his arms stops the spinning. Everything. My head. My emotions. Being here, feeling his chest rise and fall with each breath. Wrapped up in him. Safe. He's my anchor. I turn in his arms and take his face in my hands. See his beautiful blue eyes staring back at me with so much love and patience. I know this whole situation hasn't been easy on him either. Feeling helpless, not having the answers. Knowing there is a danger out there to me, us, and feeling like he hasn't been able to protect us as we don't know enough. Yet through it all he's been here. Holding me up. Just being there for me when I was ready, when I needed him. No questions asked. I kiss him gently, run my hands through his hair. Enjoy the taste of his mouth mixed with the water from the shower. He opens his mouth more so my tongue can taste him more. His arms wrapping tighter around me. I take our kiss deeper as I reach up on my toes to close the distance between us. Nate picks me up to help and I wrap my legs around his waist. He takes his mouth down to my nose as he sucks gently, nipping with his teeth, licking the water off my chest as he moves to my other. My head falls back as I moan as his tongue circles around them making them harder, feeling his cock hard against my opening. I move my hips gently back and forth, teasing his tip with my opening. He slides into me, slowly, only his tip and then he's out again. Over and over, he edges in just his tip, starts stretching me and then he's out of me again. I growl in frustration at him. Look at him annoyed and seeing him smirking at me, Alex swirling in his eyes with him. Stop fag teasing me. He growls at me as he pushes my back up against the wall. His tip just at my opening. What do you want, baby? You. Stop teasing me. Look at us. I look at his beautiful eyes swimming with both my Nate and Alex. I look at his beautiful eyes swimming with both my Nate and Alex. I love when they share. I get both my halves as my one. I lick my lips as I watch his mouth part with his breathing. I know he's holding back I feel a sudden rush of all my emotions flooding back and the feeling of needing grounded by the only person on this planet who can keep me sane when the world around me is crumbling. Love me. Nate mouth is on mine as he slides inside me slowly, I moan at the release of finally feeling him complete me. My thighs tighten around his hips and he moves slowly out, slowly back and feeling me stretch as he inches in deeper and deeper. My body molding to him, only him, like I was made for him. It's so slow, it's borderline teasing, but filled with love, every movement brings us connected back to each other. Fixing everything wrapped up in each other. I feel myself building slowly. Each thrust back inside filling me, hitting the spot, edging me closer, but not allowing me to fall over. Nate. 
I breathe against his lips. My nails dig into his shoulders. He pulls himself out, teases my opening with his tip, then he slams into me, hard, deep. Right onto my G-spot. I almost see stars, I'm caught off guard. I cry out as he does it again. Sliding out slowly and slamming back into me right against my G-spot. My nails are digging into his back both for support from the force and the pleasure building. He pins my hands up above my head against the wall, pulls back a little so my back is arched as he slams into me and bites down on my news, I scream as he slams into me, it's deeper like this, I can't move with my arms above my head and my legs wrapped around his waist. I tighten my center as I get close, feel Nate get harder, his balls tighten as he gets close while never stopping his torture of slamming into me and pinning me. I tighten myself around him as I tighten my thighs at the same time and arch my back. Fuck. Nate hisses as he empties inside me but thrusts into me as he catches me and pulls me to his body and I crash around him. My whole body falling around him as he slips to shower floor, me still in his lap. We sit under the warmth of the shower, Nate still inside me. My hands running through his hair, enjoying the feeling of calm that has washed over me. Thank you. I whisper. For what? For what? For being everything I need, always. Forever, baby. He lifts himself out of me as he moves me carrying me out of the shower, he sits me on the counter and grabs a towel, wraps me in it and carries me to the bed. I dry myself and then we climb into bed, pulling me into him, I lay my head on his chest, breathe him in, the movement of his chest makes me feel sleepy, really sleepy for the first time since all this began. I'm almost asleep when Nate kisses my head. I'll always be your center baby. I smile against him as I feel like I will finally sleep soundly. Nate, thanks for getting back to me. I appreciate you taking the time to look for me. Yeah, no problem, see you then. Any luck? Jackson asks. I rub my hands over my face and sigh as I sit back in my chair and look over to Jackson who's laid back in the armchair with his feet up on the coffee table. There's no death reports for either of the sisters. Doesn't necessarily mean they aren't, could mean someone covered them up too, or it could mean they are still alive somewhere. Lexi's brother, again, nothing, but considering he had her parents' names changed, again, can true out he isn't dead. No. But there is nothing stopping us treating no news like good news. At least until there is a reason for us to think differently. I nod, he's not wrong. But it's not exactly the news I wanted to be giving to Lexi either. I guess I wanted it to be we could find them. They were alive. Maybe some hope. I have something to ask. Jackson sits up a little straighter as he looks at me. Go on. The information you got on the death reports and Lexi's parents' names being changed. At the time it was don't ask, don't tell. I need to know more. Is this coroner still around? Think we could pay him a visit. See if we can get any more information out of him. Like if he did it for more than Lexi's parents and who for? Let me make some calls. Jackson nods at me. It's the only lead we have. It's the only lead we have. If anyone else has had their records changed, maybe it was by the same coroner. It was a risky move to alter them for her parents. I find it hard to believe that he had multiple sources that would be willing to break the law and even less that he would trust. What do you think we would be looking for? Her brother and even Lexi would be the same date as her parents. Maybe they put a death certificate in to stop anyone asking questions about where she might have been. No one has come looking for her. She was in care all her life. We need to find out when her granddad died. I wouldn't have thought he'd get away with killing his sisters, if that's what he did to them too, when his dad was still around. I doubt he would have waited too long either though. How good is your guy? Will he be able to see anything that might look suspicious? If it's there, he'll find it. Especially now we have a small idea of what direction to head in. There's a small knock on the door and Lexi walks in. Hey, darling. She walks over to me and gives me a kiss. Hi. She smiles Jackson coughs in the corner and I roll my eyes at him. You're only jealous. Now it's Jackson's turn to roll his eyes. How is Rachel? How is Rachel? Lexi asks as she goes to sit and I pull her onto my lap. Okay, okay, I guess. Jackson. Luna. 
They both sit there silently and I actually feel sorry for him if he thinks he's going to get away with not opening up to Lexi. She cares too much to let someone she cares about carry on suffering alone if she thinks they're hurting. Just one of the many things I love about her. I don't know Lex, I mean she's definitely relaxed a little, she comes out of her room at least, has made a few friends in the pack, she seems to have really taken to cooking with Maggie most nights to help feed the pack. But? But, she's still so guarded, so cut off with me, I guess I should feel lucky she hasn't downright refused me but at the same time I feel like if I do, say, look or even move the wrong way it'll be too much for her she'll run and I'll never see her again. I'm sorry Jackson. I know that must be so difficult. I didn't even know what Nate meant to me and I felt lost when he was away from me for a few hours, we're talking hours not weeks. I just don't want to mess anything up, I don't want to hurt her. She's been through a lot and that's only what she's shared. I have faith that if you're just there for her, show her what we already know, that she can trust you, that she can trust all of us. Thanks Lex, I hope you're right. Of course I am. I'm always right. Ask Nate. No comment. I shout. I'm not getting dragged into this. Jackson laughs, the tension eases off his shoulders a little. She walks over to Jackson, kisses the top of his head. You deserve someone who knows truly the kind of man you are. Have faith in the moon goddess, she wouldn't stick you with just Nate for the rest of your life. You've done enough years. It's time you got your reward. Hey! I'm still here you know. Lexi and Jackson just laugh as I pretend not to laugh too. I'm going to see if I can find Rachel. I've been a bad friend and a worse Luna. I haven't checked in on her for too long, I've been too caught up in myself. I'm sure she understands darling. Maybe, but that's no excuse to not be there for my pack. She likes to walk by the lake. Jackson says. Thanks. I'll see you at home in a couple hours. Stay safe. Stay safe. I say. I know she will, she's not leaving the grounds, but I can't help but worry about her when I'm not near her, even here. Lexi rolls her eyes at me, walks over for a kiss, one that instantly makes me want to take deeper even with Jackson in the room, when she pulls back I see the arousal in her eyes. She did that on purpose. Just a little something to keep me on your mind. She mind links me as she winks and walks out the door. Jackson and I have been going over some pack arrangements for what feels like hours. Checking the patrol teams, the shifts, the training regime and any new techniques we could teach. We have wolves coming of age who will need help with their first shifts. New wolves that need initiated into the pack so they can be connected to the mind link, Rachel is one of them. Other wolves that are interested in taking up patrol runs and who we could pair them with until they have the roots down and who they will work with best. We're deep in conversation about new defense techniques when one of the patrols mind links us. Alpha, Alpha, there's a breach at the northeast border. Julius reports. What kind of breach? Jackson and I are instantly alert. There's a scent that isn't our pack. Has the scent come into grounds or just the border? Jackson asks. Doesn't smell rogue but definitely cross the border. Max and I are picking up the scent and following it now. How many? One so far, we think, it's so faint, it's not a usual scent. We passed her a little over 30 minutes ago, and it wasn't here. I don't understand how it could be so faint when they've only just crossed. It wasn't there when you went past on your last lap? I ask confused, how is that possible? No Alpha, but it's definitely here now. Where are you? Northeast heading further into the grounds. Northeast heading further into the grounds. Whoever it is is either brave or fag stupid to be coming further into the grounds in the middle of the day. Jackson says he's right it's a death sentence walking into a pack's territory and not knowing who they may walk into. You'd have to have a death wish to do that or be desperately trying to get to someone. Lexi. Lexi. They're here for Lexi. I roar as I race out the door hoping I can get out the house quick enough to stop Alex shifting while we're still inside we're barley through the door when I shift, I feel Jackson on my flank. We've got an introducer on the grounds, northeast, all patrols there now, protect your Luna. I command I mind link the pack. Lexi. Are you okay? 
Where are you? I try to mind link her. Why is she not answering? Why is she not answering? Alex roars. I don't know. Alex faster. We're close to the lake. I can smell Lexi's scent heading in that direction, but it's old. Probably from when she left my office earlier. I feel like I've been punched in the gut suddenly the force causing me to trip and we managed to correct ourselves from falling over. Another blow. Mate. Alex howls in pain. She's in trouble. Someone tell me they have eyes on her. No alpha. Negative. No, we're almost there. No, we're almost there. No alpha, not yet. Come the chorus of voices of my patrol. We breach the border to the lake and find nothing. There is no one there. I can smell Lexi, Rachel, and another scent I don't recognize. Do you smell that? Jackson's wolf, Ash says. Yes. There is more than one, but how is it so weak? Border checks now. We need to find Luna. Alex commands. I can't smell her, Nate. I can't smell her, Nate. Ash says. Me either. I feel like I'm sinking. My stomach feels like lead. I know the punch in the gut was someone harming her. Alex howls in pain. Where is mate? Lexi. I walk into the forest and head towards the lake. I can't blame Rachel for liking to come here. It's one of my favorite places too. Hidden in amongst the trees, it's always peaceful and calm. I see Rachel's body notice me, but she doesn't turn around. I sit beside her and she smiles at me. Hi. She says. Hey. How are you? Oh, you know. How are you? There is a look of concern in her eyes as she asks. I'm doing better. I reply honestly. I'm so sorry for everything. For my part in all of it. I hope you know that I never wanted to hurt you or see you hurt. I know that, Rachel. You don't have to apologize. I know you were following your Alpha's order and even then only out of fear. You don't have to explain anything to me. I like to think we were friends from you coming here and I don't see any reason why that should change. If you would still like that? I'd love that, Lexi. You're the first person I've ever felt like I didn't need to hide from. That you are who you are. Good. That's it settled then. No more talk of apologies or regret. Deal? Deal. Good. Now we've got that covered. Let's talk boys. Rachel laughs as she shakes her head. I feel like that is even more complicated if that is even possible. I feel like that is even more complicated if that is even possible. Talk to me. No judgment. Just friends gossiping. I like him a lot. Of course I do. I feel the mate bond. He's so sweet, kind. I see how much he means to the pack. To Nate and you. He's so patient. I never feel like I'm being pushed into anything I'm not comfortable with. He's just been my friend. That's good, isn't it? So what's holding you back? I'm scared. I don't deserve someone like him. He's too pure and I'm well. I'm damaged goods. You think too harshly of yourself. I know you've been through more than we know and hopefully one day if you ever feel ready any one of us would be happy to support you, if you wanted to talk about it. I have wondered myself about my past, even now the things that are coming to light. What I can say is the confusion I've felt, the loss, the spiraling and feeling ungrounded, the only thing that centered me and brought some hope back was Nate. I can't see why you would have gone through all you have if the moon goddess hadn't planned to give you the strength to survive it and some hope for the future. I feel like Jackson is your hope. Your past can't be changed but your future is full of hope, possibilities, happiness, you just have to believe it. Rachel has tears running down her face, I lean over and hug her. Just give it time. You're right where you're meant to be, with your family, the rest will fall into place. We're sat talking when Violet calls out. We're not alone. What do you mean? I look around trying to pick up on what she has sensed. I see a figure emerging from the trees, with another three behind them. 
I jump up, Rachel follows my gaze, and all the color drains from her face. No! 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 Lexi, run! Please! Run! I go to grab Rachel's hand to pull her with me when suddenly everything goes black. The last thing I hear is Rachel screaming. I slowly start to wake up. The floor is cold and hard below me. It's so dark if it wasn't for my wolf senses I doubt I'd be able to see. My head is spinning as I try to remember what happened. The lake. The people. Rachel. Rachel. I spin around looking for her. I see her unconscious in the corner, I rush over to her, she's breathing that's good, there's a bruise on her face, it looks like she was hit. I remember her scream before everything went black. I hope nothing else happened to her. Where am I? Who are these people? Rachel starts to wake up, she shoots up terrified. It's okay, Rachel. It's okay, Rachel. I'm here. She grabs hold of me. Oh my god Lexi. Oh my god Lexi. Are you okay? I'm fine. Are you okay? I heard you scream, I can see the bruise. Did they hurt you? What happened? Someone knocked me out, you went down and I screamed. I felt a force at the side of my head and then everything went black. Do you know who they are? You seem to recognize them. Yes and no. They're from my old pack, but I don't know them, I just recognize them. Yeah, that's what I worried you were going to say. This is so bad, Lexi. They're going to kill us. I'm so sorry, I should have never come with you that night, I should have just run away, become a rogue and hoped I survived. We're not dying here, Rachel. We're going home, both of us. She looks at me tears streaming down her face. My heart is racing, but I'm not going to let her think anything other than we're getting out of here. Nate will know we're not there by now. You and I both know he and Jackson won't rest until we are found. She nods at me, clutching to my hand. We hear movement outside the door, I stand in front of Rachel. Violet growls defensively. Now now, is that any way to greet family? A tall, gaunt-looking man steps in. He has shaggy greasy hair that touches his shoulders with brown eye that look crazed as he looks over every inch of me with disgust, and a small hint of sadness. Who are you? What do you want? You need to let us leave now. He laughs manically as if I've just told a joke. Oh you're not going anywhere, before you decide to try anything stupid you should also know, no one can find you here either. Oh you're not going anywhere, before you decide to try anything stupid you should also know. No one can find you here either. What do you want? You. He looks at me with such hatred in his eyes. You're the cause of all of this girl. Cause of what? I have no idea who you are or what you want. I know that's not totally true, but maybe he thinks I don't know as much as I do it might work in our favor. Why, I'm your Uncle Lucian. Don't you see the family resemblance? I'm sure you know all about me by now. You know none of this would have happened if you hadn't been a little w asterisk 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 e and made it. I would have never heard about you. No one would have been asking questions about wolves being trapped. Your little boyfriend really fd up there didn't he? I don't know what you're talking about I have no family, I'm an orphan. Do not play me girl. He screams. I heard that alpha of yours was asking questions. Too many questions. Don't worry, once I'm done with you he won't be an issue either. If it doesn't kill him he'll go crazy, two wolves one knife, half the work. He grins at me. What makes you think you'll get away with any of this? What makes you think you'll get away with any of this? I got away with killing your parents didn't I? He cocks his head as he speaks I feel my stomach drop, I feel like my knees could give out but I don't want him to see how that affected me. You look like your mother. But you have my brother's eyes. I swear I see a hint of sorrow flicker across his eyes at those words. How could you kill your own brother? He flinches a little but recovers quickly. They were a means to an end. I was never going to be alpha with him around. Then he met your mother and decided to have you. I would have never been in line for alpha. With him and you out of the picture the only one left was my father and the pack would be mine. Admittedly it was supposed to be him first but once my brother had taken over as alpha getting to him. You. Would have been harder. It all worked out the way it was supposed to in the end. 
all of this to become alpha? I have no interest in being alpha to your pack, I have a pack, I am Luna, I want nothing from you. It's too late now. Too many questions. Too many loose ends. I'm going to finish what should have been done properly all those years ago. The door opens and in walks a fierce looking woman, fiery curly red hair, confident strides, she walks next to Lucian and ignores his threat when he snaps at her. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? I wanted to see the wolf who was able to break one of my mother's strongest spells. She looks at me, as if assessing whether I am worthy of her time. She doesn't look like much. She doesn't look like much. I want to know how you did it. How did you break the spell? What spell? The spell to stop your wolf claiming you. I've no idea. I don't know what you're talking about. Enough. This ends now. Lucian pulls a silver blade from behind him. I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to enjoy this. Any last words? I can't speak, I can't move, Rachel is sobbing behind me, the witch eyes me suspiciously, I'm trying to think how to stall. How to escape. I may not know a lot, but I'm guessing the witch would have some tricks to kill me instantly even if I could somehow overpower Lucian. Suddenly the witch reaches out for Lucian's arm to stop him, he spins to her, the knife close to her neck. What are you doing? He screams. I need to speak to you first, privately. Her eyes dart to me. No. Now? She insists. He stills, torn, staring at the witch. Suddenly he turns and heads out the room, she follows, we're just left there. Lucian. What do you want? I snap. I think we should hold off on killing her. I think we should hold off on killing her. The witch says. What? What? Why would I do that? We don't know how much she is saying is actually true. Yes, you don't think her alpha will be a problem for you once she is dead, but what if there are others? What if she has spoken to more people, more packs, asked around about you more? We don't want anyone else wondering what happened to them, especially as the alpha will still be around after you kill her. We don't want anyone connecting it to yourself or the pack now, do we, alpha? Hmm, the witch has a point. I can't allow anyone else to question my position in this pack, or think that they have the opportunity to contest my status of my pack. If that little worse has run her mouth I could be walking into a bigger headache. I haven't spent all these years and all this work to have it all taken from me by a silly little girl who walked into the wrong alpha's path. I nod at her. I am not about to tell her she's right. I will wait for now. We need to know more. Ace, see to it you get the information we need by any means necessary. Can I suggest something? I growl, this witch is forgetting her place. She holds her hands up defensively. Maybe I can help. I actually laugh. As if this witch has any ability to get the truth better than my most trusted wolf and some good old-fashioned torture. Let me make sure that there is no way her pain can be felt by the Alpha. If he thinks she's being tortured he may get more people involved which is what we're trying to prevent. Let me see what information I can get with my magic alone. This which is annoying me, I reluctantly nod in agreement though, I don't want anyone else to know about this. Lexi. Rachel has been pretty much silent since they left here in the cell. She's almost catatonic with fear. This is her worst nightmare, coming true, being brought back to the pack she escaped from, fearing for her life. I don't know how to help her. Nothing I really say will make our situation any better. I need to get us out of here. I've been trying relentlessly to mind Link Nate. I know he won't know where we are but I just want to hear his voice. The pit in my stomach makes me think that if I don't figure out a way to get us out of here and soon we're not going to, especially when I don't even know how they managed to get us here wherever here is. I wasn't hit like Rachel was. One minute I saw them coming out of the trees and the next second everything was out of focus and then black. The door unlocks again and Rachel sobs with fear, I stand in front of her, I will not allow them to add to the torment they have already inflicted in her life. It's the witch that walks in, alone. We haven't been properly introduced, I'm Mabel. She smiles sweetly at us. What do you want me to say? Nice to meet you. While we're prisoners locked up in a cell. Feisty, aren't you? She laughs. I growl at her, Violet is in no mood for us to be mocked by one of our captors. 
she closes her eyes, twists her hands and mutters something under her breath in a language I don't understand. She opens her eyes and they are glowing a brilliant amber. That's better. She smiles and she seems to relax a little. What did you do? What did you do? I ask confused. I made the room soundproof. I made the room soundproof. I would have thought Lucien would have liked to hear the screams. He doesn't want anyone to know you're here but normally yes I think he quite enjoys that. What do you want from us? You to listen to what I have to say and to do as I tell you and you both might have a chance of getting out of here. What? How do you think they were able to get into your pack grounds undetected? To move you both without a fight. You wolves may be strong but you can't hide from each other with your sense. Did you not wonder why you can't communicate with your mate? Why Lucian is not worried anyone will find you? It's because he knows they can't when I've hidden us. You helped them? You hid them? Yes, I had to. Had to? Why? Because I'm as good as dead if Lucian thinks I'm here to do anything other than what he tells me. So what does that mean? You don't want to help him? It means he's a mean to and end and if I want to keep my life I do as I'm told. Now it's your turn to listen. We don't have much time Lucian is not a patient man. He thinks I'm in here trying to find out if you and your alpha have told other packs about your situation, specifically anything involving him. I hesitate before I answer her. This could be a trap, but at the same time, we need all the help we can get. If a spell is powerful enough to hide their scent so we didn't know they were coming or knock us out, without it, there is no way we're going to survive. No. We've asked around only in respect to finding out how a wolf can be kept locked away. She smiles at me. You have my mother to thank for that. What? I growl, I'm trying to keep Violet back, but it's not easy. My mother is the reason you couldn't get to your wolf? What? I lurched forward and stop in my tracks, I've not got much control left of Violet if she continues. Look I can't explain it all now, we don't have time, you need to trust me when I tell you I am the only way you are going to get out of here alive. Why should we trust you? Because Lucy and killed my mother. I see the hate and anger flash across her face, just then the door opens and just like a mask her face is back to being neutral as she slaps on a smile for whoever enters. Ace. Ace. What are you doing? Hurry up Mabel. You're pushing it too far. I stare at them both confused, is he in on it too? He looks over to me, I swear I see him bow his head ever so slightly at me. So slightly that I start doubting myself if I actually saw it just as Lucian strides in looking thunderous. Well. Well. He snaps. She has mentioned you to other Pax Alpha. I think it's best we step away and discuss the matter further. Mabel says as she locks eyes with me, I think in warning to not mention that is a lie. Enough. I'm wasting no more time. He storms over to me and grabs me by my throat, squeezing tightly as he spits in my face while growling. Time's up. Who have you spoken to? I say nothing, I make no noise, I don't care what he does to me I refuse to give him the satisfaction. He squeezes tighter and I still say nothing. Rachel sobs in the corner and I see his eyes flick to her and then he looks back at me, and smiles in a way I swear makes my blood run cold he drops me and just as fast as over at Rachel with a knife to her throat. Let's see if you stay so quiet when it's not your life at risk. He smirks. Leave her alone, don't hurt her, she has nothing to do with any of this. Just like your father, he would never allow someone to be hurt over himself either. In the end that was his undoing, this one has been allowed to live longer than she should have been thanks to her little tricks. It's time I correct these mistakes. He pulls a knife out and digs it into her skin as blood starts to show. Enough! I scream, we hear shouting and banging from upstairs somewhere. Feet running and what sounds like fighting. Ace runs out of the room towards the fighting and Mabel follows behind him. The movement of them running out of the room gets Lucy in attention, I dive towards him. All the rage I feel about everything he's done to me, my family, now Rachel, I will not let him harm anyone else. He drops Rachel from the shock of my attack and she falls to the fall and smashes her head on the concrete. Turning to look at her to see if she was okay, was my mistake. 
I feel a sharp pain in my side, I look down and see the knife in my stomach. Lucian twists it and rips it out of me while smiling sadistically at me as I fall to the fall. My hands grabbing my side and filling with blood. I hear an ear-piercing growl that shakes the ground below us as another growl follows. Nate! Nate! I feel my heart lift knowing he is near, I feel his arms wrap around me. Lexi, baby, I've got you, I'm here, hold on. At least I got to feel him one more time as I feel the cold spreading through me and everything goes black. Nate! Nate Bree! Michael says I'm fighting so hard to keep Alex back, I feel like I'm spinning, replaying it over and over again in my head. The breach, the realization of the direction they were heading in, running to get to Lexi, protect her, make sure she was okay, smelling her scent, getting to the lake and finding no one there, empty, just Lexi and Rachel's scents mixed with the unknowns. The bile rising up in my throat as the panic kicked in that someone had her, someone would bring her harm, the anger boiled over that I could only see red. I will rip the head off whoever has taken Lexi against her will and I will enjoy every second of it. How did they even get across the border without us noticing? How did they even get across the border without us noticing? Why was their sense so weak if they were right there? That's not even possible, is it? We can't follow their scent, there isn't anything to follow. How the fuck are we supposed to find her? I scream. I've called every alpha in our region, and everyone is out looking now or contacting people for information. We have dozens of search teams out scouring every town, city, Everyone takes the kidnapping of an Alpha's loon as the utmost priority over everything else. Dad walks over to me, puts his hands on my shoulders as he makes me look him in the eye. We're not alone in this, Nate, and we will bring her home. I promise you with everything I am as your father and her she will come home. I want a break, I could crumble from his words, I know he is just as worried as I am and I know we will not rest until she's home, I have to stay strong for her, now more than ever. I had to came back to the pack house to organize our defenses for the pack, if it was so easy to breach without raising the alarm it meant the whole pack could be in danger and as much as it killed me to not follow the scent myself I had to ensure the pack was safe. I know Lexi would never forgive me if I let people get hurt and didn't protect them because I was too busy trying to get to her and sacrifice them in the process. To be honest right now I didn't trust myself anyway. I was on the verge of snapping and I didn't want to lose control like that. I didn't want to become that kind of alpha, one my pack feared, one that would disappoint Lexi. That's not the man, the wolf I am. My dad had been putting the word out for me to all other alphas and packs of Lexi's abduction to get the search parties going. I trusted the only person other than my dad with following Lexi's scent. Jackson walks in, he took a group of our best warriors to try and follow what little scent there was, I knew it would be fruitless but I needed to know for sure, see if we could get any clues as to where they might have gone. At least the direction we should be looking. Jackson shakes his head, Alex growls in frustration and I don't even try to hold him back. It's just disappeared, we followed it about two miles north and then it was just gone. They must have gotten in a car. Whether they kept going north or backtracked once they were in the car I couldn't say for sure. I just nod at him, I know he's struggling just as much as I am, they have Rachel too. I know he's hurting too, but he's holding onto his composure better than I am right now. Whether that's because they haven't marked each other yet I don't know. What I do know is whoever is behind this has two seriously PD off vengeful wolves to be very afraid of. My phone rings with an unknown number I don't think before I answer it. Yes. Don't speak listen. They have them, Lexi and Rachel they will kill them. A male voice speaks. Every sense I have heightens, my whole body freezes, I sense everyone else in the room turning their attention to me too. I put the phone on speaker. Who is this? What do you know? We don't have time. Lucian is going to lose it. You need to make your way to Wintercliff's Ranch. It's abandoned, and about 20 meters southeast is an entrance to tunnels that will lead you to the top floor entrance of the cells of the property. It's heavily guarded so come prepared to fight and hurry. I don't know how long they have until he snaps. The call goes dead. Move. Now. Dad, protect the pack. We're taking Jackson's search team with us. We will leave the rest of the warriors here for protection. Jackson and I dive into the car. He mind links the rest of the search team to let them know where we are going and where to meet us as I drive like a maniac. 
Jackson and I will go in first, we can work out numbers, we'll be bait. Kill anyone that fights back. No mercy. Find the girls, get them out and let's hope to the moon goddess they are okay or I'm going to kill everyone I see. It's a four-hour drive, my knuckles are white from gripping onto the wheel, I spend the whole time trying to mind-link Lexi to let her know we're coming. We get to the border of the property, I want to run in but I know we need to be careful. If we're caught or too far before they spot us they could kill them before we're even close. We sneak up to the southeast as instructed, the rest of the pack is about 10 minutes out, 10 minutes too long. I look at Jackson, he nods at me, a silent understanding we're going in now, just the two of us. We're getting our women back. I let Alex come forward and we share control. We listen by the door and can't hear anything as we push in. There's a empty hallway with voices in the distance. Stairs at the end of the hall that lead down, we can hear shouting. I can smell her scent. Mate. We hear a scream, we both race forward when half a dozen wolves run into us from another door. Jackson and I divide and conquer fighting them off as more come running up the stairs. We each have three we're fighting. I manage to knock out one, the other I'm fighting when I feel an arm wrap around my neck from behind me trying to choke hold me. I manage to get the upper hand on the one in front of me but I am struggling for air as his grip around my throat gets tighter. His arm suddenly drops from my neck, I spin round to see a guy stood there, a redhead woman on the stairs. Hurry, we can't help you in there but we can hold them back up here. It's just Lucian in there but we will have to come in and pretend to protect him. We'll explain later go. I look at Jackson and we both run down the stairs, if this is a trap we'll deal with it later, right now we need to find Lexi and Rachel. We burst into the room and my stomach drops as everything happens as if it's in slow motion. I see Rachel with a knife held at her throat as Lexi lunges forward to attack and as Rachel falls and cracks her head, the second distraction Lexi gives with concern for her friend Lucian takes his opportunity to plunge the knife into Lexi's stomach. I growl and the floor shakes with the rage. He twists the knife in her and then rips it out and I growl again as Lexi drops to the floor and he runs. Jackson and I both run over, he grabs Rachel as I run to Lexi and take her in my arms. Lexi, baby, I've got you, I'm here, hold on. I see a small smile as she whispers my name Nate then her eyes roll back into her head and she stills. Lexi. Lexi. Wake up baby. Keep fighting I've got you. I pick her up as Jackson and I race back the way we came. As we burst into the stairs the rest of our pack is there fighting off the last of the guards. We all run outside. Alpha. Spencer catches up to me. Sorry we were late. We thought it was a good idea to bring the DR, he's in your car. My head snaps to him. Spencer. Spencer. Thank you. I almost sob, why didn't I think of that, it's a four hour drive back to the pack and I don't know anything in the area to take Lexi to get the medical attention she needs. Going to a hospital isn't much of an option for fast healing wolves. We scramble in the car, the DR quickly checks Rachel, he thinks she may have a concussion but he thinks she will be okay. Put pressure on her wound. Put pressure on her wound. He instructs as he starts rummaging in his first aid kit. He instructs as he starts rummaging in his first aid kit. Jackson. Get us home fast. The DR works on Lexi in the back of the car trying to stem the bleeding. Her healing should be kicking in and helping stop the bleeding, but she's lost a lot blood, and I don't know how much more damage there is in the back of this car. The weaker she gets the worse even the smallest amount of blood loss will be, her body will start shutting down trying to work to replace what it's lost. What can we do? I'll do anything, take mine. The doctor looks at me as if he's mentally trying to access his next step in the back of this car. He grabs a couple of needles and some tubing, taking my arm he inserts one needle into me and the other needle into Lexi's arms. Hopefully this will hold her enough until I can get her in the hospital, but there is only so much blood you can give before it will start killing you. I heal fast and am uninjured, don't take it out, save her. Regardless. Understood? He hesitates but knows he has no choice. Yes Alpha. I can't keep my eyes open, I feel weak, at some point Rachel woke up but I don't remember when. Lexi is still holding on and so will I. I don't know how long we've been driving. Nate. 
Jackson shouts, I snap my eyes open to look at him in the mirror, five minutes, we're almost home. My eyes unwillingly shut, but I can still hear the conversation. I will take Lexi straight in. Alpha will need help and he will need to rest. He will heal but he will be weak and need to rest for a few hours. Get him into a bed. I will send a nurse to monitor him. Get Maggie. I need all hands for Lexi but I trust Maggie to give Alpha the care he needs. She was and still is my best pack nurse. Yes, Doc? Yes, Doc? Jackson says. Jackson, why isn't Nate answering? It's my dad. Must be mine, Link. Lexi is hurt bad. He's giving her his blood to keep her stable. We need her in the hospital. We need you to help us get Nate in too. He's weak. Maggie, we need you to come and monitor Nate while the DR works on Lexi. I smile inwardly as I listen to Jackson giving orders. This is why he's my beta. I trust him with not only my life, but my mates. He's always had my back and he's a damn good beta but an even better friend. Brother. I think to myself as I finally give up hearing their voices and let the darkness take me. Lexi. I wake up and I'm in the forest. Where am I? I walk a little into the forest and find myself at the lake. I'm home. When did I come home? How did I get here? I cock my head when I see a wolf stood by the lake with someone. Violet? Is that you? How is that even possible? I walk over to her. Violet? I call confused. She looks over to me. So does the women next to her. I don't recognize her but I'm not afraid of her either. Lexi? She nods at me. I stand and take her in, there's something about her. An aura. She's in a flowing white dress, long black hair runs down her back, dark brown eyes and beautiful sun-kissed skin. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do I know you? Technically yes and no. She chuckles to herself. You know more of me than actually knowing me. I believe that is the best way to describe it. Violet nudges her hand and she absently strokes her head. Scratching behind her ears. Violet? How are you there? How can I see you? She looks at me and I swear I see her smile. I don't understand. The last thing I remember was. My hand shoots down to my stomach. I was stabbed. Lucian stabbed me, am I dead? Nate. I spin around as if I would be able to find him. Is he okay? Oh my god, please don't tell me Lucian hurt him too. Calm down Lexi, Nate is fine. I let out the breathe I was holding at the thought of Nate being injured, or worse. Interesting. What is? That you remember being stabbed and yet your first thought was if your mate was okay. Why wouldn't it be? Because you were the one injured Lexi. That I know of. I can't change what happened to me but I wouldn't want to be the cause of any pain to someone else. Especially not Nate. She smiles at me, Violet knocks her hand again, she had stopped stroking her. I know, I missed you too. I'm sorry. How do you know her? Because I am the one that created her. She looks at me waiting for the understanding to come. Created her? Created her? You're the moon goddess? That is one of my names, yes. So does that mean I'm dead? Lucian killed me? Nate and Alex will never forgive themselves. They will blame themselves for not protecting me, doing more, and they won't listen to reason. I sigh. You can settle his mind, do not worry. So I'm not dead? No, Nate sacrificed himself to ensure you made it back to the pack hospital. What? He did what? I can't breathe, I collapse onto my knees, my head is spinning. No. Nate. What did you do? I can't live without him. I feel hands underneath my chin gently lifting my head up, I look into the eyes on the moon goddess. It's okay my child, he is safe, he is weak, as are you, you both will feel much better once you are back together. Okay. How do I do that? How do I go to him? Don't worry you will be reunited soon, I was enjoying reconnecting with your wolf, she is strong, I have missed her, she was kept away from us for a long time. The witch, I can't remember much, Lucian's, 
she mentioned something. It will all come clear soon, my dear. Just know that what is to come may be difficult, but it is meant to be. And with your mate by your side, you are stronger together than apart. Your love is your greatest gift. Everything is black. I can hear beeping around me, muffled voices. I try to talk. Let them know I'm here, but nothing comes out, I can't move. How is she doing, Doc? It's Jackson asking. She's stable now, thankfully. She needs lots of rest, but her wolf is healing her nicely. Nate saved her life. Without his blood, there is no way she would have survived. Now if Alpha could just wake up. What? Nate won't wake up? What happened to him? I can hear my heart rate increasing on the monitor as I panic. Nate. I try to call out, but it's just a whisper. Lexi, we're here, it's okay. I feel Jackson next to me, but I can't open my eyes. I feel him put his hand in mine, and I squeeze it to let him know I can hear him. Nate. I try again. He's okay, Lex. He's here. He's just sleeping. What isn't he telling me? I try and force my eyes open, but they won't budge. Why are they so heavy? Jackson. Where's? Nate. I say, each word takes my breath away. I know he's hesitating, I know him too well even with my eyes shut, he's like my brother. Jackson. I scold in an annoyance and I am finally able to force my eyes open. I squint with the bright lights and suddenly they are dimmed and I can see Jackson. He looks tired. He's okay Lexi, kind of. What's wrong? You lost a lot of blood Lex, like, a lot, a lot, it was a four hour drive to get you back to the pack hospital, there was no way you were going to survive that long a journey bleeding the way you were, we didn't know where the nearest hospital was, not that we could have chance taking you to a human hospital as a wolf, too many questions, so Nate gave you his blood, he had the DR tie his blood to go into you, for the whole journey. Four hours? Are you serious? Why did you let him do that? He could have died. How did he not die? Wolf healing is fast, the wolf helped slow the effects of his blood loss a little, but by the time we made it, and I went fast Lex, I promise I went fast, he was really weak, like really weak. Maggie and the DR have been monitoring him but he hasn't woken up yet. I start to panic again, why hasn't he woken up? Lex calm down, the DR said it's okay, he wouldn't expect too much, not yet, even for Nate, it was a lot, he just needs to rest. No. I need to see him. Lexi, you need to rest too, you almost died, like way too close to almost. I turn to look at Jackson, really look at him, squeezing his hand. Jackson. I need to see him. He looks at me, I know he's internally arguing with me and he knows he's not going to win this one. He sighs as he looks down. I'll go get Doc. Jackson. Thank you. How's Rachel? He smiles at me lovingly. Safe, thanks to you. He suddenly walks over to me and kisses my forehead. My hand reaches up for his face. We stay there silently for a second and then he leaves to get the doctor now I just need to fix my name. The doctor walks in with a stern look on his face, I know what he's about to say. Doc. Doc. If you don't let me go with your help, I'll go without it. Told you, stubborn. Jackson says with a laugh. Please Luna. Please Luna. I strongly advise against this. I understand. I'm going anyway. You going to help me or not? Very well. Jackson, go get the wheelchair in the hallway. You're staying connected to your drips, and you have 30 minutes. No arguments. Understood, Luna. Yes, DR. I smile at him. Jackson comes back with the wheelchair and picks me up out of the bed to put me in the chair. I laugh to myself that if Nate knew this, he and Alex would be PD, it was Jackson touching me and not them. My heart aches just thinking about it. I need to see him. They wheel me into the next room and Nate is laid on the bed. He has bags of blood attached to him, he looks pale. Dark circles around his eyes. I burst into tears. I instinctively go to walk to him faster and flinch at the pain in my side. 
Lexi, Lexi, sit. Jackson scolds. He pushes me next to him, I hold his huge hand in mine and I feel numb. I did this to him. I made him this way because he didn't know what he was getting involved in when he got with me. What being with me really entailed. I leave you alone, I'm outside if you need me Lex, just shout. Jackson. I need a favor. Sure. Help me up. What, Lexi, I really don't think that's a good idea. Jackson. Please. I beg, I can feel the tears running down my cheeks. He walks over to me, picking me up as gently as he can and lays me on the bed next to Nate. Thank you. I say as he leaves. I nestle into his side, careful not to catch any of his wires or mine. I sob into him, I can't stop it. I'm so sorry, Nate. I'm so sorry, Nate. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry you got pulled into all this. Please. Just open your eyes. Keep fighting, please. I can't live without you. I kiss his cheek and pray to the moon goddess that she helps him fight and lets him come back to me as I fall asleep right where I belong. Nestled next to my world. Eight. I feel like I have been hit by a lorry. Every inch of me feels like lead. It's all so heavy. Even my eyelids feel heavy. I try to move, but it's impossible. I can hear the beep of monitors in the room, someone talking in the background. I hear my mom's voice. Thank you. I've got it from here. I can add his new IV bag when I change over his next blood bag. She sits beside me and holds my hand. Nate sweetie, I'm only going to say this to you one more time and allow you to ignore me before I do something about it. Wake your ass up. I laugh inwardly. I wish I could open my eyes just to let her know I'm okay. I know she must be so worried, but I feel so drained my body just won't listen. I don't know how many times I wake and fall back under. Every time I do I try desperately to move, I need to ask about Lexi. I need to know if she's okay. She's okay son, Doc has her stable, you saved her life. It's my dad, he squeezes my hand, I know he can't feel it but I feel like I relax as he tells me. He always knows what to say to me. What I need. Thank you Nate, I know we were there for Lexi too but I know you would have done exactly the same to save Rachel if she'd been there on her own. Now just wake up so I can kick your ass for doing such a dumb heroic thing, then maybe take some pointers for the future. Jackson says. I leave you alone, I'm outside if you need me Lex, just shout. It's Jackson I hear. Lexi is here. I can feel her, why is she up already? She should be resting. Trust Jackson to give in to her. I know she will have guilt him into doing whatever crazy thing she's thought of. Jackson. I need a favor. Hearing Lexi's voice is like being in a dream. She's really here. She's okay. At least enough to be bossing Jackson around. Thank you Moon Goddess for bringing this wonderful woman into my life. Sure. He replies. Help me up. What, Lexi, I really don't think that's a good idea. No, neither do I, Jackson. Don't listen to her. Jackson. Please. She begs, I know she's just beat down whatever wall of sense he was holding onto and he'll do anything for her. I feel her being placed next to me gently on the bed, I can't help but feel a little annoyed at the thought of another man's hands on her. Even if those hands are just Jackson's. I can smell her. God, I've missed her. Now if I could just open my damn eyes, just reach my hand out to touch her. Thank you. She say as I hear him leave. She nestles into my side, and she starts crying, I wish more than anything my body would listen to me and let me reach out to her. Stop her tears from falling. Comfort her. I'm so sorry Nate. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry you got pulled into all this. This is all my fault. I brought all this here, to your family, to you. I'm the cause of it all. Please. Just open your eyes. Keep fighting please. I can't live without you. She kisses my cheek and I can feel her tears. She rests her head back onto my chest and I feel her body get heavier as does her breathing as she falls asleep. For once rather than the dark taking me I let myself fall asleep. 
feeling her next to me, my soul complete. I wake up and can feel the weight of Lexi next to me still. We should really get Luna back in her own bed. I can hear the DR. Do we have to? She looks so peaceful. They both do? It's Jackson he's speaking to. Just be careful when you carry her not to hurt her stitches. No, no one is taking mate from us. Alex roars. I move my arm around Lexi to pull her tighter into me as I am finally able to open my eyes. Nate. Jackson says. Shoo. Don't wake her. I scold. Sorry, sorry, are you okay? Feel like I've been run over a couple times, but yeah, I'm okay. I'm glad to hear it, Alpha. I was a little worried for a while. Doc says as he checks my vitals on the monitors while trying not to disturb Lexi. I'm fine. Lexi stays where she is, I tell him. Yes, Alpha. I'll leave you to it. If either of you need me, just shout. I'll be back in an hour for Lexi's pain meds. I nod at him as he walks out. I'm glad you're finally awake. You both scared the crap out of me. Jackson looks tired. Like he hasn't slept for days. I know he would have been looking after Rachel and staying with Lexi because I couldn't while making sure the pack is kept safe and dealing with any alpha duties in my absence. I've no idea how long I've been out of action for. I know my dad would have stepped in to give him a helping hand too. Thank you, Jackson. I mean it. For everything. I know you took care of Lexi for me. The pack. Me. Thank you for being my beta. My brother. Oh man, stop it. You'll make me crack. I've been up for days and I thought I'd lost most of my family and my mate in one day. I'm fragile. He says with a small smile. How's Rachel? She's okay. She is shaken. Knows it could have been a lot worse. Knows Lexi saved her life. Feels guilty as hell. Thinks it's all her fault. Especially Lexi being hurt saving her. She's family. We protect family. Thanks, Nate. That means everything to me. I'm going to let you get some rest. Do as the doc tells you, okay? He laughs. We both know I won't. Jackson. Yeah? Love you, man. Love you too, both of you. He looks at Lexi sleeping next to me and then smiles as he heads out. I squeeze Lexi a little tighter, smell her hair. I've missed her. I was so close to losing her. Seeing her stood there with that knife in her. See him twisting it to hurt her more, falling to the ground as her shirt stained with blood, holding her in my arms as I could feel her slipping away but her calling my name. I feel my heart breaking at the memory, let the tears fall that I've been holding back since I went to the lake and saw it empty, Lexi gone. Nate. Hey baby. She looks up at me tears filling her eyes. I thought I'd lost you. I bend down and kiss her, gently. She kisses me back. All the unspoken pain and fear passing through us. Why did you do something so stupid? She says as she hits my chest. Because I would do anything to protect you. Because I would do anything to protect you. I can't live without you. But you nearly died. And I can't live without you. So remember that the next time you think about doing something so stupid I could lose you. I promise, there isn't going to be a next time though because I'm never letting you out of my sight again. Lexi laughs. That would make sense. That would make sense. Moon Goddess said we're stronger together. What do you mean? I don't know how it happened, or if I dreamed it, if I died. I flinch at hearing her say those words. She kisses me before she carries on. Anyway. I saw Violet. She was sitting by the lake, there was a woman with her, it was the moon goddess. She said she had missed Violet, the spell had kept them away, that there will still be things coming our way but together we can overcome anything. That we are stronger together and our love is the greatest gift. I can't help the smile on my face or the fullness of my heart as I listen to her. She's clever that moon goddess. Almost like she knows what a lucky wolf I am. How are you feeling? Honestly, Lexi. Like I was stabbed. She laughs I roll my eyes at her. You're not funny. I'm a little funny, be honest. Lexi. Nate. I growl at her, she giggles and I see arousal in her eyes. How are those pain meds? 
I know a better way to make me feel better. I just laugh. Not a chance, darling. Not a chance, darling. I bet Alex would. You know full well the answer to that and thankfully I have some sense left to know as much as I'd love nothing more than to not be sensible I am not asking the doc to stitch you back up because I couldn't resist. Spoil sport. I love you Lexi. Yeah. Yeah. She smirks I crash my lips to hers, feel her opening her mouth to let me in, tasting the delicious taste that is my Lexi, I can smell her arousal, hear her heart rate increase even without the fact she's hooked up to the monitor still. I pull back and wait for her eyes to open, swimming with arousal. Staying away from you will not be easy. I need you to be better because when I do finally have you, you breaking isn't going to be an option, at least not until I've covered every inch of you with me. Lexi. Doc has been in a few times to check my stitches. He's mentioned in passing about me getting some rest in my own bed too which was just met with a stoic look from Nate, and being pulled in closer to him which just made me laugh. When can I go home? Today. If you behave. No shifting. No heavy lifting. Just give your body a few more days to heal fully. You've healed fast, but it was a deep wound, and we don't want to see you back here. I am trying to not jump with excitement about getting out of this bed, but I clearly don't do a very good job, when all I hear from Nate is. No! What? You're going straight home to bed. I am not. I'm going to the pack house to sit in a chair and devour whatever your mom is making. Don't you argue with me Nate Walker. Besides I've already told your mom we're coming over. I'm starving. We walk over to the pack house, albeit slowly, I am a little sensitive and I've been stuck in bed for a little over a week. Nate almost looks recovered. He got out of bed sooner than the doc said, he didn't have to listen. But I can still see the slight darkening under his eyes, I see the slightly slower way he moves. It's not just me that needs to take it easy and he won't get away with it with me. When we walk into the house the smell is unbelievable, my stomach grumbles. Lexi, come sit down, I've made your favorite. Mmm. Yes, please it smells divine. Rachel walks in, when she sees me she walks straight over and hugs me tight, I wince a little but hug her back. Are you okay? I ask. Me. Are you joking? I'm fine. What about you? Oh, I'm fine. Healthy as a wolf. Nate scoffs next to me and I smirk. Thank you, Lexi. Thank you, Lexi. I mean it. For everything. It's what we do. To protect our family. We sit and eat everything Maggie brings to us and talk is easy and cheerful. It's just another family meal. Exactly what I needed to soothe my soul after everything that happened. It's Michael who mentions the elephant in the room once everyone has finished eating. Do we have a plan? He looks at Nate. Go home sleep? You know what I mean. Nate looks over to me as if he's holding back from what he really wants to say. I know it's been a rough ride but I'm not about to stand back and be bullied by a psycho or let him come and hurt my family. We find Lucian and kill him. I say as the whole room goes quiet. We all know it's true, he can't be left to harm anyone else and I refuse to stand back and allow him to harm another member of my family. I look at Rachel and Nate as I say this. How did you know how to find us? I ask. Someone called me. Told me your location and how to get in relatively unnoticed. What? Who? No idea. Didn't leave a name, said Lucian was losing it and if we didn't make it soon they weren't sure they'd be able to stop him hurting you both. So you just got in the car and went. It could have been a trap. It could have been, but it was the only lead we had and I wasn't willing to put your or Rachel's life at risk being cautious. Jackson and I knew what we were doing. We were aware of the consequences. I just look from Nate to Jackson, in disbelief. Anger they'd be so risky with their own lives and love for how easily they put their lives on the line for others no questions asked. What about when you got there, I take it that it wasn't a trap. What about when you got there, I take it that it wasn't a trap. It's Jackson that answers. No. No. Seemed legit. We walked in and no one was around initially. We could hear someone screaming and a bunch of them came out the side door. 
They didn't know we were there from the look on their faces. We fought most of them off fairly easily. Nate continues filling us in. I was fighting one off while I had another around my throat. I was fighting one off while I had another around my throat. He was getting the upper hand on me too, then all of a sudden I sort out my guy and the guy wrapped around my throat just drops. I turned and saw a wolf there and a redhead, they were helping, said to get to you quick. We didn't ask any questions just ran towards you. You know the rest. The redhead is the witch. I think she said her name was Mabel. She said her mother was the one that put the spell on me to stop me hearing Violet. Really, then why was she helping us, or at least that's what it looked like? Jackson asks confused. She said she had to do as she was told if she didn't want Lucian to kill her. She said she had to do as she was told if she didn't want Lucian to kill her. She was talking about helping us escape. When I asked why she would do that, why should we trust her, she said Lucian had killed her mother. I can believe that. But why would her mother cast the spell to bind your wolf? Where does the guy fit into all this? Nate asks. I don't know, she soundproofed the room before she started talking to hide from Lucian overhearing, or she said she did, said she didn't have time to explain it all, but she would. Then Lucian's beta walked in. I swear it was the smallest movement, I'm probably imagining it but I thought I saw him bow his head at me when he looked at me. Lucian came in almost immediately after so I didn't get time to think about. Do you think that's who called you, he's beta? Maggie asks. I couldn't say, I didn't really listen to the call at the time, I was too focused on the possibility of finding Lexi, same at the farm, it could have been, but it could have been anyone. I couldn't say, I didn't really listen to the call at the time, I was too focused on the possibility of finding Lexi, same at the farm, it could have been, but it could have been anyone. Nate says. They did say they couldn't be seen to be helping us though, before we came down the stairs, they said they needed to make it seem they weren't involved maybe it was him. They did say they couldn't be seen to be helping us though, before we came down the stairs, they said they needed to make it seem they weren't involved maybe it was him. But why would his beta being plotting against him? Rachel asks. Nate adds. Maybe it's a power play, he's ready to challenge but knows now isn't the time, or is hoping someone will do the hard part in getting rid of him, for example, another alpha, Nate, then he could swoop in and take position. If there is no other family to claim position and Lexi doesn't want it, he would be eligible. Plus the pack know him so he's probably built up a following under his nose that would make them happy to follow him as a leader. Jackson says. It's a theory I guess, but then if he wanted to be alpha why would he acknowledge me? If that is what I saw, why would he bow to me? I'm a potential problem to his plan, right? He isn't to know I have no interest, especially if Lucian was out of the way. Rachel, had you seen either of them or heard anything? No. But then I was the lowest of the low on the pecking order. People didn't speak to me. I was never around to overhear anyone speaking. I only left my room when someone wanted something or to do my chores. I had seen the beta around if I ever saw Lucian, but the witch, I'd never seen her before. It's Michael that speaks. What happened to Lucian? What happened to Lucian? I don't know. To be honest, once I saw Lexi fall, I didn't see anything else. Me either. I saw Rachel unconscious on the floor and we just wanted to get them out. Understandable. I am just guessing here. From what you have said, he would have gone into hiding at least from that location, but if what we've been lead to believe we may have our eyes on our side. What do we do now then? I doubt he's going to stop. I ask the room, I feel Nate rage next to me and I instinctively hold his hand in mine. He pulls me to him and sits me on his lap, his arms wrapping around my waist as he nuzzles in my back and kisses my shoulder taking a deep breath. We wait. He says from behind me. We increase border patrols. We reach out and ask if anyone knows about witches being able to mask a wolf scent and Lexi and Rachel do not go anywhere alone, even on the grounds. He looks at us both. I'm sorry, I know it sounds awful and controlling but I just want to make sure you're both protected, that you both feel safe, 
we know you've been targets, I don't think he'd stop if he thought he had the opportunity again. Rachel looks at Nate with tears in her eyes. Thank you. She almost whispers he smiles at her, his Nate smile. You don't need to thank me for anything. You don't need to thank me for anything. If anything I should be saying sorry to you. I'm your alpha. I should have protected you and I let you down. I am sorry for that. I will not let it happen again. I won't let them anywhere near you. Your family. She just sits there sobbing. Nate looks at me panicked. I didn't mean to upset her. Did I say something? He mind links me. I smile at him. No, she's never had an alpha protect her and not abuse her. It's all new for her to feel protected. Loved. No, she's never had an alpha protect her and not abuse her. It's all new for her to feel protected. Loved. I explain. How do I stop making her crying? How do I stop making her crying? I just laugh. Jackson is already calming her. I'm sorry. Just not used to being a real member of a pack. Well, I don't know about anyone else, but Maggie's food has really filled a hole that now needs a bath and 12 hours sleep. I think I'm going to head home. We say our goodbyes as Nate and I walk hand in hand back home. I may not know what's coming our way, but I know the moon goddess was right. With Nate by my side, we can get through anything. Jackson. I walk into the kitchen looking for some food. I am starving, but that is nothing new. I like being up when everyone else is still sleeping, doing my rounds around the perimeter, the calm of a morning, the quiet before the world wakes. My head is in the fridge. Maggie always leaves me leftovers. She knows I like to rummage for food at all hours of the day. When I turn around with my mouth full of leftover bacon, I see Rachel sat there. She smiles at me. Hungry? She asks with a laugh, sorry, I didn't see you. Not much gets between me and my stomach when it's growling. I laugh, do you want some? I ask, no thank you. No thank you. It's still a little early for me. You're up early? I like the quiet. Everyone's still sleeping. I shrug, I shrug. Me too. She quiets, she quiets, are you okay? I was wondering if I could ask you a favor of sorts. Would you mind, maybe if I went to the lake? Alpha said we weren't to go anywhere alone even on the grounds, I like to go most mornings, but I haven't been since. Of course, would you like to go now? We don't have to if you're busy. I'm never too busy for you. She blushes slightly as she gets up we walk silently towards the lake, the world just waking up, we sit by the lake and enjoy the morning. Thank you Jackson. You're welcome. If you like to come here in a morning, I'm more than happy to join you. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. I wouldn't offer if I didn't want to, Rachel. Chance your luck, Jackson. Make a move. What have we got to lose? Ash says, fuck it. I reach to hold her hand. She will either let me or not. To my surprise, she doesn't move away. She just smiles at me. I'm glad you're okay. I can't tell you what it was like seeing you on that floor not knowing how bad it was. I think I stopped breathing at one point. She squeezes my hand a little while looking out over the lake. I don't really remember much. I woke up and Lexi was there. I remember being terrified, him holding a knife to my neck and Lexi lunging to him then waking up in the car. I knew I was safe before I opened my eyes. You did, how? I see a blush creep up her neck and her face redden a little. I felt you. I could feel you were near me. I knew if you were near I'd be safe. I can't help the grin on my face. For a mate who's been almost too terrified to look at me hearing her saying that, almost acknowledging that she feels that there is something between us makes my heart soar in hope. That means a lot, to hear you say that, you know I'm not looking for anything, to rush you, pressure you. It's just nice to hear is all. We should probably head back before you're missed. I sigh inwardly I must have gone too far, I didn't mean to scare her off, I just want to be honest, I don't want to hide anything from her. I get up and help her up without letting go of her hand. I start to walk back towards the pack house when she stops suddenly, 
I turn around to look at her, her eyes are shut, she takes a deep breath and then she looks at me. I can see fear in her eyes, but I also see something else, is that lust. Can't be, just my wishful thinking. I step closer to her, my hand still refusing to let her go, are you okay? She shakes her, then her lips are on mine. I stand there a second in shock trying to get my brain to catch up with what's happening. She's really kissing me. Her lips are still on mine when I put my other hand on her waist to pull her into me. I kiss her gently. I don't want to scare her but she tastes amazing. Like vanilla and sunlight and a meadow. I can't explain it. My whole body feels like electric. She molds her body against mine as I kiss her back her tongue teasing mine. I take the kiss deeper but still slow and gentle as her hands snake into my hair holding me to her. I give her everything, show her what she means, that she doesn't need to be afraid, that all I want is to protect her, love her, give her everything she deserves. She moans into my mouth. It stakes everything in me to keep this slow, to not devour her but I know I need to take my time. She pulls back, keeping her head to mine as we catch our breath, her hands resting on my chest. I kiss her lightly. I feel it Jackson. I feel it so much. I don't want to pretend anymore, I don't want to be afraid. When we were taken all I could think was that I was given a second chance, a new pack, friends, you. What had I done with it? Nothing. I'd hidden. Been too afraid. If I was lucky enough to get out I wouldn't waste it from fear. I am tired of being scared. I don't want you to fear me Rachel. I don't want to do anything you're not comfortable with. Tell me, I'll follow your lead. She kisses me again. Thank you for being you. We start to walk back to the pack house and we hold hands the whole way. I don't want to get ahead of myself but I feel like we just crossed some invisible barrier and I couldn't help but be hopeful for the future. Rachel. I had missed being able to go to the lake. I'm not sure anyone would have really noticed if I had gone alone. I am always awake when everyone else is sleeping. But Alpha had asked Lexi and I not to walk around the grounds alone. It felt wrong to go against what he had asked. Especially when he had made such an effort to show me I do matter, I am a part of the pack. His pack, he will protect me as will my Luna, she certainly proved that saving my life. I will never be able to repay her for that. Jackson makes me laugh when he walks right past me to the fridge, it was one of the first things I learned about him when I came here. The man likes his food. I had time to think in that cell. About what a fool I had been while I had been here and it's time I put it right. Asking him to come with me to the lake was both sensible in making sure I followed Alpha's rule but also in giving me the open space I needed to be alone with Jackson to take the next step. When he held my hand it made my heart skip, listening to him open his heart to me, show me his vulnerability, not knowing how I will react. I see the way he always watches me, to make sure what he says, does, doesn't frighten me. It makes me a little sad at how much he has tried, been cautious around me, to allow me time to adjust and all I've done is hide. As we're walking back to the pack house I stop in my tracks, I decide it's now or never, no more fear, no more hiding, I know what I want. Are you okay? Jackson asks me. I shake my head. Then I take a deep breath and do something I've wanted to do since the night of Lexi and Nate's wedding. I kiss Jackson and it's like my whole body explodes, his lips are soft and gentle, I mold my body into him as his hands wrap around my waist and I feel like I can breathe, like this is where I belong, like I found home. He takes the kiss deeper and I run my hands through his hair, keeping him close to me, letting him know I'm not running anymore, I want this, I want him. His tongue teasing mine, I want his hands all over me, I want his mouth to make me his while my mouth tastes every inch of him. I can't help but moan at how turned on finally being with him makes me. I pull back to catch my breath otherwise I'm going to be stripping him here in this field and I don't want to rush this. I want to show him what he truly means, to give him the attention and love he deserves because he has been more than willing to show that to me. I open my heart back to him. Confess my fears, tell him this is not a trick, I know what I could have lost trapped in that cell and what I am not willing to miss out on with this beautiful man because of my own fears. The moon goddess would not have gifted me with such a gentle and caring mate if she didn't believe I was worth it and it's time I listen. 
It's time I gave Jackson the mate he deserves. Who I know I really am deep inside, the wolf who has been trapped and is now finally free. As we walk back to the pack house, I feel like I could float. I feel so light, so free. My hand in Jackson's, him by my side, it's time this wolf showed the world the mate this man deserved and what she could really be. Lexi. As much as Nate has tried to keep me bed bound and he's tried every trick in the book, I know he needs to get back to his alpha duties now more than ever. Jackson as always has done an amazing job covering but I know it bothers him feeling like he's not doing his job and he needs to do some patrols and let out some of his and Alex's pent up energy especially now he's fully recovered. Which is perfect timing for me because I have some Luna organizing to do myself. I had already spoken to Nate about it the night before. I know I can ask Maggie if I need any help with the logistics and checking I haven't missed anything but first I need to find Rachel. I walk over to the pack house and find her cleaning up the breakfast stuff in the kitchen with Maggie. Morning. I say as I grab some of the dishes and start helping tidying up. Morning honey, how are you feeling today? Maggie asks. Maggie asks. As good as new. Oh I am so glad to hear, let's avoid a repeat of that, I am done seeing my children laid up in hospital beds for a while. I smile at her, I love her so much, I've never had a mother and Michael and Maggie took me as their own so easily. I'm being good I promise, Doc has checked me, I'm all healed, just wish Nate would behave and believe me and the Doc. I laugh. Give it time honey, he's just being cautious and it won't be long, he'll get there. I know, I know he's just doing what he can to feel like he's protecting us. I know, I know he's just doing what he can to feel like he's protecting us. What plans do you have today? What plans do you have today? Actually, that's why I am here. Rachel, do you have any plans today? Um, no. Not really, just helping out Maggie where I can. Perfect. Maggie, can I steal her for the day? Of course, I'm off shopping anyway and technically you two are grounded. Are you sure, Maggie? I don't want to leave you doing it all alone. Don't be silly, there are plenty of us around here I can grab to help, you to get off, enjoy your day. I kiss her cheek and head out. Where are we going? Do I need anything? Rachel asks. Nope. Just you. We're heading back to mine and we're going to have a girl's day, just two friends, food, wine and face masks. She laughs at me and seems excited. I've never done that before. I've never done that before. She confesses. Me either, so it's going to be fun. I thought after everything that what Rachel and I needed was some good girl time to just have some fun and catch up. I thought after everything that what Rachel and I needed was some good girl time to just have some fun and catch up. I want to make sure she's okay, after everything. I have ice cream, chocolate, beer, chips, face masks, and basically everything that is good for the soul. I laugh. Definitely ice cream for breakfast, don't you think? Definitely ice cream for breakfast, don't you think? Rachel laughs. We head out into the garden and spend the day eating, drinking, talking and detoxing from all the drama. Laughter really is the best medicine and Rachel seems so much more comfortable compared to the first time I met her. You seem really good. I am. I'm not really sure what changed. Being back there. The fear made me realize what I had here, the home, family, waiting for me. I just needed to embrace it and I made myself a promise if I made it out of there that I was going to stop hiding. I'm glad. I know it must have been really hard for you to feel like you were trapped again back there but I was not willing to let anything happen to you. Nate and Jackson certainly wouldn't have either. Rachel smiles when I mention Jackson's name. What was that? What was that? She looks at me with the biggest grin. I kiss Jackson. What? How am I only just hearing about this? When? How? Where? Give me all the details. At the lake yesterday morning, I put on my big girl panties and did what I've wanted to do since I knew he was my mate. How was it? Unbelievable. Rachel says as she blushes. Go Jackson. Go Jackson. I laugh. So how do you feel? 
Does this mean you think you're going to see how things go with him? I feel free. Just being near him makes me feel calm. All I wished for when we were trapped was to see him one more time. Apologize for not being the person he deserved. Oh, Rachel, don't talk like that. You can't be expected to just jump into anything when you've had the experiences you've had and any man worth your time should understand that and want to show you the right way you should be treated with no expectations for doing so. You're right and that's exactly how I feel about Jackson. He has been so supportive, so kind and considerate to me and my needs yet never once have I felt like I needed to repay him some way, like I owed him something. It was new, it took me some time to realize that is just Jackson. The moon goddess knows what we need. I think with mates she brings them into our lives when we most need them, to build us up. Do you think? She came to me, or I saw her. What? When? Rachel asks shocked. I tell her about my meeting with the moon goddess and what she said about Nate and I, mates. I think for me it just cemented what I already knew. My life has only gotten better since Nate, even with everything else. I couldn't imagine going through all this without him. I think it would have happened regardless, some day, some way, Lucian would have come into my life. Rather than having to navigate this on my own I have my center to help the world stop spinning when the crazy gets too much. I don't know what to do next though. How do you mean? Well when I was kissing him it was electric, how I've managed to not kiss him for so long I've no idea, but what do I do now? I like him. I really like him, I've had such a messed up past, so much I've never even said out loud let alone processed, what if it ruins my attempts of making something with Jackson, how do I not jump his bones every time I see him? I can't help laugh at the last part. I know exactly that feeling. I thought I was losing my mind and I still don't know how we pretend to have a normal life, I want nothing more than to rip his clothes off every time I see Nate or Alex. Rachel laughs as she nods her head in agreement. How do I do that stage though? I've only just kissed him and I had to hold back or I was going to have him in the middle of the field but I want more for him than that. He deserves it to be special, for me to be able to show him how much he means to me, that I've seen everything he's done for me, that I see him. It's time I put him as the focus. That's really sweet Rachel. Jackson is not a complicated man. He doesn't need anything fancy. All he wants Rachel is you. For you to be safe, happy and feel loved. I think if you just let go, feel the freedom you said you felt after you kissed him and were walking back hand in hand you will give him everything right there in that moment. You're right. I just need to be a big wolf and show that man what he means to me. We head inside and I heat up one of the meals Maggie had prepared for us, we eat and drink and enjoy ourselves when Nate comes home. I hadn't even realized it would be late enough for him to have finished his duties. Evening ladies. He bends down to kiss me. Hi. I grin back at him. Wolves don't feel alcohol quite the same way humans do however Rachel and I have been drinking pretty much all day, so I would definitely say I felt some of the effects, especially as I find myself staring at Nate's ass in those tight jeans as he walks into the kitchen and grabs a plate of food. Rachel laughs at me as I turn to her to see her watching my reaction to Nate. I want that. I want that. Go and get it then. Go and get it then. No I can't, not yet. No I can't, not yet. Of course you can. He's been waiting months. He's certainly not going to say no. You could ask him to do it in the middle of a pack meeting and he'd say yes. We both burst out laughing. Nate walks over to join us. I take it you ladies have had a nice day? I take it you ladies have had a nice day? Yes, thank you, Alpha. Nate. He corrects with one of his gorgeous smiles. So as Lexi asked you? Asked me what? Nate laughs as he rolls his eyes. I'll take that as a no then. He chuckles to himself as he continues eating. There was a purpose to asking if you'd spend the day with me. I was wondering. I was hoping, only if you feel comfortable that is, if you would like to be officially made into a member of the Blood Moon Pack and join us in our next initiation ceremony, at the full moon? Really? 
You'd really want me as a member of your pack? An official member? Of course. Nate says. You're as much a member of this pack as the rest of us. It's time we made it official, joined you with the mind link. We can find you a room at one of the pack members' houses or you can stay at the pack house if you like. We can make the room more yours. Whatever you'd prefer. Would I be able to work? I'd like to contribute to the pack. You help with the food and cooking with mom for the pack meals already, don't you? Well, yes, but I just did that because I felt comfortable around Maggie and I enjoy cooking. Well, if you're happy to keep helping mom, I'm more than happy for you to stay there too. If you would like something else, we can find that for you too. Thank you so much. It would be an honor to be a member of the pack. I squeeze Rachel's hand. Fantastic. I have never organized an initiation ceremony before. Maggie is going to help me, but if you'd like I'd love your help too. We will hold it in three weeks at the next full moon. I'd love to. Great. That's settled then. While you're feeling brave I'm kicking you out and telling you to go and find Jackson. She gulps as she swigs back another glass of wine and grins at me as she gets up. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. She says, and with that she leaves. What was that about? Nate asks. I can't help the huge grin on my face. She's about to go and get her man, I say as I look at him. Speaking of. You've been gone all day, finish your food, you're going to be my desert. I'm done, time for an early night. Nate says as he gets up from the table and drags me off to bed as I giggle behind him. Rachel, my day with Lexi had been exactly what I didn't know I had needed. Just friendship and laughter. She had been right though. If I wanted to have what she and Nate had I had to go for it. With a little bit of liquid encouragement thanks to spending the day with Lexi and alcohol I had decided tonight was that night. Alcohol doesn't really affect wolves as drastically as humans so instead of feeling drunk I felt more comfortable to take the next step. I walk over to Jackson's house. I'm hoping that seeing as Nate is home that means Jackson's finished for the day too. I knock on his door and wait. The longer I wait the more nervous I get, other thing about wolves our metabolism works a lot faster than humans. Maybe he fell asleep? Maybe he's not finished. I turn to leave, this was a bad idea and I slam right into his chest, his arms wrap around me to stop me from falling backwards and onto my ass. Rachel, everything all right? Jackson. Hey. Hi. Yeah. Hi. How are you? He chuckles at me. I'm good thanks. How are you? His arms are still wrapped around my waist as I stare up at him his big brown eyes watching me with amusement. Did you need something? Erm. Um, I was looking for you actually. You're in luck, you found me, want to come in? He takes my hand and we walk inside. His house is surprisingly homely even with the minimalistic design. Do you want something to drink? I'm okay thanks. Are you sure? You seem stunned. He places a piece of hair behind my ear, his thumb stroking along my cheek. I tilt my head into his hand feeling the electricity running over my skin. I step closer to him and reach up so my mouth is almost on his. Do you trust me? Do you trust me? I ask. Trust you, yes? I kiss him, gently, waiting to see his response. He hesitates ever so slightly before he's kissing me back. His mouth parting and his tongue seeking mine. His hands slip around my waist to pull me close to him as my arms wrap around his neck. I let all of my senses be flooded with Jackson. His taste, his smell, his touch, I want it all, I want all of him. I pull back ever so slightly to break the kiss. I want more. I look at him, see his beautiful brown eyes dark with arousal. No more holding back. I want you Jackson. All of you. It was the green light he had been waiting for. His lips come crashing back to mine as his hand slips into my hair, tilting my head back deepening the kiss. My whole body feels alive and I know I'm exactly where I've always meant to be. I run my hands down Jackson's stomach grabbing at the hem of his shirt pulling it up, he follows my lead and pulls it over his head as he then helps me to pull off mine. 
He picks me up like I weigh nothing as I wrap my legs around his waist and he starts walking. Where are we going? Where are we going? I pant between kisses. I want this to be right. I refuse to rush anything with you. That means you're going to want a bed to catch your breath. It's going to be a long night. Jackson lays me on his bed as he trails kisses down my neck, across each breast as his sucks each any in turn making my back arch to feel his mouth more. He kisses down my stomach as his hands undo my jeans and slides them off. He throws them on the floor as his mouth kisses my inner thigh, his nose rubbing against my aching sex. Delicious. He growls as his mouth devours me. My hands grip the sheets as his tongue licks at me relentlessly, alternating between sucking and licking. I build quickly, I have never been touched in such a loving desperate way, I can feel the build as he slides a finger inside me and I moan as my hand goes into his hair. He blows against my swollen center as he slides another finger inside me and his tongue is back on me. Jackson if you don't stop I'm going to fall. Let go baby. I crash around his head, my thighs shaking at the side of his head. All I can hear is my heart pounding in my ears. Holy crap. Jackson comes over the top of me, kisses my nose. Should I take that as a good sign? Should I take that as a good sign? He smirks at me. Don't hold back, will you? Don't hold back, will you? I laugh. Baby, you've given me the yes I've been waiting a long time for. You best be ready. He grins at me. This man is stunning and his mischievous grin is intoxicating. I reach up to kiss him. Kiss along his jaw, nip his ear, he moans into my neck. Think it's time your jeans came off too, don't you think? Don't need to ask me twice. He jumps off the bed and strips. I unashamedly rake over every inch of him. Holy crap, this man is packing. Why I'm surprised, I have no idea, nothing about Jackson is small. I drink him in and when I finally reach his eyes again, they are almost black with lust. I take it you approve? He asks. I crawl over to the edge of the bed and run my fingertips from the top of his thighs, up his unbelievable six-pack, his broad chest, I follow the line of his tattoos that go along his shoulders and down his arms. I hear his breathing deepen as I trail along him, feel the electricity buzzing off my fingers onto his skin. I repeat the path backwards until my hands reach down near his throbbing cock, I grab hold of him and start gently pumping him as I take his mouth to mine, I devour his mouth as my hand teases his cock, running my thumb over his tip feeling his pre-cum. I need to feel all of you Jackson. I need you inside me. He kisses me as he slowly leans me back onto the bed and crawls on top of me between my thighs, his cock teases at my opening, I lift my hips up trying to get the friction I need. Our hands are intertwined as he kisses me gently, slowly, lovingly, like we have all the time in the world. He nips my lower lip as he inches inside me achingly slow. I moan into his mouth as every inch of him stretches me, fills me, completes me. Jackson. I cry out, my body is heightened to his every touch, his every move. He increases his speed ever so slightly. Savoring every stroke, every kiss, every touch. My wolf is all but in heaven. We need to mark him, mate, ours, make him ours. Alicia is like a record on repeat in the background. I feel my resolve slipping to the chorus of her voice in the background. Nate is kissing my neck, I feel his teeth grazing against my shoulder, up my neck, my jawline, I know his wolf is probably driving him as insane as Alicia. It's instinct. I run my nose along his as I look into his eyes, he's still inching in and out of me, taking me deeper as my legs are wrapped around his hips, our hands gripping onto each other as we both build, watching him build as I do is more intimate than anything I've ever felt. This is what my life has been missing. This is why I've never felt whole. The past is the past. It's someone I don't recognize anymore. This is who I truly am. I am Jackson's mate. Mark me Jackson. What, are you sure? It's early, we don't need to rush Rachel, I'm not going anywhere. I want you Jackson. You're mine and I am yours. Forever. Forever? He lifts our hands up together to the side of my head as he thrusts deeper, harder, 
biting a little harder on my neck as he kisses me. I bite along his jaw, he moans and I tighten around him at the sound. I am so close as Jackson hits into me again and again, his head dips to my n asterisk s as he sucks and bites them as he slams into me again. He licks my neck as I lick his, he bites down and I crumble around him as I bite his neck prolonging my finish as he moans and fills me with everything he has. We lay there unmoving catching our breathe, I feel my connection to him like a rubber band breaking. I can feel Ash, sense him, feel my body's reaction to the smallest movement as Jackson breathes mimicking him. We are together, we are one soul, two bodies. I feel the tears falling as I smile at Jackson. Are you okay? I'm sorry was it too much too soon? Don't apologize, not in this moment, never for this, I'm just so happy. I never thought I'd get my happily ever after Jackson. You are him. My knight in shining armor, or built six-pack. You're my lifeline. Forever baby. He rolls off me and pulls me onto his chest. His hand running up and down my back as his other hand rubs small circles over my thumb. You get five minutes and then we go again. I want to see how you look bent over. He laughs wickedly as he rolls on top of me to kiss me and I giggle like the lovesick teenager I've just become. Nate, I'm already in my office before the sun has even risen. I don't like not being there when Lexi wakes up but I had an international call from England and with the time difference and when they said they could speak I had no choice. I'll knock off early tonight, Lexi's been stuck on the grounds for almost two weeks. I know she's going to start planning the initiation ceremony with my mom and Rachel but it must still be driving her crazy, even if she hasn't said anything. I'm planning on taking her out tonight. A real date night. It's something we never really did, which seems silly to me now that we're married but it's not something I want to take for granted. She deserves to be spoiled and some alone time away from the pack and pack duties will do us both some good. My phone rings and brings me back to reality, I can't get away from my pack duties yet. Hello. Nate Walker. Speaking. Hi, my name is Matthew, I am Alpha the Crest Moon Pack. It's nice to meet you Alpha, thank you for taking the time to speak to me. Thank you for agreeing to this time. I know it is early where you are, but unfortunately this is a sensitive matter, and I needed to ensure I would not be overheard. Understood. What is it that I can help you with? Actually I believe it is something I can help you with. I was told I could trust you. I am lead to believe that your Luna's Lexi Anderson, is that correct? Was Anderson, now Walker? Yes, that's correct. She is Luna, mate and my wife. I feel on edge. Why is he asking about Lexi? I'm not ready to deal with more potential danger to her. Apologies, Alpha. May I ask in what detail are you aware of your wife's family history? I pause at his question, I could play dumb. In which case he may not believe he can trust me with what he wishes to say or I can be relatively honest and stand my ground. We are aware of her family history. The death of her parents, the death of her grandfather soon after and the current reign of the Silver Moon Pack by her uncle Lucian who has already threatened my wife and made an attempt on her life which will not be repeated again under my protection. I see. I am sorry to hear of her troubles with Lucian. I had hoped that may have been rumors, and he may have gotten over this lineage obsession, as he has been Alpha for over two decades. You know Lucian? Yes, very well. Or I once did. And you're aware of his involvement with the deaths of Lexi's parents and the rumors regarding her grandfather? Matthew sighs. Yes, unfortunately as much as they may only ever be rumors, we're well aware that Lucian was responsible for the death of his father. We just cannot prove it. When you say we, who are you referring to? Apologies, I am Alpha of the Crest Moon Pack now. However many years ago I was beta to Alpha King Nicoli Stone of the Silver Moon Pack. You're the missing beta? Correct. I see my reputation precedes me even across the pond. Questions are always raised when a beta is so easily able and willing to leave their pack especially so soon after their alpha's death when there is another alpha next in line. Yes, well you see, as much as I did not wish to leave my pack, 
by Alfred his legacy. I could not rule alongside Lucian as a cruel and evil alpha. Besides, I had been tasked by King Nicoli with something even more monumental. What was that? If you do not mind my asking? Certainly not. That is the reason in which I called you. You see, King Nicoli was aware of Lucian's desire for Elf and what he was willing to do for it. There had been a plan to move Edward and Cassandra with the children into a safe house, but unaware to anyone at the time one of the maids was having an affair with Lucian, and he had convinced her to spy whenever possible. She overheard a conversation, reported back to him, and he arranged for the car accident that killed Lexi's parents. I was first on the scene, and I took Lexi and found a human officer to take her while I went back for her brother. By the time I had returned they had taken her to a hospital and were starting to ask questions I could not answer. I took him home, and on request of your grandfather took Lucy and sisters with me also. We had arranged safe passage to London and protection from the Crest Moon Pack. Our Alpha was the cousin of Nicoli. He passed five years ago, and with no heirs, he left the pack in my care. I was calling to see if Lexi knew of her family history, and if not, to warn you of Lucian. He is a very unstable wolf, and nothing will stop him in this mission to be the only eligible heir to the Silver Moon Pack, no matter how deluded that may be. Unfortunately, we are well aware of Lucian and what needs to be done to stop him and ensure Lexi's safety. So correct me if I am wrong here, but does that mean that both Lexi's aunts and her brother survived after all? That is correct. One of Lexi's aunt is the same age as herself, so has no memory of her father Nicoli, and try as I might I could not get to Lexi after the accident. I did not want to leave her, but the fear of Lucy in finding out I was looking for her and she wasn't dead was too great a risk to take. Her brother was injured but survived. His name is Oliver, and he is three years older than Lexi. I can't believe it. She has a family and they are alive. I presume seeing as you contacted me and have kept the rest of the family hidden all these years you were not about to threaten her life? Oh Lord no, never, I just wanted to ensure she was safe. I had looked many times over many years, but she never stayed in one place long enough for me to catch her when I am not in the same country. So what do we do now? With your permission we would like to come to your pack. Introduce ourselves to Lexi and try and explain, and for once and for all put a stop to Lucian's reign of tyranny. We'd be delighted. You are all more than welcome here any time and I promise you the protection of myself and my pack while you are my guests. Thank you Alphanate. I will speak to the family and get travel arrangements made as soon as I have the pack logistics arranged for my absence. Send me over any details and I will be happy to assist in any areas I am able. You have already been a big help in reuniting this family after all these years. Before you go, I have a question if you don't mind. Of course. How did you know to call here? That you could trust me? I was passed all your information from a close friend and ongoing allies to this pack and to the true elf of Silver Moon Pack. If I may ask, what would that be? If we have support on our side it would be useful to know as we attempt to move forward with the situation. She is a young witch. Her mother was a trusted friend of Lexi's parents and helped implement protection when the threat from Lucian became a real cause for concern towards the life of the children before the accident happened and prevented the original plan to go ahead. This witch? Is her name Mabel by any chance? Yes it is, have you met her? Something like that. I don't want to mention she was the cause for Lucian and his wolves getting across the border and my trust in her is very limited, not only in that she has been working with the man trying to kill my mate but fundamentally she is a witch and nothing good ever comes from the mixing of a wolf and witch. Well thank you for your time. I will leave you to get on with your day. I will send all information and dates over as soon as I am able. Please inform your Luna we are very much excited to meet her and to stay safe. I will pass it on. Good day to you. 
How on earth am I supposed to tell Lexi half of her family is not only alive but hiding out in England and looking and hopping onto a plane and coming to meet her? What if she doesn't want to see them? There's a quick knock on the door which breaks me from the silence of my own thoughts when Jackson strolls in looking like the cat that got the cream. You're happy this morning? What happened? Me, same as every day Alpha. He says with a wink, I go to ignore his upbeat attitude, I'm not in the mood, especially after that phone call when something catches my eye. Jackson. You're marked. Rachel? His grin is so wide I swear he's going to split his face. I finally have my ma- Lexi, I woke up to an empty bed, but a note on the pillow from Nate saying he had to go to his office for a call. He'd said the night before he had a pack alpha who had reached out to him he would fill me in when he knew more. I go about my morning and head over to the pack house. I want to start the initiation ceremony prep with Maggie and Rachel today. I'm not sure what I need and seen as I can't leave sight if I need anything from town I'm going to have to ask Maggie, and I don't want to leave her with too much at the last minute. I'm almost there when I see Rachel and Jackson walking hand in hand coming from the direction of Jackson's house. I smile as he reaches down to kiss her and heads inside off to Nate's office. As Rachel turns she sees me and blushes as she gives me her biggest smile. Well good morning. I laugh. Hi. Hi. She replies a little sheepish. Did you sleep well? She grins as her face reddens more. Yes thanks, you? Yes thanks, you? Oh I slept for hours. Although I'm not sure you did. I laugh. So? Jackson is. Unbelievable. She squeals. Good boy Jackson. I laugh. How do you feel? Honestly. Like a new person. Like there is another side to me that has finally been freed. I feel happy. I hug Rachel that's all I've ever wanted for her. Happiness. As I'm pulling back I see the mark. He's marked you already. Damn the boy must be good in bed. Her hand comes up to her neck to touch her mark. It just felt right. I can't explain it. You don't need to explain anything. You're happy. I already know Jackson will be ecstatic. I'm so happy for you both. We walk into the house and head to the kitchen. Morning Maggie. Maggie turns and smiles at us. She walks over to Rachel and hugs her. Welcome to the family, sweetie. How? I've just bumped into Jackson in my fridge. He couldn't stop smiling and I know that smile is from a man whose heart feels full. Of course he was in the fridge. Rachel laughs. Well seen as I have my two most trusted party planners with me, how about some sweetie, sitting in the garden in the sun and ceremony planning? Well seen as I have my two most trusted party planners with me, how about some sweetie, sitting in the garden in the sun and ceremony planning? Sounds like a lovely way to spend the day, I'll grab us some food too. Planning is always done better with cake. Maggie says. We spend all morning and most of the afternoon going over everything needed for the initiation ceremony. Thank goddess for Maggie. This woman is a wealth of knowledge and I don't know how I am ever going to be a Luna like her. Michael walks over around lunch. Ladies. Ladies. He says as he bends to kiss Maggie on her head. The look of love they give each other as she squeezes the hand he's resting on her shoulder is the kind you read about in fairy tales. Can I get anyone any food or drinks? Michael asks. I'll come help. Maggie says as she goes to stand. Nonsense I'm sure I can manage. Nonsense I'm sure I can manage. Stay. He runs his hand along his cheek as he walks inside. Will we be that lucky? Rachel asks. Oh sweetie, you already are. Yes a lot of our heightened emotions are from the mate bond. But the foundation is already there. That's the part that people don't recognize. Yes moon goddess blesses us with our mates. Not everyone is as fortunate with their mates. Some never find them, some are rejected, some turn out in ways that is not healthy for them. The foundation of the person makes the mate bond. Jackson is a wonderful soul. He is caring and passionate, patient and understanding. The mate bond builds on that. I think Rachel and I are both holding back tears as Michael walks out with a tray of sandwiches and drinks. Oh lordy, what happened? Oh lordy, what happened? 
Maggie. She truly is one of a kind. How we ever had a life without her in it. Without either of you. Almost seems impossible. Michael smiles at her with such love and pride. That she sure is. I count my lucky stars every day for this wonderful woman, the family and life she's blessed me with. That she sure is. I count my lucky stars every day for this wonderful woman, the family and life she's blessed me with. Oh enough, you'll have me in tears, eat up. She says as she fusses with the tray and goes back to what she does best. Looking after everyone else. Jackson and Nate walk over to join us. Jackson sits next to Rachel and places his hand her knee, she leans into him. I don't even think they realize how intimate they are so easily and comfortably. They deserve so much happiness it makes my heart swell. I look at Nate as he sits next to me. He's troubled, I can see it in his eyes even as he smiles to me. I run my fingers along his cheek as I watch him. He turns his head to kiss my hand, takes it into his on his lap and squeezes it. His sign he doesn't want to talk here he will wait until we are alone. I sit on his lap. Wrap his arms around my waist. He buries his head into my back as I feel him inhale and as he breathes out he relaxes ever so slightly. Whatever his phone call was this morning it bothered him and I have a sinking feeling it has something to do with me and Lucian. We enjoy our lunch, the more we talk and laugh the more Nate relaxes. I get up to help clear the table with Jackson. As we walk into the kitchen I put the dishes down and hug him. I catch him off guard initially and then he hugs me back. I look up at him, see the common eyes, the happiness and smile. I love that you're happy Jackson. You deserve every fairy tale happy ending. Oh come on Lex, are you trying to break a man? He laughs as he hugs me a little tighter. You know I love you like my brother. I love you too Lex, good job because you and Nate have aged me terribly. I laugh as I hit his shoulder and start cleaning away the plates. I'm surprised you managed to leave the house today. I tease him. It wasn't my idea. I look at him and see him sulking and can't help but laugh. Just look out for you too, okay? I know Rachel has had it hard but you're just as important, Jackson. Remember you matter just as much. I promise. Good. Now I need to go and fix my husband. I head out to the back and over to Nate, I stand next to him as he wraps his arm around my ass and I run my hands through his hair. So? So? What's your plan? We're going on a date. Are we? Yes, ma'am. When? Where? Tonight. Where is for me to know? I presume it's going to take you like 14 hours to get ready. You better start now. He grins up at me. I need to know something. I need to know something. So I know what to wear. He thinks for a minute I'm sure debating whether I really do or if it will ruin it. Something practical. What does that mean? Tell me and then I can go with her and make sure what she is trying will work. Rachel suggests. Good idea. I plead. Fine. Start heading home then, until the initiation ceremony I don't have mind link yet. I do as he says and I can see Rachel walking behind me five minutes later so I wait for her to catch up and we both head back to the house. So? So? What am I allowed to know? Pretty much absolutely nothing, I'm just to say yes or no if needed. She laughs I roll my eyes but I can't hide my excitement. Nate and I have never had a real date. We jump straight into getting married which sounds insane when I think about it. Shower? Shower? I would definitely go for the whole clean, preen and pamper side of it like normal. Probably more for the after. She winks at me. I'm going to stay down here call me when it's time to get dressed. Yes, boss. I head upstairs, shower or bath. Rachel said pamper so I run a bath. I soak in the warm water, wash my hair, shave, exfoliate, face mask, by the time I'm done the water is almost cold. I get out wrapping the towel around me a head over to do my hair. Rachel what do I do with my hair? I shout down the stairs. She walks into my room. I liked it for your wedding, curled half up and half down. She says. 
We start working together to dry my hair and bring out my natural curl while Rachel pins it half up leaving the rest to fall down my back. Makeup? Minimal. Nate likes you like you. I put on a little mascara and lip gloss, add a little blush and call it done. I head over to my wardrobe. Right if Nate is planning a date night, what would he plan and what would I need to wear? A meal? A fancy dress. Doesn't really scream Nate, or me, especially not with Lucian out there and being too worried someone would spot us. What we really need is some time away from pack duties and to have some fun. I grab a pair of jeans, ones that hug my ass tight, a corset top that molds to my body and stops showing just a little stomach with spaghetti straps. I walk out to see what Rachel says. You know him really well, don't you? I smile knowing that I've figured something out and got this right at least. Shoes? Something somewhere between comfortable and cute. I have some brown knee-high boots that are flat. Perfect. We head downstairs and Rachel is heading out just as Nate walks in. Well hi gorgeous. Is this okay? Stunning. As always. He says he kisses my nose. Are you going to tell me where we're going yet? Are you going to tell me where we're going yet? Nope. I promise tonight is just about having some fun. He kissed me as he holds my hand and we head out to the car. Lexi. As we climb into the truck Nate drives us towards the borders of the town. I have no idea where we're going but I feel like a teenager. How did your call go today? He flinches a little at my question, if I hadn't been looking at him I may have missed it. It was okay. Nate what is wrong? Talk to me. I want to tell you about the call Lexi, at the same time I just want to enjoy tonight with you. I don't know what to do for best. You deserve to know when I don't hide anything from you, I guess I'm being selfish that I think if I tell you it might ruin tonight for us. Or at least change the mood. Then don't tell me. What? Are you sure? Yes. I want to enjoy my date night, I want to enjoy being together. Whatever it is, it can wait. We can talk about it tomorrow. Nate takes my hand in his and kisses it. He holds on to it for the rest of the drive. I see thousands of lights and can hear screaming in the distance and then realize we're at the fair. As we get out Nate wraps his arm around my shoulders. I hope this is okay? He looks a little shy. He looks a little shy. It's prefect. I've never been to one. Are you going to win me a soft toy? He laughs. He laughs. I'll win you as many as you want baby. I all but drag him in. This is the perfect way to spend an evening being just us. No pack duties, no Alpha and Luna, no psychopath uncle. Just rides, games, food and fun. We play all the silly games and Nate wins me countless teddies, we stop taking the prizes in the end, he clearly likes showing off. We're surrounded by humans so Nate's wolf strength certainly helps. We go on every ride, make out on every ride we can. We spend the night making out, eating and acting like teenagers. I've never been on a date before. I confess. You haven't? Well no, not really. I mean I'd bump into someone if I was already out but no one has ever taken me out on a date where I've gotten ready and picked up and headed out with them. Well, good. He laughs. I cock my head waiting for him to explain, I see the mischief in his eyes. In case you didn't know this about me, I don't share very well. In case you didn't know this about me, I don't share very well. Especially when it comes to my wife and mate. The idea that I'm your first date, I can't pretend I'm not happy about that. I just roll my eyes at him. Good job you're cute. I've never been on a date either. Really? I find that hard to believe. Why? Have you seen you? Like whoa. Women would be lining up to date you. If you say so. I was never interested. No one ever caught my attention until you threw yourself at me naked in my own bed. Nate Walker. Stop talking such nonsense. He just laughs at me as we head back to the truck. Thank you for tonight, it was the best first date. It was nice to just be us, I love spending time with you Lexi. Even if it means I have to put clothes on you now and again. There isn't a need for that once we get home you know. 
I smirk at him, I run my hand up along his thigh. Lexi, Lexi, he warns. Yes, dear husband. I cup him over his jeans, feel him instantly hard straining against the restriction of the material. Behave, he warns. I take my other hand and tease my news through my shirt. Fuck. He hisses at me I slide my hand down and unbutton my jeans. He pulls the car off the road into the trees and grabs hold of my hips pulling me onto him and crashing his mouth into mine. I moan against the greed of his mouth and tongue as his hands pull my shirt off and his hands take over from mine teasing my news. My hips rubbing against him stretched in his jeans, desperate to feel friction. My hands pull his shirt off and start trying to unzip his jeans. His grabs my ass to lift it up as he unzips my jeans and pulls them down as I finally free him, and he slams me down on his hard shaft filling me. Our mouths are devouring each other as I move my hips to match Nate's rhythm as he slams into me deeper and deeper with each thrust. I kiss down his neck biting his mark as a growls escapes from his chest. I see Alex sharing in his eyes. A beautiful mix of blue and black staring back at me. I feel Violet itching to join in but I don't want to let her take over. Trust me. Feel the connection. She tells me. I listen to her and feel the change she's offering, I open myself up to her. Instead of her taking control I feel the shared connection. I feel us both being present, neither holding back. I see the look on Nate slash Alex's face as he realizes Violet and I are together. His face lights up with the realization we're both here in this moment, just as he and Alex are. The shift is animalistic, he pounds into me harder and faster, both able to give and take more with the strength of our wolves. He hits against my G-spot again and again, my nails dig into his shoulders as I throw my head back to arch my back and keep him deep. I clench myself around him with each thrust making myself tighter as his mouth bites along my neck, I feel my build as I cry out, my hands in Nate's hair, my mouth on him as I crash around him, my whole body shaking around him as he lets go and falls with me. Nate kisses along my shoulder, my neck, kissing me gently as our heads rest against each other. The only sound is that of our heavy breathing and fast beating hearts. I love you Nate. I love you too Lexi. With everything I am. I kiss him gently, slowly, pouring my love for this man with everything I can into the kiss. Baby if you keep doing that we're never going to make it home and I'd like to have you naked in the bed for the rest of the night. Always got to think sensibly don't we Alpha? Oh baby it's not about being sensible it's called greed and I can't have you screaming my name and devouring you with a steering wheel up your ass. I laugh as I climb off Nate and grab my top. I laugh as I climb off Nate and grab my top. He pulls me into his arm as we drive the rest of the way home. Not that I make it easy for him. I trail kisses along his arm wrapped around me. Along his neck, take his finger in my mouth and tease him with my tongue. I see the lust in his eyes, he and Alex are still sharing control. His hand on the wheel is gripping so tight in concentration and restrain his knuckles are white. He hasn't said a word as he tries to keep control while driving us home. We finally pull up the drive to the house, Nate dives out the truck before the engine has even stopped. He flings the door open and he grabs hold of me throwing me over his shoulder as he slaps my ass and carries me into the house, straight upstairs, and throws me on the bed. He rips my jeans and thang off in one swift move before reaching over and removing my shirt so I'm laid on the bed completely naked. I don't even see when he throws his jeans off, as he stands at the end of the bed devouring the sight of me laid waiting for him. I see a slight shift in him as Alex comes forward again and they share control. Think you were going to get away with teasing me like that baby? Alex. I know I'm in trouble now. Payback baby. Crap. Alex is between my legs before I can move. He throws my legs over his shoulders and pins them there with his arms. His tongue plunges into me as my hands grab his hair. He sucks and bites my tender clitoris so I arch my back and push into his mouth more. He circles his tongue around ever so slowly while sucking harder. One arm comes over my stomach to pin me to the bed while his slips his finger inside me rubbing at my opening ever so gently, while he tongue continues torturing me. I can feel my build coming already, I'm so close and then Alex stops. He just kisses around me, he finger out of me, until he starts again. He puts another finger inside me, rubbing them in time with his mouth sucking on me while his tongue circles my clitoris. I feel my build again, 
faster this time, I tighten around his fingers, and then he's out of me, kisses me again, letting my fall ebb away. I cry out in frustration, my hands gripping the bedsheets as he starts again. I try to lift my hips to get deeper, but his arm holds me tight against the bed as he slips a third finger inside and pushes me deeper. All I can feel is the need building inside me, the mix of Alex's fingers, mouth and tongue working together to make me come undone. For a third time just as I am about to peek he stops and kisses me. Alex. I roar. I feel the smile against my thigh as he looks at me. Yes, baby. Don't baby me. Stop teasing me, Alex. What do you want? I want you to let me finish. Stop teasing me, Alex, or so help me goddess. I love a challenge. His mouth is back on me again, the same torture, I can't do anything but lay and take it, I can't think. Every sense in me is heightened to how turned on I am, how much I need the fall, I feel the build again. I think I might cry if he stops again. I'm close when he grabs my thighs and slams his cock inside of me. I come instantly from the sheer power and scream as I do from the intensity. You're such an ass. That's why you love me. When my body finally stops shaking I open my eyes and see Alex stood, still inside me, full of arousal. I instantly feel myself soak around him, growling from his chest as he feels it too, his cock stretching me as he hardens inside me. My turn. I actually gulp at the prospect, which only makes him smile more. I know there is no way either of us are sleeping tonight and I'm going to be sore tomorrow. I feel Violet at the back of me and I let her come forward. Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. She smirks at him. Bait. I wake up to Lexi sprawled across the top of me sleeping heavily. I know she's exhausted from last night and I can't help but smile. We did good last night. Alex jokes. I thought she was going to kill you at one point. I thought she was going to kill you at one point. Yeah. Me too. Fun wasn't it? Remember that the next time she's making you beg. I have no problem begging when it's begging for her. I can't argue with you there. I want to get up and make her some breakfast but I'm not sure how I'm supposed to untangle myself from her. I move a little to see if I can get out of bed and she moans in her sleep as her arm grips tighter around me. I guess that means we're not going anywhere. Alex chuckles. I guess not. I mean there is one way we could get her to move. I mean there is one way we could get her to move. I run my hand up and down her back, if date nights are going to end like that we need to be going on a lot more. I was worried it was going to start off in a different mood after my call that morning. I still need to tell her, I just wish I wasn't so nervous this might hurt her. She rolls over in her sleep and I see my chance at escape. I slide from underneath her and head downstairs to make some coffee and start breakfast. I'm set drinking a coffee when Lexi comes downstairs in nothing more than my shirt, I feel myself twitch at the sight of her, post-sex, hair ruffled, sleepy and gorgeous. Good morning baby. Good morning handsome. She runs her hands over my chest, smirks, sorry about those. I cock my head to the side. Sorry about what? She runs her hands over my chest and I see the scratch and bite marks. Ha! Never noticed. I kiss her neck. I kiss her neck. Guess I should say sorry for these then. I hadn't noticed. She laughs. Guess I'm going to need to put some makeup on today or wear a turtleneck. She laughs. With this heat. You'll melt. So I'm just supposed to walk around covered in hickeys and bruises, why don't you just invite the pack to watch the next time we have sex? We would not be the first wolves to walk around with a little obvious bedroom activity on us. I laugh. What do you mean? Wolves are sexual beings, especially with our mates, there is no shame in being who we are, there is nothing to be embarrassed about, love is love, we're adults, you saw Jackson and Rachel, did you feel uncomfortable seeing them together? No. I felt happy for them. Exactly. No judgment. Well if that's the case. Lexi slips her hand into my boxers as she bites my neck I pick her up, grabbing her ass, pulling the shirt up as she wraps her legs around me and her tongue teases mine. I keep a hold of her as I lower her until my cock is teasing her opening, she's wet for me already. I love how easily she gets wet. I slide into her slowly, she moans as I stretch her, she rests her hands on my shoulders as she starts moving herself up and down my cock burying me in her deeper and deeper. Her thighs wrap around me tight as she clenches her core around me with every thrust, 
she's so tight it takes all I have to not let go. She's so deep working me as I hold her up, my mouth takes her tits in my mouth flicking my tongue over her erect nipples, her moan vibrates in her chest and makes my cock harder. I spank her ass as she comes down onto my cock as I bite her mark to edge her closer. I can feel her reaching her peak. I sit her ass on the edge of the counter as one hand holds her by her throat and the other pins her hands behind her back as I take over to push her to CX. Harder and harder until she's so tight I can barely hold on. Let go for me baby. She comes around me and gives me my final push to follow her as I empty inside her, I let go of her hands and she wraps them around my neck as she buries her head into my neck kissing me and I wrap my arms around her. Her stomach growls and breaks the moment. Think you need fed. I laugh. It's your fault. It's your fault. All the cardio last night and now this morning. She winks at me as she jumps down to grab some food and I spank her bare ass as she walks past me. What are you plans today handsome? I was wondering if you fancied going for a run? I'd love to. I know Alex is being a baby about how long it's been. I have not. Lexi laughs as she listens to us argue. I have some paperwork to check over first. It's alright, I have some calls to make over the initiation ceremony and invites first anyway. Speaking of phone calls. Now okay to discuss or bad timing? I sigh. I don't think there is going to be a right time, I think I'd feel better just having you know and it not hanging over me. All right. She smiles at me. The call was from a wolf called Matthew, he is Alpha of the Crest Moon Pack, he lives in England. He used to be the Beta of the Silver Moon Pack when your grandfather was Alpha. Oh. So that's where he went after he died. England? Seems so. Under the orders of your grandfather. They knew Lucian was targeting your father. They had a plan to get you all out until it was dealt with. He was fooling around with one of the staff who overhead the plan and gave him the information. He used it to get your parents killed and what he believed was you and your brother. Matthew rescued you and handed you to a police officer while he went back to rescue the rest. They took you to the hospital and the system got involved, they lost you. They were worried if they kept trying to find you Lucian would find out you were still alive and find you first. He's been looking for you ever since, as quietly as he could. He's been looking for me? All these years? Yes. You were never meant to end up in care. His hands were tied once the humans got involved. He thought you might have been safe if they had no idea what had really happened and how. You said he went back. What to save my parents? He tried. There was nothing he could do. Your brother was with you too. He was. Oh God, please don't tell me. He survived. That's why Matthew struggled to get to you. He needed to take him back to safety first and by the time he made it to you everything had gotten so complicated he couldn't get to you. I have a brother. Yes. His name is Oliver and he lives in England too. That's not all. The family tree, your father had two sisters. One was the same age as you. We found nothing of them or about them. That's because they went too. Once your grandfather died and it was highly suspected it was Lucian, even by your grandfather, there was just no proof, it wasn't safe for anyone to be near him so they all left and went into hiding. Wow. They're coming here. What? What? Really? How? When? They asked if they could fly out to come and meet you. They know this thing with Lucian needs to end and that it can't be your burden. I don't know what to say. I'm sorry, did I do the wrong thing not telling you right away? I walk over to her and hold her hands, I don't know who it's for more, to calm Lexi or help calm me. No. No. I didn't want to know last night. I'm glad I didn't. It's been perfect. I have too many questions now, too many thoughts, I wouldn't have wanted that last night. I just wanted you. Us. Last night was everything. Good. I don't ever want to hold anything back from you. Or make you feel like you didn't have a choice. You don't have to worry. I'm okay. So they're coming here? Matthew said he'd look into it and let me know the details, said he'd like to visit soon if you're okay with that. 
I told them they could stay here, under my protection. Lexi puts her arms around my neck and kisses me. Thank you. Thank you. For what? I ask confused. Just being you. Just being you. So I have a brother. That's surreal. I'm sure it will all be okay. I hope so. How did they know to call you, to trust you? The witch. Mabel. She told them about me, us. Said we could protect them, they could trust us. Her mother put the spell on your wolf. I have a feeling that we now know why and that it was probably to protect you, not harm you, but things didn't go to plan so you never knew. How do you feel? Overwhelmed. It's a lot to think you're an orphan with no family. Find your family and then be told you have other family out there. Some trying to kill you, some wanting to meet you. We'll get through this, just like everything else. She smiles at me. Of course we will. Of course we will. Together we are the strongest. Lexi. I was pacing up and down Nate's office while he was sat at his desk. I knew he was watching me but he had his head down. There was a knock on the door and I jumped as Jackson walked in. Hey. I sighed a little as he walked in. Nice to see you too. Sorry, just thought you might have been someone else. He walks over to me and gives me a hug. I feel Nate shift in his seat. Sorry, they'll be here soon. That's what I came in to tell you. They've been picked up from the airport. We've got a couple of cars on them and a couple extras to act as distractions. Just in case anyone has found out they're coming. I still wish I'd gone along too. Nate speaks up from his desk. It was too risky. They know you're my beta. It was too risky. They know you're my beta. They're already taking a risk coming here. I don't want to draw any unnecessary attention to them. From the outset they're just a normal family traveling, no connection to Lucian or Lexi. Which means no obvious wolves from the pack as security. They're well protected. Just discreetly. I go back to pacing the room. Don't be nervous Lex, I'm sure it will all be fine. The last time I met someone from my family I didn't even know I had they tried to kill me. True, but that's pretty standard for most family reunions I think. Jackson grins at me and I can't help but smile back at him. Nate walks over to me and places his hands around my waist, kisses my forehead and waits as I breathe him in and feel calmer. He cups my face as he lifts my chin up and kisses me. Better? Better. Better. Good. Come on. Time to go. I feel sick to my stomach. What if this is a trap? What if I'm putting the pack in danger? What if I'm putting Nate in danger? What if they don't like me? I'll meet you outside. Jackson says as he leaves. Baby. Baby. Don't worry. You're not putting anyone in danger. You're not in danger. I won't let anything happen to anyone. They're going to love you, just like I do. How do you know? Because I know you. And you always worry about everyone else before you think about yourself, but I'm telling you, you have nothing to worry about. You have a lot of missed time to make up and they are nothing but lucky that they get to have you a part of their family. There is no one like you. He kisses me, holding me to him. I feel the nerves hovering, but I feel calmer, stronger, ready to deal with whatever emotions are about to hit me. Okay. Okay. Let's go. He holds my hand as we walk out his office, Jackson walks alongside us. As we walk to the front of the house Maggie and Michael join us. We walk outside and some of the pack's other patrol wolves have joined us too. I know part of it is a greeting for our guests of our highest ranking wolves to be present while the other part is a show of strength from Nate. That should this be anything other than genuine he's not afraid to fight. The cars drive up and Nate shifts to stand a little taller, a little broader, he squeezes my hand in reassurance. Jackson stands by my other shoulder, so we're almost touching, he too straightens his stance. They're both stood slightly in front of me, shielding me, protecting me. The car door opens and out steps a tall well-built man. With salt and pepper hair, dark eyes, and beautiful dark skin. He smiles up at us as three more people leave the car. Two women, both with dark mid-length hair, bright green eyes. They look like me and a man. He's almost as tall and broad as Nate. 
He has slightly lighter brown hair, almost ashen color with beautiful hazel eyes. I'm Alpha Matthew of the Crest Moon Pack. It's a pleasure to meet you. This is Princess Charlotte Marie Catherine Stone. He nods to the older and slightly smaller of the two women. She nods her head. Princess Amelia Evelyn Gray Stone. She smiles warmly. She is the younger woman. She looks to be of a similar age to me. This young man is Prince Oliver Edward William Nicole Stone. He nods his head curtly but doesn't make eye contact. Welcome. I am Alpha Nathan Michael Walker of the Blood Moon Pack. This is my beta, Jackson Marshall. My mother and father Maggie and Michael Walker, former Alpha and Luna and this is my wife and Luna of the Blood Moon Pack Lexi Walker. Suddenly, all eyes are on me. The women both smile at me and Oliver looks at me with sad eyes. You look just like your mother. Matthew says. Nate wraps his arm around my waist and pulls me closer. I see Oliver watch his movements curiously. Welcome to our home. I finally managed to say. Please. Come on in. I turn to walk in and Nate stays by my side. We walk into the common room instead of the usual kitchen dining area. Partly because we have guests, but more so that there is enough space for such a large group especially as I know the protection. From our patrol wolves will not be leaving while our guests are here. Our packs spread out making themselves comfortable on the sofas at the back of the room. The older woman walks up to me, Nate grips my waist a little tighter ready to pull my behind him if he needed. Jackson steps a little closer. I'm so happy to finally meet you. She sobs. I'm so sorry for everything that you have been through. I'm so sorry for everything that you have been through. I know you don't know me yet but I promise you, with all that I am, we never stop looking for you. We never stop trying to make sure you were safe. Your mother and father were everything to me. I never forgave myself for letting them down, for not being able to protect their daughter. She cries. I relax a little as I hold her hand. You look just like your mother, but you have your father's eyes. I smile at her comforted in knowing although I was never able to meet my parents at least I feel a little part of me is connected to them knowing that. Would anyone like some food? It's been a long journey for you. Maggie asks. That sounds lovely, if it's not too much trouble. That sounds lovely, if it's not too much trouble. Matthew says. No trouble at all. Maggie grins we go to walk towards the large dining table in the next room and Nate and Jackson are right by my side. They're very protective of you aren't they? Oliver asks I turn to look at him, he has a quizzical look on his face, mixed with concern and pain I laugh a little. Yeah. I shrug, I look at Jackson and smile as I turn to Nate and place my hand on his cheek. Alpha, I was hoping maybe a little later we may have a word in private. Matthew glances in my direction at his own words. We may speak but know anything you say, especially if it is in regard to my wife will be discussed with her regardless. I do not keep secrets or pack information from my Luna. He replies calmly. Matthew thinks for a moment before continuing. Very well then. Do you have any plans in regards to Lucian? I answer to the room. Lucian tried to kill me. He kidnapped me and another member of our pack with the intention of killing us both. Lucian tried to kill me. He kidnapped me and another member of our pack with the intention of killing us both. He almost succeeded. Charlotte gasps at my comment. What do you mean? What do you mean? He stabbed me. Twisted the knife inside me before he ripped it out. He had taken me to a location four hours from here. Nate set up a direct line from himself into me to give me blood for the journey, to ensure I survived long enough to get back to the pack hospital before I bled out or Nate did. So in answer to your question Alpha Matthew, the plan in regards to Lucian is simple. I'm going to kill him. Before he can harm myself, my mate, my family, my pack or another soul on this planet. In that case, please accept my allegiance to the Blood Moon Pack in seeing that this is fulfilled successfully. I let you down once Lexi and I have never forgiven myself. I promise you I will not let you down again. 
Your grandfather was not only the best elf I knew, but he was my dearest and oldest friend. His death hurt me in more ways than I could say. Your father was a brilliant man. He was just like his father, and he would have made him proud had he ever been given the opportunity to lead as Alpha of the Silver Moon Pack, as was his birthright and his destiny. Your mother was a fierce and strong woman who adored your father, and the greatest loss to the Silver Moon Pack was not getting to witness her as their Luna. We thought we were a step ahead of Lucian and his crazed scheme to overthrow and become Alpha. Sadly we underestimated him and that mistake cost your parents their lives. It cost you your future and your family. I will never be able to make amends for my hand in that, but I will die trying to fix it now I have found you. Thank you for those kind words Matthew. Please know that I respect everything you have just said. I am not looking for anyone to promise their life to me. I would never ask that of someone but your support means everything. Your thoughts of having failed me are unfounded. Yes, the path of my life may have gone a little differently to how it could have but I wouldn't change it. It made me who I am. It put me on the path I was on the night I came across my family. Found my mate. Without those choices, those changes, I may have never found my soul. For that I will only ever be forever grateful. However, if you wouldn't mind, I have so many questions, so many unknown aspects of my family, my parents. I'd like to try and get to know them. Know all of you, if you would share? We've been missing a part of our family for over 20 years. It's time we healed that wound and started again with us all as the family we should have always been. Charlotte says as she wipes away her tears. Lexi. After the meal we showed our guests to their rooms so they could settle. It had been a long journey for them and with the time difference it had been a long day before it had even really began. Nate, Jackson and Michael had gone with the other patrol members to do their patrol runs again. They had changed up the routine that morning to accommodate the arrival of our guests but wanted to go back and do it themselves, to ensure nothing had been missed and to settle Alex and Ash who were both being overprotective. I mind link Nate to let him know I'm heading over to find Rachel and I walk over to Jackson's house. We had invited her to join us that morning as Jackson's mate but she had felt too uncomfortable and I wasn't going to push anything she wasn't ready for on her. I knock and walk in, she sat at the table and she smiles as I walk in. Hey, would you like a coffee? Sure, how are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I feel good. I'm just not ready for feeling anything official. I know it will come with Jackson being beta but I'm good taking it slow. I understand. It's a lot at once. There's no rush. So how did it go? Seeing your family for the first time? Honestly. It was weird. My aunts look like me. Oliver looks like me but blonde. It's surreal. They know a side of me. My history I don't even know about and yet although it's sad that I don't really know my family I don't feel sad because I have my family. I stay for a couple of hours, it's nice to just have some time away to process it all and escape. I head back to the pack house ready for Nate finishing his patrol. I'm in my own world when I suddenly realize I'm not alone. Crap. I forgot to tell Nate I was walking back. I go to mind link him when I see it's Oliver. He sat at the back of the house waiting. I walk over to him. Hi. Hi. Are you okay? Do you need anything? No thanks, it's just jet lag. I sit next to him, I feel like he wants to talk but doesn't know how to start. Are you happy? He asks. Happier than I've ever been. Which is crazy when I've got a murderous uncle trying to kill me but ignoring that part I've never been happier. I'm sorry. You have nothing to be sorry about. I do, it's all my fault. What do you mean? I'm the big brother. I'm your big brother. I am the Alpha's son. It's my job to protect and I failed you. You were just a child. You couldn't be expected to have saved anyone. You were just as much a target, a victim, as I was. Thank you for saying that. We've spent our whole life hiding from Lucian and looking for you. I have always felt like maybe I always played a part in you being lost because Matthew came back to save me and take me to safety we lost you in the process. I can't hold back, I reach to hug him. 
He's a little shocked and then he hugs me back, tight. He smells familiar, it's oddly comforting. You smell oddly comfortable. I admit as we pull back. So do you. Like I know you. I guess I must have done. You smell like home. I feel the tears coming and I can't stop them. I'm sorry I didn't mean to make you cry. It's okay. I don't really know why I am. I guess because I have my family, before I found them I never thought I had one, never knew what I was missing, seeing you. I guess it just hit me what I missed, I have a brother, I've never had anyone. I have some memories of you, not many, more like flashes, small things, feel familiar and made me think of you. I don't really remember a lot, but I have always felt like I was missing something. I think that's why seeing you with your alpha and beta is a little strange for me. How so? I feel very protective of you. I did almost as soon as Matthew told us he found you. Even more so when I saw you. It was odd for me to see your alpha and beta so protective of you. Almost jealous I think, they were doing what I feel is my job. That's very sweet of you. I have been very lucky in my mate but knowing my luck I will always need as much protection as I can get. I hold his hand and laugh. I haven't met my mate yet. I haven't met my mate yet. I sometimes wonder if it was punishment for not being the wolf everyone expected me to be and spending all these years hiding. The moon goddess has her wisdom in these things. When the time is right, your mate will come, because that's when you'll need them most, when it's time for you to heal and become complete. She once said to me that together is stronger. I think she means that's for all and knows when those times are needed most for us individually. I've never said this out loud before, but, I used to dream about you. I admit. Really? Yes. I didn't know it was you I was dreaming about. When I was younger especially, in another foster home, or in the shelter, I used to dream I had a big brother. He would come find me, protect me, break me out, get me into trouble, tell me his girl troubles and be a general pain in my ass but knew he could because I loved it. Loved him. I used to hear other girls talk of their knight in shining armor. The loves of their lives, what they would do when they found him. Their wedding days. I never imagined him. Turns out I didn't need to, I was blessed with him thanks to the moon goddess. But you. I dreamed of you. I hope I don't let you down. I'm glad I finally have a little sister I can annoy. I laugh as I bump his shoulder. It feels so easy to talk to him. Like there has been no time between us. Nate walks out with Jackson. Hey baby. Hey Lex, you all good, Oliver? Jackson nods. Hey. Yeah, we're all good. Everything okay? Yeah, I'm heading home, see how Rachel is. I checked on her before, where I've just come from, she seemed good. He smiles at me his most loving Jackson smile. Thanks Lexi, thanks Lexi, always got my back. Always. I wink. See you guys tomorrow, Nate, meet you first thing. Nate nods. Night. Say hey, to Rachel. Night. I call out to Jackson as he's walking away. Love you. Love you. Love you too, Lex. He shouts back without turning around, Nate rolls his eyes at me. Behave Nate Walker. I scold. I never said a word. I never said a word. I can feel you and Alex. You don't need to say anything. I can't help it. You made me fall madly in love with you. What do you expect? He grins at me knowing that will instantly get him out of any trouble. Thank you our talk Oliver. If you're up for it, maybe we could do something tomorrow. I'd like that. A lot. He smiles at me as he goes in for an awkward hug but I hug him back. I can feel Nate's irritation. He's still not fully on board with the idea of my new family and I don't blame him. I can't explain how I know but I just know Oliver is not one to be worried about. As I walk over to Nate I wrap my arms around his waist and I go on my tiptoes and reach for a kiss. I feel him relax as he wraps his arms back around. We start walking home wrapped up in each other. You seem happy. Of course I am, why wouldn't I be? No. I mean. Content I guess. I don't know. Something about you, seems to have. Clicked. I feel like it has somehow. Talking to Oliver tonight. I recognized his scent. You did? It was the strangest thing, 
but he felt familiar, he felt like home. Almost like how I feel complete when I'm near you. Safe. I just know I'm protected. I'm okay. I felt the same with him. Just different slightly. I suppose like family. Like my brother. How I feel around Jackson and your mom and dad. I'm glad. It's not that I don't trust them, I don't know them, until I know they're not a threat to you I'll be on guard with anyone. Hearing you say that. Makes me relax a little. I trust you, Violet. Especially with something like this. Your gut instinct. It's a little odd. I'd always wished for a brother. Not so much the family. But a brother. Someone to protect me. Love me. Annoy me. Now, just like that, one day he turns up on my doorstep. I don't know what I did in another life, but the moon goddess has truly blessed me and I will forever be in her debt, and thankful for the wonderful people she put into my life. Lucian. I can't contain the rage as I howl. The room has been destroyed, everything that could be picked up has been thrown against a wall. Anything breakable has been smashed. My wolf Alistair is almost rabid with rage. How could you let them escape? He snarls. I didn't let anyone escape. Then why didn't you make sure you finished the job? There is no way she could have survived that. There was too much blood loss alone. She is no longer an issue to us. You better hope not or I will be taking over cleaning up your mess. We are Alpha. We will not let some little she-wolf take what is mine. Do you understand? No one has the balls to take anything from me. If they think they can more fool them. They won't be thinking that when I rip their throats open. Ace walks into the room and scans the damage but says nothing. Well. I snap. She lives. What? She has been seen back at the pack house. She survived. How is that even possible? I scream. I do not know Alpha but she looks to have made a full recovery. Then I'm just going to have to make sure that I do a proper job next time aren't I? To her and that Alpha. You've done enough. It's my turn to fix your mess. I won't be walking away until I see the light drain out their eyes. Alistair growls. What is your plan Alpha? What is your plan Alpha? Where is the witch? Still in the cell sir, as she has been since they escaped. In case you needed her services again. Yes masking our sense was clever. Shame she doesn't seem to have her mother's powers. If we could have bound the wolf I wonder if we could just have it killed. A human is no threat. Would you like me to look into it? Ace asks. No. It's too late now. They need to be removed, I've lost the element of surprise. We attack. When they least expect it. I want patrols around their pack house. I want to know their movements. They will have changed them from last time. Find out everything. Whenever we decide to strike it will be at night and it will be bloody. Lexi. Thank you so much for all your help. I really appreciate it all. I say to Charlotte and Amelia. They offered to help with the initiation ceremony, the extra hands has been a huge help. The arrival of our guests put a slight delay on some of the planning. Seeing my family. Old and new. Blood and mated. It fills my heart more than I thought possible. Nate has really taken to Oliver too. He asked if he could join in a few sparring sessions for some cardio and they hit it off. He, Nate and Jackson are the new three amigos. Lexi are you okay? Rachel asks. Huh? Yeah, I'm okay. I wipe the tears off my cheek. I just never knew I could have such a family. It's silly. I just feel happy. Oh honey. Maggie comes over and gives me a hug, she inspects me. Are you sure you're okay? Are you sure you're okay? You seem a bit pale and you've been a little off recently. I nod at her, I think it's just been a lot. I haven't been sleeping great. I think when it's time to sleep and the quiet hits my head starts talking too much. Don't tell Nate. He'll only worry and I don't need him to add more to his plate. He watches me like a hawk as it is. How about you see the DR? Maybe there are some vitamins or herbal tea he could suggest to help with the sleeping. I don't need to make a fuss, it's only been a couple nights a week. That's not a bad idea actually. 
Rachel adds. I know how much a few hours even every other night soon adds up. I know how much a few hours even every other night soon adds up. I feel like I'm not going to win this argument as I see four very strong-willed women eyeing me around the room. I throw my hands up and surrender. Fine. I'll see the doc. Perfect, perfect. He's free now. What? I just checked. Need to make sure our Luna is okay. You haven't told Nate, have you? No, no. It's just a check and some home remedies for sleep. You can discuss it with him when he finishes his patrol in an hour. Maggie says. Now off you go. She practically pushes me out the door like a mom sending her kid to school. Do you think she has any idea? Do you think she has any idea? Charlotte asks as I walk over to the DR's hut. None whatsoever. Maggie says with a grin. I walk into the DR's hut and see him sat at his desk. Hey, Doc. Luna. I'm sorry for this, honestly it's nothing. Nonsense, that's what I'm here for. Now what can I help you with? Just some tiredness. Struggle sleeping, or getting to sleep. Maggie said something about some herbal tea or home remedies. Certainly. I'll get some blood samples, if you wouldn't mind giving a urine sample, and then I can test everything at once. Oh joy. I do as the doc asks. He takes my blood, I know that will take a little time to come back so I don't expect to be in there much longer. I know Nate will be almost finished and I'm dying to get home. I wonder if he's up for a bath tonight. My body is aching and I know he'd make it feel better, my mind is wandering when the doc comes back. Sorry Luna, I just wanted to double check before I said anything. Is something wrong? Not at all. Quite the opposite. Your tiredness may be due to stress. I would highly recommend some relaxation in an evening to encourage some better sleep, and I can give a list to Maggie for some herbal tea recipes, but I don't think the lack of sleep will be something that will be solved anytime soon. He chuckles. Sorry. Sorry. What do you mean? Congratulations, Luna. You're pregnant. What? Are you sure? Oh, yes. Your urine sample was positive and I tested your blood to be sure. We will need to do an ultrasound to confirm dating, but it's definitely there. Wolf pregnancies are typically shorter than human. Seven months instead of the nine, which is why you'll be feeling the effects already. I don't know what to say. No worries, my dear. It's a lot of information. I'm going to add some prenatal vitamins to the list for Maggie. I'm sure she can pick them up tomorrow, and once you've spoken to Alpha, we can discuss this further, unless you'd like me to discuss this with you both now. No, no, that's okay, Doc. Thanks, I'll get back to you. I leave and head back home. I'm pregnant. How? Well I know how, it's not like we've exactly been careful, but I didn't really think about it. I was just so caught up in Nate and us and Lucian. How will Nate react? Is it too soon? I'm suddenly very nervous to see him. I get home and Nate is already in the kitchen making supper. Hey baby. You okay? He walks over to me and kisses me. Lexi? Lexi? Are you okay? Yeah. I'm fine. Are you sure? You look stunned. Come take a seat. Has something happened? No. No. It's okay. I think. Baby. You're scaring me a little. Your mom. She thought I looked a little tired. You've not been sleeping great, right? I feel you toss and turn in bed. Yeah. She thought maybe I should see Doc. Get checked. Good idea. Want me to mind link him? Come with you? No. She already did. I've already been. Oh good. Everything okay? I stand and look at Nate. This beautiful caring man, staring at me with concern with those magical bright blue eyes, and suddenly I picture a tiny face in my arms, 
staring back at me with Nate eyes, and I start crying. Lexi. Baby, talk to me please. Should I call Doc? My mom? I'm pregnant. What? I'm pregnant, Nate. It's why I'm tired. Crying all the time. We're going to have a baby. I'm almost too scared to look at him, but I drag my eyes to his face and he breaks out his biggest Nate smile as he wraps his arms around me and kisses me. Really? Doc, sure. I'm going to be a dad? I laugh at myself for my own fears. Of course Nate would be nothing less than Nate. This magnificent man who is so pure. He kneels down and lifts my shirt to kiss my stomach and I run my hands through his hair. Hi, baby. I'm your daddy. I can't wait to meet you. I'm the luckiest wolf in the world. I have your mommy and now we have you. Stay safe, my little wolf. I'm always here for you. I'm crying again as Nate scoops me up and pulls me into his chest as he kisses me and I taste his tears. Thank you, Lexi. Thank you, Lexi. For making my world. You're my everything, Nate. You both are. I say as I kiss him back. Can I get you anything? Do you want anything? A bath. I'd love a nice long relaxing bath with you. That I think I can manage. He laughs as he carries me up the stairs. I'm pregnant Nate not broken. I'm pregnant Nate not broken. I joke. He puts me down in our bedroom. Say that again. Say that again. I look at him and I can't help but match his smile. I'm pregnant. He kisses me deeper this time and I match his need. He pulls back from me breathing heavy. Can we? I mean, are you allowed? Will it hurt the baby? What? No. Of course not. He goes quiet a second. I know he's mind linking Doc when he looks back at me I see his arousal swimming in his eyes. He says there's no reason we can't. Well it's not like I can get more pregnant. I say as I go back to kissing him. I guess the bath can wait for round two. Eight. I lay in bed watching Lexi sleeping. I see her small stomach rise and fall with each breath and I can't believe I'm going to be a dad. I bend over and rest my head on her stomach. Hello my little wolf. Alex says. Alex says. We're going to be a dad. We're going to be a dad. Mate has blessed us in so many ways. Mate has blessed us in so many ways. I don't want to mess anything up. What if I'm no good at it? Nate Walker, stop talking nonsense. Lexi says half asleep her eyes still closed. I move back next to her as nestles her head in my neck under my chin. You are the kindest, most patient, strongest, gentleman I know. You are the kindest, most patient, strongest, gentleman I know. You are the most amazing alpha, you put your pack first and ensure their safety and happiness daily. You are the most amazing husband and mate, who supports me and encourages me to be strong and confident in myself. You will make the most amazing father and just the thought alone makes me fall more in love with you. I know if you struggle with anything you will not hesitate to ask for help. We have an amazing supportive family and you were also raised by the best parents anyone could ask for, and a strong loving father who made you into the man you are today. That will be passed down again to our child, this baby is already so loved and they're not even here yet. I wrap my arms tight around her as I find her mouth. I am all those things because I have you. I don't think any new parents think it's not terrifying the idea of being responsible for new life but all we can do is love. And the rest of it we will figure out as we go along. Plus we have your mom and dad and they did a pretty amazing job of raising you. I run my hand up and down her back, it suits her as much as it suits me. What do you think we're having? What do you think we're having? A baby. I roll my eyes as she laughs. You're hilarious. You're hilarious. I know. It's one of the many reasons why you love me. I don't care what we have. As long as they are okay. You're okay. I couldn't ask for more. I think it's a boy. Lexi says. Really? Really? Why? She shrugs. I just have a feeling. I don't know. I don't care boy or girl. I don't care boy or girl. I'm just excited.
What do we do next? She asks. Well, we can go see the doc if you like. Find out the timing and everything and then tell everyone? Or do you want to just keep it between us for now? I'm kind of new to all this so I'm not sure how it all works, what we need to do, what we shouldn't be doing. I think we should see the doc first. We can go now. I doubt he's even awake. Nate, it's like 6 a.m. She laughs. He's up. Nate, please tell me you did not just alpha the DR so you can see the baby. No. But I'm excited and he said he's making a coffee so he'll happy let us in. I admit a little guiltily, I mind linked him. Lexi just roll her eyes at me as she climbs out of bed and grabs some clothes, I follow her lead. I can't deny I really want to see what he has to say but I don't want to push anything either. We walk over hand in hand and walk into the medical center. The doc clearly hasn't been up long or got ready to start his day but he has put his white coat on and has a coffee as he looks over at us with a warm smile. Good morning Alpha. Luna. He nods. Should we see what this little one is telling us then? We follow him into one of the examination rooms. I'm a little nervous and Lexi squeezes my hand a little to reassure me. If you wouldn't mind putting the gown on and getting on the examination table. If you wouldn't mind putting the gown on and getting on the examination table. I will leave you to get changed and then I'll come back. I am judging from your levels yesterday, we're still in the early stages, so it will have to be a vaginal ultrasound today, Luna. Baby will be too small to see abdominally. The doc leaves and Lexi follows his instructions. There's a small knock on the door five minutes later as he walks back in. Right. Let's have a look, shall we? Knees together, let them relax to the side, and nice slow deep breaths. This may feel a little odd, but shouldn't be uncomfortable. I stand by Lexi's side holding her hand while the doc looks at a monitor then he turns the screen to us. There we are. There we are. See that little fluttering there? That is your baby's heart. Everything looks good so far. I would estimate you're about seven weeks along. So still early but it is all looking good. Congratulations mom and dad. I stand in shock watching this little flicker on the screen. That's a baby. That's our baby. I look at Lexi who's got silent tears. We have a baby. She says as she smiles up at me. I bend and kiss her. Little wolf. I'll print a picture off for you and get the nurse to sort out the next appointment details for you when she comes in. Is there anything you'd like to know just now? No, thank you. Thanks, Doc. I reply as he leaves the room. Lexi gets dressed and we head over to the pack house as we walk in her stomach growls at the smell coming from the kitchen. As if my mom has a sixth sense she brings a plate of Lexi's favorite food over to her as she sits. Thought you might be hungry. She says I sit next to her as I watch our families eating together now more connected than they even know yet. How did you get on with the DR Lexi? Rachel asks. DR. DR. Jackson looks at me, and then Lexi. Are you okay? Oliver asks. What's the matter? What's the matter? My dad asks Lexi just smirks at me and I know what she's thinking. How did she get so lucky to be so loved something as small as a DR's visit could warrant so many asking if she's okay when she's had none of that her entire life? She holds my hand as she sits up a little straighter before she says. Oh, it's all fine. Oh, it's all fine. I was struggling to sleep is all. So you're okay? Oliver asks, for someone who has only come into Lexi's life mere days ago his love for her is paramount to mine and I'm grateful for that for her from at least one person from her family. Honestly it's fine. Doc said I should get used to it. What? Why? Is it serious? Jackson asks just as concerned, he loves her just like a little sister which I knew he would considering he is my brother in all but blood. I see the twinkle in her eyes as she looks at me, she's enjoying teasing them, I look over to my mom who has a calm serene face, I suspect she knows what we're about to say, she's always been good at reading people. Thank God is her she may have never read Lexi and brought her here. I promise we're fine. We. Oui. I see it click on my dad's face. We. Oui. Lexi grins so big. Seems Nate and I are bringing our own little wolf to the pack sooner rather than later. OMG. Rachel squeals. That's amazing. 
both Charlotte and Amelia say. I don't get it. Jackson says and we all laugh. She's pregnant Jack. She's pregnant Jack. I say, I can't hide my excitement anymore. Congratulations. Congratulations. The room erupts. Everyone hugs and cheers, buzzes with the news. Congratulations, son. My dad hugs me. You're going to make an amazing father. I'm going to be a papa. I learned from the best. I say trying to not lose my composure, he really is the best dad anyone could ask for. I see his eyes tear up as he scoops Lexi in for a hug. Congratulations, sweetheart. Mom hugs me. How long have you known? A little while. A little while. She laughs. But it was something for you both to enjoy alone first. Thank you. For everything. Grandma. She cries instantly at that and hits my shoulder for causing her to as she laughs. Jackson comes over and gives me a bear hug. I can't believe it. I'm going to be an uncle. I laugh at him. Congrats, Nate. Seriously, you two will make the best parents. Alex has me snapping my head towards Lexi. She looks at me as she feels his reaction and I see she's crying again. She walks over to me and places her hand on the side of my face to calm us. It's just hormones, Alex. I'm so happy, I can't stop it. I kiss her and wipe away her tears. This might take getting some used to. It's okay. We've got you. You and little wolf. Lexi, honestly, you don't need to fuss. I'm sure I have something in my wardrobe that I could wear. Nonsense. Tonight is just as much about you as it is this pack. You're home, Rachel. That is something that should be celebrated. I'm nervous. I don't do well with crowds. She admits. Don't worry. You know the pack. Nate and I are right there with you. Jackson has asked if he can be a part of the ceremony. He has? He knows you'll be nervous. He asked if he could stand up front so if you need him he's there and hopefully it will make you feel a little calmer. I don't know what I did to deserve a man like him. You deserve a man like him because you're a spectacular woman and you've had enough trials in your life it's time for the happily ever after. We finish getting ready and head downstairs. Thankfully the main part of the ceremony is run by Nate. As the alpha the mind link connection comes from him to connect them to the rest of the pack. He is like the main call center. We join the rest of the pack in the main gardens of the pack house. It's a very similar setup to our wedding. Only less fairy lights and Nate is overseeing the ceremony. There are eight wolves tonight who are a part of the initiation ceremony. Rachel is one. Three are new members who arrived not long before I and four were already members of the pack but have now all turned of age and received their wolves. Good evening everyone. Nate begins. We come together on this full moon eve to bring together our newest members to the Blood Moon Pack. We unite ourselves with our wolves and open up our hearts, minds, souls and wolves to join together as a family, as a pack, as a unit. In protection, guidance and love. To support one another and help navigate our paths in life set to us by Moon Goddess. We vow amongst our brother and sister wolves to join together in harmony to build up our family in strength and knowledge and to lead our future wolves with a guiding hand in the ways of our ancestors and the traditions of our fellow wolves before us. So I ask of you all here tonight, do you accept the conditions set out by myself as your alpha to follow the oath of the Blood Moon Pact to respect and obey, challenge and learn, grow and support your wolves with ours? The eight wolves all speak in unison to Nate's question. We accept with our wolves our Alpha. Nate continues. As Alpha, I ask of you now, my pack, do you accept these wolves to join in our family, our honor and traditions, to support them and guide them? We accept. The pack answers Nate Nate takes a knife to his hand and slices it as he drops his blood into a large chalice. Jackson carries it to each of the new members who follow his action and then drop their blood in also. Jackson takes it back to Nate. With this sacrifice of blood we commit ourselves to the eternal connection of the Blood Moon Pack under the protective eye of the Moon Goddess under her full moon. Nate then drinks from the cup. It's like a light bulb goes off inside my head. Suddenly I can sense the new wolves stronger than before, their familiarity ingrained within my senses. Nate mind links us all. With this token of unity we are now all untied. 
Welcome wolves. Now time for food, drink and dancing. Everyone cheers and the celebrations begin. Michael has volunteered to be on barbecue duty and as always Maggie is fussing over the food. I see Jackson take Rachel off to the forest. I think he's probably going to be checking on her. This will have been a lot for her to officially denounce her ties with her old pack and her old life. Nate walks over to me and wraps his arm around my waist as he kisses me. Are you okay? Just enjoying watching everyone have a nice time I smile. It's very intense feeling so many wolves join together like that at once. Tell me about it. Especially when I'm on the receiving end of all the talk all the time. How do you do it? Manage with all that in your head at once? Practice. You get used to it, perk of being an alpha you can kind of turn it on and off or zone out a little bit is the best way to describe it, but it's never really off. Being with you helps. It does? Yes. As my mate everything about you calms me, settles me, the man, the wolf, the alpha. You're like my own personal private island, calm, quiet, peace. I kiss him as I lean into his shoulder, I never knew I was his off switch. I feel comfort knowing I can be that for him when I know he has definitely been that for me. How's my little wolf? He asks as he places his hand on my stomach. Hungry. I laugh. Just like that Maggie appears with a plate of food and some freshly cooked burgers. Compliments of the chef she says. Got to make sure our grandbaby is ahead of the line. Maggie laughs as she bustles about the rest of the pack. Does the pack know about the baby? I suddenly realize we haven't technically told anyone else. Yes. How? We haven't told anyone but immediate family. They can smell it. I don't understand. First wolf baby here. Nate laughs as he kisses my forehead. As a pregnant wolf, especially as a Luna, your aura and your scent are stronger when you're with child. It's nature, your scent increases to warn off other males as you've been mated with so that would mean one pissed off mate they might come into contact with and to alert other females that there is a baby to protect. As Luna that's stronger than another female as you are head of the pack so the whole pack is on protection of you both. As you are Luna to Alpha, Little Wolf has my scent too and as Alpha even mine has changed. Alpha sense her already of strength and leadership, I suppose a little fear in that it is my job to protect my pack from any danger, that protection was intensified when I found you as my mate, it's even stronger now I have my little wolf to protect. Mama wolves are probably more dangerous than even alphas when it comes to pups and that's saying something when it comes to an alpha protecting his family. Some days I feel like I still have so much to learn. It will all come darling, you are already so naturally suited to this more than you know. Oliver walks over to us with Charlotte and Amelia. Hey, guys. We were wondering if we could talk to you? Sure. Now? If that's okay. I look to Nate who nods to Michael and we walk to the house to head to his office. Jackson appears out of nowhere and joins us too. What's up? Nate asks. Well. Oliver starts. I've been thinking, when things with Lucian are over, Lexi should think about becoming Alpha. It is the right thing. You would make a wonderful alpha and after all these years under Lucian the Silver Moon Pact needs that kind of leadership and care. I can't be Alpha Oliver, I am Luna here. I don't want to be an alpha. I appreciate you thinking of me but that's not my path. It was never meant to be mine. This is home. This is my path. My pack. Maybe you could take the wolves, join them to the Blood Moon Pack. Nate could be Alpha. Is that even possible? I ask Nate. It can be. If there is no Alpha then the wolves would become rogues technically. I thought we had thought his beta was trying to become Alpha. Again, not unheard of but if a true descendant of the pack challenged for Alpha it is highly unlikely a beta would defeat them. Oliver explains. I don't want it. Oliver I thought you would have wanted to be Alpha. It rightfully should have passed to you anyway. I don't deserve to be alpha of a pack I've hidden from for all these years. Not when I couldn't even protect my own family. Oliver take it from someone who knows. Nate begins. There's a lot that you can bring to a pack that has had an alpha like Lucian. One who has reigned in fear and submission. What they will need is compassion and understanding. They need an alpha who is willing to learn along with them as they navigate themselves in a new pack where fear is not the main objective. I know nothing about being an alpha though. 
It's in your blood. Anything else I'm sure Matthew will help and so will I. An alliance between our packs will bring safety and be good for both of our packs. Just think about it. Oliver nods and gives a small smile. I feel like this topic isn't over but I know for sure I will not be taking over as Alpha to any pack. Let's head back and enjoy the party. Jackson says we all start to head back to the rest of the pack when both Nate and Jackson howl we hear screaming from outside. We're not alone. Jackson protect Lexi. We're being attacked. Nate. I hear the screams and smells the unfamiliar smells at the same time. We're not alone. Jackson protect Lexi. We're being attacked. I shift before I'm out of the house and run back to the party. It's chaos. People running and screaming, wolves attacking from all directions, there's too much movement for me to figure out numbers. How many are there? I mind Link as I rip a wolf's throat out without too much effort. Too many to count. We didn't smell them, they have a witch, masks their scents. Fucker. I lung for another wolf running after a group of kids and snap his neck with my jaw. Alex is raging, I can almost feel the hatred radiating off him as we lung for wolf after wolf. This has Lucian's doing all over it. I see my dad up front fighting off three wolves alone. He may be older, but as the previous alpha he still has almost as much strength and speed as me. He may look unassuming, but the man is deadly when needed. I see a fourth wolf go to jump his back in his blind spot and throw myself through the air. I crash into him midair as he lunged to attack and quickly right myself to get on his back as my jaw clamps around his throat biting and tearing it out as his blood smoothers my fur. My dad gives me a small nod and thanks when I spot a group of wolves chasing some of my pack. I race over to help them as they grab the women and start attacking. I land on one and snap their leg immediately slowing them down a little, one jumps on my back and tries to dig their teeth into my shoulder. I feel someone fly and knock them off as I spin and break the neck of the other wolf that was narrowing towards me. I spin to see the wolf fighting alongside me. Jackson. Where the fuck is Lexi? I told you to protect her. Panic rises inside me. I promise I wouldn't have left her if I didn't think she was okay. She's with your mom. Mom isn't you. Maggie has her Alex. Rachel is in there too. Lexi made me round up all the women, children, and vulnerable. They're taking refuge in the basement. She promised me she'd stay there. I told her if she put herself in danger she'd risk your life and she won't do that. I breathe a little. I'm still not happy but I know Jackson is right, I hope, and I really could do with Ash here helping protect the rest of the pack. I quickly scan around to work out who needs protecting first. Jackson and I split as we work our way trying to get the rest of our pack inside and out of danger. Is Lucian here? I mind Link. I haven't seen him. I don't like that. Why would he stay away? Doesn't think he'd win? He wasn't far from being caught last time and it was only the two of us. No, something isn't right. This is a diversion. I run inside I need to find Lexi. I can smell him as soon as I run inside. Jackson. He's here. He's inside. I mind link the pack. Back up now. Protect Luna and the baby. I feel anger run through the mind link at the threat to Lexi and Little Wolf. I head towards the basement and stop. I smell Lexi and it's upstairs. It smells new. I follow it, hoping to find her before Lucian does. I get to the Alpha's floor. Technically this floor is for Lexi and I, but we haven't discussed the move yet. We are letting Charlotte and Amelia stay here just now. Why would she be here? I walk cautiously into the room. I can smell someone else here too. Amelia? It's all right. Just breathe. We need to get you out of here. We can deal with this later. I don't know where Lucian is but I doubt he'd be far and we need to move. Lexi says. You're not going anywhere. I hear Lucian snarl. I freeze, the last time I burst into a room with him and Lexi he almost killed her, every inch of me wants to run in there but I need to think. I mind Link Jackson. Ash. What's the situation outside? Everyone is safe. We have a few injuries. We've been lucky no one was killed. At least not our pack. There's are a few we've captured. Still no sign of Lucian. Lucian is here. 
We're in the pack house, my floor, Lexi is here too, trying to get someone out. I'm not sure who it is, Amelia, I think. I'm already coming. Your dad and the border patrol have it covered. I creep into the room more. It's Amelia I see in the corner. Lexi is stood in front of her. Flashbacks of the last time make me almost run straight in. We need to go now, Nate. Alex growls at me. We can't. We can't see Lucian. We are not risking him hurting her before we can get close. He stabbed her stomach last time. She has little wolf. I will not put either at risk. I argue back I can't see him, but I see Lexi's eyes focused on something so he must be in front of her. I will not let you get away this time. We will not make the same mistake twice. You have no idea what I have had to endure to become Alpha. It was always meant to be me. My brother was weak, he did not know what it truly took to become an Alpha. What that really means. Look at how easily he was taken down. Lucian snarls. I see Lexi suddenly tense a little, her eyes dart to me and back again. She knows I'm here. Alex, stay calm. He has a gun. She mind links me. Fuck. Is there anyone else in there other than Amelia? No. We're fine. He's just rambling right now, but he's waving the gun. I don't know what will set him off. He looks crazed. I think he's lost it even more than last time. I feel Ace come behind me. What's happening? Jackson mind links me. He's got a gun, Lexi and Amelia are in there. We need a diversion so I can knock him down and you get them out. Got it? He nods at me. I lower myself ready to run into the room. If I run straight in front of Lexi, even if he shoots it will hit me first and give Ash time to get them out. I can see a hint of Lucian with the gun by the door as I'm ready to pounce. A crash comes from behind us and a wolf flies over the top of me and into the room. I spring right behind him, I have no idea who the wolf is, I don't recognize their scent, as the wolf lunges for Lucian he shoots, more from shock judging from the look on his face, I see my opportunity to die for Lucian. I knock him over, the force knocks the gun from his hand, I go to bite his neck, but he's stronger than he looks and he throws his elbow into my jaw and then my throat. At the same time I hear a scream behind me, I turn to see the wolf laying on the floor bleeding, Amelia laying on top crying. Does she know the wolf? Lexi is trying to grab her to follow as Ash is trying to block her out. He shifts and picks her up, throwing her over his shoulder. Lucian rears his knee up connecting with my ribs while I'm distracted, my leg falters and he scrambles from underneath me. My mouth is inches from catching his shirt when he zigzags and runs straight towards the window, he bursts through the window into the night. I run over to chase him, the fall would hurt but it wouldn't kill me, I see his shadow heading towards the forest when Amelia screams behind me. Fuck. I run over to her and see the wolf is barely breathing. I grab his legs and throw him over the back of me and race out the house. Doc. We need you now. I mind Link. I can feel Amelia following behind me. Jackson. Is she safe? I mind Link as I run to the pack hospital. She's safe, Nate. He reassures me. He jumped out the window. Send a team to track his scent. We can't let him escape again. He must have been hurt from that fall. Maybe we can catch him. I'm going to the dock. I burst through the doors and throw the wolf down. He needs to turn back, but he's unconscious. I try nudging him to wake enough to make the shift. He doesn't stir. I bite his leg, hard. It will hurt, but it'll heal. He growls out. Shift. I command. He isn't my wolf, but he also isn't an alpha, in his weakened state my alpha may be able to force his obedience. It worked, he starts shifting, before he's even done the doc grabs him and puts him on a surgical bed and runs him out the room. I shift too as I feel Lexi near. She runs in and straight into my arms. I bury my head into her neck as I breathe her in and try and calm the shaking of my hands I hadn't noticed as the adrenaline wears off from thinking we'd lose her. I'm okay, Nate. We're okay. What in God's name were you doing in there? Jackson said you were safe in the basement with the others. Seeing you trapped in a room with him again almost killed me, Lexi. I'm sorry. I promise I can explain everything later. She looks over my shoulder to Amelia who sat on a chair, white as a sheet, covered in blood from the wolf. 
I don't understand who's the wolf. Is she okay? I asked Lexi. It's her mate, the wolf is her mate, that's why she went back to the room. When she saw him, saw he was with Lucian's pack, she panicked, she knew that if she felt the mate bond he would too, knew he'd come looking for her so decided to hide away from the rest of us, to protect us. He's in Lucian's pack? Do we know who? Lexi looks at Amelia and then back at me as she sighs. It's Ace mate. Amelia's mate is Lucian's beta. Lexi. Everything around us was complete chaos. I wasn't happy with Nate assigning me Jackson as a babysitter for the fight. I am more than capable of holding my own. But I also wasn't about to argue with him in the middle of an attack when he needed to protect the pack and I knew in my heart. If I was out there too it would weaken him worrying about if I was okay. I needed to step up and be Luna for the pack so instead of fighting I took charge of getting everyone inside and to safety. The basement was pretty well protected and limited access points so even if someone did come we would know and were prepared. I had managed to convince Jackson to get outside and help Nate. I knew he and Ash were struggling not being out in the fight helping their alpha and as Rachel and I were inside with Maggie and enough of us to protect ourselves if we needed it until more help calm he finally caved and let Ash take over. Maggie had been helping anyone wounded. Rachel and Charlotte were settling anyone panicking or helping with the children and Amelia and I were by the door on guard. We were taking in any remaining wolves when Amelia suddenly went still, her nose in the air. Mate. Mate. She called out. I stood there shocked. Your mate is here? Your mate is here? Who? I don't know. I don't understand. I've been at the pack for weeks at the ceremony. Surely if he was here I would have bumped into him already? Did you invite any other pack members to the ceremony tonight? No. It was just our pack. That doesn't make sense. Unless. Unless what? I see the realization hit her, she goes pale and she starts shaking. Unless they have come with Lucian. Unless they have come with Lucian. Unless they are a part of the attack and are hurting people as we speak. Or worse being killed because of it. She almost collapses, I catch her and lower her to the floor. We don't know anything for sure right now. If you've smelt him that must mean he will be able to find you too. Let's wait for everything to calm down and then we can figure this out okay? She nods at me without saying a word. Wait here, I'll grab you some water. Wait here, I'll grab you some water. I turn to find a bottle of water, Rachel has been handing some out from the storage area kept in the back. As I walk back towards the door there is no sign of Amelia. Where did she go? Did someone take her? I didn't see anything. Violet says. Well she didn't just leave. Not with what's going on outside. I feel the pit in my stomach. You said yourself if her mate can smell her he will come looking for her. What if she did leave so he didn't come here? Where everyone is being protected. Violet says. We need to find her. We need to find her. Now. I run over to Maggie. Keep everyone here. I'll be back. I run out before she has chance to say anything or stop me and I hope I can find Amelia before Nate comes looking for me. I pick up her scent quickly as I run up the stairs to the main house. I try not to run too fast in case I run right into the fighting. I don't know what's happening up there. I follow her scent towards the back of the house. I find her stood by the glass doors just staring. Amelia. I hiss to not startle her but I don't want to be too loud either. I walk up behind her and follow her eyes towards a tawny-colored wolf. Pacing along the forest edge his head snaps towards our direction as his eyes land on Amelia we hear him growl as he shifts and starts walking towards the house. Lion. He's walking right through the fighting his eyes focused on only Amelia. Holy crap. Holy crap. That's Ace. Lucian's beta. Amelia turns to me tears flowing down her face. He's his beta? He's his beta? She sobs as if I just broke her heart. We look back out as a wolf flies towards Ace and knocks him over, he shifts as he scrambles back up and they start fighting. 
Amelia runs from the room and heads upstairs, I chase after her, she runs to the Alpha's floor, her and Charlotte have been staying here. What am I supposed to do Lexi? What am I supposed to do Lexi? He is the beta to the wolf that killed my brother, my father, who has made me spend my life in hiding, who almost killed my niece, who broke our family. What kind of man could be a beta to a wolf like that? I don't understand why would the moon goddess do this to me. I've never done anything. I've never had the chance to. All because of Lucian. The door flies open as Lucian walks inside, he looks wild, his eyes are darting all around, he almost looks like he's foaming at the mouth. There you are. He smiles wickedly. I instinctively step in front of Amelia when his eyes land on her and a hint of recognition crosses his face. The last time he saw her she must have been a baby, but there is no denying the family resemblance. Feels like deja vu don't you think? Only this time I'm going to get my happy ending. What do you think you're going to achieve by killing me Lucian? It's too late. Everyone knows what you did, who you really are, who should really be alpha of the pack and we all know it isn't you. Lucian growls as he pulls out a gun from his back pocket. I told you. No mistakes this time. He shouts as he points the gun at me. Well done, now we're really screwed. Well done, now we're really screwed. Violet says. You are not helping. I snap back at her. What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? He could shoot us or Amelia before we even have chance to finish shifting, and I don't even know if we can shift with the baby. I didn't even think about that. I've no idea. We need to think. Fast. I feel him before I see him out of the corner of my eye. Nate is by the door, I see his struggle to stay back and not come rushing in. Think. What can we do to get out? I need a distraction. I need to get Amelia out of here. A wolf comes crashing through the doors and into Lucian. I hear the gun go off as Ash comes in and grabs me out the room as I try to grab Amelia. Ash shifts as I fight him and Jackson throws me over his shoulder as drags me out the room. He runs me downstairs in the direction of the basement while I try unsuccessfully to get out his grip. He finally puts me down when I sense Nate near. I watch him as Alex runs out the door with Ace on his back and Amelia following in tears. I go after them and catch up with Nate. I tell him who the wolf is as we stand silently waiting for the doc to come and give us an update. It's been a few hours before the doc finally walks in and he looks exhausted. Alpha, Luna. He nods. He is stable. He is stable. Or now. The bullet cart is an artery close to his heart. An inch in either direction would have killed him instantly. He's lost a vast amount of blood, and it was difficult to stitch to get it to stop long enough. He is very weak. If he is able to make it through the night he may have a chance if his wolf can start to heal, but honestly he's in for a hell of a fight and I'm not sure he is going to manage. Amelia breaks down in tears, her head in her hands as she crumbles into herself, the doc gives us a small nod as he leaves. Is it safe? Is it safe? Charlotte could do with being here too. I'll mind Link mom, let her know what's happening. I sit next to Amelia as she lays her head in my lap and cries as I stroke her hair. I don't even know if I want a mate, but the thought of him being taken away. I don't even know if I want a mate, but the thought of him being taken away. She cries into me. Her tears slow, her cries quieten, as Charlotte walks and she is sleeping on my lap. Oh my dear girl. Oh my dear girl. I need to get Lexi home, at least for a few hours. Are you okay here? You're completely safe. Yes, yes, it's fine. You go. Oliver is helping your dad and Jackson, and then he said he will come over. Matthew will switch too. We've got her covered. If you need anything at all, please ask. I hate leaving. Don't worry, sweetheart. Just get a little rest. Between us, we'll figure this out. That's what family is for. I don't really want to leave. I hate the idea of leaving her so upset, she is family, but Nate is right, I am exhausted, 
a lot has happened tonight and I need some time to process it again. I need some sleep. I need time with Nate. Lexi. I didn't really want to leave Amelia at Pack Hospital, she looked so lost. So broken, but I know after everything that has happened tonight, everything that he has had to do to protect us, I can feel the heavy energy vibrating off him, Nate needs me home and I need to process tonight. When we got home Nate walks straight upstairs and I hear him in the bathroom, I follow behind him, finding him stood under the shower, his head bent low as the water runs over him, his eyes screwed shut tight, his breathing heavy. Standing there and seeing him look so vulnerable breaks my heart, I strip and walk in, wrapping my hands around him as I lay my head on his back. He grabs a hold of my hands and we just stand under the water. I reach for the soap and start to wash him, both to remove the blood and dirt that is clinging on to him and the pain and sorrow of what he has seen and the lives that have been lost. I wash his back and his hair, he tilts his head back so I can reach. I turn him round to wash his chest, wash his face, his eyes closed. I guide him under the water to wash the soap off him, then I do it all again. He had to fight to protect his pack. He had to kill people tonight. Nate is a man, wolf, alpha who dedicates himself to protecting people, supporting, not taking life. I can't imagine how he is feeling. I don't want to push him to talk about it, I just want him to know I'm here. He wraps his arms around my waist, he buries his head in my neck. I feel his shoulders shake as he cries silent tears mixed in with the water from the shower. I hold him tighter, it still doesn't feel tight enough. I love you Nate. I'm so sorry Lexi. You have nothing to be sorry for. I never wanted you to see that side. I never want to be a man people fear. I pull Nate's face so he can look at me and see how much I mean of every word. Nate. Nate. You could never be feared. What you did tonight was not about fear. It was about protection. Those wolves came to attack, to hurt and kill our people, our pack. If you hadn't protected them we could have been burying our own tonight. You did not go looking for this, you did not start it, you stopped more dying because of a man who has lost all sense of reality. Those wolves wouldn't have a choice Lexi. If their alpha commanded them to attack it was as good as a suicide mission and killed them. They had as little choice in their actions as you did Nate. It was kill or be killed. The only person that should feel anything about tonight is Lucian. He is the cause of all of this and the fact he feels nothing. He sent those wolves in knowing they were going to lose their lives for his gain and not caring is what makes him the monster he is. And why we need to stop him. I'm sorry I couldn't stop him tonight. I couldn't leave an injured wolf there to die while I chased a maniac I had no way of knowing I could catch up to. That right there is what makes you the kind of Alpha Lucian will never understand. You would always put the chance to save a wolf above all else. How are you? Tonight was a lot for you. I'm okay. I'm not surprised by anything Lucian does which is both sad and scary. Being separated from you, knowing you were running right into danger and I couldn't do anything. That was the hardest part. I'm sorry baby. The thought of you being in any kind of danger, I can't even think of it, let alone seeing you in the middle of it. I needed to protect as many people as I could and I knew I couldn't do that if I didn't feel like you were protected. You're my world Lexi. You and my little wolf. Nate says as he leans his head against mine and places his hands on my stomach. I understand. Being separated from you is never easy. More so when you're running head first into anything Lucian, especially without Jackson. He's the only other person I trust to protect you the same as I would. We're safe now. Lucian is still out there. But his Alpha is currently laying in our hospital wing. But his Alpha is currently laying in our hospital wing. His numbers are lessening. Seeing him tonight, his sanity is almost gone too. I've never seen anything like it. He looked almost wild, it's the only way I can describe it. Wild? That could be possible. We know he wasn't very stable the last time we saw him. That certainly didn't go as he thought, now this, it isn't unheard of for wolves to become more prominent over their human. It is rare, but if he is already letting the wolf be more in control, losing his self-control, 
I wouldn't be surprised if that's what is happening. Come on, little wolf, it's time you and mama got some sleep. Nate switches off the shower as he grabs a towel and wraps me in it. Have you eaten much? I can grab you a sandwich. I'm okay. Nate looks at me with a questioning look just as my stomach rumbles. Thought so. I'll grab us something. Get in bed. I throw Nate's clothes in the bin so he doesn't have to see them again. I grab his shirt and throw it on. I climb into bed as he comes back in with a sandwich and some orange juice and I realize how hungry I actually am. Must be from all the adrenaline. We sit and eat in bed, anyone would think we've not just had to fight for our lives. Again. Can I shift? What? Of course. I mean now that I'm pregnant. Oh. Erm. Um. Actually I don't know. I've never been asked before and I've never had a baby before. He laughs. Violet didn't want to shift when we were near Lucian, we didn't know if it would hurt the baby. Violet didn't want to shift when we were near Lucian, we didn't know if it would hurt the baby. We can ask the doc, we'll be going to see him in the morning anyway. Will they let us know if Ace is okay? I feel bad coming home to bed, sleeping, while he lays fighting for his life because he took a bullet aimed at me. Doc will mind link me the second anything happens, I promise I'll let you know if he does. Pregnancy isn't easy, more so as a wolf, you don't have as long to grow the baby. You may not feel it right now, but after tonight you need as much rest as you can. I promise you, if anything changes, I won't keep it from you. Nate kisses me and I lay my head on his chest, I can feel a little less tension in him since the shower. I'm not sure how much he will sleep tonight but I know he will get there. We will protect Nate. Violet says. I love you both too. Nate whispers. I don't know what time it is when I wake up. I'm in the middle of the bed alone. I can see the sun trying to come in through the curtains. I get up and my body feels like I haven't moved in hours. I head downstairs and see a note from Nate. I didn't want to wake you. I didn't want to wake you. Everyone is fine. I'm just checking on them all. Mom brought food. It's in the fridge. Please don't rush. Eat. Go back to sleep if you need it. I will be home soon. I love you and little wolf. Be good. As soon as I saw the word food my stomach rumbled so I decide that part of his note I will follow as I grab some food from the fridge. It's almost 2 p.m. How have I slept all day? I must have been more exhausted than I knew. I eat and throw some water on my face to wake up, dress quickly and head over to the pack hospital. Maggie is leaving as I walk up. Hi sweetheart, how are you feeling? Like I've slept all day. Thank you for the food. Of course, you need to keep your strength up. Is Nate here? Yes, he and Jackson are in with the doc and Ace. Is he okay? Is Amelia here? He's stable now. He still has a long way to go but Doc seems optimistic he may be out of the woods now he pulled through last night. Amelia has been here all night. I nod in understanding. I can't imagine finding your mate realizing they belong to the alpha that is trying to kill you and your family and then watch them almost die all within in a few hours. Thanks, Maggie. We'll come over for supper. I want to check on Amelia. She hugs me as she heads back to the pack house and I head inside to find Amelia and see what we're dealing with. Lexi. As I walk in Nate and Jackson are stood in the corner talking to Michael and Rachel is sat with Amelia. He's awake. He's very weak, but you can speak to him briefly. Then I have to ask to allow him to rest. Doc address the roommate grabs my hand as he heads into the room and Jackson follows. Amelia, are you coming? She just shakes her head at me and we walk in without her. Ace looks like a strong wind might break him. He opens his eyes as we walk in. Is she okay? She's fine. I say, he nearly died but his first thought is Amelia's safety. We're both fine thanks to you. We're both fine thanks to you. Thank you, Ace. That's twice you've said me now. He just nods his head at me. You up for telling us what happened? You up for telling us what happened? Nate asks. He sighs and winces from the movement. Lucian has lost it. Lucian has lost it. 
I already knew he was on the edge, but it's too late now. His wolf is more in control than he is. He had been planning an attack for the element of surprise. I have planned to try and warn you again, but he's suspicious of everyone. He only really speaks between himself and his wolf. He announced it last night, and we left immediately. None of us really knew what we were walking into. He has Mabel locked away, got her to cover our sense again. But there were more of us this time, it almost killed her. There is no reasoning with him. I thought staying near him I could at least try and contain any fallout towards others in his madness, but after last night that one happened again. What happened last night? Jackson asks. I was hanging back on the forest line. A lot of the wolves that came with us last night were on board of Lucien's crazy, and to be honest didn't need an excuse to fight or really care who they were fighting. They had been getting more and more uncontrollable, and trying to stop them randomly hurting pack members was getting harder without Lucien growing suspicious of my actions. I certainly wasn't willing to fight anyone but couldn't let Lucien see that either. I had been following Lucien but he slipped away from me. That's when I caught her scent. What was I supposed to do? My mate was here, in the middle of this. I didn't want to scare her before I'd had chance to explain, but I couldn't stand back and let something happen to her either. I saw you both at the door. I was coming to ask for time to talk and then the wolf jumped me. By the time I shook them off, I didn't hurt them. He looks at Nate quickly. Just knock them out, sorry. He says to Nate who nods at him to continue. You were both gone. I followed her scent and saw Lucien in the room with you and I just lost it. The thought of him anywhere near her, hurting her. I reacted and then I don't really remember anything else. When you came into the room you jumped in front of Amelia and I, just as Lucian raised his gun and fired, you took the bullet then Jackson got me out. Amelia sat with you while I tried to get Lucian, he jumped out the window and ran but you were bleeding. I couldn't leave you there. I let him go and brought you to Doc. Nate finishes. She stayed. She stayed. Yes. All night. I reply. What about everyone else? Was anyone in your pack hurt? No casualties, couple of injuries, Oliver got a broken leg. Nate answer. What? What? Oliver was hurt. Why didn't anyone say? I ask Nate. He's fine. He asked me not to say anything until today. He knew you'd only worry and he's almost healed. Give him a couple of days he'll be good as new. Charlotte and Mom have been keeping an eye on him. Nate replies a little sheepishly. He knows I won't be happy he didn't say anything, but he knows I understand why. We'll leave you to rest. Can we get you anything? No, thank you, for helping me. I can't blame you if you had wanted to leave me. That's not the kind of wolves we are. Besides, as Lexi said, you've said my wife twice now. I owe you. Nate nods at him as we leave his room. When we walk out Amelia looks at us with expectant eyes. He's okay. He's okay. Weak. But alive. I add quickly and visibly see her relax just a little. I'm sure he'd like the chance to speak to you. She nods and begins to head into his room. I catch her arm and give her a hug. He's not a bad man. He saved my life twice now. He can't control his alpha's behavior, but he has tried to stop that behavior from hurting people. Oliver walks in on crutches as we're about to leave. He looks at me a little guiltily and shrugs. Just checking in with Doc. It's nothing drastic and I've been good I promise. He throws his hands up in surrender. I go over and hug him. I'm glad you're okay, but if you hide anything from me again Oliver Stone, I will break your other leg. Understood? I warn. Yes ma'am, how is he? He is Amelia? He's alive and she's hanging in. The doc comes out of Ace's room and as the door opens Oliver tenses. He walks over to Ace's room and charges in. What's wrong? Amelia asks. What's that smell? What's that smell? What smell? She asks as Oliver starts rummaging around Ace's room while we all stand and watch him in confusion. He stops at a bag of medical washing and starts ripping it open. Oliver. What are you doing? I ask. He pulls out clothes and sniffs them. Whose are these? He asks the room. Mine? 
They found my stuff this morning and brought it over, clothes, phone, etc. Mine, they found my stuff this morning and brought it over, clothes, phone, etc. Ace says. What's that smell? What's that smell? He demands. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. It smells like honey, lavender, and wood smoke. The room is silent as we just stand and watch him. Mate. He says as if it should be obvious and we're all just missing it. Your mate is on Ace's clothes? Mate asks. Yes, or was at least close by. Everyone now looks to Ace. Everyone now looks to Ace. I've no idea. I've no idea. It's not like I didn't come into contact with enough people last night. Was it the wolf that jumped me before I shifted? That was Andrew. No. Okay, not Andrew. Well, who else might it have been? Anyone else close, standing near you, brushed up against you, hugged you? Mabel. Mate. What? Mabel is your mate. She's a witch. Why were you touching mate? I saw her before we left. She masked our sense. Lucian has her locked up. I went back to her before we left. She was weak. I needed to make sure she was okay. She's been trying to help as much as she can without getting herself killed but Lucian trusts no one. Let alone a witch who isn't a pack member so he's had her locked up for weeks. We need to save her. Will you help me, please? He asks Nate. Of course. You need to let your leg heal. It will give us chance to regroup, figure out a plan, make sure we get there and are able to get her out safely. Before you say anything, I know that's not what you want to hear, but going in there now will only potentially get her killed. We need to make sure we stay safe and her. Oliver thinks for a minute before he responds. Okay, okay, thanks. Whatever you think is best, the sooner we can go the better. I will be patient, to a point. Understood. Jackson, let's rally the patrol, get a plan in action, bodies to volunteer, make sure we get cover while we're away. Oliver, are you joining? We need to get Dad too. Nate says. Oliver nods and they all head out of Ace's room. I'm going to head and help Maggie and Charlotte. I tell Nate. I don't know how long this will take. I want to make sure we have all bases covered. We're going into Lucian's pack this time and it needs to be soon. Nate says to me as he kisses me. Please promise me if it gets too much you'll head home and I'll see you as soon as I can. Please promise me if it gets too much you'll head home and I'll see you as soon as I can. Promise. With that we head off to the pack house to start picking up the pieces of last night and planning our next fight. Amelia, I sit by Ace's bedside as he sleeps, listening to the almost rhythmic noise of the monitors beeping. I am numb. I have been awake for 48 hours, but I can't leave. I haven't really had time to speak to him yet. With his pain medication, he hasn't been awake for long periods, and when he has been awake, he has been helping Nate, Jackson, and Oliver with their plan on getting to Lucian to rescue Mabel. They leave in a few hours. They are hoping the dark of the evening will help with their plan. I know Lexi is nervous for Nate. I am nervous for Oliver. He has never believed he is the rightful alpha to the Silver Moon Pack, and should he come up against Lucian face to face he may have to face the reality of his birthright. I am absently playing with Asa's hand as my mind races, subconsciously marveling at the electricity that comes off our skin touching. I have never given much thought to finding a mate. I have spent my whole life hiding, being careful who I was around, anyone knowing who I really am. I guess never really being me makes it hard to incision sharing who I truly am with someone. Hi. He whispers. I jump a little, as he smiles at me. I grab him some water and put the straw to his lips, let him drink. Thanks. Thanks. Are you okay? Do you need me to get the dock? I go to stand and walk to the door when he holds my hand tighter to keep me from leaving. He is watching our hands as his thumb moves over my hand. I'm sorry. He says. Sorry? Sorry? I don't understand. I'm sorry the moon goddess picked me to be your mate. You deserve more. I understand if you don't want this. Don't want me. I won't force you into anything. 
My heart races, my palms sweat more. What does he mean? Does he not want me? He is going to reject me. Maybe that would make it easier. I didn't exactly go running into his arms when I saw he was my mate. I've had doubts over it all. Maybe a rejection is him offering an option that is the lesser of two evils. Yet, the thought of him not being near, not wanting me, leaving him, terrifies me. That's why I haven't been able to leave his bedside. Why I can't sleep until I know he's safe. Yes, he is Lucian's beta. Yet everything I have seen since he came crashing into my world last night, everything he has said, done, the way he has already helped my family, helped Nate, surely shows who he truly is. I'm not sorry, Ace. You're not? He asks, confused. But Lucian, he's been trying to kill you. All of you. You've been running, hiding, all your life, because of him. Yes, because of Lucian, yet, all along you've been in the background, helping, showing your pack what it truly means to be led, protected, stepping up where he has failed, protecting people where he has terrorized, protecting Lexi before you had even met her, assisting Oliver in trying to rescue his mate. A mate he may have only just discovered, but someone you have been protecting long before anyone else. That is not behavior to be sorry for, Ace. I should be helping them tonight. I should be there. I might have been able to get into Mabel if Lucien isn't there. The pack wouldn't question seeing me around, certainly not going to her as I was the only one that really dealt with her unless Lucien needed something and I was always careful to ensure on the outside it looked like nothing more than a beta following his orders. Instead, they're going to have to do it alone and have a harder job, more risk to themselves, more danger. This isn't your fight, Ace. You have helped protect the pack all these years. I know Lucian has been coming after Lexi, but this isn't even Nate's fight to protect his Luna anymore. This fight is Oliver's. He is the rightful elf even if he has spent his entire life trying to deny it. My father would have passed it on to my brother, Oliver's father, to be passed to Oliver. What about Lexi being alpha? She has said herself she never wanted to be alpha. Even if our past had been different, seeing her here with Nate as Luna, I believe this was always meant to be her destiny. Oliver has yet to have crossed paths with his. I believe that tonight is exactly what that is going to be for him. It is time for him to step back onto the path that Moon Goddess had planned for him all along. What about your path? I have never really thought much about it. I have never really felt like I have belonged. Not in England. Here, it feels close to a home, like family, but it doesn't feel like my home. I think now, maybe that is because of you. Me? How? Oliver will need a beta. Someone trusting, reliable, strong and kind. Someone that knows the pack, the people. I believe you were meant to be beta of the Silver Moon pack. You've just been serving under the wrong one until the true alpha came back home. You want to go back to your family's pack? if Oliver takes over as Alpha. Yes, I think that's where I have always meant to be. We sit in silence. I can feel the tension building, the unspoken questions bubbling to the surface. Asa's hand still in mine. I look at him, I see the sorrow on his face, the pain and anguish of all he has had to do, what he believes has made him unworthy. I stand up and panic flashes across his face. Please don't leave yet. Please don't leave yet. He begs, I sit on the edge of the bed. I want to try something. I want to try something. Don't move. I lower my head to his, watching his eyes for any sign to stop. If anything, they darken as he realizes what I am about to do. I kiss him, feather light. I feel the tingling dancing across my lips as they connect with his. I deepen the kiss, chasing the static as Ace follows my lead, matching my pace. 
I hear his heart rate increase on the monitor and I smile as I pull back as we catch our Brie. What's the verdict? He asks. I think we're going back home. I think we're going back home. Together. He smiles at me as his hand reaches up and tucks a strand of my hair behind my ear. What if Oliver doesn't want me as his beta? What if Oliver doesn't want me as his beta? I certainly wouldn't blame him. I have had no loyalties to Lucien for a long time. But as his beta I have served him. It has been my job to be at his side. That doesn't matter. It's time that the pack was fixed and if that means for us just going home and being a pack member and nothing more than that's what we'll do. Will you do it with me? I will follow you anywhere, Amelia. I knew I would the second I found you in the middle of a battle surrounded by such pain. You're the light. All these years with Lucian, questioning why I stayed, why I was still there, I know now it was all for you. So I could be there when it was time for you to come home. Eight. We've spent the last two days speaking to Ace about Lucian's location, state of mind, pack protection, any weaknesses within the pack, Mabel's location. How to get to her, any ways out, and what we might expect as a group going into the lion's den fairly unprepared and unprotected. We've decided we need to keep the team fairly small to try to limit detection as much as possible. We don't have a witch that is going to be able to mask our scent as Lucian did when he attacked here and if his paranoia is as vast as Ace has led us to believe I can't see him not making sure he had as much security around the pack borders as he could manage. I have a small team of some of my best fighters staying back to protect the pack and continue patrols in our absence. We don't plan to be gone for long but I have no idea if Lucian might strike again and I won't put my pack at risk by not being prepared. We're going to leave tonight, I don't want to waste time. The longer we leave it the more Lucian may be prepared for a counterattack and Oliver is all but biting at my heels to leave. I can't blame him, he believes his mate is being held captive, I know if it was Lexi I wouldn't have had half the trust and patience he has shown but I appreciate it even though I know it's mostly due to ensuring his leg is fully healed so he can join us. There is no way he's going to willingly sit out of this mission regardless of how healed his leg may or may not be. I've asked my dad once again to reign as Alpha in my absence. I know he doesn't mind, but I don't like feeling like I have to keep dragging him in to help me with things he passed on to me believing I was ready to take them on alone. I don't like the thought that I'm letting him down somehow. Apart from myself and Oliver, Jackson is also coming with us and two of my other most trusted wolves Charlie and Ethan. They will act as lookouts, getaway drivers and keep the perimeter clear to make sure we can get back out once we get in. At least that's the plan anyway. I head back home to see Lexi before I leave. I hate leaving her, but there is no way she is coming with us and I need to do this for Oliver as much for myself. I need to win Lucian, his hold over my mate, her family, it all ends. Tonight. She sat on the swing at the back of the house when I get home, I sit next to her as she cuddles into me, her head on my shoulder, I wrap my arm around her and we sit in silence enjoying the sounds of the forest starting to come alive as the sun sets and the day draws to an end. Come home to me Nate. She says, her words heavier than how she's saying them. She says, her words heavier than how she's saying them. I promise Lexi. Tonight this ends. If it doesn't I don't care. Do not risk anything to end this that might mean you don't come back to us. Do you understand me? I take her face in my hand, running my thumb along her cheek as she closes her eyes and leans her head into my touch. I love you Lexi. More than I have loved anyone in my life, I will not risk losing you, but at the same time I will not put an unnecessary risk on losing out on living this life with you either. I will not risk not being able to hold our little wolf. I kiss her gently, hoping that she can feel all the things I don't have the words to say. The goodbye I need to say but don't dare utter. This is Oliver's fight Nate. He may not know it yet. I think on some level he has always known that when the day came it would need to be him that ended this nightmare. It is his destiny to bring back the Silver Moon Pack and make it back into what it once was under our grandfather's rule. I understand. Just promise me Lexi, if the unthinkable happens. She inhales sharply as I start talking, I hold her chin up and wait for her to open her eyes and see me, when she finally does I see the tears threatening to spill out, I see the fear staring back at me. Promise me that no matter how impossible it may feel you will keep going. That you will not give in to the mate bond pain. 
that you will raise our little wolf to know that their daddy loves you both more than anything and that one day I will see you both again. Nate. I can't. Promise me, Lexi. I can't live with the idea that you wouldn't live because of me. I need this, Lexi. She's quiet as her tears spill silently and her hand rests on her stomach. I promise. I promise. She sobs. I kiss her savoring every inch of her mouth, every movement, every taste. I bend to kiss her stomach. I will be back soon little wolf, protect your mama. I will be back soon little wolf, protect your mama. I love you. I love you Lexi. I say as I kiss her once more. I love you Nate. I love you Nate. Forever. She says, and with that I walk out the house with my stomach feeling like lead and feeling like I've just ripped my heart out and left it behind me. I hear her small sobs behind me as I walk away. I meet Jackson and Oliver at the drive. We're taking two cars. One to hold back and hide in case we're spotted in this one and they try to take it out. According to Ace, it's about a two-hour drive and a 30-minute hike to get to Lucian's new pack territory. He's ambushed an old pack house and has been using it as a headquarter base for spying on us and monitoring our border patrol schedules and shift patterns. The drive is silent just the air thick with anticipation and looming death. When we pull off the highway we switch off the headlights to draw less attention. We ditch the cars a few miles from where Ace said the pack are staying, we need the element of surprise. Right guys. We know what we're doing right? Last chance. Get in, get Mabel. Get her out as a priority, try not to kill where we can, offer them sanctuary from Lucian's reign of terror and shelter back home. As for Lucian, kill him on sight, no questions, no hesitation, done. Are we all agreed? Everyone looks round me but no one challenges me. Good. With that it's time we showed Lucian what a real alpha can do. Are you all ready? No turning back now. Let's go save a witch and kill an alpha. There's a sentence I never thought I'd be saying. I laugh to myself as we head off with the directions Ace gave us and pray to the moon goddess we're all going to make it home. Oliver, Jackson, Nate and I run along the border scanning the area for any sign of a patrol. We haven't heard, smelt or seen a sign of any wolves so far which makes me uncomfortable. We round to the back of the house. According the ace if we can get through the back doors and into the utility room there is a door which will open to the basement. This will lead us to where Mabel is being held captive and depending on what state she's in, we're either fighting our way out back the way we came in or there is an old door leading to a hatch behind some shelving if Mabel has any strength she might be able to blow it open. Either way, we're not really left with many options. Nate nods at us both and we follow behind him crouched low towards the door. He checks the handle and it's open, he slides the door without a sound and we wait to see if anyone approaches. When all we hear is silence he steps in and finds the door Ace mentioned. We follow him in and down the flight of stairs, pausing at the bottom to gauge if we can hear any movement. Nothing. We carry on and get to the door that should lead her to Mabel. I can smell her from here. My wolf Xander is itching to barge past Nate and Jackson and get inside to see her for ourselves and claim her as rightfully ours. I take a deep breath to hold him back. Nate opens the door slowly and waits for a reaction. Nothing. He walks in and the room is almost pitch black apart from some dimly lit lights around the room and in the cell. A body lays on the cold hard floor unmoving. I run over while Nate and Jackson scan the area. Mabel, can you hear me? Are you okay? Jackson comes up behind me and Jimmy's the lock opens. I look at him with an arched brow surprised he knows how to do it and so easily, he just shrugs his shoulders and me and smirks. I walk into the cell slowly to not frighten her, she's unconscious on the floor. I feel her neck to check her pulse, it's there, at least she's alive. I breathe a sigh of relief while brushing the hair back off her face as I study her. She's beautiful, her rounded face is surrounded by vibrant curly red hair, her cheeks plump with a button nose and soft delicate looking lips. She stirs under my touch as she struggles to open her eyes. She looks around trying to get her bearings when the eyes finally land on me. I swear my heart skips. Beautiful light green eyes stare back at me and I feel like my whole world has just pulled together and landed in this one spot right where she lays. I want nothing more than to pick her up in my arms and never let her go. I smile at her and hold out my hand. Ace sent us. I'm Oliver, we're here to get you out. Understand. 
Fear and relief cross her face all at once as she grabs for my hand and I help her up. She gasps as the sparks cross over our hands from the contact and she looks at me questioningly. I can explain later, first I need to get you somewhere safe, as far all away from here. We turn to head out of the cell, Nate and Jackson are poised by the door. Can you walk? Can you walk? I ask her. Yes. She whispers. I think so. I can carry you if you need it. I can carry you if you need it. We need to move and fast. She nods at me in understanding and tightens her grip in my hand. This has been too easy. Jackson says to Nate. I know, something is off. I just don't know what it is yet. I know, something is off. I just don't know what it is yet. I haven't seen Lucian for days. Whatever he's doing for once it isn't involving me. I was starting to think he'd forgotten I was even down her. She says her voice is like music, a hint of an accent I can't quite place. I bet it would sound even better when she's moaning my name Jackson clears his throat and when I look at him he raises his eye at me. I nod in understanding. Definitely not the time to be letting my thoughts wander we make our way back the way we came. Slowly and quietly listening for any sounds of others but hear nothing. We stop at the top of the stairs before Nate opens the door. He opens it slowly trying to gauge if he can see anyone on the other side. We walk through and wait before entering the last room towards the back door we entered. Nate counts down on his fingers, this is our last hurdle, if we need to make a run for it as soon as we are out of those doors we can shift and run to Charlie and Ethan if we have to. 3, 2, 1. We turn the corner and all freeze. There is Lucian stood in the middle of the room with a wicked grin and we are surrounded by a dozen or more wolves. Talk about outnumbered. I pull Mabel behind my back to shield her from whatever crap is about to go down and I don't miss Lucian's eyes catching the movement. Well isn't this a lovely surprise? I wish you would have called. I would have made more of an effort. He mocks. This week has been all about family reunions hasn't it? This week has been all about family reunions hasn't it? Sisters, nieces, and now my nephew. How lucky am I that you've all finally decided to come back home. It's a shame though that it's not going to last. For you anyway. I've had enough of these games. This has gone on for long enough. As for the little which you are trying so poorly to protect, it's time I see to her like I saw to her mother. Both pathetic creatures who couldn't even complete the simplest of tasks properly, but that's all right, we know what to do with the likes of you don't we? He laughs. Enough. I can feel the rage vibrating off me all I can see is Lucian's smirk as he talks about ending my mate's life like she means nothing and I see red. Little boy finally found his voice has he. Little boy finally found his voice has he. Going to stop hiding in the shadows, does he think he's all grown now? I growl while attempting to hold Xander back. Your time is over Lucian. Step down or I will make you. You can't take on me. He roars. You have no right to this pack, to my position. You are nothing but a boy pretending to walk in his daddy's shoes and look how well that ended for him. His eyes glint with amusement at discussing my father's death so nonchalantly Xander rips forward from me. I can't hold him back any longer. He lunges towards Lucian snapping at him. Challenging him to a fight wolves around me shift as do Nate and Jackson circling my flank in my blind spots letting me know they have my back. Lucian raises his hand, to stop the movement of any of his pack members coming forward to attack. Do you think you have chance against me child? I am Alpha Lucian Stone of the Silver Moon Pack. I have defeated much stronger opponents than you boy. I will gladly do again. I'm going to enjoy every second of this. He grins as he shifts his wolf as a gray, white mix, with bloodshot eyes, skinnier than me, standing just under six feet, but I'm taller and bigger. Xander snaps his mouth waiting for him to move. He feigns a lunge to my left shoulder then quickly changes and nips at my right leg. Fucker. Okay he may not be as big as me but he's quick, we need to pay more attention. Calculate his next move we circle each other as I watch his movement. See the slightest stretch of his shoulders as he lunges towards me suddenly but I can't at this time and aim for his neck. I catch his scruff and bite it hard enough I am able to pull him back. The suddenness causes him to slip and roll as he jumps back to his feet. I see a hint of panic in his eyes. I'm not as easy as he anticipated. We start circling each other again, I notice his back legs twitch and I see the jump towards the back of my neck before he moves. I drop my front legs and lower my head so as he strikes he flies right over the top of me. I use my back to buck off to the side and pin him down my teeth aiming for his neck. I see movement outside the corner of my eye as the pack brace to defend when Nate growls and they seem to step back. 
Lucian is stronger than he looks and he holds me off longer than I thought he might. I use the weight of my body to try and crush his chest down to the floor pinning him. Relent. I scream in my head. Never. Never. I hear him back. I can hear him. How can I hear him? We're not in the same pack we don't have mind link. I am the rightful heir, release your hold and return it to me. I am the rightful heir, release your hold and return it to me. Lucian growls as he fights against me trying to break free. Never. Never. This is my pack. I will not let anyone take it from me. It is mine. I lose all control. I am Alpha of the Silver Moon Pack. You will relent to me willingly or I will take your life. Over my dead body. I will never stop. You can't make me. I am unstoppable. I will make you watch as I kill every person you have ever cared about, ever loved and then I'm going to come for that witch and I'm going to make you watch as I play with her and break every bone in her body until she begs me to kill her and then I'm going to let you watch as I drain every last ounce of blood from her body. I rear my head up growling as I push my head down and my tear catch Lucian's arm as I tear into it. He howls in pain as he moves his arm from the protective placement over his neck and I launch for the opportunity and sink my teeth into his neck as I feel the blood hitting my mouth and pull back taking his throat with me. Lucian's eyes widen in horror at the realization of what I've done as the light slowly drains from his eyes until they gloss over into emptiness. I stand tall over his limp body. I am Alpha of the Silver Moon Pack. Does anyone dare challenge me? I growl to the pack. With their Alpha dead as pack members we are automatically linked as I assert my claim to the Alpha status within the pack. If any of you doubt my leadership then you are free to leave now. No consequences. I see a couple wolves look at each other as they suddenly take off out the door. I look at Nate who picks up my thoughts and mind links Charlie and Ethan to let them know what's happened and to let them pass. Anyone else? Leave now. No one moves, instead the remaining wolves all bend to one knee as they bow their heads in respect. To our new Alpha. Someone shouts. Alpha Oliver. They all chant and I can feel their minds rushing in connection with mine. Speeding a bonds forming with each wolf of the pack connecting to me. I feel my own strength and power increase inside me. Like a warm heat radiating inside of me as I have finally accepted my birthright. My role as Alpha as my father and grandfather intended all those years ago. Mabel. I stand at the back of the room as I watch this man suddenly transform before my eyes. Lucy and called him Oliver. I think logically I should be terrified that I've just stood and watched him kill Lucian, and now he's taken on this power to his aura but I can't help but stare at him in awe. I have no idea why he is here and why I think they were saving me but I could feel the electricity bouncing off me when he took my hand, and I've been around wolves enough to know it has nothing to do with him just being a wolf. The other wolves in the room all take any. I think they have just accepted a new alpha. They seem to be having a conversation amongst themselves as Oliver is still in wolf form but Lucian's wolves all look at me suddenly and then leave the room. Oliver's wolf turns to me, he towers over me, and I think I am supposed to be frightened instead I find myself wanting to reach out and feel his fur under my hands. He walks closer to me as I take him in. He is a beautiful chocolate brown color, and his eyes are the same vibrant blue of Oliver's. I reach my hand out a little shackily, and he stretches his nose out until we meet. I run my hands along his neck as he turns into my hand and I swear I can hear him purr. One of the pack wolves comes back into the room with some clothes. I see a flicker of annoyance flash over Oliver's eyes, and I feel it to having to break the contact with him. He shifts and pulls on the shorts. He turns back to me. We need to head back. Are you okay? Yeah, I think. I stutter. We'll head back to our cars. We'll head back to our cars. Being here needs more energy than I have tonight. Oliver walks over to me and takes my hand as he leads me out of the house as Nate and his beta follow. We walk over to Forest and another two wolves emerge. I hesitate a little but Oliver tightens his grip as the group greet them. I relax as I realize they must be part of the pack. We walk for a while in majority of silence. Oliver never lets go of my hand. We reach the cars and he leads me to one. He walks back over to speak to Nate who looks in my direction and nods at whatever he and Oliver are discussing. Oliver comes over to the car and we start to drive off. Is no one else coming? I ask. We have another car further down they're going to take. I ask them for some time. It's not a long drive back but I feel like I need to explain before we get back. Explain. Explain what? 
I don't really know where to start so I'm just going to say it all and then let you process it all. I am Lexi's brother. My name is Oliver Stone. My birthright is to be Alpha of the Silver Moon Pack, it was to be passed to my father and then me. Lexi does not wish to be Alpha. Before tonight neither did I. There was an ambush at the Blood Moon Pack, Ace was injured, he was shot by Lucian. I broke my leg in the fighting. When I went to the dock to get it checked I found your scent in Ace's belongings. I could only have found it if you were my mate. Ace, Nate, Jackson and I along with some other hatched a plan to get you when Ace told us that Lucian was keeping you captive. I would have been here sooner but I needed to let my leg heal and we needed a plan. For that delay I am sorry. I never came tonight with any intentions other than breaking you out. Seeing Lucian, hearing him threaten you. It was too much, my wolf took over to claim my fate and end Lucian's reign. I do not regret it. I just regret that was the first time you got to meet my wolf and really see me. I am not that man. I have accepted my rightful place as their alpha. What that entails right now I do not know, I need to figure it out. What I do know is that I have a lot of work to do to fix the damage that Lucian has caused to that pack and it is not going to be easy. I also hope you will give me some time. Once you have had time to process everything you have been through. No matter how long that takes. A mate bond is scared. You are not a wolf, you may not feel it as intensely as we do but I hope you feel something and it's enough to allow me some time for you to really know me. I sit in silence as I process everything he just said. So I'm his what? True love or something? I can't deny the pull I feel towards him. Is that what it is? I've never felt anything like it before. Considering everything I've been through and witnessed I would have thought I would have been a little more on edge with it all. Are you okay? Surprisingly yes. Considering everything, I would have thought I'd feel more wired. I feel oddly calm. He smiles slightly. What? What? Nothing. It's just. The mate bond has a calming effect on the other when it's needed. Guess it's just nice to know you feel some of it too. So what does a mate bond mean when someone isn't a wolf? I guess you might not feel it as strongly as I do. He shrugs looking a little nervous. He's cute when he's nervous. For wolves it's hard to ignore. It's like your whole life. Your whole purpose is centered. You do anything for your mate. They are your everything. For wolves it's hard to ignore. It's like your whole life. Your whole purpose is centered. You do anything for your mate, they are your everything. Is that why you came to save me? Yes. I am not looking to force you into anything but I couldn't leave you there knowing you were in danger. If my wolf had his way we would have been there within the hour but my leg was pretty smashed up and I wanted to make sure I got you out safely so I needed a real plan and help. What is your plan next? Honestly, I don't have one. I never intended to take over as Alpha. Lucian's outcome was sealed decades ago, especially after what he's put Lexi through but I never felt worthy to be Alpha but it just kind of happened. I can't explain it, like I was home, it was right, I found my purpose. Everyone needs a purpose. I sigh. Are you okay? It's just been a long everything. My mother was the one who spellbound Lexi. It was your grandfather and parents that asked for her help. They thought it would protect her. You were both supposed to be bound. It was to be while you were in hiding. Once you were safe she would undo it. There were rumors Lucian was suspicious. She put a clause in the spell. If she should find her mate it would break the spell. Release her wolf. She knew she was in danger. Might not be around to reverse it. She was right. Lucian killed her trying to find out what the spell was. He thought her being bound took away any threat but he killed my mom anyway. So our parents were friends. I know. Odd right, witches and wolves. Your grandfather and father helped my mom. My dad was murdered by a rogue. They found him about to attack my mom and I when I was a baby. They protected her, didn't judge her for who she was. What we were. So when they were in danger she gladly helped. Lucian came looking for me when Lexi got on his radar. Ace did he best to protect me. I thought if I could play along well enough he might not kill me. If he thought I was useful, guess he didn't think I was useful. I knew when Ace didn't come back I was in trouble. What I didn't know was that you were going to walk in and save me instead. I smile at him my watch as he drives. Even just sitting here I can feel the pull to be near him, closer, touch him. I reach my hand for his and I intertwine our family and feel the heat building. He pulls our hands up to his mouth and kisses them. Such a small intimate act that has my heart rate increasing. This is crazy right? To be so into a man who you only met hours ago. To want to jump all over his body, have his hands all over you and never be separated from again. Will I be allowed at Lexi's pack? What? Of course. 
You helped save her the first time from what she said and regardless, Nate doesn't run his pack like that, he isn't like that. He had no idea who Ace was other than a wolf of Lucian's and when he lay bleeding out he still grabbed him and took him to the hospital to save his life. Besides, you're my mate. They would never turn away a wolf's mate. He says as his cheeks flush a little I can feel my eyes get heavy as we drive along. He pulls me closer to him, wraps his arm around me. I'm too tired to do anything other than enjoy the feel of him next to me. I lay my head on his shoulder and drift off with the comfort of feeling completely safe for the first time. Exy. They've been radio silent for hours. The pit in my stomach makes me want to be sick. Surely if something had happened to him I would know. I would be able to feel it. Maggie brings me over a hot tea and I smile at her in thanks. You should get some rest, I can let you know as soon as we know anything. You should get some rest, I can let you know as soon as we know anything. Thanks. I can't sleep without Nate. Not until I know he's safe. They're all safe. She smiles in understanding and goes back to baking. Doesn't matter it's the middle of the night, baking is how Maggie calms. Michael has been sat in the corner reading the same section of paperwork for the last hour just staring at it. Rachel is sat on the sofa pretending to read a book and Charlotte has been helping Maggie in the kitchen. Amelia stayed with Ace, I think both to calm her and because she's too afraid to leave his side yet. I'm staring off thinking about nothing when I feel him. They're here. I shoot up in my seat. I run to the door and coming up the drive are their cars. I run to meet them as Nate gets out and I throw myself into his arms and bury my head into his neck as I take in his scent. He tightens his arms around me and I pull back to check for any injuries. He looks untouched. I look round and see Rachel with Jackson and Oliver and Mabel are stood holding hands. Let's head inside should we? Let's head inside should we? I've got plenty of fresh food cooked. Maggie says. Sold. Sold. Jackson walks in first as everyone laughs. We all sit in silence while Maggie grabs them food, the air is thick with unanswered questions. It's Michael who breaks the silence. What happened? Nate walks us through everything that happened, how Oliver accepted his role as Alpha. Nate walks us through everything that happened, how Oliver accepted his role as Alpha. I feel proud of him for accepting his path. What about Lucian? Nate, Jackson, Mabel all look over to Oliver, he gets up from his seat as he starts walking around the room. I killed him. He says as he looks at me I can see the turmoil in his eyes, he is not a man who will take lightly the impact of taking another wolf's life. He was threatening Mabel, he was threatening you, it ended tonight, he will not hurt anyone else again, he will not hurt my family again. I walk over to him and hug him, he holds me close as the realization hits me. We're free. All these years. Everything. The threats to the pack, us, it's all gone. I start crying into Oliver who holds me closer. It's all right Lexi, it's over now. I know. It's the relief, caught me off guard. I'm blaming hormones. I joke Nate walks over and takes over from Oliver, wrapping me up in his arms. So what's next? Rachel asks Nate shrugs. I guess we have a life. I know pretty soon we're going to be pretty busy, be nice to know that there isn't some crazed family member coming after my wife or little wolf. He smiles as he kisses me and wipes the tears off my cheeks. I need to go the pack and figure out what the hell I'm supposed to do, I don't even know where to start, let alone who anyone is. I can help there. Amelia says as she walks in to join us. She walks over and sits next to Charlotte, she looks exhausted but at the same time happy. I want to go back home. I want to go back home. I want to go back to our pack. With you as Alpha. It's time we went home, and Ace will be coming with me. Oliver raises his eye at her but doesn't say anything. Ace has been the beta for the pack. He knows the pack. He knows what they need, what they've been through. Ace has been the beta for the pack. He knows the pack. He knows what they need what they've been through. He's just had the wrong Alpha to serve. I think with you as Alpha, 
Together you will be able to repair a once great pack family to what it once was, while helping your people to overcome the trauma they have experienced under Lucian's reign. Oliver is quiet as he thinks. I'll speak to Ace. Really? Yes, you're right. He knows the pack, certainly better than I do right now. He also has lived through what they have with Lucian. They do not need another Alpha coming in with no understanding and controlling them not leading and protecting them. I was hoping you'd say that. He looks to Mabel who has sat quietly this whole time. I don't know if you had any plans or anywhere you wanted to get back to. No, I don't have anywhere, I don't have a home. I've never had a home, Lucian saw to that. Then come home with me. Make the pack your home. Me. She reaches for his hand and holds it as her cheeks redden a little. They look cute together. I have no idea how to be an alpha. Nate do you think you could point me in the right direction? I have no idea how to be an alpha. Nate do you think you could point me in the right direction? I think the blood moon pack and the silver moon pack being united can only bring benefit to both of us. We're family after all. I start sobbing again. Oh goddess she's at it again. Jackson mocks. Quiet you. I tease. Right, if that isn't my cue to take my Luna and little pup home I don't know what is. Right, if that isn't my cue to take my Luna and little pup home I don't know what is. Nate wraps his arm around my waist as we walk out back home. The cool air breeze blowing around us, the evening still as everyone sleep. My family safe, together, happy. The love of my life standing next to me throughout it all and our little wolf growing inside of me. Peace at last. I shoot up in bed. Nate. 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 What's up? I think my water just broke. What? Are you sure? Either that or I just wet myself. Okay, don't panic. Do you feel okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I think. Wet. I'll mind Link Mom and the Doc. Do you want anything? A bath. How is she doing? Jackson asks over mind link. She's okay. Almost there. Not long now. Nate replies. Come on baby, you can do this, you're so close, you're doing so well. I can't do it. I'm tired. You do it. Nate laughs. I'm sorry baby, I wish I could. I'm sorry baby, I wish I could. This is all your fault. Not much longer, Luna. Next contraction, chin on chest and give me a big push. Come on, baby, you've got this. Come on, baby, you've got this. Congratulations, Luna. Alpha, it's boy. I sob as Doc lifts him onto my chest. Nate kisses me. Well done, my beautiful, strong Luna. Well done, my beautiful, strong Luna. You're amazing. I love you so much. I love you both so much. We walk into the common room of the pack house, Maggie and Michael, Rachel and Jackson, Oliver and Mabel, Charlotte and Matthew, Amelia and Ace are all here. Hi, hi. They all say I can't help the grin on my face seeing all my family here. They all say I can't help the grin on my face seeing all my family here. Everyone we'd like you to meet the newest member of the Blood Moon Pack, this is Logan. Nate says with so much pride I swear my heart could burst Matthew will be leaving for England soon, he is returning to his pack, he has been away for too long. Oliver has taken well to being Alpha of the Silver Moon Pack. We all had faith in him but his natural Alpha instincts only aided his transition, with Mabel by his side he has become a caring and compassionate leader just as our grandfather was before him. He and Nate have worked together to form a treaty uniting both our packs as our family is united and Nate. And Michael have been there to support Oliver as much as he has needed. He and Mabel seem to be getting on well too, they have been taking things slowly to get to know one another. I think the mate bond is strong even when someone isn't a wolf just not quite as desperate. Oliver has taken Ace as his beta. It didn't take long once Ace was a little more recovered from his wounds that just like Oliver, did with Nate and Jackson he fit right in with the family. He and Amelia moved to the Silver Moon Pack and Charlotte joined them. She wanted to go back home. I think it was difficult for her to be back among her family's pack. The loss was great, but the new era of leadership with all of our family reunited once more brought some peace to the pain. Five years later. Guys, lunch is ready. 
Maggie calls out. Come on kitties, let's go eat. Come on kitties, let's go eat. Rachel says Maggie is putting food on the table as Michael brings it out of the house. Logan sit here next to your sister. Logan sit here next to your sister. Lexi says. No Sophie let's not try and steal your brother's toys. Why is it two-year-olds can find such joy in tormenting? She laughs. What are you two up to now? Nate jokes as he comes over and kisses Logan and Sophie, leaning over for a kiss from Lexi. You dad, you dad, get a room. Logan moans as Nate grins and kisses Lexi deeper. Jackson come over throwing Isla in the air. She giggles. Jackson, will you stop that? Jackson, will you stop that? You're going to give me a heart attack. Rachel scolds he puts Sile in the chair next to Sophie as they sit and chat to each other like they've not seen each other in years. Who knew two-year-olds had so much to talk about? Jackson walks over and kisses Rachel and bends to kiss her heavily pregnant stomach. Where is Daniel? He asks. I was helping Grandpa Michael. I was helping Grandpa Michael. He says as he comes out brimming with pride as he helps carry a bowl of salad to the table, taking a seat next to Logan. Sorry we're late guys. Sorry we're late guys. You'd think I'd be used to leaving the house by now. Amelia says as she comes over with Ace carrying a sleeping Aiden. You're not late at all. Come have a seat. How are you feeling? You're not late at all. Come have a seat. How are you feeling? How is he sleeping? Sleep? What's that? Rachel laughs. He's only four months. I let him off because he's so cute. He's only four months. I let him off because he's so cute. Good job he looks like his father. Where are Oliver, Mabel and Ava? Jackson asks. They were right behind us. They were right behind us. We all left at the same time. Ace says just as he finishes talking Oliver and Mabel come over with Ava fussing in her arms. Sorry, we had a code brown explosion as we left so thought we might as well go back in the house to clean it up rather than the side of the road. Mabel says, Here you grab some food let me have some cuddles with my niece. Here you grab some food let me have some cuddles with my niece. Lexi says we finally all sit around the table. Maggie has outdone herself as always with the food she's made as we all dig in. It doesn't take long before all the kids have decided sitting is enough and all ask to get down. They all run off to play behind us except the babies as we sit watching them all play. Who would have known that the moon goddess was not finished in her blessings when she gave us our mates? I sit looking at a sleeping Ava in my arms. Nate we should have another baby. Nate we should have another baby. He laughs at me. I'm more than happy to do the part that is needed to make that happen. He jokes. A toast. Michael says as he stands. None of us could have known all those years ago the direction our lives were heading. The people who were able to come into our lives and enrich them. Although at times the path was not easy, I am thankful sitting here today with this family that we have made. As these babies play and enrich our lives even more. And I see the future before us. Not just as a family, but as our future pack leaders and members. How truly blessed we all are to be here together sharing it all. To the moon goddess and to family. To family. We all cheer.